At the center of attention in Jiangnan City, Xiao Qingcheng chose to deliver the divorce agreement to that man amidst the quiet of her family's mausoleum. Yang Yi Tianqi, faced with this sudden divorce request, merely raised an eyebrow, as if asking, Divorce? Why such a sudden request? His assistant, Miss Sun, however, sneered repeatedly, seemingly mocking his confusion. She pointed out bluntly that as a top figure in Jiangnan City, Miss Xiao naturally had countless suitors, while Yi Tianqi, apart from his good looks, seemed unworthy of her brilliance. Miss Sun hurriedly arrived at the Yi family mausoleum, dressed in a professional skirt, and tossed the divorce agreement in front of the handsome young Yi Tianqi. Yi Tianqi furrowed his brow slightly, inquiring about the reason for the divorce. Miss Sun sneered, saying, Don't you understand? Miss Xiao is the most dazzling female CEO in Jiangnan City, worth billions, and adored by countless. As for you, besides being an empty shell, you're nothing but a burden to Miss Xiao. Do you think you're worthy of this marriage? Yi Tianqi raised an eyebrow, questioning, A burden? Does Xiao Qingcheng truly see me this way? Miss Sun nodded, ruthlessly adding, Besides yourself, everyone around Miss Xiao sees you that way. Yi Tianqi's gaze grew deep. Three years ago, he returned to Jiangnan City from somewhere, fulfilling the engagement with the Xiao family. At that time, the Xiao family was in dire straits, on the brink of collapse. He silently supported the Xiao family, nurturing Xiao Qingcheng into the most dazzling female CEO in Jiangnan City. However, in the end, he received a divorce agreement. Miss Sun continued, as compensation for the divorce, Miss Xiao has promised to pay you 10 million. Even though this marriage lacks so much for you, Miss Xiao has done her best. You should learn to be grateful and sign it quickly. Yi Tianqi's tone became indifferent. He said, Grateful? Tell Xiao Qingcheng, if she wants me to sign, she should come and negotiate with me in person. Miss Sun furrowed her brow, saying, With Miss Xiao's status and position, how could she possibly meet with a worthless person? Miss Xiao has countless ways to handle the divorce proceedings, she's already showing mercy by sending me to you. Don't push it too far. Yi Tianqi's eyes flashed coldly. He said, Oh, in her eyes, on the anniversary of my family's death, proposing a divorce in front of their graves, and then sending you to mock me, this is her idea of mercy? Miss Xiao has held such a high position for so long, even her way of showing mercy is unique. Yes, today is the anniversary of the death of Yi Tianxi's family of eight. Xiao Qingcheng actually commissioned someone to come to the Yi family mausoleum on this special day to propose a divorce. How ironic! At this moment, a stunningly beautiful woman with a cold demeanor and a voluptuous figure walked over from a distance, holding a bouquet of flowers. She placed the flowers in front of a tombstone and said softly, Grandpa Yi, sorry for being a little late, I've come to see you. Yi Tianqi looked at this icy beauty in front of the tombstone, feeling complicated. Because of their grandfather's relationship, he and Xiao Qingcheng had been engaged since childhood. However, 15 years ago, the Yi family was suddenly engulfed in flames. Apart from being rescued by his master and fleeing Jiangnan City, all his family members perished in the fire. The old master of the Xiao family helped handle the aftermath of the family's affairs, and the favor was indescribable. Three years ago, he returned to Jiangnan City and fulfilled this engagement. In order not to pressure Xiao Qingcheng, he chose to interact with her as an ordinary person and silently supported the Xiao family. He originally planned to let the Tianlong group hold a bidding conference tomorrow and announce that the Xiao family was the only successful bidder for the new district development project, winning a contract worth 10 billion, thus propelling Xiao Qingcheng to the pinnacle of Jiangnan City. By then, he could also remove his mask and confess everything to Xiao Qingcheng. However, just the day before, Xiao Qingcheng walked up to Yi Tianqi. Xiao Qingcheng's expression remained as cold as ever, but deep down, she was filled with endless frustration. She heard what Yi Tianqi had just said, and she understood that choosing to bring up the topic of divorce at this time and in this place was a form of neglect towards him. Perhaps she had been too busy, forgetting about this matter, which is why she let assistant son handle it. Yi Tianz raised his hand, interrupting her thoughts, sarcastically saying, Yes, even entrusting someone else with the divorce, it seems like Miss Xiao is truly busy to the point of being heartless. Xiao Qingcheng sensed his complaint, yet she confidently believed she had done nothing wrong. She was fully focused on preparing for tomorrow night's bidding conference, hoping to successfully secure the bid from the Tianlong group and win that 10 billion order. Moreover, there had been rumors that behind the success of the Tianlong group's chairman, Zhao Hailong, there must be a mysterious figure supporting him. Coincidentally, there were rumors that this figure would make an appearance at the conference tomorrow night. She would not miss such a precious opportunity to make this acquaintance. However, she had no intention of telling Yi Tianz about these thoughts because she knew he wouldn't understand. 
Xiao Qingsheng calmly said, since we have come to this point, we must bravely face this outcome. At least for me personally, I have put in a lot of effort into this marriage. Whether in front of you or your family, I can hold my head high. I hope you can understand the pain in my heart. Yi Tians asked, what exactly is the pain you're talking about? Money? Status? Are these really that important? Disappointed, Xiao Qingcheng shook her head and said, what's the point of telling you? Because you will never understand my inner thoughts. Yi Tian smiled bitterly and said, Yes, I indeed cannot understand you. So I will only pour you water when you're thirsty, cook for you when you're hungry, and try to make you happy when you're sad. Xiao Qingsheng frowned, coldly saying, What's the point of saying these things? What I need, has never been your so-called care. Because what I want, you cannot give. Just then, a voice came from afar, Qingsheng is right. What she wants, a low life like you can never provide. A young man in a white suit walked over. He was Ji Bo Duan, the young master of the Zhang Ji family. Recently, his relationship with Xiao Qingcheng had become unusually close. Ji Bo Duan gently said to Xiao Qingcheng, Didn't we agree to have dinner together later? My car is already parked outside the cemetery. Yi Tian self mockingly said, So this is the reason you want a divorce. Three years of silent dedication have ultimately led to this result, leaving his heart as cold as ice at this moment. A hint of determination flashed in his eyes as he firmly said, I agree to sign, I hope you won't regret it. So, he decisively signed his name on the divorce agreement. Ji Bo Duan sneered, do you know? There is already internal news revealing that Qingcheng will win the bid from Tianlong Group and secure the 10 billion order. After it's announced at the bidding conference tomorrow night, she will become not only the most dazzling female CEO in Jiangmen City, but in the entire Tianan province. He pointed at Yi Tianse's chest with his finger, arrogantly saying, And you? A waste that can't even enter the doors of the conference, do you think Qingcheng will regret? Yi Tianse brushed off Ji Bo Duan's hand and calmly said, The bidding conference was organized at my instruction by the Tianlong group, and I instructed that Xiao Qingcheng would win the bid. Ji Bo Duan chuckled and said, Why don't you mention that even the chairman of the Tianlong group, the so-called King of Zhang'an, Lord Zhao Hailong, listens to your orders? Yi Tianse calmly replied, that's right, he does indeed follow my orders. G.B. Duan mocked, Mr. Yi, your big talk is truly astonishing. In fact, the reason why the Qingcheng company was able to successfully bid for the Tianlong group project this time is completely because my Ji family pleaded with Lord Long, and has nothing to do with you, Mr. Yi. Yi Tnce was angered by G.B. Duan's impolite attitude. Just as he was about to argue, Xiao Qingcheng sternly rebuked, Yi Tnce, you've gone too far. Do you really know what nonsense you're talking about? She handed over a bank card and said coldly, this is 10 million as compensation. Tomorrow night after the Chamber of Commerce meeting, we will go to the Civil Affairs Bureau to handle the divorce procedures. Yi Tnce didn't even look at the bank card. He calmly said, I don't want a penny of the money. I'll see you the day after tomorrow at the Civil Affairs Bureau, and we won't owe each other anything in the future. Although his tone was calm, it carried an unprecedented sense of estrangement. Xiao Qingsheng bit her lip, wanting to say something, but in the end, she didn't speak, turned around, and left with assistant Sun and G.B. Duan. G.B. Duan politely asked, Qingsheng, we agreed to have dinner together. Where would you like to go? Xiao Qingsheng, looking somewhat weary, said, let's forget about dinner. Just take me back to the company. G.B. Duan felt a bit awkward and said, all right then. Xiao Qingsheng looked out of the car window. In the distance, Yi Tnce stood alone in front of the grave, revealing a hint of loneliness in his solitude. As the car started, his figure gradually disappeared from view. This inexplicable feeling evoked a sense of pity in the heart. Yi Tianqi sighed, feeling regretful in his heart, Grandfather, I have let you down. This marriage is doomed to fail. However, he thought to himself, without the constraints of marriage, I will have more time to uncover the truth behind the fire that destroyed the Yi family years ago. Over the years, Yi Tianqi had always suspected that the fire at the Yi family was not accidental, but rather intentional. So, after returning to Jiangmen City, he had been secretly investigating, and recently, he finally had some leads. Just then, his phone suddenly vibrated. Answering the call, he heard Zhao Hailong's flattering voice on the other end, Mr. Yi, the invitation for the bidding conference tomorrow has been sent out, and the 10 billion investment contract for President Xiao is ready. What do you think? Yi Tianqi replied calmly, You've worked hard, but I have already divorced her. Divorced? Zhao Hailong's face turned pale. Despite being the chairman of the Tianlong group and known as the king of Jiangmen, 
he understood that everything was orchestrated by Yi Tianqi three years ago. One sentence could change everything. Yi Tianqi didn't want to dwell on this issue, he just asked, how is the investigation going on that matter? Zhao Hailong hurriedly answered, Mr. Yi, we have found that the Yi family fire may have some connection with the Zhang Ji family. Zhang Ji family? Yi Tianqi's eyes narrowed slightly, a hint of coldness flashing through. Zhao Hailong continued, I have organized the relevant information and would like to present it to you in person. What do you think? Yi Tianqi nodded, I'll be waiting for you at the Yi family cemetery. Understood. Just as Yi Tianqi hung up the phone, he heard two sets of footsteps approaching. He turned his head and saw a glamorous middle-aged woman and a young man coming towards him. They were none other than Xiao Qingcheng's mother, Zhang Huilin, and her brother, Xiao Nan. In the three years of marriage, both the mother and daughter had not been friendly towards him. Zhang Huilin stepped forward, frowning, Mr. Yi, Qingcheng mentioned divorce to you. Yi Tianqi nodded, just signed the divorce agreement. Zhang Huilin breathed a sigh of relief, great, my daughter has been through a lot in the past three years of marriage with you. Finally, she can get rid of you, you useless man. Xiao Nan also smirked, my sister can be single again, and with young master Ji Bo from the Ji family, participating in the bidding conference together, they will surely win the 10 billion contract. It will drive you, this useless man, crazy. Yi Tianqi frowned, if you're here to speak ill of us, please find another place. Don't disturb my family's rest here. Xiao Nan sneered, what's the rush? You're divorced now, but there are still some accounts to settle. He picked up an old black messenger bag, when you came to our Xiao family three years ago, you were empty-handed, with only this tattered bag. Since you're divorced now, take this junk with you and don't dirty our place anymore. But I'm curious, what's inside that's worth keeping for three years? With that, Xiao Nan opened the bag, revealing a stack of marriage certificates. There were nine in total. Xiao Nan pulled one out and read, let the ceremony be the same, joining two surnames in marriage. Poems singing the joy of the family, establishing a peaceful hundred years. Groom, Yi Tianqi. Bride, Han Ruoyan. Xiao Nan looked surprised and said to Yi Tianza, Han Ruoyan? She is the only daughter of the richest man in Jiangnan City. How did you get her marriage certificate? Yi Tianza coldly replied, It's none of your business. Give me back that marriage certificate and the backpack. It turned out that these nine marriage certificates were given to him by his master before he left Jiangnan City. His master warned him that these nine fiancés were carefully chosen and destined by fate, and he should cherish them. However, after returning to Jiangnan City, he had completely forgotten about these nine marriage certificates until Xiao Nan brought them out, forcing him to remember. Xiao Nan disdainfully closed the marriage certificate and mocked, It seems like you heard that the Han family was looking for a suitor for Han Ruoyan, so you cleverly forged a marriage certificate to deceive? With someone like you, how could the Han family consider you? I would do the same. With that, he put the marriage certificate back in the bag and threw it at Yi Tianzi's feet. Zhang Huilin impatiently ordered Yi Tianzi, I heard that Qingsheng divorced you and gave you 10 million. What qualifications do you have to accept it, you useless person? Give it back to us quickly. Yi Tianzi calmly replied, I didn't ask for that money. Xiao Nan cursed, you clearly have 10 million but refused to take it. Aren't you just fooling people? Yi Tianzi coldly responded, I said I didn't want it, and that's final. If you don't believe me, you can call your sister. Zhang Huilin spat disdainfully, HMPH. I won't believe your lies. I'm going to search your body. The bank card must be on you. With that, she walked up and rummaged through Yi Tianzi's pockets. Yi Tianzi suppressed his anger and said, enough. However, Zhang Huilin ignored him and continued to search. In the end, she found nothing. She felt puzzled. Could this useless person really not want money? Xiao Nan changed his tone and said, Mr. Yi, even if you don't want the money, shouldn't you return the money you owe to our Xiao family? You've been freeloading at our Xiao family for three years. Shouldn't you repay after the divorce? At least one million. Zhang Huilin added, not only that, you wasted Qingsheng's three years of youth, which should be compensated with three million. Moreover, after divorcing you, Qingsheng would be remarrying, which is considered a second marriage and would damage her reputation. An additional compensation of 3 million is needed, totaling 7 million. Hurry up and pay! The mother and daughter pressured him to the extreme, completely crossing the line. Yi Tianzi's eyes were cold, and he said heavily, The divorce is between Qingsheng and me, it's none of your business. I will not give you a penny. Get lost! Xiao Nan sneered arrogantly, Who do you think you are, telling us to get lost? 
If you don't pay back the money today, I will destroy the ancestral grave of your Yi family. With that, he viciously kicked Yi Tianzi's grandfather's tombstone. Bang! A dirty footprint was left on the tombstone. Putting his foot down, Xiao Nan triumphantly said, Did you hear that? Pay up quickly, or... Before he could finish his sentence, Yi Tianzi suddenly slapped him across the face. Smack! The tremendous force made Xiao Nan spin in place, blood trickling from the corner of his mouth. No manners at all. Yi Tianzi's eyes were icy with anger, and he kicked him down again. Xiao Nan writhed in pain on the ground. Zhang Huilin clutched her arm, groaning in pain with a furrowed brow. She looked towards her mother, hoping for help. Suddenly, she pointed at Yi Tianzi and angrily accused, You useless man! How dare you lay a hand on my son! I will never let you off the hook! With that, her eyes blazing with anger, she seemed as if she was about to lunge at Yi Tianzi. Zhao Hailong sternly questioned, What are you attempting? Zhang Huilin was so frightened by his attitude that she involuntarily took a few steps back. She felt that the man in front of her looked familiar, but she couldn't quite remember who he was. Zhao Hailong turned around and politely asked Yi Tianxi, Are you not injured? Yi Tianxi shook his head to indicate that everything was fine. He really didn't want to waste too much time on this mother and daughter. So he gave a signal to Zhao Hailong with his eyes, and the latter immediately ordered the bodyguards to kick them out. The two bodyguards quickly restrained Zhang Huilin and Xiaonan. Xiaonan struggled violently, screaming, Let go of me. My sister is Sha Qingsheng, the heiress of the Sha group. Can you afford to provoke her? Zhang Huilin also threatened Zhao Hailong, Fatso. I am Sha Qingsheng's mother. Let your people go. Zhao Hailong's face darkened. If it weren't for the fact that these two women were related to Mr. Yi, he would have thrown them into the river long ago. So he coldly said, Whoever you are, stay away from the mausoleum and leave immediately. The two bodyguards didn't hesitate and directly escorted them away. Yi Tianxi wiped away the shoe prints on his grandfather's tombstone and asked, Where's the information you prepared about the fire at the Yi family and the relationship with the Zhang Ji family? Zhao Hailong quickly handed over a document. Yi Tianxi's expression turned colder as he read the document. He said, In two days, Ji Wuli, the head of the Ji family and the father of Ji Boduan, will celebrate his 60th birthday. A small auction is planned during the birthday banquet, and one of the items is a tiger-shaped jade pendant, which is the one my grandfather used to wear. I thought it had been buried in the fire with my grandfather, but it turns out it's in the Ji family's hands? Zhao Hailong explained, I investigated this information based on the clues you provided. As for how the Ji family obtained this jade pendant, it is still unclear. Yi Ti and she ordered, make arrangements. I will attend Ji Wuli's birthday banquet in two days. Yes. Yi Ti and she turned to look at his grandfather's tombstone and said coldly, Grandfather, I will follow this clue all the way. Whoever the culprit is, they will pay the price. With that, his hand instantly ignited flames, and the documents in his hand disappeared. Zhao Hailong looked stunned, thinking, Is this the power that humans can possess? Yi Ti and she picked up the backpack on the ground, which contained the marriage certificate, and said, Prepare a file on Han Ruo Yun from the Han family for me. There are some old matters I need to address. Understood. Zhao Hailong hesitated for a moment and asked, Mr. Yi, what about the arrangements for the business meeting tomorrow night? Yi Tian Shi left without further consideration. Zhao Hailong pondered for a moment and then suddenly picked up his phone to make a call, ordering, inform the Xiao family to revoke their qualification to attend the business meeting tomorrow night. No need to explain, rearrange the list of the 1 billion order winners. Xiao family group, top floor office. Xiao Qingsheng sat in the office chair, feeling uneasy. Although divorcing Yi Tianxi should have been a good thing, she couldn't find any joy in it. Son, the assistant, asked with concern, Miss Xiao, is there something on your mind? Xiao Qingsheng composed herself and said, No, nothing. She continued, I'm thinking about the big shot behind Zhao Hailong at the business meeting tomorrow night. Who exactly is he? At this moment, Ji Bo Duan, who was sitting on the sofa opposite, stood up and walked over to Xiao Qingsheng. Xiao Qingcheng is a woman who appears strong on the outside but is soft-hearted on the inside. She always faces life's challenges with confidence and composure. At a business meeting, she made friends with a prestigious figure, showcasing her social connections and charm. She promised the figure that she would introduce a talented individual to him, hoping he would pay attention and offer support out of respect for her. Suddenly, the office door was pushed open, and Zhang Huilin and Xiao Nan rushed in looking distressed and disheveled. Xiao Nan's mouth was swollen and bleeding, appearing in great pain. 
Zhang Huilin tearfully complained that that bastard Yi Tianzi had actually resorted to violence, causing unfair treatment to her and her son. Xiao Qingxiang was filled with anger upon hearing this, she couldn't believe Yi Tianzi would do such a thing. In her eyes, though Yi Tianzi had flaws, he was not someone who would easily resort to violence. Ji Bo solemnly expressed belief in Zhang Huilin's words, suggesting that Yi Tianzi might have lashed out due to not accepting the divorce. Zhang Huilin further exaggerated Yi Tianzi's actions and words, leaving Xiao Qingcheng shocked and disappointed. She had thought that Yi Tianzi would change after the divorce, but she was surprised to discover the darkness in his heart. Xiao Qingcheng decided to demand an apology from Yi Tianzi, calling him to question his behavior. Yi Tianzi admitted to the violence, but Xiao Qingcheng interrupted, deeming his actions intolerable and demanding an immediate apology to his family. Refusing to accept blame, Yi Tianzi abruptly hung up, leaving Xiao Qingcheng so angry she almost dropped her phone. Determined to find Yi Tianzi and seek a reasonable explanation, she was interrupted by a call from someone at the Tianlong group. Filled with anger and determination, Xiao Qingcheng resolved to uphold her family's dignity at any cost. After hanging up, Xiao Qingcheng felt a shiver run through her, almost losing her balance and stumbling to the ground. Sun, her assistant, quickly reached out to support her, his face full of concern as he asked, Xiao, are you okay? Xiao Qingcheng replied in a trembling voice, it's nothing, just received a phone call that deeply moved me. Her eyes glistened with tears, as if she was reminiscing about something beautiful. The crowd was all amazed. Suddenly revoking the Chamber of Commerce qualification, isn't this causing a 10 billion project to go down the drain? Ji Bo raised his eyebrows and asked, did Dragon Lord personally order this? Have you offended him? Xiao Qingcheng shook her head, she has always been very cautious towards the Tianlong group, never daring to provoke them. Zhang Huilin and Xiao Nan exchanged a glance, both thinking of a person at the same time. The fat man with golden-rimmed glasses who was insulted in the cemetery, seemed to be Zhao Hailong. His image in the business world of Jiangnan City is everywhere. No wonder he looked familiar at that time. Could it be because of this? Zhang Huilin and Xiao Nan suddenly felt panicked and sweaty. Xiao Qingcheng saw their strange expressions and curiously asked, what's wrong with you? Xiao Nan didn't dare to tell the truth directly, so she changed the subject, sis, I just saw Yi Tianqi insulting Dragon Lord at the cemetery. Maybe it's because of this that Dragon Lord is retaliating against our Xiao family. Xiao Qingcheng didn't believe it at all. How could Yi Tianqi have the courage to offend Dragon Lord? Zhang Huilin explained, that Waste would never dare to offend Dragon Lord under normal circumstances, but maybe he's harboring resentment now and deliberately implicating our Xiao family, since he is already in a precarious situation himself. Don't worry about these details, this Chamber of Commerce is crucial for our Xiao family this time, we must quickly regain our qualification, otherwise the billion dollar order will be ruined. Xiao Qingcheng bit her lip. She never expected Yi Tianqi to be so narrow-minded, resorting to all means to retaliate against her. She took a deep breath and said helplessly, I also want to regain it, but Dragon Lord personally ordered it, what can I do? Assistant Sun reminded, Miss Xiao, young Master Ji from the Ji family said that this tender was mediated by them with Dragon Lord, he will definitely help. Everyone immediately turned their gaze to Ji Bo. His face was embarrassed, and he said, Indeed, but I'm not very clear about the specific situation. I will go to Tianlong Group to ask Dragon Lord's opinion. Xiao Qingcheng said gratefully, Thank you. After Ji Bo left, Assistant Sun comforted, Miss Xiao, with young Master Ji's help, you can rest assured. Xiao Qingcheng shook her head. Although the Ji family is one of the three major families in Jiangnan City, it may not have much influence in front of Dragon Lord. She had to figure out a way. After hesitating for a moment, she decided, the Han family is not only one of the three major families, but the head of the family, Han Tianzheng, is also the richest man in Jiangcheng. It is said that he has a good relationship with Dragon Lord. I plan to visit him and hope that he can also help. Assistant Sun worriedly asked, the Han family has a prominent status, we are not familiar with them, will they help? Xiao Nan patted his chest and said, don't worry, I will accompany my sister. Recently, Miss Han from the Han family is looking for a husband. With my looks and talents, I can definitely impress them. If I become the son-in-law of the Han family, they will help. Zhang Huilin excitedly clapped her hands and said, exactly. Xiao Nan is so outstanding. He will definitely become the son-in-law of the Han family, let's hurry up. Xiao Qingcheng could only give it a try. Longying Manor, with a vast area, beautiful scenery, and fresh air. This is the residence of Han Tianzheng, the richest man in Jiangnan City and one of the three major families. 
On the way there, Yi Tianqi checked the information about Han Ruiyan provided by Zhao Hailong. Two and a half months ago, after returning from the funeral of Master Han, Han Ruiyan fell ill with a strange disease. She would fall into a coma every day, and blood would occasionally seep from her skin, leaving all major hospitals at a loss. Han Tianzheng spared no expense in inviting Master Gongsun, who was well versed in the mysteries of the heavens. After examining Miss Han's condition, Master Gongsun asserted that Master Han had not seen his granddaughter married before his death, and his lingering attachment and unresolved wishes were causing his spirit to linger. He proposed a solution to hold a wedding to bring joy and dispel the spirit. Therefore, seven days ago, the Han family announced that they would seek a suitable and fated match for Han Ruoyan in Jiangnan City to share wealth and honor. This news spread quickly, attracting numerous young people from the city who were all intrigued. Yi Tianza also followed the crowd to the Han family courtyard, where he saw thirty young people gathered. In the center of the courtyard was an offering table with Master Han's spirit tablet, and three unlit incense sticks in the censer. Han Tianzheng stood to the right of the table, bearing the pain of his father's passing and the torment of his daughter's uncertain fate, physically and mentally exhausted. To the left of the table, an old man in a yellow robe and a floral crown stood. It was Master Gongsun. He stroked his beard and spoke, Everyone, the so-called fated person must be recognized by Master Han. When I give the order later, those who come forward must kneel and kowtow to Master Han's spirit tablet. Then I will conduct a fate test. If a fated person is found, the incense in front of the spirit tablet will ignite on its own. You may begin. A young man stepped forward and respectfully kowtowed three times to Master Han's spirit tablet. Master Gongsun waved his whisk, stepped with vigor, and chanted, Heart moves, form changes, surrender to the void, grains of sand. As the ritual goes, begin. However, the incense showed no reaction. Master Gongsun, expressionless, said, Next. Yi Tianzhe watched this scene with mixed emotions. Upon learning of Miss Han's condition and Master Han's lingering attachment, he found it all unbelievable. The method of testing fate was even more unbelievable. His intuition told him that something was amiss, so he decided to wait and see. After a while, only Yi Tianza and one other person had not undergone the fate test, as others had failed. Master Gongsun solemnly said to Han Tianzheng, Master Han, today is the seventh day of determining the fated person, and also the last day. If we cannot find a suitable person, please prepare yourself. Han Tianzheng nodded sadly and said, Next. Suddenly, a young man in a branded suit knelt in front of the spirit tablet. The crowd gasped. Wasn't this Gigi's second young master, Ji Boxiao? Even he came to undergo the test? The Ji family and the Han family were both among the top three noble families in Jiangnan City, and Ji Boxiao and Miss Han were a match made in heaven, so he was sure to pass the test. Ji Boxiao glanced at Master Gongsun. Understanding his gaze, Master Gongsun stroked his beard and said, I see that this gentleman is exceptionally talented, with the aura of a dragon among men. Surely, he is the fated one. All right. Heart moves, form changes, surrender to the void. As the ritual goes, begin. With a fierce shout from Master Gongsun, the incense in the censer trembled slightly but did not ignite. Frowning, Master Gongsun said, the incense moved, indicating that this gentleman is indeed the fated one. Continue to kowtow. Put in more effort, and I will cast the spell again. Ji Boshao's face lit up with joy as he kowtowed even harder. Before the incense was lit, Han Tianzheng anxiously asked Master Gongsun, Is Boshao's fate not enough yet? Master Gongsun was sweating profusely, thinking to himself, How could this happen? We rehearsed so many times in advance. Taking a deep breath, he sternly ordered Ji Boxiao, Put more effort into it, make sure to make your head bleed. Ji Boxiao was suddenly filled with fear hesitantly asking, are you sure this won't endanger my life? With a serious expression, Master Gongsun replied, just do it. Ji Boxiao made up his mind, heavily knocking his head on the ground. With a thud, fresh blood gushed out. The pain came, and he couldn't help but groan. Seizing the opportunity, Master Gongsun chanted spells, his face turning red as he stomped his feet and shouted, quick as the law, decree. Suddenly, good news came. The incense was finally lit. However, bad news followed. Only one stick of incense, and it only burned for a short three seconds. Master Gongsun forced a smile and said, As long as it ignites, the test is considered passed. Congratulations, Master Han! Han Tianzheng was extremely excited because he knew his daughter finally had a glimmer of hope. Master Gongsun reminded, Young Master Ji, go meet your future father-in-law. Ji Boxiao, holding his head, prepared to bow to Han Tianzheng but accidentally fell, 
eliciting a round of laughter. All eyes turned to Yi Tianzi. Ji Baxiao rubbed his temples and blamed, Why are you laughing? Yi Tianzi admitted, I'm laughing at how hard you're trying, you've even bumped your head, no need for that. Ji Baxiao twitched at the corner of his eye, knowing he didn't want to do this either, but Master Gongsun was really worrying. Despite that, he still insisted, Bumping my head shows my sincerity, Master Han acknowledges me as the destined one, let the incense burn. Yi Tianzi indifferently pointed out, the burning incense is purely coincidental, it has nothing to do with Master Han, the deceased is like extinguished lamp, no need to force it. Han Tianzheng suddenly scolded, stop talking nonsense. My daughter's marriage is of utmost importance, no room for disturbance. Master Gongsun scratched his beard, provocatively walked forward, taunting, you keep saying the burning incense is a coincidence? Then come and try kneeling and kowtowing, maybe it will enlighten you. Yi Tianzi calmly responded, no need for that. He casually snapped his fingers. Snap. In the next moment, three incense sticks on the incense burner table quickly ignited, flames leaping, leaving everyone in awe, as if they had seen a ghost. Master Gongsun was almost popping his eyes out. Han Tianzheng excitedly grabbed Yi Tianzi's hand, saying emotionally, good son-in-law, what's your name? Yi Tianzi awkwardly replied, Uh. Ji Baxiao, anxious, pushed Master Gongsun, who hurriedly explained, Master Han, you misunderstood, he is not your son-in-law. Han Tianzheng retorted, Didn't you say that when three incense sticks burn, it means my father acknowledges him as the son-in-law of the Han family? Master Gongsun reluctantly explained, Actually, it was young Master Ji who got the acknowledgement, it's just, due to a delay in the spiritual response, the incense burned a minute late, leading to his misunderstanding. Everyone looked at each other, and even Master Gongsun felt that this explanation was a bit far-fetched, so he added, and looking at this boy's appearance, his fate is not good. Master Han will not approve of him. Yi Tianzi sneered, lacking in skills, deceiving others at a young age. Master Gongsun angrily said, I have studied on Kunlun Mountain for over sixty years, knowledgeable in yin and yang, adept in feng shui, and clear about destiny. How dare you, a young boy, say I lack skills? Yi Tianzi took out a marriage certificate from his bag and slapped it on his face. You say Master Han doesn't acknowledge me. Then what is this? Master Gongsun opened the marriage certificate, shocked to find Master Han's signature on it. He felt a burning sense of shame. Ji Baxia was even more speechless. All the effort to kowtow seemed in vain. At this moment, Han Tianzheng, however, said discontentedly, Young man, I thought you were the destined one for my daughter, but you turned out to be a fraud who forged a marriage certificate, disappointing. Yi Tianzi asked in confusion, forged marriage certificate? What does that mean? Han Tianzheng gestured to the steward Wang behind him, bring those things over and show him. Steward Wang immediately brought a large box. Yi Tianzi carefully looked inside, the box was filled with various marriage certificates. After hearing Han Tianzheng's explanation, everyone was surprised and filled with doubt. Han Tianzheng's expression turned serious as he said, Everyone, before my father passed away. He revealed that he had arranged a marriage for Yunyan in her early years. Unfortunately, he passed away before revealing the identity of the groom. However, after the news spread, a group of people arrived at my house that very night with marriage documents, intending to fulfill this engagement. However, all these marriage documents were forged, playing with the emotions of my Han family. I had to put in a lot of effort to calm the situation. He paused for a moment and continued. I never expected that after so many years, you would still resort to such dishonorable means to deceive. Do you think my Han family is easy to bully? Yi Tianqi looked embarrassed after hearing this, unable to understand why someone would collectively forge marriage documents to deceive others. He quickly explained, the authenticity of the marriage documents can be easily verified by the head of the Han family. No need to waste time. Han Tianzheng waved his hand impatiently and said, we do not welcome fraudsters. You better leave. Yi Tianqi shrugged helplessly and said, Regardless, I broke the contract earlier. This prescription is for Miss Han. Perhaps it can help with her condition. He stuffed the prescription into the marriage document and handed it to Han Tianzheng. This prescription was actually prepared in advance based on Han Ruoyan's condition. However, Han Tianzheng paid no attention and casually threw the prescription into a box with other marriage documents, coldly saying, Just leave. Before leaving, Yi Tianqi reminded, Miss Han's condition will only worsen. If you want to save her, I suggest administering the medicine as soon as possible. With that, he left. Watching Yi Tianqi leave, Master Gongsun immediately straightened his back, muttering, This young man has no filter. Han Tianzheng asked, Master Gongsun, what should we do next? 
After pondering for a moment, Master Gongsun said, Since young Master Ji has a connection with Miss Han, let's go together and see if my magic can awaken her. Han Tianzheng nodded. All right, let's go together. So, Han Tianzheng, Master Gongsun, and Ji Boxiao arrived at Han Ruiyan's bedroom. A beautiful girl lay on the bed, like a fairy in a dream, she was Han Ruiyan. Master Gongsun immediately started chanting and performing magic, but no matter how hard he tried, even panting, Han Ruiyan remained unconscious, and the bleeding on her skin worsened. Just as Yi Tianqi had said, the situation was deteriorating. Li Shukin anxiously asked, Master Gongsun, what should we do? Master Gongsun was at a loss, and Ji Boxiao seemed helpless. At that moment, Han Tianzheng suddenly remembered something and hurriedly instructed the steward Wang, Quick, bring me that boy's marriage document. When the marriage document was brought, Han Tianzheng saw his father's signature and widened his eyes. He realized that this marriage document was genuine and blamed himself for being careless. Could this prescription also be real? Determination flashed in Han Tianzheng's eyes as he immediately ordered the servant to prepare the medicine according to Yi Tianqi's prescription. Soon after the medicine was brewed, Han Ruiyan took it, and a miracle happened. Her skin stopped bleeding, and she opened her eyes. The onlookers were stunned and amazed. Han Tianzheng was overjoyed and quickly instructed Steward Wang, hurry, bring Yi Tianqi back. Yi Tianqi had not gone far from the Han family's Longying Manor when a black Mercedes suddenly stopped in front of him, and several familiar figures got out of the car, including Xiao Qingsheng. Xiao Nan frowned and said, Sis, I didn't lie to you. This person surnamed Yi really came to the Han family. It seems like he was kicked out because of the failed marriage proposal. It's really quite amusing. Xiao Qingsheng subconsciously bit her lip. Although she was the one who initiated the divorce, seeing Yi Tian's move on so quickly with someone else for marriage made her feel inexplicably uncomfortable. She suppressed the discomfort in her heart and questioned, Yi Tian's, if you feel wrong by the divorce, you could have just been honest about it. Why resort to despicable means for revenge? Yi Tian's was taken aback and said, Revenge? I don't understand what you're talking about. Xiao Qingsheng clenched her fists and bravely confronted him, asking, You have the courage to act, but not the courage to admit it, right? Then why did you hit my brother? Yi Tian's replied, Because he deserved it. Xiao Qingsheng, holding back her anger, continued to press, Did you insult Lord Long? Yi Tian's firmly stated, No. Xiao Qingsheng shook her head with a cold smile, full of disappointment. The situation now was very clear, pretending to be clueless was no longer amusing. If she had some self-blame when she first asked for a divorce, from now on, she would have no guilt at all. So she coldly said, Yi Tianz, this time I'll let it go and won't pursue it anymore. Consider it compensation for the divorce. From now on, we owe each other nothing and have no relationship. Please don't do anything embarrassing again. Yi Tianz was stunned. What was going on? Zhang Huilin sarcastically said, Understand my daughter's words, leave quickly, don't embarrass the Han family, let's save face together. Xiao Nan angrily exclaimed, Just because you ruined our Xiao family's 10 billion order, you ungrateful wretch. Why don't you leave? Who are you to make leave? Just then, a shout came from the distance. A middle-aged man with a square face hurried towards the Han family gate, followed by four black-clad bodyguards. Xiao Qingsheng saw this man and couldn't help but be stunned. Wasn't this the steward of the Han family? It is well known that in Jiangnan city, to see Han Tianzheng, one must pass through the steward's checkpoint. Xiao Qingsheng politely stepped forward and greeted, Steward Wang, I am Xiao Qingsheng, the president of the Xiao group. There are some matters I'd like to discuss with the head of the Han family. Please convey my message. Steward Wang bluntly refused, the head of the house is very busy and not seeing any outsiders for now. Xiao Qingsheng stood awkwardly in place. Xiao Nan tossed her hair and said, Steward Wang, I'm here for the marriage proposal. With my talent and looks, I am definitely worthy of Miss Han. Please show me the way. Steward Wang coldly said, No need. Miss Han has already chosen the marriage partner. What? How is that possible? Xiao Nan's jealousy was written all over her face. Who on earth got lucky and was chosen for the marriage proposal? Steward Wang walked straight to Yi Tian's, bowed, and said, Mr. Yi, our head apologizes for the previous misunderstanding and hopes you will come back to discuss the marriage proposal again. Yi Tian's thought for a moment. Staying here to face those three people would only make him more annoyed. So he nodded and said, Okay. The group left, leaving Xiao Qingcheng's group looking at each other in bewilderment. Zhang Huilin couldn't believe it, did I see it wrong? 
Steward Wong actually showed such respect to that Yi person and even wants him to come back to discuss the marriage proposal. Sis, could it be that he was the successful one in the proposal? Xiao Nan thought of an unbearable fact and couldn't help but feel jealous. Xiao Qingsheng watched the familiar figure walk into the Han family gate, feeling a sharp pain in her heart. The phone rang, it was assistant Sun calling. Just as she answered the phone, a panicked voice came through, Xiao, something bad has happened. What should we do? Xiao Qingsheng furrowed his brow, trying to stay calm, and said slowly, take it easy, tell me slowly. News of the cancellation of Xiao family's participation in the conference spread like wildfire, with rumors in the business circles of Jiangnan City that Tianlong Group was targeting them, leading to all partners pulling out of contracts. The situation had never been so dire before. With each heavy piece of news that came in, Xiao Qingcheng's face turned paler. Zhang Huilin and Xiao Nan heard the same news, their eyes widening in shock. They never expected things to deteriorate to this extent. After hanging up the phone, ding ding. Xiao Qingcheng's phone rang again, this time from his grandfather, Xiao Hongming. After answering, Xiao Qingcheng sighed and said, Ah, Grandpa has already heard about the trouble with the group. He's rushing back from out of town to hold a family meeting and has requested all of us to attend. Xiao Nan asked, Does that surname you have to attend as well? Xiao Qingcheng hesitated for a moment, shook his head, and said, Don't mind him for now. We'll talk to Grandpa when we see him. Don't tell him about my request for a divorce for now. I'm worried he won't be able to accept it. In the living room of the Han family, Yi Tianza, Han Tianzheng, and his wife, and the just recovered Han Ruiyan sat on the sofa. Han Tianzheng had already explained the situation to Han Ruiyan. Han Ruiyan looked at Yi Tianza, thinking that this young man was indeed handsome, but that didn't mean she would accept him. She bluntly said, Dad, I won't marry him. Han Tianzheng said sternly, Nonsense. This marriage was arranged by your grandfather, and he just saved you. If you don't marry him, then who will you marry? Two and a half months ago, when Han Ruiyan's father passed away, he entrusted Han Ruiyan to arrange her engagement with the outstanding young man, who could bring endless blessings to the Han family and must not be missed. From Yi Tianzi's performance in curing his daughter, his methods were extraordinary, and his background must be extraordinary as well. Han Tianzheng was determined not to let go of this son-in-law. Han Ruiyan said discontentedly, Why bother with marriage contracts now? I said I won't marry him. Besides, I've long admired another man. She had always been arrogant, so when did someone become the object of her admiration? Yi Tianza nodded and said, In that case, it's for the best. Actually, I came to dissolve the engagement. Han Ruiyan rolled her eyes, thinking, You actively pursued me and got rejected, so you have to pretend to initiate the breakup just to save your pitiful dignity. The gap between you and the man I admire is too wide. She really hoped to have a chance to see him. Dad, Mom, I'm feeling a bit dizzy. I'll go rest first. Han Ruiyan got up, leaving these words before leaving. Han Tianzheng watched her leave, feeling frustrated but consoled Yi Tianza, Xiao Yi, that's just her personality, don't take it to heart, and don't rush to dissolve the engagement out of impulse. I think you two are a good match. Yi Tianza smiled bitterly and said, I'm not acting on impulse, I'm serious. Han Tianzheng's face darkened. He knew that the situation in Jiangnan City was changing rapidly, and even as the richest man, he had to be cautious. Choosing a son-in-law must consider the help to the Han family. So talents like Yi Tianza, with a deep background, must be retained. Just as he was thinking about how to continue persuading Yi Tianza, his wife Li Shukin's phone received a text message. After reading the message, her face gradually turned cold. Han Tianzheng furrowed his brows, staring at Li Shuchen, and asked in confusion, What happened? Li Shuchen coldly replied, I just had someone check Yi Tianchi's background. Three years ago, he married Xiao Qingcheng, but wasted three years in the Xiao family. This morning, after Xiao Qingcheng asked for a divorce, he immediately came to our Han family. Do you understand what I mean? Han Tianzheng's face darkened, and from Li Shuchen's words, he picked up on two key pieces of information. Firstly, Yi Tianch spent three years in the Xiao family before being divorced, indicating that he didn't have a strong background, otherwise the Xiao family would have seen through him earlier. Secondly, he came to the Han family immediately after the divorce, showing that he was used to living off others, and the divorce was just a tactic. Han Tianzheng glanced at Yi Tianch and said disapprovingly, Young man, our Han family has always been honest, but you chose to deal with us using despicable means, which is inappropriate, isn't it? Yi Tianch furrowed his brows and asked, puzzled, what do you mean? Li Shuchen stood up, disdainfully saying, Ha, you're quite good at pretending, ha. Huh? 
your so-called courtship and divorce are just a way to get our Han family's wealth, right? Reflect on yourself, a useless person kicked out by the Xiao family, dare to dream of marrying my daughter? Dream on. Yi Tianqi's tone turned cold as he said, what did you say? I came to the Han family just for the divorce, nothing to do with money. Don't think so shallowly about others. Li Shuchen gave him a scornful look and sarcastically said, Oh, I've seen too many men with tough talk and soft hearts. Take these three million and get lost, considering you once saved my daughter. Don't come bothering us again in the future. Wang the steward motioned for the guards to escort Yi Tianch out. Yi Tianch stood up, his expression indifferent. The person who had just welcomed him warmly had turned into someone humiliating him in an instant, revealing their true colors. He didn't even look at the bank card, coldly saying, take these three million, you short-sighted people. With that, he left without looking back. Li Shuchen stomped her foot in anger, watching Yi Tianqi's departing figure, filled with rage. Han Tianzheng furrowed his brows and asked, is it too much to do this? Li Shuchen retorted, too much? A useless person rejected even by the Xiao family, do you really intend to let him marry Yunyan and ruin her life? Han Tianzheng shook his head and said, I think if Yi Tianch were truly useless, how could he have prescribed the medicine that cured Yunyan's illness? Just this alone proves he's not an ordinary person. Li Shuchen pursed her lips, saying, maybe he's just lucky, randomly finding a prescription, it has nothing to do with him. Han Tianzheng instructed Li Shuchen, go upstairs and tell our daughter that important guests from the business association will be here tonight, we must find a way to please them, it's crucial. Let her prepare in advance and come with me. Shortly after Li Shuchen went upstairs, Han Tianzheng's phone rang, it was Zhao Hailong calling. He quickly answered the phone and asked, Lord Long, what are your orders? Zhao Hailong smiled and said, I heard that Ling Ai has recovered, congratulations. How's the progress with the courtship? I'm still waiting to attend the wedding banquet. Han Tianzheng was feeling frustrated, almost falling into a trap. He first complained about what happened today, then sneered and said, that guy named Yi Tianz actually said we are like frogs at the bottom of a well before leaving. How ridiculous. Long Lord, why are you silent? Zhao Hailong's attitude suddenly turned cold and decisively said, You do indeed resemble frogs at the bottom of a well, good luck to you. Beep 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 tilde the phone was hung up. What does this mean? Han Tianzheng looked puzzled, subconsciously wanting to call back Zhao Hailong, only to find out he was blocked. I didn't offend him, why is he so angry? Is it related to Yi Tianz? He hurriedly went upstairs to discuss urgent matters with Han Ruiyan. Not far from leaving the Han family, Yi Tianz received a call from Grandpa Xiao. For three years, Yi Tianz regarded Xiao Hongming as his own grandpa, showing utmost filial piety. Xiao Hongming somewhat wearily said to Yi Tianz, Tianz, there's an urgent meeting at home, come back quickly, I want to discuss something with you. Yi Tianz actually didn't want to have any more dealings with the Xiao family but thought that after divorcing Xiao Qingcheng, he probably wouldn't go to the Xiao family anymore. Let this be the last time seeing Grandpa Xiao. So he promised, okay, I'll be back soon. Xiao's villa. At this moment, the management and friends of the Xiao group gathered together, the atmosphere was chaotic. Since Yi Tianz and Xiao Qingcheng got married three years ago, the Xiao family's business has been thriving. However, today, their qualification for bidding on the Chamber of Commerce suddenly got revoked, plunging the entire group into a crisis. This has never happened before. After hanging up the phone, Xiao Hongming furrowed his brows and asked Xiao Nan, Are you sure it was Tianz who insulted Long Lord, leading to his retaliation against the Xiao family? Xiao Nan nodded urgently, Absolutely, my mom and I saw it with our own eyes. Zhang Huilin chimed in, Dad, the evidence is conclusive. Xiao Hongming shook his head and said, Tianz shouldn't be that kind of person, I know his character. Ching Cheng, Grandpa trusts you, tell me what really happened? Xiao Hongming looked at Xiao Qingcheng, as his only son had passed away early, and his grandson Xiao Nan was unreliable, he had always regarded Xiao Qingcheng as the successor to train. I, Xiao Qingcheng hesitated for a moment, a determined light flashing in her eyes, what they said is all true, of course. The Xiao family lost its qualification to participate, as the chairman of the group, I should take responsibility. With these words, many of the Xiao family's descendants expressed their dissatisfaction, Mr. Xiao, this has nothing to do with you. It's all the trouble caused by that waste Yi Tianz, resulting in us losing a pending billion dollar order. Yes, you have been too lenient with that waste, there's no need to take the blame for him. We shouldn't have let him into the Xiao family in the first place, he's useless, you should divorce him and kick him out of the Xiao family with crippled legs. The accusations from the crowd made Xiao Hongming's brow furrow even tighter, his mood becoming heavier. 
Maybe it was a mistake to insist on the marriage between Xiao Qingcheng and Yi Tianz in the first place? Now that things have come to this point, what should we do? Some suggest, Master, the key to solving this problem is to find Yi Tianz and have him apologize to Lord Long on his knees. Maybe if Lord Long is in a good mood, he will spare the Xiao family. Xiao Nan sneered disdainfully and said, that waste Yi Tianz caused such a big mess. If he has the guts to come back, I'll kneel down on the spot. Just then, suddenly, Yi Tianqi calmly replied, my grandfather called me back. He then politely walked up to Xiao Hongming and respectfully greeted, Grandfather, I'm back. However, before he could finish his sentence, everyone present had already begun to harshly condemn him. White-eyed wolf, how dare you show your face here? Do you know what trouble you've caused? Insulting Lord Long, causing the Xiao family to lose the qualification for the Chamber of Commerce, and the Ten Billion Order to go down the drain. What punishment do you deserve? Once the Xiao family secures this order, their status will rise rapidly even surpassing the three major families, and all of this has been ruined by you. Yi Tianqi suddenly realized why Xiao Qingcheng had been so cold towards him before. It turns out he was completely misunderstood. So he explained, I did not insult Zhao Hailong. In fact, the person who did was. But Xiao Nan interrupted him, nonsense. Do you have the right to address Lord Long? I clearly saw you insulting him. Are you going to deny it? Such audacity. Grandfather. I request that you punish Yi Tianqi severely and make him realize his rudeness. Xiao Hongming gave Xiao Nan a stern look and then said to Yi Tianqi, Continue. Yi Tianqi pointed at Zhang Huilin and Xiao Nan, saying, The one who insulted Zhao Hailong does exist, but it's not me, it's them. Xiao Hongming's face darkened as he asked the two, Is this true? Xiao Nan defended, Grandfather, don't listen to his nonsense. How could I dare to insult Lord Long? Zhang Huilin also nodded in agreement. Yi Tianqi is spouting nonsense and deliberately framing us mother and daughter. Dad, you have to investigate this thoroughly. Xiao Hongming furrowed his brows, unable to determine whose words to believe at the moment. Xiao Qingcheng impatiently said to Yi Tianqi, are you done yet? Are you still trying to shift the blame in this situation? Do you think the Xiao family isn't chaotic enough already? Yi Tianqi raised an eyebrow and asked, do you not even trust me? Xiao Qingcheng gritted his teeth and said, it's precisely because of your recklessness that the Xiao family lost the qualification for the Chamber of Commerce, ruining the future of the Xiao family. What else do you want? Do you think the Xiao family hasn't suffered enough? Leave. I don't want to see you again. Xiao Hongming said with a frown, Qingcheng, don't say that. Then he helplessly said to Yi Tianqi, don't worry about it. This matter has dealt a heavy blow to the Xiao family, even I find it hard to accept. Yi Tianqi looked at Xiao Hongming's disappointed expression and sighed. He thought to himself that the old man had treated him with great kindness, and for the sake of the old man, he was willing to help the Xiao family one last time. He said, Grandfather, don't worry. I can help Zhao Hailong restore the Xiao family's bidding chamber of commerce quota. This statement caused a commotion among the crowd. Xiao Nan laughed heartily, hilarious. You think you can restore it just by saying so? Is he your subordinate? What a braggart! Zhang Huilin scolded, You useless person, how dare you embarrass yourself like this? Leave now! Xiao Qingcheng coldly said, Yi Tianqi, put away your self-righteous attitude. Even Xiao Hongling shook his head in disappointment, apparently not commenting on his words. Faced with the questioning of the crowd, Yi Tianqi remained calm and said, wait a moment. Let me make a call, and the result will be revealed. After that, he left the living room and found a quiet place to call Zhao Hailong. In the living room, no one took Yi Tianqi's words seriously. They were still discussing how to solve the issue of the participation quota. Assistant Sun reminded CEO Xiao that Ji Dasha had promised to help contact Dragon Lord before, right? You can ask him about the progress. Xiao Qingcheng shrugged helplessly, saying that he had called several times, but no one answered. Maybe he just didn't want to help and was deliberately avoiding me. Zhang Huilin quickly comforted, saying, How is that possible? Ji Dasha keeps his word, he's not like that useless Yi Tianz. If he said he would help, he will definitely help. Xiao Nan chimed in, Mom is right. Ji Dasha not only can help us win the bid, but also handle the matter of restoring our participation quota easily. Let's just wait for good news. At the same time, in a high-end club, Ji Bo sat on the sofa, enjoying a massage from two scantily clad sexy women. Standing in front of him was a man with bandages on his face, who bore a resemblance to him, his younger brother Ji Boxiao. Ji Boxiao complained with resentment. Brother, 
Everything was going smoothly according to plan. Who knew Yi Tians would show up at a critical moment and mess things up? If it wasn't for him, I would have become Han Jia's son-in-law long ago. Ji Bo snorted. That useless guy can only rely on women to live. If he can't even deal with him, what is there to worry about? Ji Boxiao poured a drink for Ji Bo and said, Brother, don't be angry. After all, Han Jia won't choose him. I still have a chance to marry Han Ruoyan in the future. By the way, how is it going with Xiao Qingcheng? Ji Bo replied indifferently. The outside world is spreading rumors that Tianlong Group wants to suppress the Xiao family. It seems that the Xiao family's predicament is inevitable. Ji Boxiao asked in confusion, Brother, since that's the case, what's the point of continuing to pursue Xiao Qingcheng? Their family no longer has a chance to get that 10 billion order, it doesn't have much value for our family. In fact, these brothers have long divided their roles clearly. The elder brother is responsible for pursuing Xiao Qingcheng, while the younger brother goes to propose to the Han family. Whichever succeeds, it will be a great help to the Ji family. Ji Bo smiled slightly and said, Of course, I know. And about the rumor that Tianlong Group wants to suppress the Xiao family, it was deliberately spread by me. Ji Boxiao asked in confusion, Huh? Shouldn't you help the Xiao family and prove your sincerity to Xiao Qingcheng? Ji Bo sneered, How can I change Dragon Lord's decision? Instead of helping them, it's better to take the opportunity to spread rumors and keep everyone away from the Xiao family. This way, I can forcefully intervene, easily control the Xiao family and Xiao Qingcheng, swallow all their assets, which is a great help to the Ji family. Ji Boxiao gave a thumbs up, Brother, your plan is truly brilliant, I admire you. Ji Bo smiled proudly, glanced at the series of missed calls from Xiao Qingcheng on his phone. Since she is so anxious, it seems the time is right, I will go to the Xiao family now and take advantage of the situation. Ji Bo got up and left. Leaving Ji Boxiao to drink heavily, his face dark and gritted his teeth, Yi surname, we're not done with this, don't let me find you. Outside the Xiao family villa, Yi Tians had just finished talking to Zhao Hailong on the phone, ordering him to restore the Xiao family's participation quota and change the bidding results from being internally decided by the Xiao family to a fair selection process again. Of course, the fact that Zhao Hailong was insulted by Zhang Huilin and Xiao Nan cannot be ignored. Therefore, Yi Tians also gave Zhao Hailong a solution which is to have Zhang Huilin and her son apologize to him. After all, what goes around comes around. As he was about to leave after hanging up the phone, Yi Tianxi's phone rang with an unknown number displayed. Yi Tianqi answered the phone and inquired, Hello, may I ask who is calling? A familiar cold and proud voice came from the other end, I am Han Ruoyan. Can we meet in person? There's something I want to discuss with you. Yi Tianqi was surprised and asked with a hint of doubt, is it something that can't be discussed over the phone? However, Han Ruoyan insisted, it must be said in person. I'll hang up now, and I'll send you the meeting address later. Remember to come. With that, she hung up the phone abruptly, leaving Yi Tianqi frowning and muttering, women nowadays, each one more assertive than the next. Just then, a red Lamborghini pulled up at the entrance of the villa. The door opened, and Ji Bo stepped out, dressed in a flashy outfit. He caught sight of Yi Tianqi, a hint of cunning gleam in his eyes. Ji Bo Duang sneered mockingly, thinking to himself, still have the face to pretend? He believed that Yi Tianzhou would ultimately fail in his proposal, and then he would go back to the Xiao family to make a living. Walking up to Yi Tianzhou, he whispered, you really did me a big favor by insulting Lord Long and putting the Xiao family in a difficult situation, giving me a chance to take advantage of it. Yi Tianzhou frowned and asked, what are you trying to say? Ji Bo Duang licked his lips greedily and said, there's a rumor that the Xiao family has been blacklisted by the Tianlong group. At this point, they can only rely on me. A simple gesture from me and the Xiao family will bow down at my feet. As for Xiao Qingcheng, she will be at my mercy. Yi Tianzhou squinted and said, I think you're the one spreading these rumors, right? Ji Bo Duang laughed, who knows, it's none of your business anyway. Then he arrogantly walked into the villa, thinking about how to deal with the Xiao family. However, when he entered the living room, he found the atmosphere unusually relaxed and cheerful, with no signs of collapse. Zhang Huilin suddenly approached him, excitedly holding his hand and saying, Young Master Ji, thanks to your help, otherwise our Xiao family would have been finished. Ji Bo Duang asked in confusion, Help? Didn't Lord Long personally call to restore the Xiao family's bidding qualifications? Wasn't it all because of your persuasion? Ji Bo Duang was even more puzzled. How could he have persuaded Lord Long? What happened to suddenly reverse the situation? 
although he didn't understand why they mistakenly thought it was his credit, since the Xiao family regained their guild qualifications, it meant that Lord Long had forgiven them and they might even win the bid. So he cleared his throat and pretended to say solemnly, I just had a meal with Lord Long, and casually mentioned a few things, and unexpectedly he agreed. Upon hearing this, everyone present praised him, even Xiao Hongming nodded in agreement. Xiao Qingsheng stepped forward, excitedly saying, Young Master Ji, I am grateful for your kindness. Ji Bo Duang stood with his hands in his pockets, looking fearless. Yi Tianzi couldn't help but chuckle at these words. Zhang Huilin was furious and said, This guy is shameless. What's there to laugh about? Just look at Ji De Shao, effortlessly changing Long Yi's mind. And you, besides causing trouble, you're useless. Yi Tianzi asked, What makes you think it was him who made Zhao Hailong change his mind? Zhang Huilin glared at Yi Tianzi disdainfully and sneered, Without Ji De Shao, would you even have a chance? Yi Tianzi nodded confidently, It's me. Xiao Nan mocked and said, Yi, if you don't brag, you'll die, right? You said a phone call could solve the problem, but you disappeared for half a day. Now that Ji De Shao has solved it, you come out to take credit, how shameless. Assistant Sun echoed, You insulted Long Yi and caused trouble. If it weren't for Ji De Shao's help, you would have been done for long ago. Now you're not even grateful and still trying to take credit, you're really ungrateful. Ji Bo waved his hand gracefully and said, Forget it, I have a broad mind and won't stoop to his level. Xiao Qingsheng earnestly said to Yi Tianzi, I don't expect you to learn Ji De Shao's magnanimity, but at least show gratitude to him, after all, he helped you. Yi Tianzi sneered, Such a petty person is not worth it, if you want to say it, say it yourself. Xiao Qingsheng couldn't help it, Yi Tianzi, how did you become like this? I really don't understand why you turned out this way. Yi Tianzi calmly said, No matter what I become, you've always looked down on me, right? You have already been thoroughly disappointed. Xiao Qingsheng bit her lip, feeling unable to understand Yi Tianzi. Xiao Nan suggested to Xiao Hongming, Grandpa, you see how ungrateful and arrogant Yi is. You should order to break his legs and make him leave the Xiao family to avoid more trouble. The people of the Xiao family present all express their support for this suggestion. Xiao Hongming sighed. For three years, apart from Yi Tianzi, the Xiao family had some dissatisfaction with him, but they were all trivial matters, of little importance. But today was different, Yi Tianzi's actions almost ruined the Xiao family and caused widespread anger. Even after making a mistake, he showed no remorse and insisted on his own version of events. Had his observations over the past three years been wrong? After a moment of hesitation, he asked Xiao Qingcheng, Qingcheng, this is your marriage, Grandpa, respects your choice. Xiao Qingcheng bit her lip, she had asked Grandpa countless times to respect her choice of marriage. Now, Grandpa suddenly gave her this power, but she didn't know how to respond. Zhang Huilin hurriedly urged, Silly girl, what are you daydreaming about? Agree to the divorce quickly. Xiao Nan also echoed, Sis. Quickly cut ties with Yi Tianzi, this is a rare opportunity. Xiao Qingcheng finally flashed a determined light in her eyes, Grandpa, I won't hide it from you. This morning I have already asked Yi Tianzi for a divorce. After the Chamber of Commerce meeting, I will go to the Civil Affairs Bureau to get the divorce certificate. This is my decision. Xiao Hongming sighed, looking at Yi Tianqi with infinite emotion in his heart. However, Yi Tianqi interrupted him without hesitation, showing a firm attitude, saying, Grandfather, you don't need to say any more. With a tone that was both firm and composed, he expressed, I, Yi Tianqi, agree with Xiao Qingcheng's suggestion. Thank you for taking care of me these past three years. Farewell. Subsequently, Yi Tianqi deeply bowed to Xiao Hongming, determined to bid farewell to the Xiao family once and for all. He turned around decisively, not even glancing at anyone else. The Xiao family members present cheered, filled with the joy of victory. Haha, this jinx is finally leaving. Our Xiao family is finally going to rise. He has made a mess of the Xiao family in these three years. Tomorrow. When we secure that 10 billion order and make friends with the big shots behind Dragonlord, let's see who dares to look down on him. However, Xiao Qingcheng, at this moment, watched the crowd's celebration, unable to feel any joy, instead feeling a surge of loss as if he had lost something important. Zhang Huilin cleared her throat and suggested, I believe that the Xiao family's ability to overcome this crisis is largely due to young Master Ji. We should host a banquet to thank him, especially Qingcheng, you should have a few more drinks with him. Everyone agreed. Ji Bo, however, remained calm and composed, saying gracefully, Dragon Lord just treated me to a meal, so I'm not hungry yet. But since you all are so warmly inviting me, I can't refuse. 
Just as he finished speaking, a cold and elegant voice suddenly came from outside the door. Looking young, not more than 30 years old, yet exuding a strong leadership quality. Ji Bo Duo frowned and questioned, Who are you? What evidence do you have to prove that I did not have dinner with Dragon Lord? The woman replied coldly, This afternoon, I was in a meeting with Dragon Lord the whole time and never saw him dining with anyone. Did you time travel here? Suddenly, all eyes were on Ji Bo Duo. He retorted firmly, Don't listen to her nonsense. Just a decent looking girl who can't even find the entrance to Tianlong Group, boasting about having a meeting with Dragon Lord for an afternoon. Who would believe that? Just as he finished speaking, Xiao Qingcheng suddenly stepped forward and respectfully said to the woman, Miss Qian, why are you here? I should have welcomed you from afar. Ji Bo Duo was momentarily stunned and asked, Qingcheng, who is Miss Qian? Xiao Qingcheng introduced to everyone, this is Vice President Qian Chinin of Tianlong Group, also one of the organizers of this Tianlong Business Summit. Ji Bo Duo widened his eyes, puzzled, Qingcheng, are you sure you're not mistaken? How come I've never heard of this person? Xiao Qingcheng shook her head and said, no mistake. Miss Qian only joined last month, I've met her once. Ji Da Xiao, you just went to Tianlong Group to ask Lord Dragon for our participation slot. Didn't you meet Miss Qian? Ah? This? Ji Bo Duo stammered. Qian Chinin coldly said, I have never seen this Ji Da Xiao, let alone. Does someone like him deserve Dragon Lord's help in restoring the Xiao family's participation slot? What a joke. Everyone present was surprised. This matter had nothing to do with Ji Da Xiao. Why did he claim he helped us? Is he deliberately trying to show off in front of us? I never expected him to be like this. Almost deceived by him. Xiao Qingcheng frowned and asked, Ji Da Xiao, what's going on here? Ji Bo Duo, red faced, awkwardly explained, Ah, this. There must be some misunderstanding. I suddenly remembered something else, so I'll take my leave. With that, he hurriedly left the place full of rumors. At this moment, Qian Qinyan took out an invitation letter and said, I came here specifically to deliver the invitation letter for the bidding summit tomorrow evening to the Xiao family. Xiao Hongming quickly stood up, walked up to Qian Qinyan, and politely said, Such a small matter, yet Miss Qian personally delivered it. You're really working hard. As he reached out to take the invitation letter, he found that Qian Qinyan did not hand it to him. What's this? Xiao Hongming was puzzled. The others present also looked at each other. Qian Qinyan smiled lightly and said, Master Xiao, this invitation letter can be given to the Xiao family, but on one condition, the person who insulted him must apologize to him. A simple apology in front of me will do. Apologizing is not a problem, but... Xiao Hongming hesitated, but just now, Yi Tianci has already left our Xiao family. Xiao Qingsheng also immediately said, Miss Qian, if possible, I can apologize to Lord Dragon on his behalf, would that be acceptable to you? Yi Tianci? Qian Qinyan shook her head and said, Not him, I don't know him. Dragon Lord said the one who insulted him was someone who claimed to be Xiao's younger brother and someone who claimed to be your mother. Suddenly, the whole room was shocked. Countless eyes were on Zhang Huilin and Xiao Nan. The two were trembling with fear, as if they were in a dangerous situation. Oh no, they've been exposed. Xiao Hongming's face darkened, sternly demanding an explanation from Xiao Nan. Xiao Nan, however, tried to defend himself claiming that they did not insult the Dragon Lord. Xiao Hongming slapped Xiao Nan without hesitation. Nonsense. The Dragon Lord is noble, how could he wrongly accuse you? Today you must truthfully explain what happened, no omissions, if you hide anything, don't blame me for punishing you. Xiao Nan, pale with fear, begged for mercy, Grandpa. Please, I'll tell you. Everything. So, Xiao Nan described without reservation the humiliation of Yi Tianqi and the insults to Zhao Hailong at the Yi family cemetery, as well as framing Yi Tianqi upon their return. After finishing, Zhang Huilin and Xiao Nan immediately knelt down to repent, apologized to the Dragon Lord, even slapping themselves in the face loudly. At this moment, Xiao Qingcheng was trembling with anger. It turned out that Yi Tianqi had hit his brother because his brother and mother unreasonably demanded money, even kicking his grandfather's tombstone on his family's memorial day. Such behavior of bullying, anyone would retaliate. Coupled with his mother distorting the truth and framing others, causing him to repeatedly believe their lies, wrongly suspecting Yi Tianqi. Full of regret in his heart. Xiao Hongming was so angry that he couldn't control himself. You two have lost your conscience, misled me into wrongly accusing Tianqi. I'm sorry to his grandfather, I'm sorry to the Yi family. Saying that, Xiao Hongming suddenly felt a sharp pain in his chest. Puff. A mouthful of blood gushed out. He passed out directly. 
Grandpa! Patriarch! Suddenly, everyone panicked, the Shao family was in chaos. Dot dot dot. In the evening, at the most luxurious Tianlong restaurant in Jiangnan City. A beautiful woman in a snow-white dress sat on the first floor by the window, as if waiting for something. The surrounding guests were discussing, isn't that the daughter of the richest man, Han Ruiyan? I heard that her terminal illness has actually been cured? Today the Han family is hosting a marriage proposal, she came after being cured, truly blessed. Look, someone is here. At this moment, a young man dressed plainly and handsomely sat opposite Han Ruiyan. What's so important that you have to see me in person? Yi Tianqi asked frankly, because this lady insisted on talking face to face, and she was one of his master's designated fiancés, he was reluctant to come. Han Ruiyan took out two gold bank cards from her Hermes bag and placed them on the table. Each of these cards has ten million, please take them. Yi Tianqi took a sip of tea and asked, what does this mean? Han Ruiyan raised her head proudly, coldly and arrogantly said, one million is your reward for saving me. The other million is a hope that you will not play tricks on me in the future, do not bother me again. Yi Tianqi almost spit out his tea. Miss Han, are you mistaken? We've only met once, how can you say I'm playing tricks on you and bothering you? Mistaken? He he. Han Ruiyan seemed to see through everything. From the moment Yi Tianqi proposed to break off the engagement, Han Ruiyan sensed the trap he had deliberately set up, trying to attract the attention of her parents. The Dragon Lord's call misled her father's opinion of Yi Tianqi ultimately leading her father to once again request her to talk to Yi Tianqi. Han Ruiyan knew well that Yi Tianqi's strategy was clever, but deep down, she was aware that none of this could escape her notice. Even though Yi Tianqi suggested taking three million and leaving, as the daughter of the wealthiest family in Jiangnan, she would never accept someone else's discarded goods. Yi Tianqi's actions almost made Han Ruiyan burst out laughing. She couldn't understand why someone who seemed so ordinary was so confident. In Yi Tianqi's eyes, what did the daughter of the wealthiest family in Jiangnan City amount to? Yi Tianqi calmly responded, I'm just stating the facts. If Miss Han doesn't like to hear it, she can choose not to listen. Han Ruiyan was so angry that she was on the verge of exploding. Ji Baxiao, the second young master of the Ji family, whispered to Han Ruiyan, Ruiyan, you've just recovered from illness, you don't need to bother with this kind of person, I'll speak for you. Han Ruiyan glanced at Ji Baxiao and ignored him. This guy had pursued her multiple times but never gave up. Ji Baxiao didn't feel embarrassed at all, squinting his eyes and threatening Yi Tianqi. He threatened, you're putting me in a difficult position. Kneel down immediately and apologize to Ruiyan, then crawl out like a dog, or else. Yi Tianqi raised an eyebrow and asked, or else what? Ji Baxiao arrogantly said, or else, I'll show you the terrifying side of the Ji family in Jiangnan. Ever since his plan to propose to the Han family was ruined, he held a grudge against Yi Tianqi and wouldn't let this opportunity pass. Han Ruiyan impatiently said, Ji Baxiao, I have nothing to do with you, leave. Ji Baxiao, in a submissive tone, said, Ruiyan, anyone who offends you offends me, rest assured, I will handle it properly. With that, he suddenly slammed the table heavily. Angered, he said, didn't you hear me? Are you the useless son-in-law kicked out by the Xiao family, not even considering our Ji family? His actions attracted the attention of many customers. Yi Tianqi smiled and said, What's worth my attention in the Ji family? Your dad, Ji Wuli, your brother, Ji Boduan, or you, Ji Boxia. Look at the names of you three brothers, one powerless, one short, one small, aren't you describing yourselves? This remark made many customers chuckle, and even a blush appeared on Han Ruiyan's cheeks. She glared fiercely at Yi Tianqi. This guy dared to say such things in front of everyone, he was asking for trouble. Ji Baxiao, his face flushed with anger, roared and threw a punch directly at Yi Tianqi's face. He believed that with the Taekwondo he had practiced for two and a half years, he could at least break Yi Tianqi's nose. However, the next moment, everything went black before him, and he was sent flying, crashing to the ground in agony. Some timid customers screamed in fear, even Han Ruiyan widened her eyes, not knowing what had just happened. Then. The restaurant manager and a group of security guards rushed over. Sun Jun asked, who dares to cause trouble in Tianlong restaurant? The customers dared not speak up. It was well known that Tianlong restaurant was owned by the Tianlong group and had a powerful background. In Jiangnan city, no one dared to cause trouble here. Ji Baxiao struggled to stand up, grimacing in pain. Sun Jun saw Ji Baxiao and a touch of flattery appeared on his face as he asked, young master Ji, what happened? Who has upset you? 
Ji Boxiao pointed at Yi Tianza and angrily said, Manager son, it was him who hit me. This guy deliberately caused trouble at the Dragon Restaurant, we can't let him get away with it. Sun Jun and the security guards behind him immediately focused their attention on Yi Tianza. Sun Jun adopted a haughty attitude and said, Kid, do you know what consequences you'll face for causing trouble and hitting someone at the Dragon Restaurant? Yi Tianza helplessly replied, He struck first, I just fought back. Any problem with that? Ji Boxiao rebuked loudly, Nonsense. It was clearly you who started the trouble. Don't casually defame others. Then he turned to Sun Jun and said, Manager Sun, as long as you help me save face, I will repay you tenfold. The cause of the conflict was not important to Sun Jun, he only cared about Ji Boxiao's promise. Ji Boxiao squinted his eyes and coldly said, I want you to disable him then throw him out of the restaurant, and hang a sign at the entrance saying, Yi Tianza and dogs are not allowed. Let him lose face, how about that? This statement sent chills down the customer's spines. Ji Boxiao indeed believed in tit for tat, his methods were too ruthless. They sympathized with Yi Tianza but were powerless to help, as it was a self-inflicted situation. Sun Jun smiled faintly and said, this little matter, I'll handle it. Then he signaled the security guards behind him to get ready to take action. Suddenly, Han Ruiyan stood up and intervened, saying, Wait. Sun Jun was puzzled and asked, Miss Han, what's on your mind? Ignoring him, Han Ruiyan coldly said to Yi Tianza, As long as you apologize for insulting me just now and ask for my help, considering our engagement, I can help you get through this crisis. Yi Tianza straightforwardly refused, no need. Han Ruiyan was taken aback, frowned, and said, Facing danger, you still act high and mighty here? I've told you, I won't be fooled by you. Yi Tianza helplessly replied, Miss Han, I suggest you seek treatment from a psychologist. Excessive self-love is a pathological condition that needs treatment. Han Ruiyan was so angry that she couldn't speak, her chest heaving with rage, gritted her teeth and said, You reap what you sow, you won't lie. Ji Boxiao added fuel to the fire on the side, saying, Yunyun, I've told you earlier, this waste doesn't understand, don't bother with him. Then he told Sun Jun, Hurry, let your people take action. Sun Jun waved his hand to order his subordinates to act. However, Yi Tianza suddenly spoke up, Manager Sun, I advise you to stop. Otherwise, the gain is not worth the loss, it's not worth it. Sun Jun was almost amused. Kid, make me lose my job? Who do you think you are? Are you the owner of our restaurant? Or the chairman of the higher level dragon group, Lord Law? Yi Tianza with his hands in his pockets, calmly said, Although I'm not the owner of your restaurant, I can have Zhao Hailong fire you. His words left everyone present dumbfounded, as if they were watching a fool. How could you, with such a noble identity as Lord Long, be able to command him? Are you going to self-proclaim yourself as the Earth's ruler, having everyone listen to you? Sun Jun couldn't help but sarcastically say, I can't wait to see how you can make Lord Long listen to you. If you can really fire manager Sun, I'll call you dad on the spot. Ji Boxiao mocked even more. If you can fire manager son, I'll call you dad to your face. Han Ruiyan sneered and thought to herself, she originally thought Yi Tianza was deliberately showing off, trying to get her attention, but she didn't expect his intentions. The current situation is simply unbelievable. Can you believe that grandpa actually agreed to their engagement at first? Luckily, it was eventually called off. As for Yi Tianz, he paid no attention to the mockery around him and dialed Zhao Hailong's phone directly. Standing at the Tianlong restaurant, he gave Zhao Hailong a brief time limit, demanding the restaurant owner to immediately fire the manager named Sun Jun. A cold voice came from the other end of the phone, followed by the call being hung up. This action attracted the attention and discussions of the surrounding customers, who joined in the mockery. This guy really loves to put on airs. Saying something like, give you one minute to come over, thinking he's in a movie? He's just like a clown. Sun Jun looked at his watch, smirking, kid, there are 15 seconds left on the countdown. You'll regret it when time's up. Before he could finish, a middle-aged man in a gray suit hurriedly came down from upstairs and quickly approached Yi Tianz. He respectfully said, Mr. Yi, I'm sorry for being late, I'm so sorry. I will dismiss Sun Jun right away. The protagonist of this story is Chen Feng, the owner of the Tianlong restaurant. He was called by a phone call, which surprised him greatly. Sun Jun tried to explain nervously, but Chen Feng interrupted him, saying, Damn it. I don't want to hear your explanation. Settle the wages with the finance department immediately and then get lost. Sun Jun was scared and trembling, and could only leave dejectedly. Before leaving, 
he glared at Ji Boxiao fiercely, feeling that it was all his fault. Ji Boxiao, on the other hand, looked confused, not understanding what had happened. Yi Tianza coldly asked Ji Boxiao, didn't you say just now that if I fired Sun Jun, you would kneel down and call me dad? Come on. Ji Boxiao's eyes twitched slightly, and he awkwardly said, brother Yi, you misunderstood, I was just joking. Yi Tianza narrowed his eyes and said, do you think I'm joking? Either kneel down and call me dad today, or have Chen General's men break your legs and throw you out, hanging a sign outside, treating you like a dog. You choose. Ji Boxiao said somewhat bitterly, Brother Yi, can you reconsider? This is too. Yi Tianza coldly said, since you don't want to choose, I'll help you choose. Break your legs and throw you out. No, no, no. I've made my choice. Ji Boxiao clenched his fists, gritted his teeth. Then he knelt down with a thud, reluctantly saying, Dad. Yi Tianza raised an eyebrow and said, Did your voice stay at home? Speak louder. Ji Boshao's mouth twitched, and he reluctantly said in a loud voice, Dad. 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 Yi Tianza clapped his hands, laughing, Well done, my good eldest son. Remember to learn to bow your head in the future, or you will suffer a lot. Now, get lost. Ji Boxiao stood up dared not to stay any longer, and hurried away. He was so nervous that he even stumbled when he walked out. The surrounding customers couldn't stop laughing. They all knew that Ji Boxia was a domineering person in Jiangnan City, but they never expected him to suffer such a big loss today, which was really satisfying to watch. Chen Feng respectfully asked Yi Tianza, Mr. Yi, do you have any other instructions? In fact, he knew nothing about the man in front of him, but he had just received a call from Zhao Hailong, giving him an order he must unconditionally obey Mr. Yi's arrangements. Yi Tianza shook his head and said, No, thank you. Chen Feng quickly said, How can this be? It's all because of my poor management of subordinates. Please accept this token of appreciation. With that, he gave a signal to his assistant behind him. The assistant immediately took out a wooden box from the office and handed it over, opening it. The surrounding customers were amazed to see that it was the hundred-year-old snow ginseng that Chen Feng bought from Jiangnan Medicine King a few days ago. It was actually given to him. It is said that snow ginseng can cure all diseases and is invaluable. Who exactly is this man? How can he make Chen Feng value him so much? Meanwhile, Han Ruoyan, who was standing aside, was already stunned. She couldn't understand how a waste son-in-law driven out of the Xiao family could receive such treatment. Just then, the phone rang. Han Ruoyan instinctively answered the call, and a voice of a woman on the other end sounded anxious, Yi Tianza, it's me, Xiao Qingcheng. I want to apologize to you first, actually, I, Han Ruoyan replied, I'm not Yi Tianza, I'm Han Ruoyan. The voice on the other end sounded surprised after hearing this. After a moment of silence, she couldn't help but ask, where is Yi Tianza? Please have him answer the phone. At that moment, Yi Tianza turned around, looking puzzled, and asked, why do you have my phone? Han Ruoyan suddenly realized she had grabbed the wrong phone in her panic. She retorted, I didn't do it on purpose. I should be asking you, why is your phone exactly the same as mine, even the ringtone hasn't changed. Yi Tianza, not wanting to argue with her, simply took back his phone and asked, what's the matter? I want to tell you. Sha Qingcheng hesitated for a moment, then suddenly changed her mind and said, Grandpa suddenly fell ill and was hospitalized at the first hospital. I want to see you. Will you come? Yi Tianza anxiously asked, Grandpa is sick? What happened? But the other end of the line had already gone silent with a beep. After some thought, he said to Chen Feng, Mr. Chen, I'll temporarily accept this hundred-year snow ginseng. I won't take your things for nothing. Chen Feng respectfully smiled and said, It's what I should do. Then he handed the hundred-year snow ginseng to Yi Tianza. Yi Tianza, a little impatient with Han Ruoyan, said, Please don't contact me again in the future. I can't stand it. With that, he turned and left. Han Ruoyan stomped her foot in frustration and said heatedly, Yi Tianza, don't think you can attract me with tricks. I already have someone in my heart. He's much better than you. At tomorrow night's bidding conference, I'll have him in my hands, and you'll regret it. Just then, Han Ruoyan's phone rang, it was her father Han Tianzheng calling. Han Ruoyan answered his questions impatiently, then left the Tianlong Hotel angrily. Meanwhile, on the second floor private room, a woman witnessed everything that happened on the first floor. She was wearing a silver Changsam, voluptuous and beautiful, with flaming red lips exuding a seductive charm that captured people's hearts. 
A tall maid in black leather walked up to her and asked, Miss, what are you looking at? Nothing. Just saw an interesting person earlier, the Chungsam lady replied calmly. This time in Jiangnan City, besides attending the bidding conference tomorrow night and expanding the wrong family's influence in Jiangnan City, I also need clues about that man. You need to pay more attention. The maid whispered, Miss, are you worth doing this for a man you've never met? Besides, the engagement on you. The Chungsam lady firmly stated, I have never seen who the other half of the engagement is, I don't even know his name, and I don't want to know. I, Rong Meiyan, will not accept that engagement. At 8 o'clock in the evening, Jiangnan City First Hospital. Yi Tianza arrived at the door of the ward and saw many members of the Xiao family. Their expressions immediately turned cold when they saw Yi Tianza. To them, despite the previous clarification of the relationship between the Xiao family and Yi Tianza, he was still considered a waste. Zhang Huilin and Xiao Nan were also there, with red and swollen cheeks and obvious palm prints still visible. Marks left from kneeling and apologizing at home earlier, still faintly painful. Zhang Huilin unfriendly asked, What are you here for? Yi Tianza honestly replied, Qingcheng called and said Grandpa suddenly fell ill, so I came to see. Xiao Nan angrily reprimanded, What does my grandfather's illness have to do with you, an outsider? Useless thing, just leave. He was filled with anger and resentment feeling that he and his mother were being insulted and punished by someone behind the scenes, definitely Yi Tian's playing tricks, although he didn't know how. Other members of the Xiao family also complained, believing that those who came to visit the family head were actually motivated by hatred, deliberately coming to mock them. They felt no need for this kind of fake concern, telling them to go as far away as possible, not to think that just because the Xiao family is about to have a big order, they can come back seeking help, which is impossible. These remarks made Yi Tian's frown, feeling disappointed and helpless. He thought he came with good intentions, but was treated like a fool. Since they didn't need his visit, he might as well leave. Just as he turned to leave, he heard a voice calling out, Wait! She had originally intended to apologize to Yi Tianza, but when she found out that he was actually with Han Ruoyan, she felt inexplicably uncomfortable and found it difficult to speak. Yi Tianza did not understand her thoughts and directly asked, How is Grandpa? Xiao Qingcheng restrained her emotions and calmly replied, the doctor said he had a sudden rush of blood to the heart, but he's out of danger now. He just lay down to rest and can't be disturbed. Yi Tianza nodded and said, All right, then I won't go in. Since the old man was out of danger, he felt there was no need to stay here any longer, so he decided to leave and handed over a box of century-old snow ginseng. But before Xiao Qingcheng could take the wooden box, Zhang Huilin suddenly rushed forward, snatched it, and opened it to check. Upon seeing what was inside, she disdainfully pushed the wooden box back into Yi Tianzi's hands and sarcastically said, Do you take me for a fool? How dare you give such cultivated ginseng as a gift? It's simply worthless. Yi Tianzi explained, This is century-old snow ginseng, with the ability to cure many illnesses. It's a very precious medicinal herb. Zhang Huilin scornfully retorted, Do you think I'm an idiot? Century-old snow ginseng? I've never heard of it. This is obviously a fake and inferior ginseng. Even if it's sold for 9.9 .9 RMB on a certain online platform, I'd still find it too expensive. Xiao Nan also joined in the mockery, you can blow a fake ginseng into a century-old snow ginseng that cures all diseases. If it were a white radish, I'm afraid you could blow it into a supreme radish that grants immortality after eating it, right? The Xia family members present burst into laughter upon hearing this. Xiao Qingcheng could only helplessly shake her head. She didn't understand why Yi Tianza always acted impractically and insisted on doing things that were illusory. Just then, a young man in a suit appeared before everyone, he was Ji Bo Duan. He politely greeted Xiao Qingcheng, Qingcheng, I heard that the head of the Xiao family is sick, so I came to take a look. Xiao Qingcheng responded displeased ly, my grandfather's affairs don't concern you. Ji Bo Duan, however, did not feel embarrassed. He knew that Xiao Qingcheng was angry because he had lied to Zhao Hailong for help. He explained, Qingcheng, I did exaggerate the situation about the Chamber of Commerce quota, but the truth is not what you think. Without my efforts, Lord Long would not have changed his mind. Xiao Qingcheng frowned and asked, What do you mean? Ji Bo Duan earnestly said, To tell you the truth, all of this is thanks to my dad. I kept asking my dad to intervene, and it was only after he called and communicated with Lord Long that we succeeded. I should have told the truth, but I was impulsive at the time and attributed the credit to myself. Now I deeply regret it. The Sha family members suddenly understood. They had been discussing the reasons for Zhao Hailong's change of heart not long ago, but couldn't figure it out. Now, 
After hearing Ji Bodwan's explanation, everything became clear. At that moment, Yi Tianzi couldn't help but burst into laughter. At his age, he had never seen such shameless person. Ji Bodwan's face darkened, and he questioned, What are you laughing at? Did I say something wrong? Yi Tianzi replied indifferently, You know in your heart whether you were wrong or not. I remind you, using lies to cover up another lie will only lead to using more lies to make up for it in the end. Ji Bo Duan was at a loss for words, unable to refute Yi Tianzi's retort. Zhang Huilin's attitude towards Yi Tianqi was extremely infuriated, she arrogantly said, You trash. Who do you think you are to speak here? If it wasn't for the intervention of young master Ji's father, what are you? Then, she turned to Ji Bo Duan and gently advised, Young master Ji, you don't need to bother with such a person, auntie believes in you. Although you lied before, it can be understood, after all, it was for the greater good. Ji Bodwan's face lit up after hearing this, thinking to himself that this old lady really knows how to support him. So he took the opportunity to say, Auntie is right, I will correct similar mistakes in the future. By the way, this is the premium Lingzi I purchased with a hefty sum to give to Master Xiao, it's definitely a top quality tonic. With that, he opened the gift box, revealing a red Lingzi emitting a strong medicinal fragrance. Zhang Huilin's eyes sparkled with excitement, exclaiming, Young Master Ji, this red Lingzi must be priceless, right? Ji Bo Duan modestly replied, It's just over a million, nothing significant. The people of the Xiao family were amazed and impressed, a gift worth over a million was indeed generous. In comparison, the ginseng sent by Yi Tianqi was simply discounted. Ji Bo Duan sarcastically said to Yi Tianqi, Remember, when giving gifts, learn from my style, only give top quality items, not some worthless junk. Yi Tianqi lightly responded, What's there to learn from a fake Lingzi? And it's poisonous! This statement immediately quieted the room, everyone's gaze turned to Ji Bo Duan. Ji Bo Duan's face immediately darkened, angrily saying, Nonsense. This red Lingzi was purchased by my friend, how could it be fake? You're defaming me, I demand an apology. Zhang Huilin disdainfully said, Someone who relies on men for a living knows nothing about Lingzi. Shut your mouth. The Xiao family members blamed Yi Tianqi one after another, almost being deceived by him. They believed that young Master Ji's identity was noble, how could he possibly give fake goods? They thought Yi Tianqi was deliberately defaming young Master Ji. Xiao Qingsheng felt extremely tired, with a gloomy expression, saying, Yi Tianqi, you shouldn't accuse young Master Ji, you should apologize. Perhaps I would have listened to her before, but not anymore. Yi Tianqi walked straight to the Red Lingzi without hesitation and broke it open. Ji Bo Duan loudly accused, You fool! This red lingzi is worth millions, can you afford to compensate for it? Yi Tianqi remained indifferent, pointing to the inside of the lingzi, saying, The true roots of red lingzi should be red, but this one is purple black. Real lingzi has a slight bitterness, acting as medicine and bitterness, but this one is fragrant. From the texture, it's not even close to lingzi, it's not even lingzi, it's the deadly poisonous red giant mushroom, extremely toxic, taking it could be life threatening, don't believe me, check online. A relative of the Xiao family who didn't believe said, then let's check. He was shocked to find out that indeed it was not red lingzi, but the poisonous red giant mushroom. The crowd looked at each other in shock, Zhang Huilin and Xiao Nan's mouths were wide open in disbelief at the scene unfolding before them. They had initially planned to mock Yi Tianqi, but unexpectedly faced a strong counterattack, leaving them feeling extremely embarrassed. Xiao Qingsheng's face flushed with anger. Yi Tianqi placed the poisonous red giant mushroom in front of Ji Bo Duan and coldly questioned, Are you deliberately trying to harm Grandpa? Do you realize that such behavior will be severely punished? Ji Bo Duan stammered, I, I didn't mean to, it must have been my friend who bought the medicine, I'm telling the truth. Yi Tianqi responded indifferently, The truth can only be revealed by reporting to the authorities. Ji Bo Duan turned pale. At this moment, Zhang Huilin stepped forward to speak up for Ji Bo Duan, saying, Ji De Xiao has already explained, why do you keep pestering him? Even if he sent the wrong medicinal materials, at least he put effort and money into it. It's much better than sending a pile of worthless fakes, don't you think? Xiao Nan also angrily rebuked, I think you, the fake, are the real troublemaker, definitely harboring evil intentions, trying to harm grandpa. I will never let you succeed. With that, he suddenly grabbed a hundred-year-old snow ginseng, viciously threw it on the ground, then raised his foot and stomped on it several times. Yi Tianqi stared angrily at Xiao Qingcheng, his voice filled with anger and disappointment. Do you even know what you've done? Xiao Nan just stepped on your fake ginseng and stopped you from harming my grandfather. Do you still think it doesn't matter? 
Xiao Qingsheng frowned, trying to explain. Xiao Nan did go too far, but it was just a fake ginseng that got stepped on. There's no need to be so worked up. Why are you so angry? Yi Tianqi paused for a moment after hearing this, then sighed and shook his head in disappointment, saying, Well, I hope you won't regret it. With that, he turned and left without another word. Zhang Huilin disdainfully looked at the broken ginseng on the ground, cursing under her breath, useless thing, making a big fuss over nothing. What's there to regret? Just then, the hospital director Wu Xingye walked over and told them that although the head of the Xiao family was out of danger, he still needed precious medicine to recuperate. Xiao Qingsheng quickly asked, Director Wu, do you know what precious medicine is needed? Please tell us. Wu Xingye said, I heard that someone recently auctioned off a hundred-year-old snow ginseng from Zhangnan Medicine King. If the head of the Xiao family can take it, not only can it cure the illness, but it can also prolong life. But I'm not sure who it was auctioned to. I can help you find out. Xiao Qingsheng shuddered at the name of the hundred-year-old snow ginseng, as if recalling something terrible. She pointed to the trampled ginseng on the ground and asked, Director Wu, is this the hundred-year-old snow ginseng you mentioned? Wu Xingye bent down to examine the shattered ginseng, his eyes widening suddenly. This is indeed the hundred-year-old snow ginseng. It's in excellent condition. How did it end up like this? Where did you get it from? Xiao Qingsheng awkwardly explained the situation to Wu Xingye. Wu Xingye was shaking with anger. This hundred-year-old snow ginseng is worth at least five million, extremely precious, and even I rarely see it. You've wasted it like this? It's a real shame. The Xiao family felt regretful and heartbroken, never expecting that what Yu Tianqi said was true, that the valuable ginseng worth five million was destroyed like this. Ji Bo's face was burning with pain, and Xiao Qingsheng clenched her lips, feeling a sharp pain in her heart. She had misunderstood Yi Tianqi again. She angrily slapped Xiao Nan and blamed, It's all because you stepped on the hundred-year-old snow ginseng. What do we do now? Other members of the Xiao family also blamed Xiao Nan, with continuous complaints. Xiao Nan remained silent, secretly blaming Yi Tianqi for not explaining earlier, leading to his current embarrassment. The Xiao family members began discussing how Yi Tianqi got the hundred-year-old snow ginseng. Zhang Huilin gritted her teeth and said, He must have stolen it. This kid has always been sneaky. But Xiao Qingcheng didn't believe this speculation. The hundred-year-old snow ginseng is so precious, how could it be easily stolen? She believed that someone must have given it to Yi Tianqi, but she couldn't figure out who. At ten o'clock in the evening, at the Purple Gold Celestial Palace. This is the most luxurious villa area in Jiangnan City, located on the top of Purple Gold Mountain. The number one villa at the very top of the mountain is priced at a staggering ten billion. At this moment, Yi Tianqi stood at the entrance of this villa, entered the password, pushed open the door, and swaggered in. Inside the villa, the decoration is luxurious and grand, like a palace. He secretly rejoiced in his heart, this kid's lair is not bad. Considering he gave me this villa, I'll go easy on him for a few years. Yi Tianqi nodded in satisfaction. In fact, the original owner of this villa was the Jiangnan war god, Lin Feng. With his outstanding martial arts skills, he became the strongest in Jiangnan City in just a few years, honored with the title of War God, and admired by many. However, three and a half years ago, full of confidence, he went alone to challenge masters on a solitary island prison called the Fallen City. Few knew that it was actually a prison for the world's most heinous criminals. Among these criminals were the biggest terrorist leader of island, a top assassin who had assassinated an emperor, and a multi-trillionaire sentenced to heavy imprisonment. Yi Tianqi's master was the warden of the prison, revered by the inmates as the old master, while Yi Tianqi was the young master, jointly controlling the life and death of the prison. The once arrogant tough guys could only kneel and bow before them, submitting to their authority. Since his master went on a journey five years ago, Yi Tianqi has become the supreme ruler of the fallen city. In order to avoid torture, the inmates flatter Yi Tianqi, offering money, power, connections, and everything they have. Three and a half years ago, Jiangnan war god Lin Feng entered the fallen city, claiming to eliminate all the masters, only to be slapped to the ground by Yi Tianqi. Due to Lin Feng's destruction of the prison gate, Yi Tianqi punished him with ten years of imprisonment in the fallen city and cleaning the toilets. Since then, Lin Feng seemed to have disappeared without a trace, with no news. Three years ago, when Yi Tianqi left the fallen city, his emotions were indescribable. In an effort to improve their relationship, Lin Feng proactively transferred the villa to Yi Tianz, hoping to reduce some entanglements. However, upon returning to Jiangnan City, 
Yi Tianz chose to marry Xiao Qingsheng and live in the Xiao family's residence, making this villa his first visit. Yi Tianz leisurely leaned back on the sofa, taking out a stack of marriage certificates from his bag and flipping through them one by one. Today he returned one, leaving eight more to go. The other eight brides are not in Jiangnan city, so he needs to visit them one by one. The closest one to him is Rong Meiyin from the Rong family in the provincial capital. It is said that the Rong family is one of the four major families in the provincial capital, with more power than the three major families in Jiangnan city. After finishing his current affairs, he decided to visit the Rong family first. Yi Tianz closed the marriage certificate and put it back in his bag. Just as he was about to take a bath, the doorbell of the villa suddenly rang. Yi Tianqi frowned slightly, puzzled as to why Lin Feng had disappeared for three and a half years, yet a woman was still looking for him. Could she be trouble caused by Lin Feng? It must be said that the sexy aura she exuded seemed to be the type Lin Feng pursued. However, Yi Tianqi decided it was best not to get too involved with this kind of woman, pretending not to have seen her. He went straight to mute the doorbell, turned and walked towards the bathroom, intending to rest early. After all, there were matters of the Chamber of Commerce bidding waiting for him tomorrow. Unaware, Rong Mian persistently said, I am Rong Mian from the Rong family in the provincial capital. I admire your heroic deeds. Since you suddenly disappeared three and a half years ago, I have been searching for news of you. Now that I see you have returned, I am very happy. Can I see you? However, several minutes passed without any response. So, Rong Mian turned and left, walking to the gate of the villa area on the mountainside. A slender maid was standing there waiting. She looked at the joy on Rong Mian's face and curiously asked, Miss, haven't you visited the villa of the Southern War God several times before? Why are you so happy today? Rong Mian smiled and replied, Don't you know? The lights are on at the villa of the Southern War God today, what does that mean? He's back after disappearing for three and a half years. The maid asked excitedly, Really? That legendary figure, the Southern War God, whom the girls all idolize. Rong Mian nodded and added, but unfortunately, he didn't come out to see me. But I understand, after all, he rarely shows himself in the past, and even if he does, he wears a mask. No one has seen his true face. Suddenly, she thought of something and ordered, immediately buy a villa in the Zijin Villa area, the closer to the villa of the Southern War God, the better. The maid replied, yes. Rong Mian turned around, her eyes drifting towards the villa at the top of the villa area. She thought, near the water, one gets the moon first. If she could get the help of the southern war god, the development of the Rong family in Jiangnan city would be greatly enhanced. If she could further her relationship with him, she would have a reason to refuse the arranged marriage by the family and not marry the fiancé whose name she didn't even know. However, she did not know that the current owner living in that villa was no longer the southern war god, but precisely the fiancé she didn't want to marry. The next evening, at the entrance of Cloud Summit Hotel, Luxury cars were constantly arriving, and dignitaries from all walks of life gathered here, all for tonight's bidding chamber of commerce. Yi Tianqi had just arrived here from the Zijin Heavenly Palace No. 1 Villa. A red Maserati stopped in front of him, and a woman in a red dress, tall, with delicate features, exuding a unique cold and glamorous temperament, got out of the car, she was Han Ruyin. Originally, she should have come with her father Han Tianzheng tonight, but the family company had urgent matters for Han Tianzheng to handle, so only Han Ruyin was allowed to come. Han Ruoyan stood directly in front of Yi Tianqi and smiled, what a coincidence, we meet here. Are you also here for the bidding chamber of commerce? Yi Tianqi frowned, unwilling to deal with this self-centered young lady. He responded directly, please move aside. However, Han Ruoyan was undeterred. She said, tell me one thing, and I'll step aside. Yi Tianqi bluntly replied, no comment. This infuriated Han Ruoyan. She could never figure out why the useless son-in-law kicked out by the Xiao family would listen to Chen Feng's orders to dismiss Sun Jun. Could it be that he really knows Lord Long? If so, does he also know the important figure behind Lord Long? If the truth is so, maybe she can ask him about the preferences of that important person. This way, she can be prepared in advance. So, when she happened to run into Yi Tianzi today, she approached him to inquire. Unexpectedly, he remained silent. This guy really knows how to play with the thoughts of capture to the extreme. As she pondered on how to lure Yi Tianza into revealing the truth, two women approached them. One of them was particularly eye-catching, dressed in a white body hugging skirt, with a pair of long black silk legs, exuding a noble aura. It was Xiao Qingcheng accompanied by assistant son. Yi Tianza, actually, last night I, 
Xiao Qingcheng was about to explain the misunderstanding at the hospital last night when she suddenly noticed the beautiful woman in a red long dress standing next to him. In terms of looks, figure, and temperament, she was no less than herself. Especially her figure, it seemed a bit plumper than her own 36D. Yi Tianzi looked at Xiao Qingcheng, a complex expression flashed in his eyes, and calmly asked, What's the matter, Xiao? Xiao Qingcheng shook her head, but her gaze unconsciously drifted towards the woman beside him. Who is she? And why is she appearing with Yi Tianzi? At this moment, Han Ruoyan also noticed Xiao Qingcheng, for some reason, she sensed a hint of hostility in the other's eyes. With a hint of cunning in her eyes, she reached out her hand to Xiao Qingcheng and greeted, Nice to meet you, I'm Han Ruoyan. Xiao Qingcheng also extended her hand, saying, Hello, Xiao Qingcheng. Although her face was calm, her heart was in turmoil. So this woman was Han Ruoyan? Yi Tianzi's proposal to the Han family was indeed successful. This must be true. Otherwise, the person who answered the phone last night wouldn't have been Han Ruoyan. And they wouldn't be standing together now. Thinking of this, Xiao Qingcheng felt a bit annoyed. At this moment, Han Ruoyan seemed to remember something and whispered to Yi Tianzi, I'm here to help you save face this time. Remember to answer my question. Yi Tianzi frowned, coldly saying, No need. Han Ruoyan seemed to ignore his response, slightly raising her chin and saying, So, you are Yi Tianzi's ex wife, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Although her words were gentle, her attitude was assertive. Xiao Qingcheng bit her lip, feeling a sense of grievance. Although she initiated the divorce, he was flaunting another woman in front of her. Is this his true face? Xiao Qingcheng replied coldly, Indeed, I was his ex-wife. If I had discovered his wavering commitment to the marriage earlier, I would have filed for divorce sooner. Hearing this, Yi Tianzi was displeased, saying coldly, The one who wavered in commitment was clearly you. Before you asked for a divorce, you had some unclear relationship with Ji Bashuan. Xiao Qingcheng furrowed her brows, about to explain that her relationship with Ji Bashuan was purely business. A familiar voice suddenly sounded behind her, and Xiao Qingcheng turned around to see Jibo in a white suit, elegantly appearing before her. He walked up to Xiao Qingcheng and complimented with a smile, Qingcheng, you look stunning today. I believe you will be the most dazzling star at the business meeting tonight. Xiao Qingcheng frowned slightly, seemingly reluctant as she replied, it's hard to say. Jibo paused for a moment then noticed Han Ruoyan next to Yi Tianzi, his eyes lit up. He exclaimed, Miss Han, your beauty is no less than Xiao Qingcheng's. Each of them has their own charm and style. Metaphorically speaking, Xiao Qingcheng is like a cold lotus, noble and untouchable, while Han Ruoyan is like a blooming peony, proudly standing out, incomparable in their own ways. Jibo couldn't help but notice the eye-catching curves on Han Ruoyan's chest, adding a hint of resentment towards Yi Tianzi in his heart. Being shut out by Xiao Qingcheng, yet able to attend with the wealthier Han Ruoyan, what a stroke of luck is this? He friendly reminded Han Ruoyan, Miss Han, I advise you to stay away from this useless man surnamed Yi. Why not interact more with my brother instead? Last night, when he returned home, he found his younger brother Ji Boxiao angrily locked in his room, venting his emotions by smashing things. Upon inquiry, he learned that Ji Boxiao had been humiliated at the Sky Dragon restaurant, bringing shame to the entire Ji family. This led to the disruption of tonight's Chamber of Commerce event. He had always been curious about how Yi Tianz possessed such fearless abilities and acted so arrogantly at the Sky Dragon restaurant. Now he understood, it must be Han Ruoyan secretly supporting him behind the scenes, while appearing to be at odds with Yi Tianz. They were working together to manipulate his brother. Ji Bo narrowed his eyes, a cold smile playing on his lips. He thought that guy surnamed Yi was simply cunning, otherwise he wouldn't have been ousted by Xiao Qingcheng, Miss Han. Choosing to accept the abandoned one, such rumors spreading wouldn't sound good, right? Of course, if you don't care, then forget it. Han Ruoyan's pupils slightly contracted, of course, she cared about this matter. However, she was inherently stubborn and liked to go against the grain. Suddenly, she hugged Yi Tianse's arm, showing an affectionate expression. Chin lifted, she arrogantly said, This lady is willing, what right do you have to interfere? Ji Bo was dumbfounded. Xiao Qingcheng was also dumbfounded. Even Yi Tians felt a bit stunned and asked in a lowered voice, What do you mean by this? He instinctively wanted to break free from her embrace. However, Han Ruoyan held him even tighter, warning, Don't move. Seeing this scene, a hint of loss flashed in Xiao Qingcheng's eyes as she self mockingly said, Yi Tians, so you had an escape plan all along. Congratulations! Originally, she still harbored some fantasy about the relationship between Yi Tians and Han Ruoyan 
thinking it was just a coincidence. Now, everything became clear. Yi Tian's frowned. He wanted to explain, but realized what was the point of explaining when she never listened to me. So, he chose silence. Xiao Qingcheng regained her former coldness and said to Yi Tian's, Yi Tian's, you once said I would regret filing for divorce, but now I am sure, it was the wisest decision I've ever made. After saying this, she walked into the Cloud Top Hotel with her assistant son. Ji Bo stepped forward, patted Yi Tianse's shoulder, sneered, a worthless man who only relies on women, in my eyes, you are nothing. The old accounts between us, I will slowly settle with you. Yi Tianse shook off Ji Bo's hand. Some old accounts don't need you to come looking for me, I will also slowly settle with your family. Ji Bo didn't realize the deeper meaning in Yi Tianse's words, didn't take it seriously at all, snorted, turned around to chase after Xiao Qingcheng. At this moment, Han Ruoyan let go of Yi Tianse's arm, creating some distance. She complained, HMPH. Almost let you take advantage of me so much, almost suffocated this lady. Yi Tianse helplessly said, Clearly, you were the one who hugged me first, not the other way around. The conversation between Han Ruoyan and Yi Tianze started off pleasantly, but suddenly took a turn when Han Ruoyan became angry and demanded that Yi Tianze answer her question firmly. Yi Tianza then claimed to be a big shot behind the dragon lord. Han Ruian, eyes wide with disbelief, rebuked Yi Tianzi's words as nonsense. The dragon lord is the chairman of the Tianlong group, a noble and prestigious figure. How could he possibly have any connection with Yi Tianza, who was kicked out of the Xiao family? Moreover, that big shot is the man Han Ruian admires. How could he be someone else's castoff? Yi Tianza, feeling helpless, rolled his eyes and sighed at Han Ruian's stubbornness, finding it hard to please her. He decided to leave without mercy, leaving behind a stomping Han Ruian, who threatened angrily that she wouldn't help Yi Tianza fend off knives next time he encountered his ex-wife. In the bustling hall of the Cloud Summit Hotel, guests were either toasting or engaging in friendly conversations. Assistant Sun, discontented, said to Xiao Qingcheng, Boss Xiao, you shouldn't have given that arrogant person face just now. You should have taught him a lesson. I can't stand his arrogant attitude. Xiao Qingcheng replied calmly, regardless, he showed sincere filial piety to my grandfather by presenting the Millennium Snow Ginseng, and I must reciprocate this gesture. Assistant Sun warned, how can you be so naive? That guy surnamed Yi is not genuinely filial. He clearly wants to get close to the daughter of the richest man, deceive her to get the Snow Ginseng, and then deliberately show off the gift to prove that your divorce request was wrong. Xiao Qingcheng, taken aback, a hint of worry flashing in his eyes. Is everything just a facade? Ji Bo, filled with righteous indignation, said, Qingcheng, you've won a 10 billion order tonight. Even if the daughter of the richest man is formidable, it's not worth fearing. Besides, I can introduce you to the big shot behind the dragon lord. Once he takes a liking to you, your future will be limitless, and that waste will only regret it. Assistant Sun curiously asked, Ji young master, can you really help introduce that big shot? Ji Bo mysteriously replied, of course. Moreover, the day after tomorrow is my father's 60th birthday, and that big shot will even attend to offer his congratulations. Qingcheng, you must bring your family along. Today his father, Ji Wuli, has gone to visit Zhao Hailong, requesting the Dragon Lord's help in connecting them, even willing to offer half of the family's assets as a gift for the meeting. In Ji Bo's eyes, the Ji family has already boarded the ship of that big shot. Xiao Qingcheng's arrival immediately attracted everyone's attention. The news of Xiao's winning the bid had already spread, so guests came forward to toast. Two middle-aged men walked to the front, one in a gray suit, raised his glass and said with a smile to Xiao Qingcheng, Boss Xiao, you are handsome and suave, please take care of us in the future. The other, in traditional Chinese attire, congratulated Xiao Qingcheng warmly for winning the bid in advance, hoping for future cooperation. Xiao Qingcheng smiled calmly, but his heart was already boiling with excitement. In Jiangnan City, the chairman of Ningyuan Group, Lai Jingye, and the chairman of Hongda Group, Xie Bin, have influence second only to the three major families, and are stronger than the Xiao family. Recently, they have both been friendly towards her, which has strengthened her determination. She believes that after tonight, divorce is the right choice, and the only mistake may be Yi Tianch. In a corner of the venue, Yi Tianch casually found a chair to sit down, it was only 7.10, 50 minutes before the business meeting started. At this moment, the phone rang, it was Zhao Hailong calling. Zhao Hailong respectfully reported to him, Firstly, Ji Wuli contacted me, expressing willingness to donate half of the family property, and inviting you to his 60th birthday celebration. Yi Tianch replied indifferently, rejecting him. In fact, 
Even if Ji Wuli did not invite him, Yi Tianch had already decided to attend, because the clue to the Yi family's big fire lies in the Ji family. Zhao Hailong continued, Secondly, the list of bidding candidates for tonight has been finalized, and the documents have been sent to your email, please make your selection. Yi Tianch hung up the phone and opened his email. There were five candidates on the list, the Xiao family was still on the list. Although the Xiao family had been pre-selected as the winner, their strength, potential for development, and bidding documents were all excellent, making them extremely competitive, which was inseparable from Yi Tianxi's support over the past three years. Among the other four, three of them had obvious shortcomings, only the Tiger Power Group was not inferior to the Xiao family, and in some aspects even stronger. According to the notes, although the Tiger Power Group was established not long ago, they have shown outstanding performance. After investigating, Zhao Hailong found that the Tiger Power Group had connections with the Black Tiger Society in Jiangnan City, a piece of information known to only a few. Yi Tianch muttered to himself, I remember in the Fallen City Prison, there was a guy named Zhang Xiaohu, who did well, so I let him out early, heard that he founded the Black Tiger Society, could it be him? At this moment, an elegant woman in a white Changsam walked over. Yi Tianch looked up and instinctively replied, nobody. Yi Tianqi suddenly realized that he had almost said the wrong thing, so he awkwardly added, sorry, my mistake. He did not want to get involved in the romantic debts owed by Jiangnan war god Lin Feng, so they both maintained their silence and did not disturb each other. However, Yi Tianqi did not know that sitting beside him was actually his fiancée from the marriage contract. And Rong Meiyin was also unaware that Yi Tianqi was the reluctant fiancé in her heart. Just then, a sarcastic voice suddenly sounded. Surname Yi, I didn't expect you to be here too? You must have piggybacked on Miss Han's influence, right? Ji Bo Duan swaggered over, originally just wanting to pour a glass of wine, but when he saw Yi Tianqi, he deliberately came over to mock him. Yi Tianqi coldly responded, What's it to you? Ji Bo Duan raised his wine glass arrogantly and taunted, Lord Long's bidding business meeting is for the privileged and famous only. You, a son-in-law expelled by the Xiao family, have no right to sit here. Get out. Yi Tianqi calmly said, Ask Zhao Hailong, if you make me leave, can this business meeting still go on? I, Yi Tianqi, do things without needing someone else's approval. Ji Bo Duan laughed directly, exclaiming, This kid is so arrogant to the point of losing his mind. However, when his eyes accidentally glanced at the Changsam lady next to Yi Tianqi, they immediately widened. Such a stunning woman! He adjusted his tie, showing a confident smile, and reached out his hand to Rong Meiyin, saying, Hello, beauty, I am Ji Bo Duan, the eldest son of the Ji family, one of the three major families in Jiangnan. Nice to meet you. Rong Meiyin just nodded and did not shake hands. Ji Bo Duan awkwardly withdrew his hand and reminded, This lady, the person next to you is not easy to get along with. I advise you to stay away from him to avoid trouble. Rong Meiyin glanced at Yi Tianqi first, then smiled faintly. Are you ordering me? Her face carried a harmless smile, but her tone revealed a commanding presence, unquestionable. This is something even Ji Wuli cannot match. Without figuring out the other party's background, Ji Bo Duan dared not act rashly and could only awkwardly smile and say, No. I didn't mean that. Then he gave Yi Tianqi a fierce glare and left. Not long after he left, he met Han Ruiyan coming towards him, looking around as if searching for something. Ji Bo Duan's eyes lit up, and he asked, Miss Han, are you looking for someone surnamed Yi? Han Ruiyan replied coldly, What does it have to do with you who I'm looking for? Ji Bo Duan pointed towards Yi Tianqi and deliberately said, But that person surnamed Yi is sitting with a certain unfamiliar beauty. It's ambiguous. Who knows what they're up to? Han Ruiyan followed his finger and saw Rong Meiyin sitting next to Yi Tianqi. Han Ruiyan suddenly had a hunch that the person next to Yi Tianza was not simple. She suddenly realized that Yi Tianza didn't have a powerful backer and didn't even know that important figure. The reason he was so arrogant was all because of the presence of the woman next to him. This guy not only lacked skills but also flirted with women everywhere, it was really laughable. Ji Bo Duan curiously asked, Miss Han. Aren't you going to take a look? Han Ruiyan disdainfully replied, turned around and left directly. Ji Bo Duan smirked triumphantly, thinking, with Miss Han's protection gone, let's see how arrogant you can still be, Mr. Yi. At this moment, Xiao Qingcheng and Assistant Sun approached. Assistant Sun asked, Young Master Ji, where did you just go? We've been looking for you. Ji Bo Duan recounted what had just happened, of course, with a bit of exaggeration. After hearing it, Xiao Qingcheng glanced at Yi Tianza, feeling inexplicably uncomfortable and increasing her disgust towards him. Assistant Sun disdainfully snorted. 
This gold digger is really disgusting, bowing and scraping in front of wealthy women. I suspect he joined the Chamber of Commerce just to find a sugar mommy. Ji Bo Duan nodded in agreement. I think this scheming scoundrel should be kicked out by the security guards. Xiao Qingsheng sighed and said, Forget it, as long as he doesn't affect the normal operation of the Chamber of Commerce, the bidding results are the most important after all. Assistant Sun's face suddenly changed, and he hurriedly said, General Manager Xiao, quickly check the Zhang'an business forum. Something has happened. Xiao Qingsheng, puzzled, took out his phone and logged into the Zhang'an business forum. This forum was established for the elite business community of Zhangnan City, and all kinds of commercial secrets would be updated here with extremely high credibility. The news that the Xiao family had been pre-selected for the bid, as well as the upcoming appearance of the important figure behind Zhao Hailong, were all spread from here. Just now, someone anonymously posted a message stating that the winning list of the Dragon Business Association's bid suddenly changed to five candidates, Zhao Hailong had submitted it for approval by the important figure, awaiting the final result. The detailed information of the five companies was also listed below. Xiao Qingsheng's face turned ugly, and Assistant Sun asked in confusion, Young Master Ji, didn't you say before that our Xiao family had already been confirmed to win the bid? How did it suddenly change like this? Ji Bo Duan was at a loss for words, but could only explain with a stiff upper lip, that our Xiao family is still on the list. It's just that four more candidates have been added. Your strengths are all very strong. No need to worry. We will definitely win the bid. Xiao Qingsheng shook his head and said, The other three are fine, but the Huwei group has recently gained fame in Zhangnan City, rumored to have strong support behind them, competing with them, I have no confidence. Ji Bo Duan patted his chest and said, Our Ji family has a relationship with that important figure. This is a small matter. I'll give my dad a call and guarantee it's settled. Xiao Qingsheng hurriedly said, I'll trouble you with that. Ji Bo Duan went to the side and made several calls to his father Ji Wuli, but no one answered. He had to send a few text messages inquiring if he could help. Meanwhile, Yi Tianza had already replied to Zhao Hailong's email, deciding to let the Xiao family win the bid. It was not out of groveling or old feelings, but considering the complex relationship behind the Huwei group with the Black Tiger Society, it was not suitable to cooperate. Based on the actual interests of the group, he believed that choosing the Xiao family was the wisest decision. Yi Tianqi stood up and walked towards the self-service area, pouring himself a glass of refreshing drink. Just then, he ran into Ji Bo Duan, who was on the phone. Ji Bo Duan looked at Yi Tianqi coldly and sneered, Are you here to loaf around, useless? Yi Tianqi frowned and was about to retort when Assistant Sun quickly approached and reprimanded, Young Master Yi, what's wrong with you? Always picking a fight with Young Master Ji. Xiao Qingcheng also came over, with a displeased look on his face. Yi Tianqi coldly said, Look clearly, it's him who's causing trouble, not me. Assistant Sun disdainfully said, Nonsense, young Master Ji is contacting the big shot behind the scenes to secure the bid for the Xiao family. He doesn't have time to bother with you. Do you think everyone is as narrow-minded as you? Securing the bid? Assistant Sun immediately sarcastically said, Mr. Yi, don't joke around. Who do you think you are, able to influence the bidding results? Xiao Qingcheng impatiently said, Since we have already filed for divorce, let's each calm down and stop causing trouble. I don't have the mood to joke with you anymore. Yi Tianza calmly responded, I'm not joking. I am the big shot you are talking about. Ji Bo directly laughed and mocked, hilarious. Is that big shot identity so prominent? Can a useless person like you pretend to be him? If you really are him, I will eat 10 pounds of dog poop on the spot. Xiao Qingsheng rubbed her temples, feeling that Yi Tianza must be crazy. Just then, the chairman of Ningyuan Group, Lai Jingye, and the chairman of Hongda Group, Xie Bin, walked over quickly, raising their glasses and said, Ms. Xiao. Congratulations! The leading Xiao family has successfully won the bid and secured a 10 billion order. Let's have a toast to you. In the future, our two groups will have more cooperation. Xiao Qingsheng was a bit stunned by this sudden news. She awkwardly explained, the fact is not like that. Our Xiao family is competing with four companies. The specific result still needs the approval of that big shot, before we can know the final outcome. Lai Jingye smiled and said, Miss Xiao is really low-key. The forum just updated the news, stating that the big shot has already decided to award the bid to the Xiao family. How can you say there is no result yet? Upon hearing this, Xiao Qingsheng immediately opened the mobile forum and indeed saw the insider news that the Xiao family had won the bid. The report stated that at 8 o'clock, Mr. Long would announce the result on stage with the big shot. Assistant Sun and Ji Bo also saw this news. Assistant Sun exclaimed excitedly, Great! 
Miss Xiao, we finally made it. Xiao Qingcheng's mood also became excited. The suspense in her heart could finally be lifted. She didn't expect things to turn out as Yi Tianzi had said, that the Xiao family won the bid. However, how did he know in advance? Could it be true? Xiao Qingcheng subconsciously looked at Yi Tianzi, hesitating whether to ask. Assistant son immediately reminded, Miss Xiao, you should thank young master Ji. Winning the bid must be credited to him. Xiao Qingcheng suddenly realized and expressed her gratitude to Ji Bo, young master Ji, thank you so much. Ji Bo replied indifferently, no trouble. In the end, it was my dad who helped out. I just made a phone call. Although he said it modestly, the pride on his face was hard to conceal. He guessed that his father must have seen the message he posted, prompting him to lend a hand. Assistant son glanced at Yi Tianzi and sarcastically said, See that? Young Master Ji has a keen eye, acts modestly and humbly. Unlike you, who only knows how to boast and take credit. Ji Bo disdainfully said, Bullshit, hanging around in the lower levels for too long makes you swell with self-importance, when in reality, you are worthless. Yi Tianzi raised an eyebrow and asked Ji Bo, On what basis are you so sure it was your father's merit? Ji Bo raised his head proudly and said, If not my dad, could it be solved by a freeloader like you? Yi Tianzi narrowed his eyes and asked, Oh? What evidence do you have to prove that it was your father's doing? Ji Bo stubbornly said, My dad sent me a text, saying he did it. What's the problem? Yi Tianzi furrowed his brows, never having seen such shamelessness before. Ji Dishao hesitated for a moment, then pulled out his phone and showed a text message to everyone present. Xiao Qingsheng suddenly angrily questioned Yi Tianzi, What do you want? Why do you keep provoking over and over again? Can't you just stop? For the sake of your insignificant dignity, you deliberately make things difficult, lying through your teeth. I never thought you would do such a thing. Yi Tianzi frowned and said, Do you think I'm provoking for no reason? Lying through my teeth? Xiao Qingsheng earnestly replied, Isn't it? Yi Tianzi smiled helplessly. He didn't expect that in their three-year marriage, he couldn't even match up to a stranger's words. Seeing Yi Tianzi's silence, Xiao Qingsheng mistakenly thought he agreed, and said more angrily, your despicable behavior only strengthens my decision to divorce. I will never regret it. In my eyes, the gap between you and Ji De Shao is like heaven and earth. Ji Boan felt secretly pleased and sarcastically said, Ching Cheng, there's no need to get angry with such a boring person. It's all because I'm too outstanding, especially in getting that big shot to help your family win the bid, which completely exposed this boring person's incompetence and anger. It's best to stay away from him in the future. Sun Assistant angrily said, you freeloader, why don't you just get lost? Yi Tianzi looked at Xiao Qingcheng's indifferent expression, feeling a pain in his heart that was indescribable. This time, he was completely disappointed. Since that's the case, let them do as they please. Just as he was about to leave, a rude young man with blonde hair walked over, cigarette dangling from his mouth, and asked Ji Boan with a stern face, Are you the one who got that big shot to help the Xiao family win the bid? Ji Boan glanced at the stranger, proudly nodded and said, Yes, do you have something to discuss with me? Suddenly, the blonde young man punched him in the face. Ji Boan's nose started bleeding on the spot, and he took a few steps back. Everyone present was shocked. Who was this blonde young man? How dare he hit Ji De Shao? Lai Jingye scolded angrily, outrageous. This is not a place for your nonsense. Xie Bin also said sternly, rascal, apologize to Ji De Shao immediately. The blonde young man pointed at them, disdainfully said, Shut up. This has nothing to do with you. Ji Boan touched his bleeding nose, angrily asked, Who are you? Why did you hit me? The blonde young man arrogantly said, I am Zhang Chunlei, the boss of Tiger Power Group. If you hadn't meddled, how could the Xiao family have taken the bid from us? Meddlesome person. Before he could finish his sentence, he threw another punch at Ji Boan. However, with his knowledge of Taekwondo, Ji Boan dodged the punch, then delivered a high kick that knocked Zhang Chunlei to the ground. Ji Boan continued to angrily kick a few times. He thought to himself, if I want to meddle, I will. So what? If you have the guts, come and try me. Feeling high from showing off, he ended up getting punched, of course his mood would explode. Xiao Qingsheng quickly handed tissues to Ji Boan, looking worried, and said, I'm sorry, it's all because of me that you took a punch for nothing. Ji Boan wiped away the blood from his nose, and said affectionately, Xiao Qingsheng, in a critical moment, Sun, the assistant, didn't hesitate to step forward, showing no fear. He looked at Ji Bo with a firm gaze, as if telling him that no matter what happens, 
he will protect him from behind. Lai Jingye sighed. Young Master Ji, your demeanor and sense of security are truly admirable. Xie Bin also agreed. Young Master Ji's courage and insight are truly admirable. Mr. Xiao, your vision is truly unique. Hearing these praises, Xiao Qingcheng felt a warm surge in his heart, feeling the recognition from others. Son, the assistant, glanced at Yi Tianza and couldn't help but sneer. Look at what young Master Ji has done for Mr. Xiao, and then look at you. It's simply a joke, just making a fool of yourself here. Xiao Qingcheng's eyes revealed a hint of disappointment, deeply feeling the gap between people, making him feel as if he was being compared to a dog. Zhang Chunlei stood up angrily and said, You've picked the wrong person today. I not only want to deal with you, but also punish the lady from the Xiao family next to you. Ji Bo showed no weakness, took a step forward, and harshly kicked Zhang Chunlei, making him step back several steps. Just then, the door of the living room was pushed open, and several fierce looking men in black rushed in, surrounding Ji Bo. Then, a bald man with a scarred face walked in, his powerful aura making everyone present feel suffocated. He coldly stared at Jibo, his eyes revealing endless murderous intent. The Black Tiger Society is the most prominent underground force in Jiangnan City, with Zhang Xiaohu as the leader, also known as the Underground Emperor Tiger Lord. Even the Dragon Lord of Jiangnan shows him great respect. For the ordinary Ji family in Jiangnan, they dare not provoke such a presence. Ji Bodwan's heart skipped a beat and cautiously asked, Who are you? The bald man replied coldly, I am Feng Lei of the Black Tiger Society. This statement caused a lot of discussion among the surrounding people. Feng Lei is one of the trusted assistants under Tiger Lord, definitely one of his confidants. It is rumored that Feng Lei has taken more than a dozen lives. Last year, he directly chopped off the limbs of a rich second-generation outsider who offended him and threw him into the river to feed the crocodiles. The family members didn't dare to resist at all. Ji Bo Duan listened to the discussions around him, his face turning pale. He quickly approached to flatter, so it's Brother Lei, I've heard of your great name. The words just now had absolutely no intention of targeting the Black Tiger Society, I was just teaching Zhang Chunlei a lesson, please don't take offense. Suddenly, Feng Lei slapped Ji Bo Duan in the face. Feng Lei squinted his eyes and asked coldly, do you know the identity of young master Chunlei? Ji Bo Duan holding his swollen cheek, shook his head and said, I, I don't know. At this moment, Zhang Chunlei walked over and also slapped Ji Bo Duan in the face. Listen to me. I am the nephew of Zhang Xiaohu, his only relative, do you understand? The people around couldn't believe it. Although Tiger Lord is known for his philandering, he has never had a wife or children, let alone illegitimate children. And Zhang Chunlei is actually his only relative? This identity is quite extraordinary. Ji Bo Duan felt his head buzzing at this moment. He originally wanted to pretend, but unexpectedly ran into a tough situation. So he begged to explain, Young Master Zhang, please listen to me, it's all a misunderstanding. But before he could finish, Zhang Chunlei kicked him in the stomach. This was followed by a series of punches. Misunderstanding? Why hold back now? Where's that strength from earlier? Show me. Ji Bo Duan tightly held his head not daring to fight back, because he knew that if he retaliated against Zhang Chunlei today, even a little bit, he would pay with his life tomorrow, and his whole family would be implicated. Lai Jingye and Xie Bin, who were standing next to Ji Bo Duan before, glanced at each other and quickly stepped back into the crowd, afraid of provoking Zhang Chunlei's anger. Not to mention stepping forward to stop it. Stop it. Just then, a cold voice rang out. Xiao Qingcheng walked out of the crowd, looking serious. Zhang Chunlei shook his sore fist, raised an eyebrow at Xiao Qingcheng and said, You tell me not to hit, why should I listen to you? Frowning, Xiao Qingcheng said, Originally, this was a competition between our Xiao family and the Tiger Power Group, a normal business competition that should be resolved through business means. Why do you have the right to resort to violence? Zhang Chunlei kicked Ji Bo Duan to the ground and walked up to Xiao Qingcheng. Coldly, he said, I want to hit, I'll hit. Don't agree? Although anxious inside, Xiao Qingcheng remained calm on the surface and said, Please spare young Master Ji, let's discuss things peacefully. In Zhang Chunlei's eyes gleamed a greedy light as he said to Xiao Qingcheng, No problem. But you have to satisfy my two conditions. Xiao Qingcheng asked, What conditions? Zhang Chunlei smirked and said, I've heard that you, Miss Xiao, are the most beautiful female CEO in Zhangnan City. Seeing you today, you are even more beautiful than the rumors, so my first condition is to spend the night with me and serve me. Xiao Qingcheng frowned and reminded him, Mr. Zhang, please respect yourself. Zhang Chunlei cheekily replied, 
I didn't study much, so the words, self-respect, are not in my dictionary. He looked at Xiao Qingcheng wearing black stockings with letters on them and teased, how did you know this is my favorite? Let me check to see if they are sturdy enough. He bent down, reaching out to touch Xiao Qingcheng's legs. Startled, Xiao Qingcheng stepped back and pushed Zhang Shenlei away. Enraged, Zhang Shenlei said, you despicable person. With that, he slapped Xiao Qingcheng and ordered the black-clad strong men to restrain her. The two strong men brought by Feng Lei each held one of Xiao Qingcheng's arms, and despite her intense struggles, she was helpless. Seeing this, Assistant Sun warned Zhang Chunlei, this is the Dragon Lord's Tianlong Chamber of Commerce event. If you start a fight and disrupt the venue, aren't you afraid of angering the Dragon Lord? Zhang Chunlei sneered, so what if the Dragon Lord is not here? Even if he were, what could he do? Once my uncle arrives, what can the Dragon Lord do to me? Assistant Sun had to seek help from Ji Bo Duan, saying, Young Master Ji, you have great powers, please think of a solution. We can't let Miss Xiao be bullied by this jerk. Ji Bo Duan, with his head bowed, dared not look at Zhang Chunlei, smiled at Xiao Qingcheng and said, As for the second condition, it is to give me the bid result. Xiao Qingcheng glared fiercely at Zhang Chunlei, showing no signs of backing down. Zhang Chunlei raised an eyebrow and said, Not giving in? Great. Feng Lei, take action. Feng Lei walked up to Ji Bo Duan, stepped on his head, took out a dagger, and threatened, Where should I start first? Should I cut off your ear first? Terrified, Ji Bo Duan's face turned pale, and he quickly begged for mercy, Wait. I have something to say. He loudly said, Ching Cheng. What are you hesitating for? Just give the bid to Mr. Zhang. Spend another night with him, I don't care anyway. Hearing this, Xiao Qingcheng felt a surge of grievance and indignation, unable to believe that Ji Boduan would say such things just to protect himself. She glanced at Yi Tianz, who seemed indifferent, sipping his drink, feeling even more disappointed. Zhang Chenlei continued to threaten Xiao Qingcheng, your assistant is very loyal. If you don't agree to my conditions, I will hand her over to the brothers in the association for gang rape. Your family's lives depend on your choice. At that moment, Xiao Qingcheng finally couldn't bear it anymore. Beneath her aloof exterior, her heart finally broke. Tears fell like pearls. Facing the threat of endangering the safety of her entire family by Zhang Chenlei, Sun Assistant felt completely powerless. Everything was thoroughly defeated without any regrets. She bit her lip, filled with unwillingness, but could only say, I, agree. You, spare the others. Zhang Chenlei excitedly exclaimed, Good. Everyone present today can testify that the Shah family voluntarily handed over the bidding rights to our Tiger Power Group not under coercion. He scanned the crowd with a cold gaze, threatening, if anyone opposes, they can come forward and confront me. The surrounding guests all lowered their heads, not daring to meet his eyes, even Lai Jingye and Xie Bin were the same. This made Zhang Chenlei feel extremely satisfied inside. However, at that moment, a voice calmly rang out, I, Yi Tianzi, oppose. Instantly, all eyes were on him. Zhang Chenlei's face darkened as he asked, you oppose? What qualifications do you have? Yi Tianzi stood with his hands in his pockets, his expression firm, but his heart filled with struggle. Xiao Qingcheng's eyes flickered with surprise and astonishment. She never expected that at this critical moment, it would be Yi Tianzi who stepped forward. Han Ruiyan in the distance couldn't help but sweat for Yi Tianzi, feeling uneasy. What is this guy up to? Is he disregarding his own life? Further away, Rong Meiyun, dressed in a white Changsam, sat there like a queen, with deep, contemplative eyes. In this moment, Yi Tianz became the center of attention in the entire venue. Zhang Chenlei coldly stared at Yi Tianz, squinted his eyes, and sternly questioned, Did you do it, the mark in the Xiao family? Yi Tianz nodded affirmatively, Yes. And I have only one condition, take your men and get out. Zhang Chenlei furrowed his brows slightly, feeling an invisible pressure from this man, making him nervous. Just then, Ji Bo Duan, who was lying on the ground, suddenly shouted, Zhang, he is actually Xiao Qingcheng's ex-husband who was kicked out of the house, almost got the divorce certificate. What a waste, don't be fooled by him. These words immediately caused a stir among the onlookers. It turned out he was a waste who had been freeloading in the Xiao family for three years. Almost fooled by him, I thought he was some important figure. Hearing the discussions, Zhang Chenlei secretly breathed a sigh of relief. He turned to Ji Bo Duan and smiled, kid, quite insightful, huh? Ji Bo Duan immediately flattered, it's what I should do, please forgive the mistakes of the insignificant me, spare me. Zhang Chenlei gestured with his hand, I'll spare your life this time. 
Then he put away his dagger and let Ji Bo Duan go. Ji Bo Duan thanked profusely, bowing and kneeling, a scene that was chilling. Zhang Chunlei glared at Yi Tianz, roaring, What an overestimation of your abilities. Dare to talk big, do you know the consequences of provoking me? Yi Tianz shook his head lightly, It seems you don't intend to leave with your men? Zhang Chunlei almost couldn't help but laugh, Waste, pretending in front of me? Don't you know the outcome of seeking your own death? With that said, four burly men in black had quietly approached. They exuded a fierce aura, waiting for Zhang Chengli's command to pounce. Suddenly, Xiao Qingcheng spoke up, Stop. Zhang Chengli smiled and asked, Oh? Miss Xiao, what's your order? Xiao Qingcheng bit her lip and said, This matter has nothing to do with Yi Tianz. I have agreed to your two conditions, let him go. She had said before that since she proposed divorce, they should no longer interfere with each other. Therefore, she did not want Yi Tianz to be involved in this. Zhang Chenlei hesitated slightly, nodded. Okay, I'll listen to you. Then he turned to Yi Tianz and scolded, Waste, got it? Your wife? No, I should say ex-wife, asked you to leave. Why don't you leave immediately? However, Yi Tianz stood still. Zhang Chenlei smirked, not leaving? I see. I heard that you and Xiao Qingsheng have been married for three years without any intimacy, so you want to witness me being intimate with her, after I'm done, you can wait in line? Haha, <laughs> this is also possible, you just need to kneel down and call me grandpa. Following this, the brothers of the Black Tiger Society laughed along. Yi Tianz shook his head and sighed, you asked for this. With that, he swiftly rushed to Zhang Chenlei's front. Yi Tianqi raised his right hand and fiercely slapped it down. Smack! A heavy slap landed on Zhang Chenlei's face, causing him to fall to the ground, blood spilling from his mouth. The venue fell silent. Everyone was shocked that Yi Tianqi dared to strike Zhang Chenlei. Ji Bo Duan widened his eyes and angrily scolded Yi Tianqi, Are you out of your mind? How dare you hit Zhang? Do you want to drag us all down? He quickly helped Zhang Chenlei up, asking with concern, Zhang, are you okay? Zhang Chenlei covered his swollen face, spat out blood, and lost two teeth. Anger surged within him, he pushed Ji Bo Duan away, roaring commandingly, Brothers, attack! Take him down! The men in black roared and approached Yi Tianqi. Everyone thought it would be a one-sided fight, but an unexpected turn of events unfolded. Yi Tianqi raised his hand gently, clenched his fist, and struck out. Seemingly slow but actually swift. In less than three seconds, over ten men in black were all knocked to the ground, creating a scene of chaos. Yi Tianqi emerged unscathed, not even moving a step. The onlookers were dumbfounded, including Zhang Chunlei. He urgently shouted to Feng Lei, Feng, take him out, don't hold back. Feng Lei drew his dagger and swiftly stabbed towards Yi Tianqi. Just as the dagger was an inch away from Yi Tianqi, he grabbed Feng Lei's wrist and twisted it forcefully. Crack! Feng Lei screamed in agony. Yi Tianqi mercilessly punched Feng Lei's chin, causing him to faint instantly. The Chamber of Commerce Hall fell into silence. Everyone's gaze towards Yi Tianqi was like looking at a fierce beast, sending shivers down their spines. Xiao Qingcheng's mouth fell open in disbelief. When did he become so powerful? Far away, Han Ruoyan stared in shock. This guy, turns out he's this strong. Even further away, Rong Mayan's pupils slightly contracted, emitting a charming aura. This man, is quite interesting. Meanwhile, Zhang Chenlei trembled, his face pale. Feng Lei was his uncle's most capable man, skilled in martial arts, yet he was easily defeated. Yi Tianqi walked slowly towards Zhang Chenlei, and coldly said, Now, it's your turn. Speak, how do you want to die? Zhang Chenlei trembled in fear, threatening, Do you dare to kill me? My uncle is Zhang Xiaohu. Offending him means certain death for you. Yi Tianqi sneered, Even if I kill you, Zhang Xiaohu would only kneel and kowtow before me when he faces me. In the fallen city, He's just at the bottom of the food chain, insignificant. Just as Yi Tianqi was about to make a move, Xiao Qingcheng spoke up to stop him. He said sternly, Yi Tianqi, that's enough. Stop causing trouble. Yi Tianqi furrowed his brow slightly, am I causing trouble? I'm just helping you. Xiao Qingcheng bit his lip and said seriously, I know, but Zhang Chenlei has a complicated background. Acting like this will only get you into trouble. Let it go. Yi Tianqi coldly questioned Xiao Qingcheng, asking if all his previous actions could be forgiven. Xiao Qingcheng remained silent, bowing his head without a word. In the face of absolute power, what choice did he have even if he was not forgiven? Yi Tianqi sighed, 
reluctantly saying, since it's your choice, do as you wish. He slowly let go of his actions. Zhang Chunlei wiped the blood from the corner of his mouth, his eyes flashing with unwillingness as he glared at Yi Tianqi, gritting his teeth, just you wait. Tonight, I will definitely regain the dignity I lost. With that, he hurriedly left with a group of people, leaving behind a mess. The people present looked at each other with worried expressions. There were only ten minutes left before the Chamber of Commerce meeting began, and there was no time to tidy up the scene. How could Lord Long and the important figure react when they saw this scene? However, at this critical moment, G. Boda's eyes flashed with a hint of embarrassment, but he still tried to remain calm and explained, You don't understand the situation. My previous actions were just a temporary measure to buy time. Once the Dragon Lord and that important figure arrive, I will truthfully report everything to them, and they will deal with Zhang Chunlei. But you, acting on your own, letting Zhang Chunlei go, causing a lot of trouble, how can we explain to the Dragon Lord? How can we explain to that important figure? His words resonated with the guests present, who echoed in agreement, that's right, the person surnamed Yi let Zhang Chunlei go, the Dragon Lord will blame us for incompetence. Complaints filled the air. Yi Tianqi, once seen as a hero in their eyes, had now become the scapegoat for disrupting the Chamber of Commerce. He looked at their reactions and sneered, a group of cowards who dare not offend the Black Tiger Society, can only push the blame onto me, ridiculous. He knew clearly that the guests present didn't want to bear the blame, so they chose to shift the responsibility to him, who seemed to have the least background. G. Boda earnestly said, person surnamed Yi, stop talking nonsense. We were just sharing the burden for the Dragon Lord, with no selfish motives. Yi Tianqi coldly responded, you want me to kneel? You are not qualified enough. At this moment, a man in a gray suit walked over and arrogantly said, if Ji Dasha is not qualified, then what about me, Lai Jingye, the chairman of Ningyuan Group? Yi Tianqi shook his head, still not enough. Following that, a man in Jiangshan's suit threatened, oh? Then what about me, Xie Bin, the chairman of Hongda Group? Yi Tianqi sneered, a group of insignificant people, far from enough. His attitude shocked the guests present. Ningyuan Group and Hongda Group wield considerable influence in Jiangnan City, being the top players there. However, in Yi Tianqi's eyes, these two chairmen and Ji Boda were just insignificant? Such arrogance was unbelievable. Xiao Qingsheng quickly stepped forward, sternly saying, Yi Tianqi, shut up. Yi Tianqi narrowed his eyes and asked, Do you also think this is my fault? Xiao Qingsheng certainly did not think so, but making such a statement in front of everyone was undoubtedly a slap in the face to Ji Boda and the two chairmen. The Xiao family was at a critical point of rising, and they couldn't afford to offend anyone. She reminded Yi Tianqi, Leave quickly, this is not where you should stay. Yi Tianqi calmly replied, I did nothing wrong, why should I leave? Xiao Qingsheng angrily said, Why are you so stubborn? How will you explain when the Dragon Lord and that important figure arrive later? She tried to help Yi Tianqi, but he ignored her. Assistant Sun also joined in the reprimand, Yi Tianqi, do you want to die? Don't drag down our CEO Xiao. Ji Boda coldly watched all of this unfold. Yi Tianqi felt a surge of heat in his heart, as if his true intentions had been misunderstood. He decided to show his true courage and decisiveness at this gathering. With a firm gaze scanning the crowd, he fearlessly walked towards the main table, picked up a chair, and sat down calmly. In a cold tone, he said, I won't run away. I'm right here. Let's see who has the guts to take my life. His words emitted a strong sense of confrontation, making everyone feel as if he were an insurmountable mountain. Han Ruiyan, watching Yi Tianqi from a distance, couldn't help but bite her lip. She secretly thought to herself, this guy is so daring, almost crazy. Meanwhile, Rong Meiyan, in the distance, propped her chin on her hand, her face full of curiosity. She was intrigued by the dazzling Yi Tianqi and wanted to see what he would do next. At the same time, other guests in the venue were angrily cursing, their voices echoing throughout the space. You brat, get out of here. This seat belongs to Lord Long and other important figures, not a presumptuous fellow like you. Yi Tianqi, however, remained unfazed, even leisurely crossing his legs, disdainfully saying, a group of cowards who shrink like ants at the mention of the Black Tiger Society. What's the use of Zhao Hailong inviting you to the Chamber of Commerce? His words were like a sharp blade, hitting a nerve with the crowd and igniting even greater anger throughout the venue. Xiao Qingsheng, watching the scene, couldn't help but feel worried. She wanted to step forward to stop Yi Tianqi's actions, knowing that further provocation would not be wise. However, Ji Bo Duan timely intervened, advising, Qingsheng, this guy is asking for trouble. Don't get involved. 
Qingcheng responded discontentedly, This has nothing to do with you. Ji Bo Duan understood that she was still upset about the previous incident, so he explained, I just want to prevent the situation from escalating. After all, this chamber of commerce is related to your 10 billion order. And I believe Zhang Chenlei is just tough talking and won't actually harm you, as you were personally selected by the big shots as the winning bidder. He can't change that fact. Sun assistant quickly chimed in, Miss Xiao, I trust young master Ji's judgment. It's all Yi Tianqi's fault. Qingcheng still had some doubts and asked, but why would Yu Tianqi risk his life to save me? Ji Bo Duan explained coldly, he's not trying to save you at all. He's using this opportunity to retaliate against you, intentionally causing chaos, ruining the Chamber of Commerce, and stopping you from winning the 10 billion order. Upon hearing this explanation, Yi Tianqi was shocked to the core. Xiao Qingcheng couldn't help but shake his head and smile at Ji Boding's clever and mischievous ideas. He looked at Ji Boding calmly, stating that his words were all true. Not only he could see through Ji Boding's deep scheming, but the other guests could also sense it. Lai Jingye nodded in agreement, believing that Ji Boding was full of deceit, a fact known to all. Xie Ben rebuked, accusing him of using despicable means to sabotage Mr. Xiao's billion dollar order, a crime that is unforgivable. The others present all chimed in, launching derogatory attacks on Yi Tianzi. Xiao Qingcheng took a deep breath and earnestly asked Yi Tianzi if it was because of these accusations that he had made tonight's move. Yi Tianzi replied with a wry smile, saying that even if he explained, Xiao Qingcheng wouldn't believe him, and it didn't matter to him anymore. Xiao Qingcheng felt a slight tremor in his heart. Assistant Sun, unable to bear it, angrily questioned Yi Tianzi if he was blaming Mr. Xiao. He accused Yi Tianzi of not appreciating Mr. Xiao's selfless care over the past three years, and that he should have. Xiao Qingcheng interrupted Assistant Sun, raising his hand to signal him to stop arguing. She bit her lip and said solemnly, hoping that Yi Tianzi could stand up and apologize to everyone present. She promised that as long as Yi Tianzi agreed, she would intercede for him and save his life. Xiao Qingcheng furrowed her brows slightly and explained in a soft voice, Yi Tianzi, actually I. But Ji Bo Duan ruthlessly interrupted her, Qingcheng, have you seen clearly this selfish and despicable guy? There's no need to speak up for him. What he did tonight is unforgivable, and no one can save him. Chairman Lai Jingye of Ningyuan Group reminded Xiao Qingcheng, Qingcheng, this is a critical moment for the rise of the Xiao family. Don't let personal feelings affect the overall situation. Xiao Qingcheng hesitated, but Assistant Sun continued persuading, Madam Xiao, this waste is trying every means to retaliate against you. He is reaping what he sowed, not worthy of pity, and certainly not worth implicating the Xiao family. Xiao Qingcheng bit her lip tightly, hesitated for a few seconds, and could only nod helplessly. Yes. Her tone turned icy, at this point, I won't persuade you anymore. Whatever happens next, it has nothing to do with the Xiao family. This statement completely drew the line between her and Yi Tianz. Yi Tianz gently closed his eyes, as if he had already anticipated everything. So he responded lightly, all right, let it be so. Ji Boduan's eyes flashed with cunning. Turning to the crowd, he announced loudly, tonight, Everyone is here to attend the bidding conference hosted by Dragonlord, but Yi Tianz, this scum, deliberately sabotaged it. This is disrespectful to Dragonlord and contemptuous of that important figure. As the eldest son of the Zhang Ji family, I call on everyone to judge Yi Tianze's crimes together, wait for Dragonlord to arrive, expose his evil deeds, and cut off his escape route. Who supports? Who opposes? Obviously. Ji Bo Duan intended to unify the opinions and shift all blame onto Yi Tianz, intending to push him to a dead end. As this statement was made, those guests who colluded with him expressed their support for Ji Bo Duan's proposal, seemingly wanting to send Yi Tianz to the gallows. Although Xiao Qingcheng did not express support, she did not oppose it either. However, at this moment, an unusual voice rang out, I oppose. All eyes turned to the direction of the voice, only to see a woman in a red dress, with a cold and aloof demeanor, walking slowly towards them, it was Han Ruoyan. Ji Bo Duan frowned, looking surprised, while Xiao Qingcheng's expression was complex, biting her lip tightly. Other guests also whispered to each other, not understanding Han Ruoyan's intention. Even Yi Tianz furrowed his brows slightly, feeling quite surprised. Ji Bo Duan asked in a deep voice, Miss Han, I don't understand, why do you oppose my proposal? He is just a parasite. Don't be deceived by him. Han Ruoyan calmly replied, I don't care who Yu Tianz is, but he did nothing wrong tonight. It's you who falsely accused him. I can't stand this kind of behavior, so I oppose it. 
She didn't like Yi Tian's in her heart, even felt some disgust, but faced with the facts, she had no reason to stand idly by. Ji Bo Duan squinted and asked, then according to Miss Han's opinion, how should Yi Tian's be dealt with? Han Ruoyan answered, wait for Dragonlord and that important figure to arrive, present the facts of the matter truthfully, rather than just listening to your one-sided words. Hearing this, the faces of the guests present turned somewhat unpleasant. Han Ruoyan has been feeling heavy-hearted. She knows how Dragon Lord would reprimand for inefficiency, but he wouldn't be dissatisfied with Yi Tianza. This situation is absolutely unacceptable. Ji Bo Duan coldly reminded, Miss Han, tonight this Yi surname person has been openly confrontational with all the nobles present, becoming the target of public criticism. Are you sure you want to stand with him? Han Ruoyan nodded without hesitation. Ji Bo Duan sneered, Miss Han, although you are the heir of the Han family, one of the three major families in Jiangnan, your status is prominent. But trying to turn the situation around on your own, perhaps you are overestimating yourself a bit? Others chimed in. If it were your father, Han Tianzheng, who said these words, maybe we would consider it. But relying on you, Miss Han? You are a bit too inexperienced. Miss Han, we advise you not to get involved. Once entangled, not only can Han family not protect you, but it may also be doomed together. Faced with the pressure from everyone, Han Ruoyan's indifferent expression became solemn. She did not expect this group of people to be so united, insisting on pushing Yi Tianza into a corner. What should she do now? At this moment, Yi Tianza calmly said, Miss Han, I understand your good intentions. This farce is all because of me, you don't have to get involved. Han Ruoyan frowned, discontentedly said, I can't stand unfairness. I must speak up. Do you think I am a cowardly and foolish woman who doesn't know right from wrong? Xiao Qingcheng trembled slightly. She didn't know why, but she felt her face burning hot at this moment. Yi Tianza was somewhat surprised. He thought Han Ruoyan was just a typical self-centered young lady, but he didn't expect her to have a sense of justice deep down. He smiled and said to Han Ruoyan, you misunderstood. I didn't mean that. I just want to tell you that with this group of people, you can't deal with me at all. You don't need anyone's help. This statement caused an uproar on the scene. This Yi Tianza is too arrogant. Ji Bo Duan said coldly, Miss Han, do you see how this waste is so arrogant? He is asking for trouble. If you still insist on standing by his side, don't blame us for being merciless. As Han Ruoyan hesitated, her phone suddenly rang. It was her father, Han Tianzheng calling. She answered the phone, only to hear Han Tianzheng say sternly and anxiously, Yun Yun, I order you not to get involved in Yi Tianzi's affairs. Come home immediately. Han Ruoyan was stunned. Obviously, someone had informed her father about what was happening at the scene. Han Ruoyan hurriedly explained, Dad, the situation is not as. Han Tianzheng immediately interrupted her, I don't want to hear any explanations. Come back immediately. If you continue to insist, we will sever our father-daughter relationship. After that, Han Tianzheng hung up the phone directly. Han Ruoyan's eyes flashed with a hint of panic. This was the first time she had seen her father so angry. It seems that the situation is much more serious than she imagined. What should she do now? Yi Tianza spoke up, Miss Han, this matter has nothing to do with you. You don't need to be involved anymore. Listen to your father and go back. Then, do you should take care of yourself. I will figure it out. Han Ruoyan bit her lip, reluctantly leaving the venue. Ji Bo Duan was extremely excited. Now that this stumbling block Han Ruoyan has been removed, there will be no more obstacles in judging Yi Tianza. He looked at the time, then walked towards Yi Tianza, pointing his finger at him. Yi Tianqi was full of pride, with only five minutes left before Lord Long arrived. The time was pressing, and he felt restless and anxious. Facing the trial, he showed no weakness, maintaining his arrogant posture, casually crossing his Erlang legs as if he didn't care about anything. Yi Tianqi stood there confidently, with a hint of challenge and resilience in his eyes. Ji Bo stepped forward with a confident stride, hands behind his back, looking extremely arrogant as he arrogantly declared, I am Jibo, the eldest son of the Ji family. I want to see what you can do to make me kneel and accept judgment. Lai Jingye also walked up without showing any weakness, a mocking smile on his lips as he said, I am the chairman of Ningyuan Group, here to learn a thing or two. Xie Bin followed closely, hands in his pockets, threateningly stating, I am the chairman of Hongda Group, and I'm here to learn a lesson as well. As the three of them stood together, the surrounding guests cheered them on, creating a deafening noise in the venue. Assistant Sun shook his head helplessly, sighing, this guy is simply digging his own grave, sigh. 
Shao Qingsheng bit his lip deeply, his gaze fixed on Yi Tianqi, and he asked, at this moment, are you still determined not to yield, not to give in? Yi Tianqi replied calmly, why should I yield? And you're mistaken. The ones who should fight for a slim chance are them, not me. This remark drew ridicule from the crowd, as if no one took him seriously. Xiao Qingsheng was completely disappointed, shaking his head and saying, Yi Tianqi, are your actions tonight just for revenge on me asking for a divorce? However, no matter what, tonight my Xiao family has won the bid and secured the 10 billion order, that result won't change. And my decision to divorce you will not change either. Upon hearing this, Yi Tianqi's lips curled into a cold smile as he said, Oh, you're so confident. How do you know the result won't change? Perhaps, the bidding conference tonight might suddenly be cancelled, you never know. Ji Bo sneered. Yi, how could the Xiao family's winning bid be easily changed when there are big shots behind it? Lai Jingye coldly rebuked. This guy is like a mad dog barking. The Dragon Lord and that big shot are about to arrive. How could the bidding conference be cancelled? Xie Bin sarcastically remarked, I'm really curious, how could you, this little guy, change the bidding result? Cancel the bidding conference? Haha, <laughs> what a joke. Yi Tianqi lazily stretched and said nonchalantly, since you all are so eager to see, then I'll grant your wish. He picked up his phone, dialed Zhao Hailong's number, and issued a direct order, tell you three things. Firstly, the bidding conference tonight is cancelled, no need for you to come over. Secondly, the bid result of the 10 billion order will be re-evaluated. Thirdly, condemn the arrogant behavior of Ji Bo from the Zhang Nin Ji family, the chairman of Ning Yuan Group and Hongda Group, and cancel all business cooperation between Tianlong Group and them, permanently blacklisting them. With that, he hung up the phone. Ji Bo almost burst out laughing, muttering, Oh, Yi, if I didn't know you're actually a waste, I would have almost been fooled by your performance. Lai Jingye laughed, Haha, letting Tianlong Group cancel our cooperation? Simply a fool's dream. Xie Bin sneered. This jumping clown is just struggling in vain. Other guests joined in the laughter, filling the entire venue with a cheerful atmosphere. Xiao Qingsheng's face darkened, looking at Yi Tianqi, he was already thoroughly disappointed in him. In the distance, Rong Mei Yuan furrowed her beautiful brows. Seems like they are pondering something. HMPH. It's exactly 8 o'clock in the evening. People in the venue all stood up involuntarily, their eyes fixed on the entrance eagerly awaiting the arrival of the Dragon Lord and that legendary figure. With a creak, the doors of the venue slowly opened. Clack, clack, clack. A woman in a red tight skirt, paired with black stockings, and a sexy figure, walked into the venue gracefully in high heels. She is none other than the vice president of Tianlong Group, Qian Chinian. Seeing only her entering, everyone couldn't help but exchange puzzled looks, wondering where the Dragon Lord and that important figure were. Jibo Duan took the initiative to approach and respectfully asked, Ms. Qian, where is the Dragon Lord? Why haven't they arrived yet? Qian Chinian glanced at him indifferently, didn't answer, and walked straight to the front of the venue. Facing the crowd, she solemnly said, I am here on behalf of the Dragon Lord to announce three things, please listen carefully. The people present had different expressions, vaguely sensing an ominous sign. Qian Chinian raised a finger and continued, Firstly, tonight's bidding session is temporarily cancelled. The Dragon Lord has already left. There was an uproar at the scene. How could this happen? The bidding session was clearly arranged properly. Why was it cancelled? Did the Dragon Lord say it himself? Why? I was hoping to meet that important figure through this session. What should we do now? Facing the discussions of the crowd, Qian Chinian remained expressionless, raised a second finger, and said, Secondly, the result of the 10 billion order bid will be reselected at a later time. All eyes instantly gathered on Sha Qingsheng. She had just won the bid, and now it had to be reselected. For Sha Qingsheng, it was like falling from heaven to the depths of despair. Her face turned pale, full of disbelief, she asked, Ms. Qian, why? Qian Qinian coldly replied, It's the Dragon Lord's order, no reasons given. Sha Qingsheng trembled all over, her hands clenched into fists, finding it hard to accept this result. And Assistant Sun was dumbfounded, completely at a loss. Qian Chinian raised a third finger and said coldly, Lastly, according to the Dragon Lord's order, the three of you, Jibo Duan, Lai Jingye, and Xie Bin, must kneel down immediately and face judgment. Jibo Duan and the other two were stunned, looking at each other in confusion. Jibo Duan couldn't help but ask, What have the three of us done wrong? Why do we have to kneel and await judgment? Qian Qinyang narrowed her cold eyes and indifferently said, Do you want to defy the will of the Dragon Lord? Ji Bo Duan and the other two trembled at once. 
It was well known that the Dragonlord was a terrifying presence known as the King of Jongnan, all-knowing. With just a word, he could shatter them and their families to pieces. Who would dare to disobey his orders? So, they could only helplessly kneel in public, waiting for Qian Shinang's judgment. Qian Qinyang coldly announced, Ji Bo Duan, Lai Jingye, Xie Bin, you three have caused trouble in front of everyone tonight. From today on, Tian Long Group will terminate all cooperation with you and blacklist you forever. Good luck. With that, Qian Qinyang left the venue straight away. These words echoed like thunder in the minds of Ji Bo Duan and the others. It is worth noting that the Dragon Group is a giant in Jiangnan City, with close ties to the Jiangnan Ji family, Ningyuan Group, and Hongda Group. Once cooperation is terminated and blacklisted, the losses incurred would be immeasurable. Perhaps, the three families would have no place to stand in Jiangnan City. Lai Jingye and Xie Bin were first mentally devastated, their eyes full of despair, shaking their heads and sighing, it's over. Completely over. How did it come to this? Ji Bo Duan sat paralyzed on the ground, trembling, murmuring to himself, why did this happen? Why? Suddenly, he seemed to realize something. Suddenly, they realized that the three things announced by the money bus, which turned out to be completely identical to the three things mentioned by Yi Tianqi on the phone just now. This coincidence seemed somewhat unbelievable. The people present all showed expressions of shock and fear. Lai Jingye and Xie Bin trembled uncontrollably, filled with regret and fear. If they had known about Yi Tianqi's background, even with great courage, they would not have dared to put any pressure on him. As for Xiao Qingcheng, her expression was full of disbelief. Biting her lip, she asked Yi Tianqi, Did you do all of this? Even my winning bid was arranged by you? Yi Tianqi calmly replied, Didn't I already tell you? Xiao Qingcheng's body trembled, as if she had something to say but couldn't. Could it be that Yi Tianqi was the big shot behind the money boss? Could she be the one playing the clown? How ironic this situation was. Thinking of this, Xiao Qingcheng, who was usually arrogant and proud, couldn't help but stagger and almost fall. Fortunately, she was promptly supported by assistant Sun. With tears in her eyes, Xiao Qingcheng said, Am, am I wrong? Assistant Sun quickly comforted her, President Xiao, how could it be your fault? You must have been deceived by that useless person. How could he be the big shot? I don't believe it, there must be some misunderstanding. Xiao Qingcheng smiled bitterly and shook her head. She didn't want to believe that Yi Tianqi had a deep background, but the facts in front of her were inexplicable. Just then, a group of burly men in black suddenly surged in at the door, nearly a hundred of them. Each person held weapons such as knives and sticks, completely surrounding the venue. Following them was a swollen-faced blonde youth, full of hostility. It was none other than Zhang Chunlei, who had been repelled by Yi Tianqi before. The people present were extremely shocked. How did this uninvited guest appear again? Zhang Chunlei glanced at everyone present and smirked sinisterly, I'm surprised to see your astonished expressions. Aren't we still holding the bidding conference? Carry on. The people present looked at each other. The bidding conference had already been cancelled, so what was the point of continuing? Ji Bo suddenly realized something. He cautiously asked, Young Master Zhang, did you actually have the money boss cancel this bidding conference? Zhang Chunlei was taken aback, not understanding Ji Bo's intention. Seeing that Zhang Chunlei did not respond, Ji Bo mistakenly thought that the other party had confirmed his guess. It suddenly dawned on me that only you have the ability to handle this, and this matter has nothing to do with the incompetence of Yi Tianqi. Lai Jingye asked in confusion, Ji De Shao, what do you mean? Ji Bo explained, don't you understand? The Dragon Lord must have learned about Yi Tianqi offending Zhang Shao and guessed that Zhang Shao would inform the Tiger Lord. So, after weighing the pros and cons, he sent Qian Zong to announce those three things, with the purpose of not offending the Tiger Lord. Everyone nodded and agreed, saying it makes sense. Just as Zhang Xiao went back to seek help from the Tiger Lord, with the Tiger Lord intervening, the Dragon Lord couldn't afford to lose face. With the Tiger Lord's character, if he can't get something, no one else can either. Therefore, he decided to cancel the bidding conference and the project originally awarded to the Xiao family must be reselected. As for Ji De Xiao, Lai Zong, and Xie Zong, the three of them must not have shown enough respect to Zhang Xiao before, so the Dragon Lord chose to distance himself from them to avoid trouble. That guy surnamed Yi seemed to have already guessed this would happen, deliberately pretending on the phone, showing how cunning he is. I always said, how could a waste son-in-law kicked out by the Xiao family dare to give orders to the Dragon Lord? Hearing everyone's comments, Xiao Qingcheng's expression changed. She couldn't help but ask Zhang Chunlei, is is it really you who did all these things? 
Zhang Chenlei pondered with his chin in his hand. Actually, he only went back to get reinforcements and didn't ask Zhang Xiaohu to contact the Dragon Lord to announce the three things. But now everyone is blaming him, so he naturally wouldn't miss this opportunity to show off. So he nodded, proudly replied, Yes. Scared of me making you wet your pants? Ha ha. This answer completely revealed his true colors. Xiao Qingsheng ignored Zhang Chenlei and turned to Yi Tianqi, disappointment evident in her eyes, saying, Yi Tianqi, at a certain moment just now, I really thought you had become powerful, able to make the Dragon Lord listen to your advice and make those who used to look down on you regret their mistake. Hey, to be honest, I felt a bit relieved, at least to some extent, it represented the man I once knew hadn't become so incompetent. She suddenly raised her voice, but, but now you make me sick. We grew up together, married for three years, and I have never found it so difficult to endure you as I do now. I hate people who deceive me the most. Yi Tianqi, sitting in the chair, lowered his eyes and said calmly, in the end, you just don't trust me. Xiao Qingsheng sneered, hey! The reality is right in front of us, who else would believe you? Yi Tianqi shook his head, knowing that no matter how he explained, Xiao Qingsheng would not believe him. It doesn't matter, since the two have already filed for divorce, he doesn't need to waste energy explaining anything to her. At this moment, Ji Bo approached Zhang Chunlei quickly, flattering, Zhang Xiao, you may not be aware that after you left earlier, a guy named Yi Tianqi was insulting you behind your back and even argued that the three things announced by the Dragon Lord were all his orders. It's simply a slap in your face. He must be taught a lesson. In Ji Bo's view, so much loss of face tonight is all Yi Tianqi's fault. Zhang Chenlei's face darkened, cursing, Oh my god, coming back this time is specifically to teach that bastard a lesson. Pointing at Yi Tianqi, he ordered, You scoundrel, don't you kneel down and apologize to this young master? Cut off one hand, maybe tonight I can leave you a way to keep your whole body intact. The crowd quickly followed Zhang Chunlei's lead, aligning themselves against Yi Tianqi and exerting various pressures. Are you all deaf? Can't you hear young master Zhang's orders? Zhang Chunlei shouted in frustration. Do you think just because you know some martial arts, you can act all high and mighty? He continued, warning Yi Tianqi of the power of the Black Tiger Gang, a formidable force with 3,000 brothers. Even a single spit from one of us is enough to drown you. Facing the pressure from the crowd, Yi Tianqi leaned back in his chair, appearing relaxed. He calmly addressed Zhang Chunlei, I spared you once earlier. Are you so eager to come back and meet your end? The scene erupted into chaos. How dare you be so arrogant in this situation? This isn't just about being conceited, it's about seeking death. Zhang Chunlei's forehead bulged with veins as he gritted his teeth. You brought this upon yourself, he exclaimed pointing at Yi Tianqi and ordering loudly, brothers, cut off his limbs. Kill him. At his command. Suddenly, Xiao Qingsheng instinctively covered her eyes in fear. Everyone else also realized that Yi Tianz was about to pay the price for his arrogance. However, just as the attackers were about to strike, everything suddenly blurred before their eyes. Yi Tianz, who had been sitting there, disappeared without a trace. Not only that, even the chair he was sitting on mysteriously vanished. Where did he go? Ah! The attackers were all confused, and at that moment, a familiar scream came from behind. Everyone quickly turned around to see Zhang Chunlei knocked to the ground, while Yi Tianz had somehow appeared next to him with the chair, his right foot firmly planted on Zhang Chunlei's head. The movement was so swift that no one in the room could see clearly what had happened in those brief two seconds. Shock was written all over everyone's faces, including Xiao Qingcheng, who breathed a sigh of relief when she saw Yi Tianz unharmed. Zhang Chenlei, on the other hand, never expected that despite bringing so many people with him, he failed to subdue Yi Tianz and was instead subdued himself. He threatened loudly, move your foot quickly, or else. Yi Tianz looked down at him, did not move his foot, but instead applied a little more pressure and asked, or else what? Ah! It hurts so much! Zhang Chenlei screamed in agony. He tried to break free, but found Yi Tianz's right foot as steady as a rock, no matter how hard he struggled, it was all in vain. This scene made everyone present gasp in shock, their faces pale. If something happened to Zhang Chunlei, the furious Tiger Lord would surely eliminate everyone present that night. And the situation was indeed heading in that worrisome direction. At this moment, one of the Golden Knights of the Black Tiger Society, Feng Lei, had already called the Tiger Lord for help. Ji Bo Duan anxiously reprimanded, let Yi Tianz release Zhang Xiao. He brought this upon himself, don't involve us. Lai Jingye, Xie Bin, and others also threatened, demanding that Yi Tianz let go of Zhang Chunlei. Yi Tianz smirked coldly, if you want me to let him go, that's fine, 
so who's willing to lie here in his place? Ji Bo Duan and the others looked at each other. How could they dare to take such a life-threatening risk? Xiao Qingcheng frowned and said displeased, Yi Tians, do you have to involve everyone before you're satisfied? Yi Tians calmly replied, If that's what you think, I won't argue. If you're afraid of drowning, you can walk as far as you want. After all, your legs are attached to your own body. Xiao Qingcheng was speechless. She did not expect Yi Tians to be so stubborn. Whether he was confident or seeking revenge, his intentions were now unclear. Just then, Feng Lei suddenly shouted, Zhang Xiao, the message has been relayed. The Tiger Lord will personally lead the brothers and arrive in ten minutes. Upon hearing this news, a hint of madness appeared on Zhang Chenlei's face, he grinned and said, Yi Tians, did you hear that? My uncle is coming, ha ha ha. You're doomed. Release your foot now. Yi Tians once again increased the pressure slightly. With a smile, I said that Zhang Xiaohu only has to kneel and kowtow in front of me, just let him come. Zhang Chenlei screamed in pain like a pig being slaughtered. Seeing this, Feng Lei's face turned extremely dark, and he ordered, Brothers, guard all the doors of the venue. Wait for Lord Hu to bring his brothers over. Before that, we must not let this guy surnamed Yi escape. Then, he coldly instructed the guests present, As for you, if you don't want to be covered in blood later, just go back where you came from. These guests were all frightened, afraid of being implicated. At this moment, they didn't care about their image as the wealthy and powerful, and they all rushed towards the exit to escape. They cursed their parents for not giving them an extra pair of legs. Ji Bo Duan quickly said to Xiao Qingcheng, Let's go, Lord Hu is coming soon. Someone will definitely die tonight. Xiao Qingcheng looked at Yi Tianza, lightly bit her lip, and replied, You go, I'll stay here. Ji Bo Duan widened his eyes and said, Are you crazy? Zhang Chenlei has set his eyes on you. If you don't escape now, do you know what the consequences will be if you stay here? Xiao Qingcheng shook her head and said, Regardless, the conflict with the Black Tiger Club tonight is because of the bidding between the Xiao family and them. I need to stay here to give Lord Hu an explanation. Besides, since I have already attracted Zhang Chunlei's attention, what's the point of running away? You can't outrun your fate. Ji Bo Duan, seeing Xiao Qingcheng's resolute attitude, reluctantly said, Then you stay here, I'll leave first. After Ji Bo Duan left, Xiao Qingcheng ordered his assistant son to leave. You go too. This has nothing to do with you. Sun bit his teeth and said, Mr. Xiao, take care of yourself. I will find a way after I go out, and then ran away. Soon, the guests at the venue ran away, leaving only Yi Tianza and Xiao Qingcheng. Wait, at this moment, there was also Rong Meiyu sitting calmly in the distance. Seeing this, a little brother stepped forward, pointed in Rong Meiyu's direction, and asked Feng Lei, Feng Zhe, how should we deal with that woman? Feng Lei frowned. On the surface, that woman appeared charming and exquisite, but the aura of a superior person emanating from her was quite oppressive. His intuition told him that the other party's identity was not simple. So he coldly said, don't bother with her. Let's make a plan after Lord Hu arrives. Yes. At this moment, a storm was sweeping across the entire Jiangnan city. The 10 nightclubs, 20 KTVs, and 30 clubs under the Black Tiger Club all received orders at the same time. All the brothers, armed with weapons, drove from all directions towards the Cloud Top Hotel. Every road in the city was filled with a dense fleet of cars rushing. Pedestrians on the roadside were scared and avoided, discussing, Oh my God! Those are all Lord Who's people. With so many people acting together, something big is definitely going to happen. Who is so bold to provoke the Black Tiger Club to this extent? With 3,000 brothers from the Black Tiger Club mobilizing, Jiangnan City is afraid it's going to change dramatically. In a black Rolls Royce heading to the Cloud Top Hotel, Zhang Xiaohu in a Jiangshan suit sat in the back seat, with a cigar in his mouth. With one hand wrapped around a graceful woman, the other hand gently caressed her smooth and fair thigh. At this moment, his expression was cold and terrifying. It had been a long time since he left that decadent city, and few dared to treat him so brazenly. Hidden within him was a touch of loneliness and helplessness, yet it was buried beneath his icy exterior. This aloof attitude made him appear mysterious and untouchable in the eyes of others. The whole city of Jiangmen is shrouded in worry. In the living room of the Han family, Han Ruoyan's expression turned serious when he heard that Zhang Xiaohu was looking for Yi Tianqi trouble. Sitting on the sofa, Han Tianzheng exclaimed in surprise, How dare this kid! First causing trouble at the Dragon Lord's guild meeting, forcing the guild to cancel. Now offending Xiaohu, making enemies of two bigwigs in Jiangmen in one night, he's really asking for trouble. Next to him, Li Shukan quickly added, 
Thank goodness we refused the engagement with him yesterday. Otherwise, our family would have been in big trouble. Han Ruiyan hesitated for a moment and asked, Dad, can you contact Xiao Hu and ask him to spare Yi Tianqi? Both Han Tianzheng and Li Shukin were taken aback. Han Tianzheng replied sternly, Yun Yun, I called you back home hoping you would not get involved with him anymore. Now you want me to beg Xiao Hu to let him off the hook, what are you thinking? Li Shukin frowned and said, Daughter, have you been deceived by that guy? Or have you really fallen for him? Han Ruiyan hurriedly explained, Mom, how could I have fallen for him? I just feel that although Yi Tianxi's actions tonight were a bit extreme, fundamentally it's not his fault, after all, he was provoked first by someone else. As a bystander, he naturally has to stand on the side of justice. Han Tianzheng sighed and said, You have to understand, adults only value interests, justice is often shaped by the victors. Han Tianzheng resolutely refused, other things can be negotiated, but not this. Now Zhang Yun is about to undergo a huge change, the more critical the moment, the more careful we must be, we must not stand on the wrong side, you have to understand, dad. Han Ruiyan wanted to say more, but was interrupted by Han Tianzheng. No need to say more. Rest early, at Zhang Yun first hospital. Zhang Huilin and Xiao Nan were shocked when they heard assistant son's phone call. Zhang Huilin angrily said, this despicable guy Yi Tianqi not only harmed our Xiao family, but also implicated Qingsheng, he's truly heartless. Xiao Nan worriedly said, Sister is still at the Yunding Hotel venue, Xiao Hu will be there soon, what should we do? Zhang Huilin paced anxiously, what should we do? What should we do? At this time, the old man was resting in the ward, and no one at home could salvage the situation. She suddenly had an idea and quickly called Ji Bo Duan, the call was answered quickly. Ji Bo Duan asked somewhat flustered, Auntie, what's the matter? Zhang Huilin hurriedly said, Young Master Ji, please find a way to save Qingsheng. As long as you can save her, I will support your marriage. This condition would have been readily accepted by Ji Bo Duan under normal circumstances. But the situation is not optimistic now. He casually replied, Got it, let's hang up for now. After hesitating for a moment, Ji Bo Duan called his father Ji Wuli, on the other side. Xiao Nan hesitated and asked, Mom, can Ji De Xiao really help? Zhang Huilin worriedly replied, Although he is there, it should be fine, but I am more concerned about the situation at the Cloud Summit Hotel. Come with me to take a look. Xiao Nan's face turned pale and hesitantly said, Mom, maybe. It would be better if you go by yourself. Right now, the Cloud Summit Hotel is like a dangerous place, going there is like walking into a trap. Zhang Huilin angrily scolded, Nonsense. She's your sister. If you don't come with me, who else will? With that, she grabbed Xiao Nan's ear and dragged her out of the hospital. In the business hall of the Cloud Summit Hotel, nearly a hundred members of the Black Tiger Club stared fiercely at Yi Tianza in the center of the hall, their eyes full of hatred, almost wanting to devour him alive. Yi Tianza, on the other hand, looked calm and composed. Zhang Chunlei, under his feet, was already beginning to lack oxygen, making silent wheezing sounds, unable to continue cursing. Feng Lei said expressionlessly, Yi, the Tiger Master will arrive in less than five minutes. I suggest you let go of Zhang Xiao. I can plead for you in front of the Tiger Master and let you die quickly. Yi Tianzi disdainfully replied, There's no time to persuade me. You better hurry and urge your Tiger Master. If he arrives late, it will be the end for his nephew. Feng Lei and his men clenched their teeth, furious at this arrogant guy. This guy is too audacious. At this moment, Xiao Qingcheng took a few steps forward, frowned and asked, Are you not satisfied with causing such a mess? How far do you want to take this? Yi Tianzi retorted, Satisfied or not? I don't understand what you're talking about. Xiao Qingcheng self-mockingly smiled, It's already this late, and you still pretend not to care? Aren't you resentful because I asked for a divorce, trying to prove that I will regret the decision by escalating things continuously? You keep creating trouble, inciting anger, until it's out of control. Xiao Qingsheng felt more and more aggrieved as she spoke, tears streaming down her face. She, who was always proud and confident, showed an unprecedented vulnerability at this moment. Seeing her tears, Yi Tianzi's heart tightened as if pricked by a needle. He took a deep breath and said seriously, I never meant that. I've said before that tonight's conflict with the Black Tiger Club has nothing to do with you. You can leave any time you want, with me here, no one can stop you. Xiao Qingsheng wiped her tears, shook her head, and said, I won't leave. After all, tonight's incident stems from the bidding. I need to explain it to the Tiger Master. You, on the other hand, have caused enough trouble. 
You've heard my apology. Please adjust your attitude, let go of Zhang Xiao, and try to get a chance to apologize to the Tiger Master. I will try my best to plead for you. I don't want to see you die here. Hearing this, Yi Tianzi slightly furrowed his brows and asked, Why? Xiao Qingsheng lightly bit her lip, unabashedly said, At least until we formally receive the divorce certificate, you and I are still legally married. I can't stand by and watch. It's my duty as a wife. A warm feeling surged in Yi Tianzi's heart as he calmly said, I've said, tonight, no one can harm me. Of course, even if I say so, you won't believe it. Before he could finish speaking, Feng Lei immediately ordered the brothers of the Black Tiger Gang in the venue to quickly prepare to welcome the Tiger Lord. Everyone hurriedly ran to the entrance of the venue and stood respectfully. Xiao Qingcheng, pale-faced, urgently urged Yi Tianqi, why are you still sitting there? Stand up quickly to greet the Tiger Lord, apologize to him, and try to save your life. However, Yi Tianqi shook his head and said, stand up to greet Zhang Xiaohu. Is he even worthy? Xiao Qingcheng was almost going crazy. Does this guy really think that he can confront the entire Black Tiger Gang of 3,000 brothers just because he knows some martial arts? Is he out of his mind? Clang! 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 Heavy footsteps could be heard approaching the entrance. The members of the Black Tiger Gang in the venue immediately bowed their heads in unison and shouted, Tiger Lord! Following that, a middle-aged man dressed in a Zhangshan suit, with neatly combed hair and a cigar in his mouth, walked into the hall. He was tall and extraordinary. The venue suddenly quieted down, with everyone's eyes focused on him, afraid of making any movement. They were all overwhelmed by his aura. Then, a henchman rushed in and respectfully reported to Zhang Xiaohu, Tiger Lord, all 3,000 brothers of the Black Tiger Gang have arrived. The outside of the Yunning Hotel has been completely surrounded, not even a fly can get out. Zhang Xiaohu nodded slightly, then asked Feng Lei, what happened tonight? He had only heard that Zhang Chunlei had suffered a bit of a loss at the Bidding Merchant Association, and had brought in some reinforcements, but he didn't expect to be controlled and threatened with his life. He was actually unclear about the cause and process of the matter. Feng Lei quickly explained, Tiger Lord, the cause of the incident was that the Xiao family used despicable means to snatch the bid that originally belonged to Zhang Xiao. When Zhang Xiao went to reason with them, he was beaten by Xiao Qingsheng's husband and subjected to various insults, even being threatened with his life. As for the reasons and consequences of the matter, I am not very clear either. He downplayed the situation, shifting all the blame onto Xiao Qingcheng and Yi Tianqi. Obviously, they wanted to put these two in a desperate situation. Xiao Qingcheng, upon hearing this, turned pale. At this moment, she couldn't care much about it, she gritted her teeth, walked forward. She explained with a forced smile, Tiger Lord, I am Xiao Qingcheng. The situation is not as he described it. The result of this bid was actually set by that big shot. Zhang Xiao was the one who started the fight, and even demanded that our Xiao family give up a 10 billion order, and even asked me to sleep with him. As for my husband, it was also a last resort. Perhaps he was a bit too forceful, but please spare his life, Tiger Lord. Zhang Xiaohu's cold gaze fell on Xiao Qingsheng, and her powerful aura almost made her feel suffocated. He sneered, Do I need you to teach me how to do things? Xiao Qingcheng's body trembled, and a very ominous premonition surged in her heart. Zhang Xiaohu raised his voice, In Jiangnan City, no matter who, no matter for what reason, anyone who dares to harm my nephew will meet their doom. With these words, the surrounding subordinates became extremely excited. Yes, this is our Lord Tiger, imposing and unreasonable. If you dare to be enemies with our Black Tiger Gang, you must be prepared for this outcome. You, little girl, better think twice before acting. Kill. 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 The subordinates of the Black Tiger Gang seemed to be inspired, displaying a formidable and intimidating stance, making Xiao Qingcheng unable to help but break out in a cold sweat. She instinctively turned to Yi Tianqi, trying to remind him to quickly stand up and apologize. However, it was too late. Because Zhang Xiaohu was already striding towards him, a fierce aura surging like a flood. As he walked, he coldly said, You, seeing me coming over, still lazily sitting in that chair, not letting go of my nephew, could it be? Before he could finish his sentence, Yi Tianqi slowly raised his head. In the moment their eyes met, a thunderous sound rang out. Zhang Xiaohu was startled, and the cigar in his hand fell to the ground. He couldn't help but rub his eyes, his expression changing suddenly. It's, it's him? In that instant, his memory went back to the days in the fallen city several years ago. He was once a powerful figure, but there, he became a well-known bottom-tier character. Any criminal there was more fierce and terrifying than himself. 
However, no matter how terrifying the criminals were, in front of Yi Tianqi, they could only bow down and obey. Later, because of his outstanding performance, Zhang Xiaohu gained Yi Tianqi's recognition and had his sentence reduced by two and a half years. After returning to Jiangnan City, he founded the Black Tiger Gang. Although he now existed like an underground emperor, that profound memory was still like a nightmare, unforgettable. Seeing Yi Tianqi again at this moment, deep fear carved into his bone marrow, his legs trembling. Subconsciously, he wanted to kneel and pay respects. However, Yi Tianqi's warning gaze immediately made him shut his mouth. He realized that the fallen city and Yi Tianqi's identity were absolutely confidential. He dared not act rashly and didn't know what to say. Stiffening in place, sweat pouring down his back, he waited for Yi Tianqi's instructions. The brothers of the Black Tiger Gang misunderstood the situation, thinking that Zhang Xiaohu's silence was putting pressure on Yi Tianqi. They whispered to each other, Look, that guy surnamed Yi has been scared stiff by Lord Tiger's aura, not even daring to fart. Lord Tiger is truly extraordinary, still calm and collected, worthy of our study. Xiao Qingsheng, anxious, hurried to Yi Tianqi's side, grabbing his arm and urging, What are you still dawdling for? Release Zhang Xiao and then stand up to apologize to Lord Tiger. Seeing Yi Tianqi still unmoved, her tone even carrying a hint of crying, Are you trying to get yourself killed? Yi Tianqi smiled faintly, Don't worry. I believe that Lord Tiger must be a reasonable person. With that, he kicked Zhang Chunlei out. Zhang Chunlei slid on the ground for several meters until he stopped at Zhang Xiaohu's feet. Zhang Chunlei struggled to breathe, finally opening his eyes with a hint of cunning and cruelty on his face. He pleaded with Zhang Xiaohu, Uncle, please order the punishment of this despicable man, let him fall from grace, and witness his own tragic fate. I want all brothers to participate, to make him taste the pain. The members of the Black Tiger Society were filled with excitement, eagerly awaiting Zhang Xiaohu's command, ready to act immediately. Xiao Qingsheng was so scared that he almost despaired and closed his eyes. However, at this critical moment, something unexpected happened. Bang! Zhang Chunlei was fiercely kicked away by Zhang Xiaohu, sliding several meters with blood gushing from his nose and mouth, and two teeth falling on the ground. The sudden violent scene left the onlookers stunned, completely unaware of what had happened. Zhang Chunlei, holding his injured cheek, said in confusion, Uncle, you've got it wrong. You should be beating that bastard surnamed Yi, right? Hearing this, Zhang Xiaohu's face became even darker. I'm going to beat you. He strode towards Zhang Chunlei, continuing to kick and hit him frantically. While kicking, he angrily rebuked, I asked you to manage the company, hoping you would run it well, not cause trouble. At this moment, Zhang Xiaohu was consumed by extreme anger. This foolish nephew had offended the young master, even tried to seduce his wife? Simply seeking death, don't involve me. With several consecutive kicks, Zhang Chunlei's nasal bridge collapsed, emitting screams of pain. Fan Lei and the brothers of the Black Tiger Society were dumbfounded, at a loss. Xiao Qingsheng was equally stunned. What on earth is going on? The Tiger Lord was supposed to avenge Zhang Chunlei, why did he start by attacking him instead? And with such ferocity, Zhang Chunlei, in agony, begged, Uncle, I, I was wrong. Please don't hit me, I know I was wrong. Zhang Xiaohu viciously kicked him again, get lost. This kick knocked Zhang Chunlei unconscious, his face covered in blood, almost unrecognizable. Ignoring him, Zhang Xiaohu walked straight towards Xiao Qingcheng. He smiled kindly and said, I'm sorry, General Xiao, it's my fault for not disciplining him well, causing trouble for you. I apologize to you and your husband on her behalf. As he spoke, he glanced at Yi Tianza secretly, relieved to see no anger in him. However, everyone who heard this stood still in shock. They couldn't understand how the usually arrogant Tiger Lord suddenly became so polite. Xiao Qingcheng was stunned for a few seconds before nodding dazedly. It's, it's okay, Lord Tiger, you're too kind. Zhang Xiaohu said earnestly, regardless, the Black Tiger Society was in the wrong first. To show our sincerity, I will prepare a generous gift for the Xiao family, please accept it, General Xiao. With that, he hurriedly excused himself, afraid of being detained by Yi Tianza. As for the other brothers of the Black Tiger Society, they could only leave with curiosity, taking the unconscious Zhang Chunlei with them. Rong Meiyin, who was watching the scene from a distance, had a look of surprise and curiosity in her eyes. She clearly saw the drastic change in Zhang Xiaohu's attitude, which seemed to have started from the moment he saw Yi Tianza. She speculated that Zhang Xiaohu might know Yi Tianza, even feeling wary of him. This man is truly unpredictable. Rong Meiyin murmured softly to herself. 
At the Chamber of Commerce, Rong Mei-in learned that she would represent the Rong family at the birthday banquet of the head of the Ji family, Ji Wuli. She sneered, indicating that her second uncle was eager to seize the opportunity to support his power. She decided to play along and investigate Yi Tianza, preparing detailed information. After her maid received the order, Rong Mei-in left the Chamber of Commerce, leaving only Yi Tianza and Xiao Qingcheng. Xiao Qingcheng still felt unreal, thinking that the Lord Hu would be angry but unexpectedly the Lord Hu apologized and sent gifts, leaving her confused. Turning to Yi Tianza, she found that he seemed to have expected this result long ago, which made her come up with a bold guess. Suddenly, Zhang Huilin and Xiao Nan rushed over anxiously, worried that Xiao Qingcheng was injured. Xiao Qingcheng reassured her mother, wondering why the Lord Hu suddenly softened. Zhang Huilin explained that it was thanks to young Master Ji's help, but Xiao Qingcheng still felt something was amiss. Just then, Ji Bo swaggered in and admitted that he had helped contact the Lord Hu to let them off the hook. Hearing Ji Bo's explanation, Yi Tianza couldn't help but burst into laughter. He felt confused by Bo's constant attempts to take all the credit for himself this season. Zhang Huilin, feeling low, accused him, You useless person, why do you always smile so much? Yi Tianqi nodded firmly, with a determined expression. Zhang Huilin was stunned, and Xiao Qingcheng and the others stood there dumbfounded. Ji Bo Duan burst into laughter, and his laughter filled the entire room. He said, Young man surnamed Yi, you are quite humorous. How could the Lord Hu possibly pay attention to a waste like you? Yi Tianqi retorted, So, according to your logic, Zhang Xiaohu is showing respect to your father. This counter question made Xiao Qingcheng and the others look towards Ji Bo Duan in unison. In their view, how could Yi Tianqi's identity possibly make the Lord Hu take notice? But at the same time, the Zhang Ji family did not have such influence either. Ji Bo Duan knew exactly what they were thinking. So he casually put his hands in his pockets and said smugly, as you said, the Zhang Ji family cannot easily make the Lord Hu compromise, but if the wrong family in the provincial capital intervenes, even the Lord Hu would have to submit. Xiao Qingcheng couldn't help but ask, what does this have to do with the wrong family in the provincial capital? Ji Bo Duan explained triumphantly, you may not know, Due to some connections, my father has a good relationship with the top executives of the Rong family, and the Rong family is planning to expand their business in Zhongnan City. Naturally, our Zhongnan Ji family will be taken care of by them. Once my father mentions this relationship, how could the Lord Hu ignore the face of the Rong family? This news was actually just told to him by Ji Wuli when he sought help from his father. Ji Bo Duan thought he would receive severe criticism. After all, the bidding event at the business association tonight had damaged the reputation of the Ji family, which was significant. But unexpectedly, his father only criticized him briefly and did not get angry. The reason was the good news that the wrong family in the provincial capital was planning to enter Zhongnan city. After all, the benefits brought by the cooperation between the Ji family and the wrong family far exceeded the cooperation with the Tianlong group. In the joy of his father, Ji Bo Duan took the opportunity to bring up the matter of seeking the Lord Hu's mercy, and Ji Wuli agreed casually before hanging up the phone. Not long after, Ji Bo Duan saw the Lord Hu leading his team away. So he naturally believed that his father had played a key role. Xiao Qingcheng and the others listened to Ji Bo Duan's explanation, both surprised and suddenly enlightened. Ji De Xiao is indeed outstanding, always able to step forward in times of crisis for our Xiao family. Auntie, you really didn't misjudge him. Zhang Huilin exclaimed. Xiao Nan turned to glare at Yi Tianqi and disdainfully said, Take a look at yourself, then compare it to Ji De Xiao. You still have the nerve to say that the Lord Hu is giving you face, it's really ridiculous. Assistant Sun sneered, I think he's just jealous of Ji De Xiao's excellence, with no skills of his own, just envious of others. Yi Tianqi asked Ji Bo Duan, Do you have evidence that it was your father who made the phone call to resolve the situation? Ji Bo Duan sneered and said, Do you need evidence? I'll show you right now. With that, he dialed Ji Wuli's number. When the call connected, Ji Wuli, hearing Ji Bo Duan's voice, asked somewhat impatiently, Why are you calling again? Ji Bo Duan said, Dad, it was you who called the Lord Hu just now, mentioning the wrong family in the provincial capital, which made the Lord Hu back off, right? Ji Wuli, displeased, said, I'm busy with the birthday banquet, I don't have time for this. Let me finish my work, and then we'll talk. Then he hung up. Ji Bo Duan looked bewildered, with his eyes twitching uncontrollably. His father hadn't contacted the Tiger Lord yet. Whose conspiracy could this be? Yi Tianza smiled and asked, Young Master Ji, what did your father say on the phone? Share it with us. 
Yi Tianza had sharp hearing and naturally heard the phone conversation clearly. But Ji Bo Duan cleared his throat and lied, my father's handling it, what's it to you? Yi Tianza furrowed his brow. Ji Bo Duan's shamelessness was simply outrageous. Xiao Qingcheng and the others didn't hear the phone conversation, so they easily believed Ji Bo Duan's words. Zhang Huilin angrily cursed, bastard, shut up, don't falsely accuse young master Ji. Yi Tianza interrupted her, saying, he's lying, the fact is. But Xiao Qingcheng suddenly cut him off, saying, you shut up. Yi Tianza looked at her in confusion. Xiao Qingcheng said solemnly, tonight, you caused such a big trouble, even involving the Tiger Lord personally. If it weren't for young master Ji's intervention, your life would have been in danger long ago. And now you don't even say thank you, but instead try to shift blame onto others. I don't understand. What did you go through to become this kind of person? Is this your true self? Yi Tianzi's pupils slightly contracted, do you really think I'm a bad person? Xiao Qingcheng affirmed, aren't you? Yi Tianzi felt somewhat stunned. Then he smiled bitterly and said, regardless of how you see me, just a reminder, don't forget we have to go to the Civil Affairs Bureau tomorrow morning to get the divorce certificate. Xiao Qingcheng was about to nod in agreement but was interrupted by Ji Bo Duan, this matter might have to wait for another two days. Zhang Huilin asked in confusion, young master Ji, why the wait? Ji Bo Duan replied, only after Qingcheng and that waste receive the divorce certificate at my house, then you can. Ji Bo Duan said, casting a meaningful look at Xiao Qingcheng. Xiao Qingcheng asked puzzled, what's the matter? Ji Bo Duan mysteriously said, the day after tomorrow is my father's 60th birthday celebration. As the representative of the Rong family, Miss Rong Mei Yuan will personally attend to offer birthday wishes. She is coming to Jiangmen City this time to deepen cooperation with some business partners and enjoy the support of the Rong family. My father's birthday banquet is a perfect opportunity to meet her. If you can leave a deep impression on her at the banquet, combined with our Ji family's mediation, I believe you will have the opportunity to become business partners. This opportunity is much better than winning a hundred billion order from the Tianlong group. Upon hearing this, everyone present was shocked and excited. Yi Tianzi's expression even showed a hint of surprise. Rong Mei Yuan, the young lady of the Rong family, wasn't she also his fiance? He was planning to go to the provincial capital in a few days to cancel the engagement. How did she also come to Jiangnan City? Xiao Qingcheng exclaimed excitedly, I've heard of Rong Mei Yuan's name a long time ago. She is an outstanding figure of the new generation of the Rong family and has achieved many legendary feats in business. To be honest, over the years, I have always looked up to her and wanted to become a woman like her. Assistant Sun also said excitedly, I didn't expect her to come to Jiangnan City, that's amazing. Due to certain reasons, Rong Mei Yuan has never appeared in public, so no one knows what she looks like. This time we finally have the chance to see her in person. Ji Bo Duan smiled and said, Qingcheng, to become a business partner of the Rong family, you need to prepare well these two days and show yourself at my father's birthday banquet. Xiao Qingcheng nodded excitedly and gratefully said, thank you so much for your advice. I will immediately immerse myself in the preparation work and make sure not to waste a single minute. He then embarked on the intense preparation work. Yi Tianqi had long been accustomed to such situations. He sarcastically laughed and said, Oh, Xiaozang is really busy, whether it's the day she asked for a divorce or the day she came to collect the divorce certificate, work always comes first for her. Xia Qingcheng's eyes flashed with a hint of tremor, feeling his dissatisfaction. However, she had no intention of explaining. At the same time, Zhang Huilin said discontentedly, you cunning little man. It's just a delay of two days, what's so great about it? Anyway, you, a useless street punk, wasting time is not a big deal. Ji Bo sneered sarcastically, a useless waste, I guess he heard that Qingcheng would attract Miss Rong Mei Yin's attention at my father's birthday banquet, felt jealous, and deliberately caused trouble. Yi Tianqi said thoughtfully, I don't feel jealous. Instead, I'm looking forward to this birthday banquet, perhaps, something interesting will happen. Ji Bo didn't catch the underlying meaning in Yi Tianqi's words. He sneered. What does it have to do with you? Our Ji family's banquet is not something any waste can attend. At this moment, Yi Tianqi stood up and walked slowly to Sha Qingcheng's side. He coldly said, since you have made a decision, then wait two days to collect the divorce certificate. With that, he walked straight past Sha Qingcheng without even a second glance. Zhang Huilin spat on the ground in disdain. What a troublemaker. Qingcheng stay away from him in the future. Then she turned to Ji Bo and asked, the day after tomorrow is your father's birthday banquet. Besides Qingcheng, do you think I and Nanan? 
Jibo immediately smiled and said, Our Ji family naturally welcomes Aunt Zhang and Xiao Nan, and will treat you as honored guests. By then, we will witness the arrival of Miss Rong Meiyan and announce the business partnership between the Ji family and the Xia family. At that time, our status will soar, unmatched in Zhangnan city. Upon hearing this, Zhang Huilin, Xiao Nan, and assistant Sun were all filled with anticipation and excitement. But Xia Qingcheng had a kind of inexplicable uneasiness in her heart. It seemed that the outcome of this banquet might be more unexpected than tonight's bidding conference. In Villa No. 1 of Zijin Tiangong, Yi Tianqi sat on the sofa, flipping through the messages on his phone. Nowadays, his master was traveling outside, while he stayed in the fallen city of Zhongnan, letting those prison guards manage the affairs of the city. They regularly reported to him on some news inside the prison or conveyed the sentiments of the criminals. Today, those criminals came to bow and scrape, saying, Young master, you are my idol. I have three undeveloped gold mines in the Philippines that I can give to you at any time. Without your protection, I would have died in prison a long time ago. I have two nuclear warheads in bear country to give to you, the address is. Although I am powerless, as long as you give the order, even the largest mafia in Italy will obey your command. Yi Tianqi couldn't help but sigh, these criminals, despite their heinous crimes, are more humane than many people outside. Putting down his phone, Yi Tianqi remembered Jibo's words earlier. Since Rong Meiyin would show up at the birthday banquet the day after tomorrow, he didn't need to go all the way to the provincial capital to the Rong family to propose a divorce. He could just talk to her about the divorce directly at the banquet, saving unnecessary trouble. Suddenly, the doorbell of the villa rang. As the night grew late, who could be approaching at this hour? Yi Tianqi muttered as he walked to the door, glancing at a familiar face through the surveillance camera. The person was wearing a silver chongsam, with perfect looks and figure, exuding charm. Yi Tianqi couldn't help but think, why is it her again? How did she manage to track me all the way from the Chamber of Commerce to here? Lin Feng. Oh Lin Feng, what kind of trouble have you stirred up this time? Yi Tianqi didn't want to get involved with this woman, so he blocked the doorbell and simply went upstairs to rest. Outside the door, Rong Mei and rang the doorbell several times, but there was no response. Feeling a bit disappointed, she sighed. Mr. Zhang Nan War God, I believe you must have some secrets that you don't want to reveal, but it's okay, I can patiently wait. By the way, I bought a villa in the purple gold heavenly palace, right next to yours, you can come find me anytime you need. Oh, today at the bidding chamber of commerce, I met a very interesting and mysterious man. At that moment, I even fantasized, if that man were you. She murmured to herself for a while, realizing there was still no response, so she left. Back at villa number two in the purple gold heavenly palace, Rong Mayan's maid eagerly asked, Miss, has the Jongnan war god shown up? Rong Mayan shook her head, then asked, have you taken care of the things I asked you to do? The maid handed her a stack of documents. These documents detailed the results of her investigation into Yi Tianqi. The maid explained, Yi Tianqi's family perished in a fire 15 years ago, and he disappeared without a trace after that, only to reappear in Zhangnan city three years ago and marry Xiaozhu's Xia Qingcheng. During these three years, the Xia family was extremely dissatisfied with Yi Tianqi, and yesterday Xia Qingcheng filed for divorce and kicked him out of the Xia family. Apart from the missing years which couldn't be traced, the other information shows that this person has no background, no highlights, and everyone who knows him thinks he's just a waste of space. Miss, I don't understand. Why are you spending time investigating such a person? Rong Mayin smiled faintly. Aching, my grandfather has repeatedly warned me not to judge things by their appearance only. I feel that Yi Tianqi's overly flashy image of living off women has deeply influenced people, causing his true shining points to be easily overlooked. Aching, the maid named, rolled her eyes, obviously not convinced by this statement. Rong Mayin smiled and said, let's change the topic, what do you think of Uncle Er's arrangement for me to attend the Ji family's birthday banquet and select business partners? Aching replied truthfully, the head of the Ji family, Ji Wuli, has been secretly in contact with Second Master for many years. He is doing this to make sure you have a good relationship with the Ji family, and perhaps even hopes that you will choose the Ji family as a partner. This way, Second Master can use your power to support his own followers, and even plant his own people around you, killing two birds with one stone. Rong Mayin nodded, squinting slightly, and said coldly, Does Uncle Er really think I'm a naive child, that I can be deceived by these tricks? She suddenly smiled, but Uncle Er did remind me of one thing, as the saying goes, a strong dragon does not suppress a local snake. If I want to expand rapidly in Zhongnan City, I do need to choose a reliable business partner. Aching asked, Miss, have you chosen a candidate? 
Rong Mei Yuan furrowed her brows deeply, with a hint of hesitation and unease in her eyes. After a moment of silence, she finally spoke, I need time to think. Her voice quivered slightly, revealing the turmoil and struggle within her heart. When faced with important decisions, she was always cautious and prudent, neither quick to give up nor quick to accept. This combination of determination and hesitation made her stand out among others, attracting attention. Deep within her heart, there lay a gentle yet strong soul, waiting for the right moment to reveal its true power. Yi Tianqi woke up to find more than a dozen missed calls on his phone, all from Han Ruiyan. Why would this woman call him so many times? Yi Tianqi was puzzled, so he decided to call Han Ruiyan back. The call was quickly answered, and Han Ruiyan's voice came through with dissatisfaction blaming Yi Tianqi for not picking up the phone. Yi Tianqi honestly replied that his phone was on silent, and asked if there was something wrong. Han Ruiyan coldly retorted, Can I call you if there's nothing wrong? Yi Tianqi firmly responded, If there's nothing wrong, there's no need to disturb me. Han Ruiyan hurriedly explained, Don't be like this. I have something to ask you. Why did Tiger Lord spare you last night? Tiger Lord doesn't easily let others go. The news of Tiger Lord sparing Yi Tianqi had spread widely in the business circle of Jiangnan City, and everyone thought it was a miracle that Yi Tianqi survived. Although there were rumors that Tiger Lord stopped because the Ji family mentioned the wrong family in the provincial capital, Han Ruiyan felt that things might not be so simple, so she called to inquire. Yi Tianqi replied nonchalantly, Perhaps it's just because Zhang Xiaohu is afraid of me, nothing serious. Angrily, Han Ruiyan said, I'm serious about asking you, not joking. Tiger Lord's position is so high. He rules the entire underground forces of Jiangnan City. He has 3,000 brothers under him. How could he be afraid of a son-in-law driven out by the Xiao family? Even if you know some martial arts, you can't stand firm in front of absolute power. Yi Tianqi, a little impatient, said, If you don't believe it, then forget it, hang up if there's nothing else. Han Ruiyan quickly said, Wait. I have important things to discuss with you, we must meet in person to make it clear. Listening to her weak voice, Yi Tianqi's heart stirred. She mentioned feeling dizzy and signs of bleeding on her skin this morning, suspecting that the medicine he prescribed last time didn't cure her illness, and wanted him to take responsibility. Yi Tianqi felt puzzled, how could this be? It shouldn't be like this. Han Ruiyan continued, anyway, I will send you the address. Whether you come or not, it's none of your business. After that, she hung up and sent an address. Yi Tianqi muttered to himself, his master had taught him medical skills, and Han Ruiyan's illness, though troublesome, was not complicated. In theory, taking the medicine once should cure it, so why did it relapse? Could it be that his medical skills had deteriorated during the three silent years in the Xiao family? After hesitating, Yi Tianqi finally decided to go and find out the truth. On the one hand, Han Ruiyan was once one of the fiancés arranged by his master, although she had proposed to break off the engagement there was still some connection between them, and he couldn't stand by and do nothing. On the other hand, at the tendering meeting yesterday, she was the only one who spoke up for him. Just for that, he also had a reason to go and see. An hour later, Yi Tianqi arrived at the entrance of the Yulong Manor according to the address, and saw Han Ruiyan waiting there early. Today, Han Ruiyan was dressed casually, simple yet stylish. The white t-shirt highlighted her slender figure, and the dark jeans outlined her straight long legs. She exuded an inviolable and aloof aura. When she saw Yi Tianqi's arrival, a complex emotion flashed in her eyes. Han Ruiyan felt secretly pleased and smiled, saying, So you did come after all. Yi Tianzo walked up to her, carefully sizing her up, furrowing his brow and asking, Didn't you say you were unwell? Why do you look perfectly fine? Han Ruiyan tilted her chin slightly and replied matter-of-factly, I didn't say anything wrong, did I? Aren't you going to greet me? Yi Tianza looked frustrated and said helplessly, Miss Han, if you're bored, you can go anywhere, just don't come to me for entertainment, okay? Han Ruiyan pursed her lips and retorted, I'm not here to entertain you, I really have something to discuss with you. Tell me, how good are you at medicine? Yi Tianza answered, I know a little. Han Ruiyan pressed on, what do you mean by, a little? Did you prescribe the medicine that treated me? Yi Tianza nodded, yes, I did. What's the matter? Han Ruiyan's face lit up, great. I know an elder who has a rare disease and couldn't find a cure even after consulting many famous doctors. I want you to help him. Come with me. With that, she tried to pull Yi Tianza into the Jade Dragon Manor. However, Yi Tianza didn't move and instead asked, are you asking me to treat someone else? I can help you, as it can be considered compensation for breaking up, 
but why should I agree to treat someone else? When Yi Tianzi was studying medicine, his master had advised him of three principles, not to treat the extremely wicked, not to treat the heartless and unfaithful, and not to treat those who worship foreign things. These three rules had always been ingrained in his mind. He wouldn't easily treat others without knowing their identity. Han Ruiyan earnestly said, I'm doing this to help you. If you can cure that elder, it will bring you great benefits. By then, neither the Ji family nor the Tiger Lord will trouble you again, understand? Yi Tianzi replied calmly, they can cause trouble anytime they want, I don't care. Annoyed, Han Ruiyan said, why are you so stubborn? Even though I don't like you, you cured my illness before, and I should repay the favor. But you don't want my money, so I could only come up with this idea, only to be rejected again. She sighed and continued, Grandpa Lin was a hero who fought for the country when he was young. Now he is suffering from a strange illness that doctors say is incurable. I can't just sit back and do nothing, I always want to do something for him. Yi Tianzi's eyes flickered, and after a moment of contemplation, he said, since you mentioned this impressive Grandpa Lin, I am interested in meeting him. Take me to him. Excitedly, Han Ruiyan said, great, I'll take you in. With Han Ruiyan leading the way, they entered the manor smoothly. Yi Tianzi learned from her that Grandpa Lin's name was Lin Yuanixin, a close friend of her late grandfather, treating Han Ruiyan like a half-granddaughter. That's why she cared so much about Lin Yuanxun's condition. They arrived at the Lin family's living room, where a woman in her late twenties approached them. As Yi Tianqi approached, a woman asked cautiously, Yun Yun, who is he? Han Ruiyan smiled and introduced, Yang Yang, he is the friend Yi Tianqi I mentioned before, the one who cured my illness. He specifically came to diagnose Grandpa Lin. She then turned to Yi Tianqi and continued, This beautiful lady is Grandpa Lin's granddaughter, Lin Zhaoyang, also my close friend. Go say hello to her. At the same time, she whispered to him, My friend can be a bit strong-willed and stubborn, please bear with her. Yi Tianqi was slightly surprised, thinking she was already quite strong-willed, yet there was someone even more so in her eyes. What kind of personality was that? Think as he might, do as he might. Yi Tianqi still politely greeted Miss Lin. However, to his surprise, Lin Zhaoyang adopted a condescending attitude and bluntly said, Dressed like a market vendor, you look like a phony charlatan, completely lacking the demeanor of a doctor. My grandfather holds a noble status, how can we allow a fraud like you to diagnose him? Han Ruiyan tried to ease the tension by saying to Lin Zhaoyang, Yang Yang, his medical skills are indeed remarkable, he is definitely not a fraud. Lin Zhaoyang responded with a stern face, Yun Yun. How come you become so confused after falling ill? This young man looks like he's only 25 or 26, how could he possibly understand medical skills? Clearly unreliable. Yi Tianza interrupted them, saying, whether he's reliable or not is not for you to decide. Lin Zhaoyang disdainfully replied, fine, then you can diagnose me. If you can figure out what's wrong with me, I'll believe you. Otherwise, get lost immediately. Yi Tianza raised an eyebrow and said, are you sure you want me to say it? Lin Zhaoyang firmly answered, you must say it. Yi Tianza carefully observed Lin Zhaoyang, then described in detail, your lips are dry and pale, indicating a bad temper. You also have bad breath, drool when sleeping, and even grind your teeth and snore. In addition, you are irritable, suggesting a strong liver fire, spleen and stomach imbalance. You may have irregular periods, overall weakness, cold hands and feet, and frequent diarrhea. Furthermore, you have hemorrhoids, cannot sit for long, eating spicy food easily leads to bleeding, surgery is recommended for a permanent cure. Also, Lin Zhaoyang suddenly interrupted him, saying, enough. Her face blushed and her heart raced as she looked at Yi Tianzi in astonishment, surprised at how he knew all these personal secrets she had never disclosed. Yi Tianzi just smiled faintly and asked, Miss Lin, was my diagnosis wrong? Lin Zhaoyang bit her lip, looking displeased, and said, even if you're right, so what? Do you have no sense of propriety? Don't you know there are things you shouldn't say casually? Yi Tianzi felt a bit embarrassed. He had already warned Lin Zhaoyang, it was her insistence that he speak out. Now the blame was falling on him. Han Ruiyan quickly intervened, saying, Yang Yang, don't be angry. In any case, you should believe in his medical skills now, right? Let him go and see Grandpa Lin quickly. She glanced at Yi Tianzi secretly, a hint of approval in her eyes. She had invited Yi Tianza over before without much hope. Now it seemed that this young man indeed had some skills. She would ask him if he had any ways to treat menstrual pain when the opportunity arose, a problem that had been bothering her for a long time. However, Lin Zhaoyang still maintained a haughty attitude, 
although he knows some medical skills, it's only superficial. My grandfather's illness, even the director of the first hospital, Wu Xingye, is helpless, let alone him. Moreover, I have already invited a master to treat him, and I am certain that effective treatment will be obtained without needing him. Her attitude clearly indicated that she still doubted Yi Tianzi's medical skills. Hearing this, Han Ruoyan's expression changed slightly. She knew Lin Zhaoyang had a proud temper, but she was not usually like this. Could it be that Yi Tianzi publicly exposed her private ailment and offended her? It must be so. Just as Han Ruoyan was thinking about how to persuade Lin Zhaoyang, the two people came down from upstairs. A middle-aged man dressed in a deep navy blue suit and white shirt walked in the front, his face showing no anger but exuding a high-level leadership aura. Following behind him was a man around 60 years old, wearing a white coat, obviously a renowned doctor. A man in a deep blue suit walked down the stairs and smiled at Han Ruoyan, saying, Yen Yen, you're finally here. After you recovered from your illness, I've been busy with work and couldn't find time to come see you. I'm really sorry, you're not mad at me, are you? Han Ruoyan quickly walked up, politely smiling, and said, Uncle Lin, how could I be mad at you? The man in the white shirt asked, Are you here to visit your grandfather, Mr. Lin, today? Han Ruoyan nodded and added, I also brought a friend who is knowledgeable in medicine. Maybe he can cure Grandpa Lin's illness. The man in the white shirt's eyes narrowed slightly upon hearing this. Yunyun, are you serious? Han Ruoyan nodded confidently and said, He cured the strange illness I had. At that moment, the old doctor stepped forward, eagerly asking, Miss Han, where is your friend? I'd like to meet him. I've been waiting to meet this miraculous doctor who cured Han Ruoyan's strange illness, a condition that had stumped countless doctors in the past. However, the day before yesterday, news spread like a miracle that a certain divine doctor had cured it. This news left him utterly shocked and eagerly anticipating meeting this divine doctor. Little did he expect Han Ruoyan to bring him today. Han Ruoyan led Yi Tianzi forward and introduced, Director Wu, he is the friend who cured me. He added, this is Director Wu Xingye, the director of the first hospital in Zhangnan City and a good friend of Grandpa Lin, who often comes to check on his health. Wu Xingye looked at Yi Tianzi with some doubt and said, he, he's too young, isn't he? He had originally thought that the legendary divine doctor would be much older, not in his early twenties. It was somewhat unexpected. But then he smiled and said, medical skills lie in healing, not age. I was rude, young friend, please don't mind. Yi Tianzi responded with a smile, how could I blame you? I have a good impression of Director Wu. At that moment, the man in the deep blue suit reached out his hand to greet Yi Tianzi, saying, I'm Lin Wanda, nice to meet you. Yi Tianzi shook his hand confidently and replied, Mayor Lin, nice to meet you. Indeed, the man in front of him, Lin Wanda, was not an ordinary person. He was the current mayor of Jiangnan City, ranking in the top two in the political arena of Jiangnan City. All of this was information that Han Ruoyan had told him beforehand. Moreover, Lin Wanda's father, Lin Yuanixin, was a legendary figure. He had bravely fought in the military in his youth, defending the country and its people. After the founding of the nation, he devoted himself to national construction until his death. After retiring, he spent his later years peacefully in Jiangnan City. Now, his son was the mayor of Jiangnan City, managing millions of residents, and his former subordinates had also become influential figures in their own right. It could be said that Lin Yuanixin was the true pillar of the Lin family. When it came to the power sphere of Jiangnan City, everyone would instinctively say, one Lin, two lords, three families. One Lin, referred to the Lin family. Two lords, were the dragon lord and the underground emperor in Jiangnan City. Three families, were the Han family, Ji family, and Lu family. It was evident that the Lin family held a high position in Jiangnan City. Of course, all of this appeared indifferent to Yi Tianzi, who was accustomed to seeing various powerful figures. Lin Wanda gazed at Yi Tianzi, feeling the firmness in his handshake and couldn't help but admire him. This young man's character is truly impressive. He answered without hesitation, a diagnosis can only be made after careful observation. Just then, Lin Zhaoyang interrupted unhappily, Dad, are you sure you want to let this stranger treat Grandpa? We know nothing about him, what if there's a mistake? Lin Wanda reassured her, he is a friend introduced by Yan Yan, so it should be fine. Lin Zhaoyang was speechless at once. Later, Lin Wanda invited Yi Tianzi to treat Grandpa Lin. The group arrived at Lin Yuanshun's bedroom, which had been transformed into a private ward. Various medical equipment such as ventilators, ECG machines, etc., were all available. 
A frail old man with white hair lay on the sickbed, pale-faced, breathing weakly, on the verge of death. Lin Wanda explained that Grandpa had been healthy before, but half a year ago, he fell into a coma after returning from out of town and hasn't woken up since, with doctors unable to find the cause. Yi Tianza approached, taking Lin Yuanshun's wrist to check his pulse. After a moment, he let go. Han Ruoyan couldn't help but ask, what illness does Grandpa Lin have? Have you figured out any clues? The few people present were surprised to hear Lin Zhaoyang's words. Could it be that old master Lin was not actually sick? Lin Zhaoyang angrily accused Yi Tianqi of talking nonsense, believing that he didn't understand anything and was a fraud. Wu Xingye furrowed his brow slightly, pointing out the signs of organ failure and bleeding in old master Lin, stating that these were obvious symptoms of illness that should not be ignored. Lin Wanda's expression turned serious as he warned Yi Tianqi not to make such jokes. Han Ruoyan anxiously urged Yi Tianqi to take this issue seriously and not joke around. However, Yi Tianqi remained calm and claimed that old master Lin was not sick. As he was explaining, a hoarse voice came from outside the door, questioning who was talking nonsense and claiming that old master Lin was not sick. Everyone turned to see an elderly man in a yellow robe and a young man in designer clothing standing at the door. These two were none other than the familiar master Gongsun and the second young master Ji Baxia. Lin Zhaoyang eagerly went up to greet them, respectfully welcoming Master Gongsun. Master Gongsun stroked his beard and mysteriously said, Nice to meet you. Lin Zhaoyang then expressed gratitude to Ji Baxiao, who modestly smiled and said it was no trouble. Introducing Master Gongsun to Lin Wanda, Lin Zhaoyang said, Dad, this is Master Gongsun, whom I've brought to treat Grandpa. He's much better than that fraud. Lin Wanda reached out his hand to shake hands with Master Gongsun, expressing his admiration. Master Gongsun modestly replied, You flatter me, I only know some healing techniques. Lin Zhaoyang praised Master Gongsun, stating that his reputation was well known in Jiangnan City and even throughout the entire Tiannan province. While somewhat exaggerated, these words were not entirely unfounded. Rumor had it that Master Gongsun had studied at Kunlun Mountain for over 60 years, mastering the ways of yin and yang, and was skilled in treating various illnesses, especially hysteria and demonic diseases. The reason Lin Zhaoyang sought out Master Gongsun was because she suspected that her grandfather was suffering from a rare and peculiar illness, not a common one. After praising Master Gongsun, Lin Zhaoyang sarcastically told Yi Tianqi, With Master Gongsun here, you're no longer needed, so leave quickly. Han Ruoyan was displeased with this and questioned Lin Zhaoyang about whether Master Gongsun was truly that powerful and why he couldn't cure his illness before. Wasn't it Yi Tianqi's prescription that worked? Lin Zhaoyang looked embarrassed and panicked as she glanced at Master Gongsun. Master Gongsun cleared his throat lightly and explained to Miss Han, You may not know this, but your strange illness was not cured by this young doctor, but by my medical skills. This statement piqued the curiosity of everyone present. Master Gongsun continued to explain while stroking his beard, Initially, my treatment was already showing results, but you remained unconscious for too long, and it took time for you to wake up. However, your father, in his haste, had the servants administer medicine to you, thinking it was the cause of your recovery, when in reality, it was just a coincidence. Even without taking the prescription from the Yi family, you would have still awakened. Upon hearing this, Han Ruoyan's expression changed slightly, and she instinctively asked, Is this trustworthy? Master Gongsun, with an air of solemnity, declared, A monk does not lie. Ji Baxiao also chimed in, Ruoyan, you are usually intelligent and wise, why not think carefully? If Yi Tianza truly had exceptional medical skills, why would he be living off others and eventually be driven out? Unless there is something wrong with his mind, it's impossible for him to behave in such a manner. The expressions of Lin Wanda and his daughter Lin Zhaoyang turned somewhat unpleasant. It seemed that this skilled physician was actually a useless son-in-law who had been driven out of his home. How could such a person possess exceptional medical skills? Even Wu Xingye shook his head disappointedly. He had hoped to meet a young medical genius today, but it turned out to be. Suddenly, Yi Tianza broke the silence and applauded. He said to Master Gongsun, I had warned you last time not to practice medicine improperly, but I didn't expect you to excel in distorting the truth. Ji Baxiao sternly reprimanded, You incompetent person, I advise you to show respect to Master Gongsun. Yi Tianza sneered and said, My good son, is this how you treat your father? Is this showing respect to your father? Ji Boshao's face changed, and his mouth involuntarily twitched. Thinking back to a few days ago at the Sky Dragon restaurant, where he was forced to kneel and call Yi Tianza father, he was furious. He almost wished to tear Yi Tianza apart. Master Gongsun disapprovingly said, Young man, 
do you have evidence that I distorted the truth? Yi Tianzi retorted, if Miss Han was truly cured by you, why didn't you reveal the truth on the spot a few days ago? Why wait until today to speak up? Master Gongsun remained unfazed and explained, I have always sought tranquility in my practice and have no desire for fame or fortune. Why would I hastily reveal it? Yi Tianzi rolled his eyes. This old man's shamelessness was thicker than a city wall. Just as Yi Tianzi was about to continue speaking, he was stopped by Han Ruyin, who whispered, Shut up. They will never believe you. Yi Tianzi asked with a smile, Oh? It sounds like you still trust me? Han Ruyin gave him a disdainful look, Trust you? Not a chance. You only play mind games. Although Master Gongsun's words made sense, Han Ruyin still felt something was amiss. In comparison, she still believed more in Yi Tianzi's medical skills. The others no longer paid attention to Yi Tianzi. Lin Zhaoyang urgently asked Master Gongsun to treat Lin Yuanixin. Master Gongsun walked straight to the bedside and began a thorough examination. Lin Wanda and Wu Xingye stood quietly on the side, waiting for the results. In this scene, Jibo Shao showed his concern and worry to Han Ruiyan. He smiled and reminded Han Ruiyan that Yi Tianz might not be a trustworthy person, hoping that Han Ruiyan could keep a distance. Han Ruiyan appeared proud and indifferent, tilting his chin back in response, seemingly not caring about Jibo Shao's advice. Jibo Shao did not feel embarrassed by this, but instead continued to remind Han Ruiyan with care that tomorrow is his father's 60th birthday and asked if Han Ruiyan would like to attend. Han Ruiyan replied unfriendly, saying he was not in the mood to go. Jibo Shao's expression changed slightly, he did not insist further, but angrily blamed Yi Tianz for affecting Han Ruiyan's mood. Yi Tianz, on the other hand, looked helpless and disdainful towards this foolish attitude. Meanwhile, Master Gongsun had completed the examination of Lin Lao. He straightened up, tidied his beard, and with a smile on his face, he said he had found the cause of Lin Lao's illness. Lin Yuanixin and his daughter Lin Zhaoyang immediately asked, what is the cause of the illness? Lin Wanda frowned slightly. As a member of the system, he was not willing to easily believe in the mysterious phenomenon of soul leaving the body. He harbored doubts and even some resistance. Master Gongsun nodded, acknowledging Lin Wanda's hesitation. He explained that according to rumors, the human body has three souls and seven spirits, which maintain a person's life and spirit. Once the soul leaves the body, it can cause mental confusion at best, and at worst, coma or even endanger life. If his speculation was correct, before Lin Lao fell into a coma, he must have experienced some kind of shock or mental impact. Lin Wanda and Lin Zhaoyang fell into contemplation. After a moment, a glimmer of insight flashed in Lin Zhaoyang's eyes as she recalled a scene from half a year ago when she and her grandfather were traveling and stayed overnight in a strange village. An old one-eyed woman suddenly knocked on the door, claiming that her grandfather had an ominous sign and urged them to leave quickly. At that time, the two were frightened, but her grandfather did not care and did not take the matter to heart. Master Gongsun suddenly realized that Lin Lao had been frightened that night, so it was not surprising that his soul left his body. Lin Zhaoyang eagerly asked, Is there any way to save my grandfather? Master Gongsun waved his hand and said, It's actually quite simple, just perform a soul-calling ritual. A smile appeared on his face. At this moment, Yi Tianzi couldn't help but laugh. He observed that Lin Yuanixin had not experienced soul leaving the body, let alone being disoriented due to fright. The young Lin Lao had survived in the midst of war and turmoil, how could he be so timid? Ji Baxiao furrowed his brow and reprimanded, Yi, what are you laughing at? Yi Tianzi candidly replied that he was laughing at the nonsense of this Taoist priest. He couldn't believe that they actually took it seriously. Lin Wanda's face darkened, and he gave a cold snort. Han Ruiyan quickly pulled Yi Tianzi's sleeve and whispered, Shut up, you made so many people unhappy at the guild meeting yesterday, do you want to offend the Lin family today? I shouldn't have brought you here in the first place. Yi Tianzi nonchalantly said that he was just trying to remind them out of goodwill, hoping they wouldn't regret believing the words of the old Taoist. Lin Zhaoyang disdainfully said that she would never regret it. Yi Tianzi simply smiled and noted her words. Then he closed his mouth and sneakily glanced at Wu Xingye only to find him looking at Master Gongsun with a complex expression, seemingly harboring a hint of distrust. Obviously, Dean Wu also held a skeptical attitude towards Master Gongsun's claims about soul leaving the body. But lacking evidence, he couldn't come forward to express his doubts. Lin Zhaoyang said to Master Gongsun, Master, please don't lower yourself to their level, hurry and save my grandfather. Master Gongsun calmly said, I will not stoop to the level of these boring people. Rest assured, I will save Lin Lao's life. 
Afterwards, Master Gongsun instructed Lin Wanda to prepare the ritual site according to his requirements. The so-called ritual site was not complicated, only requiring a sacrificial table, incense burner, yellow cloth, and other props. Soon, Lin Wanda directed the household servants to set up the ritual site in the sick room. Lin Wanda politely said, Master, thank you for your hard work. If you can cure my father, I will definitely reward you generously. A glimmer of hope appeared in Master Gongsun's eyes. At first glance, Master Gongsun seemed calm, as if it was just a minor issue to him. He walked to the center of the dojo and took out a peach wood sword from his bag. With steady steps, murmuring words, his mind wandering, as if he could travel thousands of miles in a day, the traces of wind and frost on his face, like a hidden eight trigrams in the void. After about a minute, Master Gongsun suddenly shouted loudly, pointing the peach wood sword at Lin Yuanixin on the sickbed, his actions swift as military orders, commanding. But Lin Yuanixin remained motionless. Ji Boxiao couldn't help but ask, Master, what's going on? Is it not effective? Shut up. Master Gongsun reprimanded. He repeated the same actions, shouting loudly, commanding. But still, there was no response. Master Gongsun's forehead sweated slightly, frowning in thought, strange. Why is this happening? Han Ruiyan sneered. Just now you said it was a small matter, why is it not effective now? Lin Wanda asked, Master, have you encountered any difficulties? Master Gongsun pondered for a moment. A hint of determination flashed in his eyes, shaking his head with a smile. It's nothing. Maybe it's because the time since the passing of the ancestor has made the summoning more difficult. But it's okay, I have a way. He took out a black pill from his bosom, explaining, This is the resurrection pill I personally refined, specifically for summoning. After I give it to Lin, I will perform the summoning technique, and it will definitely work. Lin Zhaoyang quickly thanked, Master, you have worked hard. Master Gongsun walked to the front, ready to feed the resurrection pill to Lin Yuanixin. Suddenly, a big hand grabbed his wrist. Wait a minute. Master Gongsun turned to see that it was Yi Tianqi who grabbed him, his face darkening, asking, What are you doing? The other's faces changed drastically. Lin Zhaoyang angrily shouted, Let go of Master, why are you stopping him from treating my grandfather? Ji Boxiao cursed, Yi family's kid, are you out of your mind? How dare you cause trouble in the Lin family? Lin Wanda said solemnly, Young man, what do you mean by this? Han Ruiyan, pale with fear, hurriedly signaled for Yi Tianqi to let go. But Yi Tianqi ignored it, snatching the resurrection pill from Master Gongsun's hand. Yi Tianqi said solemnly, Old Dao, you are too bold. How dare you give such a pill to someone, do you have a conscience? Master Gongsun shook his head, I don't understand your intention, give me back the pill. Yi Tianqi not only did not return it, but also crushed the pill forcefully. Master Gongsun widened his eyes, protesting loudly, Nonsense. This is the resurrection pill I spent years refining, and it has been destroyed, it's truly a waste. Then, he told everyone, you all saw it, I'm not unwilling to help, but this kid deliberately sabotaged. Lin Zhaoyang, burning with anger, said, nonsense. You charlatan, how dare you destroy the medicine that was supposed to save my grandfather. Someone, teach him a lesson. Lin Wanda raised his hand to stop them, wait. You must give me an explanation. Those familiar with Lin Wanda knew that he was really angry. Once he erupted, the consequences were unimaginable. The atmosphere in the room became extremely tense for a while, and Han Ruiyan's heart almost jumped to her throat. If Ling knew that Yi Tianza would do these things, she would definitely hesitate, maybe even choose not to bring him here. Faced with such an atmosphere, she felt filled with internal struggle and confusion. Upon hearing Yi Tianxi's accusation, the expressions of the people present changed one after another and all eyes focused on Master Gongsun. A hint of panic flashed in Master Gongsun's eyes. He loudly rebuked, You! You are talking nonsense! The rejuvenation pills I used are precious medicinal materials such as ginseng, snow lotus, etc., with powerful nourishing effects. How could they possibly endanger Master Lin's life? Yi Tianqi coldly displayed the crushed pills for everyone to see. These pills consist of 18 kinds of medicinal herbs, each highly nourishing, but as the saying goes, too much of a good thing can be harmful. This intense nourishing medicine, even if taken by a healthy person, can cause internal dryness, bleeding, and even fainting or shock. Although Master Gongsun knew this truth, he was holding on to a glimmer of hope, hoping to stimulate a reaction in Master Lin's body to wake him up. However, this approach would only accelerate Master Lin's life consumption, and once depleted, he would surely perish. Yi Tianxi's explanation shook Lin Wanda to the core. Master Gongsun desperately tried to defend himself, 
Master Lin, don't listen to his nonsense. What does a young man know about traditional Chinese medicine and the properties of medicine? Lin Zhaoyang angrily retorted, Yi Tianqi, are you just here to cause trouble on purpose? Still finding excuses now. Yi Tianqi smiled and replied, You can say I'm making excuses, but Director Wu wouldn't lie, right? He turned to Wu Xingye and said, Director Wu, please verify whether what I said is true. Wu Xingye walked over, picked up the medicine powder in Yi Tianqi's palm, and took a sniff. After a moment, his pupils contracted, and he exclaimed in surprise, This pill contains over ten types of Chinese herbal ingredients, all nourishing in nature. If Master Lin were to take it, the consequences would be disastrous, just as this young man said. He looked at Yi Tianqi, his eyes filled with astonishment. Being able to discern the components of medicine is a basic skill for a traditional Chinese medicine practitioner, representing their level of expertise. Being able to identify three ingredients by naked eyes or smell is for beginners, over five is ordinary, over eight is top notch, and over ten is master level. Wu Xingye had just reached the top level, while Yi Tianqi was able to identify eighteen ingredients at a glance. This ability was truly remarkable. Wu Xingye's testimony made everyone's faces look grim. Lin Wanda squinted and asked Master Gongsun, Master Gongsun, do you have an explanation? Master Gongsun nervously swallowed. Although he had a prestigious reputation and a respected position, he dared not offend the Lin family. His original intention in using the rejuvenation pills was to wake Master Lin up, as for the consequences, that would be a matter for a few days later, by then he would not be held accountable, and it could only be attributed to the old man's bad luck. However, he was exposed by Yi Tianqi. But with his experience, he immediately spoke up, Master Lin, please don't worry. Although the rejuvenation pills have side effects, if combined with the summoning technique, the side effects can be counteracted, absolutely no problem. He pointed towards Yi Tianqi, trying to divert attention. In hindsight, it's all because this kid messed up the soul calling process. Otherwise, Lin Lao would have been saved by now. Faced with the provocation from Master Gongsun, Yi Tianqi couldn't help but sneer, You? Daring to claim you know how to call souls? Don't make me laugh. Master Gongsun sternly rebuked, arrogant brat. I don't know how to call souls, do you? Yi Tianqi, however, responded nonchalantly, calling souls, what's so difficult about it? These words amused Master Gongsun, thinking to himself that this kid is indeed inexperienced, actually eager to attract attention. This way, perhaps he could turn the tables. So he challenged, then show us what you got. If you can't do it, you'll bear the blame for not saving Lin Lao today. Ji Boxiao, seeing through Master Gongsun's intentions, chimed in, Yi, if you're so capable, why not give it a try? Don't embarrass yourself. Han Ruoyan, with a hint of worry in her eyes, reminded, Yi Tianqi, maybe we should just forget it. They actually. Yi Tianqi cut her off, saying confidently, don't worry, I know what I'm doing. With that, he stomped his right foot on the ground, pinched his fingers, and recited the incantation silently. Master Gongsun sneered disdainfully, no ritual circle, just casting the spell directly to call souls. Obviously clueless about everything. Hearing this, Lin Zhaoyang and Ji Baxiao both chuckled, waiting to see Yi Tianqi make a fool of himself. Just then, Yi Tianqi suddenly opened his eyes wide, gave a light shout, Come! In the next moment, a cold wind swept through the ward. Whoosh! The temperature inside dropped instantly, sending shivers down everyone's spine. This scene made everyone present's faces change abruptly. Master Gongsun couldn't help but exclaim, What? What's going on? Yi Tianqi smiled, saying, you'll find out soon. He snapped his fingers. Master Gongsun and Ji Boxiao heard the snap, and suddenly their vision blurred. Instinctively rubbing their eyes, when they reopened them, they were shocked by the scene in front of them. Because in front of them, the once bright ward had turned dark and gloomy, with several tormented souls bleeding from their seven orifices, their faces pale. These tormented souls floated towards them, mouths agape, uttering various eerie sounds, keep me company. I'm so cold. Give back my life. Give back my life. Hand over your heart, I want to devour your marrow. Ha ha ha. Master Gongsun and Ji Boxiao had never seen such a sight and were immediately frightened out of their wits. Ji Boxiao screamed in terror, Don't kill me. Master Gongsun, you said you could call souls, quickly get rid of these things. Master Gongsun, in a panic, cried, I can't f asterisk 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 in call souls, why would you believe me, oh my god. You scared the crap out of me. Ji Boxiao cursed angrily, damn it. You old fraud, you've ruined me. In fact, apart from them, Lin Wanda and the others did not see any of this. 
Although they were not sure what Ji Boxiao and Master Gongsun had seen or what Yu Tianqi had done, the conversation between the two on the ground had already told them that Master Gongsun didn't know how to call souls at all, and all his previous words were nonsense. As Yi Tianqi snapped his fingers again, everything that Master Gongsun and Ji Boxiao had seen vanished in an instant. After the scare, Lin Wanda and Yi Tians were trembling, their eyes filled with fear. Their pants were damp, looking somewhat disheveled, no longer able to maintain their previous arrogance. Lin Wanda's face was livid with anger, barely able to contain it. These two guys not only played tricks, but also almost put his father in mortal danger, which was simply unforgivable. He coldly ordered, guards, teach these two a lesson, then throw them out. They are never allowed to step into the Lin family again. Yes. Two bodyguards came in, dragging Jibo Shao and Master Gongsun out. Soon, sounds of punches, kicks, and screams could be heard, and in the end, they were thrown out in a sorry state. After this incident, Lin Wanda looked at Yi Tians with a newfound respect. He respectfully said, I was negligent before and failed to live up to the reputation of Dr. Yi. Please help save my father. What Lin Wanda did not expect was. Lin Wanda held a prominent position in Jiangnan City, with his word almost equivalent to a decree. However, this time his request was met with a refusal from Yi Tians, leaving him incredulous. Lin Zhaoyang was the first to express her dissatisfaction questioning Yi Tians about the consequences of not obeying her father. Yi Tians replied nonchalantly, I don't care. This enraged Lin Zhaoyang to the point where she wanted to slap Yi Tians. Han Ruoyan sensed the tension and quietly reminded Yi Tians, hoping he would apologize for the promise he made to treat someone earlier. However, Yi Tians calmly responded, I haven't done anything wrong, so why should I apologize? Han Ruoyan felt helpless, thinking that Yi Tians had already offended some powerful figures in the bidding chamber yet he still behaved this way in the Lin family. Was he not afraid? Was he deliberately showing off in front of her? Han Ruoyan could only ask Lin Wanda not to take it to heart, as Yi Tians did not mean any harm. Lin Wanda interrupted her, indicating that he didn't want to blame her and requested to speak with Yi Tians alone. Smiling, he inquired why Yi Tians took such a stance, stating that he would do his best to cooperate as long as the issue could be resolved. Yi Tian squinted slightly, admiring Lin Wanda's shrewdness and composure. He straightforwardly stated his simple condition, which pointed directly to Lin Zhaoyang. Upon hearing this, Lin Zhaoyang's expression changed, and she refused, saying, Do you want me? Let me tell you, I would never be interested in a man like you. Yi Tian explained that it wasn't the case, he just wanted her to apologize for her previous attitude. Han Ruoyan breathed a sigh of relief, secretly glad that Yi Tian didn't have ulterior motives. However, Lin Zhaoyang arrogantly refused to apologize, asserting that Yi Tians wasn't worthy of her apology. Yi Tians nonchalantly said, forget it, and took his leave. Lin Wanda stopped him, ordering Lin Zhaoyang to apologize immediately. Indignantly, Lin Zhaoyang questioned why she should apologize and doubted whether Yi Tians was truly a divine healer. Suddenly, Lin Wanda intervened, giving Lin Zhaoyang a slap and declaring that she must apologize. This scene plunged the room into silence, with Lin Zhaoyang trembling, her eyes widened, as this was the first time Lin Wanda had ever laid hands on her. From the pale expression on Lin Yuanshun's face, a hint of unease was revealed. However, Yi Tians remained calm and unaffected, knowing well that a doctor's compassion lies in doing their best, regardless of the outcome. As he administered the acupuncture, his hands moved like agile spirits, delicately and confidently navigating through the acupoints with precision. Lin Zhaoyang sneered disdainfully, yet deep down, she harbored a hidden hope for a miracle to happen. Wu Zingyi's initial doubts gradually dissipated, replaced by a sense of inexplicable anticipation and awe. As he watched the white steam emanating from Lin Yuanshun's body, he was overwhelmed by indescribable shock and reverence. This scene made everyone present feel the wonder and power of medical skills. Yi Tians remained silent, focusing solely on administering the acupuncture to Lin Yuanxun. He understood that a true healer does not need words. Medical skills and compassion are the best responses. As the final needle was placed, a hint of color returned to Lin Yuanshun's face, and he appeared much calmer. Lin Wanda clenched his fists in excitement, tears streaming down his face. Though he didn't speak, his gratitude towards Yi Tians was evident in his gaze. Han Ruoyan watched quietly, her admiration for Yi Tians deepening. In this moment, Yi Tians was not just a doctor but a hero who saved a life bringing new hope to this family with his medical skills and compassion. Everyone present silently applauded him. This journey of healing may have been just a small step in the vast field of medicine, but for the Lin family, 
it was a miraculous rebirth. Han Ruiyan suddenly exclaimed, look at Grandpa Lin's chest, it seems unusual. There was a long shape slowly protruding from Lin Yuanshun's chest, quietly wriggling. Yi Tianzi squinted and said, it's coming out. Han Ruiyan, get the basin ready and listen to my instructions. Han Ruiyan immediately nodded and picked up the basin. Yi Tianzi grabbed the seventh silver needle and quickly pierced it into Lin Yuanshun's acupoint. Buzz! The silver needle trembled slightly, and the protrusion on Lin Yuanshun's chest seemed startled, speeding up its movement. Just as it was about to reach Lin Yuanshun's throat, Yi Tianzi quickly ordered, Quick, put the basin in front of Grandpa Lin. Han Ruiyan immediately complied. The next moment, Lin Yuanixin suddenly vomited a mass of black sticky substance into the basin. Upon closer inspection, they found a white worm about 10 centimeters long wriggling and struggling in the strong alcohol. Everyone's faces turned pale, shocked and speechless. Lin Wanda murmured in surprise, how could there be leeches in father's body? Yi Tianzi was about to explain when suddenly, a weak cough interrupted everyone's thoughts. Lin Yuanixin slowly opened his eyes, and hoarsely said, am I still alive? Han Ruiyan asked excitedly, Grandpa Lin, are you awake? Wu Xingye widened his eyes in shock, saying, this is simply a miracle. Today, I've truly seen it all. Even Lin Zhaoyang was stunned, unable to close her mouth, with a look of disbelief on her face. Lin Wanda, usually emotionally stable, also had red eyes at this moment. Dad, how do you feel? Are you uncomfortable anywhere? Lin Yuanixin weakly replied, other than feeling weak, I'm fine. Who saved me in the end? Lin Wanda quickly introduced, it's this Dr. Yi Tianzi, Dr. Yi saved you. Despite his young age, he quickly recounted the events. After listening, Lin Yuanixin bowed to Yi Tianzi, Dr. Yi, I can't thank you enough. You saved this old life of mine. From now on, you are the benefactor of our Lin family. Feel free to ask for anything you need. Yi Tianzi smiled and said, Mr. Lin, you're too polite. Saving lives is what I should do, and I don't need any repayment. This statement made Lin Yuanixin and Lin Wanda both nod in agreement. This young man is truly extraordinary. Wu Xingye asked in confusion, Dr. Yi, what's the deal with the leeches in Mr. Lin's body? The others also looked at Yi Tianzi curiously. Yi Tianzi explained, actually, those are not ordinary leeches but a type of GU worm unique to southern Xinjiang, undetectable by conventional medical equipment. These GU worms parasitize the body, draining life force, causing Mr. Lin to faint. It's not a physical issue, which is why I previously said Mr. Lin had no symptoms. GU worms? That's truly unbelievable. Everyone was amazed, thinking that GU worms only existed in legends. Yi Tianzi continued, the world is full of wonders. I suspect Mr. Lin accidentally encountered the GU worm while traveling in southern Xinjiang six months ago. The old lady who warned you of the blood calamity that night was probably referring to this incident. Lin Yuanixin nodded, Dr. Yi is right. I did travel in southern Xinjiang at that time. Everyone suddenly realized everything. However, at that moment, Yi Tianzi changed the subject, reminding, GU worms are not easy to come by, even in southern Xinjiang, they are very rare. The chances of being infected are lower than winning the lottery, which means. Lin Wanda's eyes narrowed. Are you implying that my father's infection was not accidental? But, someone deliberately released the GU worms? Yi Tianzi nodded. A cold light flashed in Lin Wanda's eyes, whoever did it, I will get to the bottom of it and not let them go unpunished. Lin Yuanixin sighed, I've always been upright in my actions, but I've also offended many people. Perhaps it was one of them who did this. He suddenly started coughing violently. Yi Tianzi immediately reminded, Mr. Lin, take it easy. You just woke up, you need to rest. Then, he walked over, removed the silver needles from Lin Yuanixin, and had Wu Xingye help him lie back down. Afterwards, everyone left the ward, leaving two servants to take care of him. The crowd returned to the living room. Han Ruiyan handed the basin containing white leeches to Yi Tianzi, asking with concern how to deal with them. Yi Tianzi calmly replied that these leeches had been treated with white wine, so they could be poured away or buried in the soil. Lin Wanda immediately instructed someone to take away the basin for disposal. Yi Tianzi continued, saying that there were still some toxins in Lin Lao's body and he would prescribe a medicine that could detoxify and restore vitality. He assured them that following the prescription for a week would lead to a full recovery. He then asked for paper and pen to write down the prescription. These herbs were not rare, and he believed that with the Lin family's influence, they would be able to obtain them. Lin Wanda expressed his gratitude, 
offering to fulfill any request Yu Tianza might have. Yi Tianza waved his hand, saying he needed nothing and took his leave once everything was settled. Lin Wanda insisted on personally escorting them out, and Wu Xingye also expressed his intention to see off the divine physician. Before leaving, Yi Tianza reminded them once again to strictly follow his prescription when preparing the medicine, emphasizing the consequences of not doing so. Lin Wanda solemnly promised to remember. They bid farewell to Yi Tianza and Han Ruiyan, leaving only Lin Jiayang in the living room, her expression somewhat displeased. She muttered to herself, thinking that it was just a coincidence that he saved her grandfather, nothing extraordinary. But why did Yi Tianza refuse any reward or benefit? This seemed illogical. Her gaze suddenly fell on the prescription on the table, as if she had figured something out. She picked up her phone and dialed a number, Hello, Professor Li, I have a prescription that I would like you to help identify. Yi Tianza and Han Ruiyan left the Lin family. Han Ruiyan couldn't help but sigh, I didn't expect your medical skills to be so remarkable. I'm a bit puzzled, if you're so talented, why did Xiao Qingcheng still ask for a divorce? A hint of sadness flickered in Yi Tianzi's eyes. Seeing this, Han Ruiyan smiled and changed the subject, let's not talk about sad things, shall we? Today you helped Grandpa Lin, which was a great favor to me. If you need anything as a reward, I can fulfill it, like having a meal together. Yi Tianza straightforwardly refused, no need, if there's nothing else, I'll head back. With that, he quickened his pace and left. Han Ruiyan stomped her foot in frustration, her chest heaving with anger, Yi Tianza, you really don't know what's good for you. So many people wish to have dinner with me, but you refused. HMPH, I understand now, you're deliberately trying to portray this image, playing mind games, right? I won't fall for it. In my eyes, the gap between you and the big shot behind Long Yi is still huge. She suddenly remembered Yi Tianza causing trouble at the bidding chamber last night, which led to her father calling her home early and the cancellation of the event. The important figure she had been looking forward to meeting did not show up as expected. With these thoughts, Han Ruiyan felt even more aggrieved and angry. Through gritted teeth, she muttered, Bastard, next time I see you, I will make you regret it. In a luxurious ward at the first hospital of Zhongnan City, Xiao Hongming sat on the hospital bed, facing Xiao Qingcheng, and said, Qingcheng, these days Grandpa has been thinking carefully here, perhaps, three years ago, insisting that you and Tianza fulfill the marriage contract was indeed a mistake on my part. These past three years have been really tough. Just mentioning Yi Tianza makes Xiao Qingcheng's heart tremble. She forced a smile and said, It's not that hard, anyway, once we get the divorce certificate, we will have no more contact. Xiao Hongming looked disappointed and said, I always treated Tianza as my own grandson, but the night before last when I was hospitalized and asked you to contact him, he refused. I never expected him to ignore me like this. Xiao Qingcheng subconsciously recalled, Yi Tianza did come that night. Xiao Hongming was stunned for a moment, then continued, Your mother and Xiao Nan clearly told me that Tianza didn't come and said he wanted to cut ties with the Xiao family. As he spoke, he suddenly realized something was wrong. His aged face instantly darkened. After hearing about what happened at the hospital two days ago, Xiao Qingcheng honestly explained the whole situation to Xiao Hongming. Upon hearing this, Xiao Hongming's lips trembled with anger, his fury burning inside. They actually deceived him, slandered Tianqi, causing him to misunderstand Tianqi. This behavior is unforgivable. Xiao Hongming immediately ordered, Qingcheng, call them over right away, immediately. Xiao Qingcheng advised, Grandpa, the doctor advised you to rest and not get angry. Let's discuss this after you recover. Xiao Qingcheng never expected that his mother and brother would do such a thing behind his back. However, Xiao Hongming firmly stated, No. They must come. Xiao Qingcheng had no choice but to comply and called Zhang Huilin and Xiao Nan. Soon, Zhang Huilin and her son hurriedly arrived at the ward. Confronted with Xiao Hongming's cold expression, they were nervous and uneasy. Zhang Huilin awkwardly said, Dad, let us explain, actually. Xiao Hongming coldly interrupted, kneel down. In the Xiao family, Xiao Hongming's words were law. Zhang Huilin and Xiao Nan could only kneel on the ground. Xiao Hongming reprimanded, how dare you deceive me? Do you think I'm a fool? Or do you have malicious intent to anger me? Zhang Huilin and Xiao Nan lowered their heads, trembling. Xiao Nan said, Grandpa, please don't be angry. We know we were wrong, we won't dare to do it again, please forgive us. Xiao Hongming coldly snorted, What's the use of an apology? Now I demand that you immediately apologize to Tianqi, ask him to come back home, and reconsider the marriage with Qingcheng. This statement caused a sudden change in the faces of the others present. 
Xiao Qingcheng frowned, wanting to speak but hesitated. Xiao Nan, however, raised his head and refused, Grandpa, Yi Tianqi has been freeloading at our house for three years, a useless person. What qualifications does he have to make me apologize? I won't go. Xiao Hongling glared, dare you disobey my orders? Xiao Nan turned his head, full of disdain. Zhang Huilin also said, Dad. Qingcheng has finally managed to get rid of him, why do you want to push her back into the fire? Don't you know what happened at the bidding conference last night? It almost brought shame and humiliation to our Xiao family. Xiao Hongming frowned and asked, What did Tianqi do last night? Upon hearing this, Xiao Qingcheng quickly signaled Zhang Huilin to stop talking. After all, what happened at the bidding conference last night was too thrilling, she was worried that her grandfather couldn't bear it. But Zhang Huilin disregarded everything and bluntly said, he wanted to retaliate against Qingcheng by proposing a divorce, deliberately causing trouble at the bidding conference, not only causing us to lose a 10 billion order but also offending the Hu master. Zhang Huilin recounted the incident in detail, emphasizing Yi Tianqi's bad behavior and putting all the blame on him. Xiao Hongming was shocked after hearing this. The Xiao family had put in too much effort for that 10 billion order, and now it was ruined by Yi Tianqi? Offending the powerful figures in Jiangnan city, even offending the Hu master? This was a huge mistake. Why did this happen? Xiao Hongming became more and more anxious, his breathing quickened, cold sweat seeping from his forehead. Xiao Qingcheng sensed that something was wrong. Xiao Hongming anxiously asked his grandfather if he was feeling uncomfortable. Just as he was about to answer, he suddenly felt a sharp pain in his chest. Ah! A surge of old blood gushed out, and he fainted on the sickbed. Xiao Qingcheng and the other two were pale with fright. Grandfather! Quick! Call the doctor. Two hours later, outside the ward, Wu Xingye sighed and said, Mr. Xiao, although I rushed back in time to treat him, your grandfather's condition is not optimistic. If he doesn't receive further treatment, he may not last more than five days. Upon hearing this, the faces of Xiao Qingcheng and the others changed. This news came too suddenly. Xiao Qingcheng nervously asked, Director Wu, why is this happening? Didn't you say before that my grandfather just needed rest to slowly recover? Wu Xingye explained, that was the previous situation, but today your grandfather was under strong stimulation, his old illness relapsed, and his condition deteriorated. Even the strongest body can't take it. Xiao Qingcheng continued to ask, Director Wu, is there really no way to save my grandfather? I can bear any cost, no matter how many precious herbs are needed or what method is used. Wu Xingye shook his head, indicating his helplessness. Xiao Qingcheng clenched her fists, tears welling up in her eyes. She turned to Zhang Huilin and Xiao Nans, angry, and said, It's all because of your meddling. I told you not to speak out of turn, why didn't you listen? Xiao Nan lowered his head and said, I didn't expect it to turn out like this either. Zhang Huilin sneered and said, In fact, this has nothing to do with us. Ultimately, it's that selfish person's fault. If it weren't for him, Grandpa wouldn't have been angered like this. Before Xiao Qingcheng could speak, Wu Xingye suddenly brightened and said, Mr. Xiao, I suddenly remembered a divine doctor. Perhaps he can cure your grandfather's illness. Xiao Qingcheng's face lit up, really? Where is this divine doctor? I will go invite him immediately. Wu Xingye said, of course it's true. But I only met that divine doctor once and didn't leave any contact information. I will try to find a way to reach out to him and give you an answer by tomorrow at the latest. Xiao Qingcheng hurriedly said, thank you, Director Wu. Please convey that as long as the divine doctor is willing to come and treat, I am willing to pay any price. After Wu Xingye left, Xiao Qingcheng had to prepare to attend the Ji family's longevity banquet to welcome the arrival of Miss Han, but she was worried about leaving her grandfather to Zhang Huilin and Xiao Nan. So she hired two more caregivers to take care of him before she could leave with peace of mind. As she walked out of the hospital, her eyes revealed the arrogance and confidence she had in the past. This time, I will definitely reclaim everything I lost at the business meeting last night. Yi Tianza, you will regret it. The next morning, at the Yi family cemetery, Yi Tianza stood in front of his family's grave, his expression sad with a hint of fierceness. Grandfather, there is news that the tiger-shaped jade pendant you wore back then will be auctioned at the Ji Wuli's banquet. I will personally investigate and follow the clues until I find the real culprit who caused your deaths. Rest assured, no matter who it is, I will make them pay a painful price. Yi Tianza took a deep breath, turned and left the cemetery, getting into a black Maybach parked at the cemetery gate. The license plate number was Zhang F66666. As we all know, this luxury car is the ride of the southern king, Zhao Hailong. 
At this moment, Zhao Hailong is sitting upright in the driver's seat, with a serious expression on his face. Once he settled in, Zhao Hailong shared all the intelligence he gathered about the Ji family's birthday banquet with Yi Tianzi. Many dignitaries from Jiangnan City were invited to this Ji family banquet. When they learned that Miss Rong Meiyan from the Rong family in the provincial capital would attend the banquet, it attracted many people who spared no effort to participate, hoping to catch a glimpse of Miss Rong's elegance. Ji's family issued a large number of last-minute invitations, but demand still exceeded supply, with prices even soaring in the black market. Zhao Hailong concluded that Ji's family actually welcomed this situation. Over the years, they have been hoping to expand their influence, and having Miss Rong from the Rong family join this banquet is a perfect opportunity for Ji's family to promote themselves. Yi Tianzi smiled faintly and said, Perhaps what will be exposed today is not the face, but the backside. Zhao Hailong smiled and echoed, then continued, There is one more thing, Ji's family has issued a statement requesting guests to only attend the banquet without giving money or gifts, to show sincerity and friendship to the guests, not for profit. Yi Tianzi sneered, Ji's family still has the nerve to claim they are sincere. Who would believe that? Zhao Hailong nodded and said, Exactly, although Ji's family claims not to accept gifts, they held a small auction at the banquet. While it seemed to be to enhance the atmosphere, it actually made those guests who wanted to please Ji's family compete in bidding, resulting in much more money than receiving gifts. In the end, they not only received money but also enhanced their reputation, killing two birds with one stone. Yi Tianzi remained unmoved, he was only here for his grandfather's tiger-shaped jade pendant. Shortly after, Zhao Hailong took Yi Tianzi to the vicinity of the venue for the Ji family banquet. Before Yi Tianzi got off the car, Zhao Hailong handed him a standby invitation to the banquet. He said, Mr. Yi, this is the standby invitation issued by Ji's family yesterday. You can enter without verifying your identity. Yi Tianzi took the invitation and nodded in thanks, thank you, you can go back now. Zhao Hailong drove away. He would not attend this banquet. After all, the Tianlong group had announced a boycott against Ji's family. Punlai Pavilion, a famous Chinese-style hotel in Jiangnan City. Surrounded by red walls, with artificial mountains, gardens, and fountains inside, mist lingering, as if in a fairyland. This is also one of the properties of the Ji family. Today at noon, the Ji family banquet is being held here. The entrance is bustling with luxury cars lined up. Wealthy and distinguished guests enter Peng Lai Pavilion with smiles on their faces, discussing how grand the Ji family's banquet is this time, living up to being one of the three major families in Zhangmin. It is said that Miss Rong from the Rong family will also come. If one can get to know her, one will surely enjoy wealth and prosperity in the future. If you want to board the ship of the Rong family, you must first hold on to the thigh of the Ji family tightly. Yi Tianzi walked through the hotel's entrance. Passing through the Chinese-style corridor, he arrived at the entrance of the banquet hall. There, he saw two familiar faces, Ji Bo Duan and Ji Boxiao, the two brothers. They were welcoming guests and chatting with each other. When their eyes fell on Yi Tianzi, their expressions immediately turned surprised and displeased. Especially Ji Boxiao, he strode over directly. Ji Bo was furious and interrogated Yi Tianzi angrily, Yi Tianzi, today is my father's birthday banquet, what are you doing here? Get out of here. Yi Tianzi responded with a feigned displeasure, Ji Boxia, you really have a sharp tongue. You only have one father, me, Yi Tianzi, so where is another father coming from? Ji Boxia was almost losing his temper. He used to kneel and call Yi Tianzi father, but now every time they met, Yi Tianzi would act thoughtful, which was unbearable. Ji Boxia glared at Yi Tianzi and threatened, do you know the consequences of provoking me? Yi Tianzi smiled faintly and said, are the consequences crying and screaming? or even wetting your pants out of fear. I'm not as scared as some people. These words seemed to stab Ji Boshou's heart, reminding him of everything that happened at the Lin family yesterday, leaving him feeling scared and ashamed. Of course, there was more anger. Because when he came back yesterday, he realized that it must have been Yi Tianzi's doing. Ji Boxiao gritted his teeth and said, Do you dare mention what happened yesterday? Today, I will definitely teach you a lesson. Just as he was about to rush forward with his fist, Ji Bo Duan quickly grabbed his wrist and advised softly, Don't be impulsive. Ji Boxiao looked at Ji Bo Duan in confusion and asked, Brother, why are you stopping me? This guy has caused me such humiliation, I must teach him a lesson. Ji Bo Duan lowered his voice and said, I know this waste deserves to be taught a lesson, but don't you know what today's occasion is? Fighting at our father's birthday banquet, how will others view us? Ji Boxiao unwillingly said, But, Ji Bo Duan interrupted him and confidently said, 
Leave this guy surnamed Yi to me. You go and entertain the other guests in the banquet hall. Ji Boxiao sighed angrily, glanced at Yi Tianza, mumbled, I won't bother with you for now, HMPH. After Ji Boxiao left for the banquet hall, Ji Bo Duan took a step forward, hands in his pockets, and said condescendingly, Yi, you freeloaders are everywhere, even showing up at my father's birthday banquet? Let me tell you, with your lowly status, you are not welcome in this banquet hall. If you want to freeload, go to the Shaw County snack bar across the street, it suits you better. Facing Ji Bo Duan's sharp sarcasm, Yi Tianza calmly said, who says I can't go in? Ji Bo Duan burst into laughter, are you kidding me? To attend my father's birthday banquet, you must have an invitation. But before he finished, Yi Tianza raised an invitation and said, take a good look, what's this? Ji Bo Duan stared in disbelief, how could you have a standby invitation? Yi Tianza smiled faintly, it doesn't matter how I got it, I just want to ask you, can I go in? Ji Bo Duan fell into contemplation. It turned out that the invitations distributed at the beginning of the Ji family's birthday banquet were limited and personalized. But two days ago, when they learned that Miss Rong from the Rong family was coming, countless people wanted to attend the banquet. Taking the opportunity to expand their influence, the Ji family specially printed an additional batch of standby invitations. Due to the tight schedule, these invitations were not personalized, but marked with a price of 100,000 each, totaling 100 invitations, earning them a total of 10 million. Despite the skyrocketing price of the standby invitation, which is in high demand and even being scalped on the black market, Yi Tianqi actually managed to get one. Yi Tianqi asked, why won't you answer my question? Can I go in? There was a hint of sternness in Ji Bo's eyes. He was determined not to let Yi Tianqi in, even if the other party had a standby invitation. So he took a step forward, lowered his voice menacingly, and said, this is my territory. If I say you can't come in, then you can't. If you're not happy about it, then just bear with it. Yi Tianqi's cold eyes narrowed, ready to take action, when suddenly a familiar voice came from behind, Young Master Ji, we've come to wish the head of the Ji family a happy birthday. Are we not too late? He turned around to see Xiao Qingcheng, accompanied by Zhang Huilin and Xiao Nan, walking towards them. When they saw Yi Tianqi, their expressions instantly turned surprised. Xiao Qingcheng furrowed her brows slightly, her unique cold demeanor standing out even more. She asked unexpectedly, Yi Tianz, what are you doing here? Yi Tianz replied lightly, I'm here for business. Do I still need to report everything to you like before? Xiao Qingcheng's eyes trembled slightly. Yes, they had already filed for divorce, and she no longer needed to report to him. But strangely, losing control made her feel uncomfortable. At this moment, Ji Bode sneered coldly, Qingcheng, this waste somehow got hold of an invitation and wanted to come in for food and drinks, but I stopped him. Xiao Nan sarcastically remarked, Today is the 60th birthday of the Ji family head. Are you qualified to attend? Zhang Huilin angrily rebuked, You, this despicable person, can you stop appearing in front of us and disgusting people? Get out of here! Seeing Zhang Huilin and her son speaking up for themselves, Ji Bode showed a hint of satisfaction in his eyes. He said condescendingly, Did you hear that? No one here welcomes you. If you don't leave, don't blame me for asking the bodyguards to kick you out. Yi Tian squinted and said, whether I leave or not is not up to you. He raised the invitation and raised his voice, young master Ji, are you sure you want to turn away all the guests with standby invitations? Or does the Ji family no longer recognize standby invitations? His voice immediately attracted many guests at the entrance of the banquet hall. What? Can't guests with standby invitations attend the birthday banquet? I spent 200,000 to buy this standby invitation on the black market. What does not recognizing mean? Young Master Ji, what's going on? Faced with sudden questioning, Ji Bode broke out in a cold sweat. After all, issuing 100 standby invitations involved a wide range of people. How dare he imply non-recognition? Ji Bode explained reluctantly, please don't get excited, I didn't mean not to recognize standby invitations. I just suspect this gentleman stole the standby invitation, so I didn't let him in. As for the rest of you, before he could finish his sentence, Yi Tians interrupted, you say I stole the invitation, do you have any evidence? Ji Bode stammered, unable to produce any evidence because the standby invitations were not verified with real names. Yi Tians continued, in the eyes of the Ji family, as long as they don't like someone, they say the invitation is stolen? Isn't that unfair and domineering? Uninformed guests echoed, that's right. If the Ji family says my invitation is stolen, I can't defend myself at all. I feel like the Ji family looks down on us guests with standby invitations. It's really insincere. 
If they look down on us, why bother issuing standby invitations? They must give us an explanation. The crowd discussed fervently, leaving Ji bowed with a splitting headache. His eyes involuntarily twitched. He wished he could slap these brainless guests a few times. Of course, on this special day, he couldn't afford to provoke the crowd. He could only say, it's a misunderstanding. No one stole the standby invitations, guests with invitations can come in, and the G family won't stop anyone. The surrounding guests finally quieted down and stopped harping on the issue. Ji Bo Duan lowered his voice and warned Yi, don't think you can get away with a little trickery on my turf. I suggest you rein in your tail, or I can make you regret it. Yi Tianzi responded calmly, I'm looking forward to seeing that. With that, he walked straight into the banquet hall. Zhang Huilin watched his back, her face flushed with anger, cursing, this shameless wolf, willing to do anything dirty just to get by. Xiao Nan worriedly said, this waste always relies on others. Did he get kicked by Han Ruiyan, heard that Miss Rong from the Rong family is attending the birthday banquet today, and specially came to join in, hoping to seek refuge with her? Ji Bo Duan sneered, what status does Miss Rong have? If she really sets her sights on that Yi, I can make him regret it. Xiao Qingcheng's face was full of disappointment as he sighed. Yi Tianzi, when will you learn to rely on yourself to grow, instead of always depending on others? Ji Bo Duan gently reminded, Qingcheng, the birthday banquet is about to start. Let me take you in. With that, he reached out to hold Xiao Qingcheng. Xiao Qingcheng instinctively stepped back and said, Sorry, I have something to attend to. You take my mom in first, I'll come by myself later. Ji Bo Duan reluctantly withdrew his hand, smiling and said, All right, hurry up. After Ji Bo Duan led Zhang Huilin and Xiao Nan into the banquet hall, Xiao Qingcheng called Wu Xingye, asking, Dean Wu, have you contacted that divine doctor? Wu Xingye replied, I'm about to arrive at my old friend's house. I'll get the contact information and inform you immediately. Xiao Qingcheng thanked him and hung up. When Wu Xingye arrived at the Lin family, he found a group of servants in a panic, as if something urgent had happened. Then he saw Lin Wanda rushing out of the living room. Wu Xingye hurriedly asked, What happened? Lin Wanda anxiously said, Lin Yuanshun's condition suddenly worsened. He has been unconscious and coughing up blood from time to time. Wu Xingye's face changed and asked, Wasn't he cured yesterday? How did it turn out like this? Lin Wanda shook his head and said, I don't know. Just two hours ago, he took the Chinese medicine prescribed by Divine Dr. Yi, and then suddenly became like this. Wu Xingye furrowed his brow and said, Take me to see him. The two hurried to Lin Yuanshun's bedroom, only to find him pale and struggling to breathe. Wu Xingye checked his pulse, his expression grave. Mr. Lin's face was filled with a heavy expression, his pulse irregular, and the situation of multiple organ failure was causing great concern. Lin Wanda felt powerless, with a sense of unease and as if he was about to lose everything today. His body trembled involuntarily, and he asked in disbelief, How could this happen? At the same time, Lin Zhaoyang gritted her teeth and said, It must be the prescription left by that doctor surnamed Yi that's causing the problem. I always found him suspicious. Originally, he came to treat Grandpa, how could he not accept any payment? He must have deliberately done this to lower our guard and then played tricks on the prescription. Hearing this, Lin Wanda's face became even more gloomy. Anger surged within him. If Yi Tianch really tampered with the prescription on purpose, he would not let him off. Wu Xingye shook his head and said, From my observation, Dr. Yi doesn't seem like that kind of person, could it be? Suddenly, his gaze fell on the medicine bowl on the table. He walked over, picked up the bowl, sniffed the medicine residue in front of his nose. Wu Xingye nodded and explained solemnly, The ingredients of Yi Shenyi's prescription are very simple. I personally checked it before and it does have the effect of detoxifying and nourishing the body. However, the residue of two ingredients in the medicine bowl did not match the prescription, which is the reason why the prescription did not work and instead had side effects. Lin Shi Shou, yesterday before Yi Shenyi left, he repeatedly reminded to strictly follow the prescription for preparing and decocting the medicine. How could this mistake happen? Lin Wanda shook his head and said, it shouldn't have happened. I specifically instructed Yang Yang. Suddenly, he widened his eyes, as if remembering something. Turning to Lin Zhaoyang, he said in a deep voice, I told you to prepare and decoct the medicine according to the prescription by yourself, so the problem must be with you. Why did you want to harm Grandpa? Lin Zhaoyang trembled in fear. Her face turned pale as she shook her head and said, I didn't mean to harm Grandpa. I. It wasn't intentional. I just doubted the character of that surnamed Yi and asked a TCM friend to evaluate the prescription. 
He said there was an issue with the prescription, and two ingredients needed to be swapped. I followed his advice, but I didn't expect. Smack. Before she could finish speaking, Lin Wanda slapped her face suddenly. He was full of anger as he said, Nonsense. Do you know how big of a disaster your capriciousness has caused? Can you bear such responsibility? Plop. Lin Zhaoyang fell to the ground directly, tears streaming down her face. She was full of regret and fear. If she had known things would turn out like this, she would never have dared to change the herbs without permission. Wu Xingye sighed and said, Lin Shi Shou, blaming Miss Lin is of no use now. The most urgent matter is to quickly find Yi Shen Yi. Only he can save Lin Lao's life now. Yes, yes, yes. Lin Wanda nodded, reprimanding Lin Zhaoyang, why are you still standing there foolishly? Quickly call Yun Yun and ask her to invite Yi Shen Yi over. We can also send someone to invite him. Lin Zhaoyang hurriedly followed the instructions. Soon, she received a reply from Han Ruiyan, saying she had called Yi Tianch, but his phone was off. As for Yi Tianchi's address, Han Ruiyan had no idea. Lin Zhaoyang asked cautiously, Dad, what should we do now? Lin Wanda said in a deep voice, Bring them. Several black-clad bodyguards entered. Lin Wanda ordered, Convey my orders, mobilize all available manpower in the city to find a young man named Yi Tianch, no matter where he is or what he is doing, bring him back to the Lin family. Remember, you only have three hours. The bodyguards looked at each other, nodded solemnly, yes. After the bodyguards left, Lin Wanda frowned and muttered softly, May heaven bless us to find Yi Shen Yi smoothly. Meanwhile, in the banquet hall of Peng Lai Pavilion, the atmosphere was very lively. On the stage, a group of women dressed in hanfu were performing classical dances, their movements exceptionally beautiful, like fairies descending to earth, perfectly matching the beautiful title of Peng Lai Pavilion. In the audience, guests were either chatting and interacting or enjoying the performances. Yi Tianch casually found a seat and sat down. With some time before the banquet started, he was a bit bored. He took out his phone to pass the time, only to realize that it was dead and turned off. Just then, a familiar voice sounded, Sir, we meet again, don't we? He looked up. A graceful woman in a silver-white Changsam stood in front of Yi Tianzi, her face lit up with a charming smile. Yi Tianzi's heart skipped a beat, Wow, it's her? Why does she always follow me whenever I appear? Rong Meiyun politely asked, May I sit in this empty seat? Unable to refuse, Yi Tianzi could only nod in agreement, Um, of course you can. Thank you. Rong Meiyun gently took her seat, stealing glances at Yi Tianzi and noticing that he wasn't staring at her, showing great manners. However, Rong Meiyun's unique charm drew the attention of many guests. Wow, that lady is truly enchanting. Do you know her? I don't, but just looking at her is so mesmerizing. It would be a lifetime blessing to spend a night with her, haha. <laughs> Stop daydreaming. Those invited to the birthday banquet today all have backgrounds and power. Don't say the wrong thing and offend the wrong people. Just then, the host of the guests, Ji Boxiao, overheard the guests whispering and also noticed Rong Meiyun. His eyes widened, wow, there's such an outstanding lady here. She's no less striking than Han Ruiyun, and even more distinctive. Since Han Ruiyun was absent from today's banquet for a reason, Ji Boxiao seized the opportunity. He walked up with a brisk pace, struck a pose he thought was very handsome, and greeted Rong Meiyun. Hello, beauty. I am Ji Boxiao, the second young master of the Zhangnan Ji family. If you need any help, just ask. Rong Meiyun shook her head, indicating she didn't need anything. Ji Boxiao continued, Beauty, you're sitting too far from the stage. Would you like me to help you move to a seat closer to the main table? You may not know, but the most important people today are all seated near the main table. I can introduce you to them, which would be very beneficial for you. Rong Meiyun replied calmly, No, thank you. Ha! Huh? Ji Boxia was quite surprised. In his view, being able to sit close to the main table was a dream opportunity for guests because it represented status and position. To be rejected? Was his charm not enough? Ji Boxia cleared his throat and continued, Beauty, maybe you've heard of Rong Meiyun, the eldest daughter of the Rong family. She will also be attending the birthday celebration today. We are old friends, and she listens to whatever I say. As long as I nod, I can introduce you to her. This precious opportunity should not be missed. Oh. Rong Meiyun raised an eyebrow slightly, teasingly saying, Do you really know that Miss Rong from the Rong family? Ji Boxiao patted his chest and assured, Of course I do. Ha ha. At that moment, Yi Tianza, sitting next to them, couldn't help but burst into laughter. 
This Ji Boxia was just like his brother, always boasting. But the status gap between the Ji family and the Rong family was huge. How could a second young master of the Ji family make the eldest daughter of the Rong family obey him? Ji Boxia only then noticed Yi Tianzi. Yi Tianqi smiled but looked at Ji Boxia with a hint of sarcasm, as if provoking him. Ji Boxia was furious, his voice filled with anger and disdain, blaming Yi Tianqi for talking nonsense. Yi Tianqi, however, didn't take it seriously, responding, We are all adults, why not just laugh and be happy instead of making a big deal out of it? Ji Boxia, undaunted, openly taunted Yi Tianqi, his voice dripping with provocation and disdain. Yi Tianqi casually expressed his disappointment, subtly criticizing Ji Boxiao's upbringing, leaving people feeling sympathetic. Unable to hold back any longer, Ji Boxiao angrily accused Yi Tianqi of reaping what he sowed, his voice full of dissatisfaction and anger. Without hesitation, he raised his foot, ready to attack Yi Tianqi. However, just as his foot was about to kick Yi Tianqi in the face, Yi Tianqi quickly counterattacked, firmly grabbing his ankle and twisting it forcefully. Ji Boxiao instantly lost his balance, uncontrollably falling to the ground with a dull thud. This sudden turn of events caught the attention of the onlookers, who looked on in astonishment. Ji Boxiao kneeling on the ground was truly unexpected, leaving everyone in shock. Meanwhile, Yi Tianqi calmly watched Ji Boxiao on the ground, seemingly unfazed on the outside but perhaps a storm brewing within. Today is Master Ji's 60th birthday, but Ji Boxiao knelt down and kowtowed to someone at this important occasion, which truly shocked everyone. Ji Boxiao felt extremely embarrassed and regretful, wishing he could find a hole to hide in. He had originally planned to kick Yi Tianqi away to show off his style, but he ended up making a fool of himself, feeling extremely ashamed. Blushing, Ji Boxiao glared at Yi Tianqi and forcefully pushed him away, shouting, Shut up! I refuse to acknowledge you as my father. Yi Tianqi, with a straight face, teased, Looks like you're going through a rebellious phase. Ji Boxiao was so enraged that he almost went crazy, struggling to pounce on Yi Tianqi. Just then, a stern voice interrupted Ji Boxiao's actions, and it turned out to be Ji Boduan walking over. Ji Boxiao asked in confusion, Brother, why are you stopping me? I need to stand up for myself. Ji Boduan sternly reprimanded, Shut up. Such behavior not only doesn't help solve the problem but also brings shame to our Ji family. Step back. Ji Boxiao could only reluctantly take a few steps back, but his eyes almost shot fire at Yi Tianz. Ji Boduan stepped forward, with a serious expression, and ordered, You, surnamed Yi, I've reminded you to restrain yourself when you come in, but you instigated a fight, which is too much. You must kneel down and apologize publicly. This statement immediately attracted the attention of the surrounding people, even Xiao Qingcheng and others walked over. Zhang Huilin, seeing Yi Tianz, immediately looked disgusted, blaming, You ungrateful wretch. Young Master Ji kindly accepted you, but instead of being grateful, you not only don't appreciate it but also resort to violence. It's despicable. Xiao Nan also scolded, do you have the face to sit there? Quickly kneel down and apologize to young Master Ji. Yi Tianz lifted his head slightly and said calmly, please get the facts straight. Ji Boxiao started the fight, not me. Ji Bo Duan angrily retorted, nonsense. Today is my father's 60th birthday celebration. How could my brother cause trouble on this occasion? Clearly, you deliberately caused trouble, trying to stir up trouble at the birthday banquet. Ji Boxia echoed, That's right, don't wrong the good guy. I took the initiative to start the fight. Yi Tian sneered, You two brothers, without any ability, but good at framing others. Ji Bo Duan glanced displeased Ly at Yi Tian, then turned to Xiao Qingcheng and said, Qingcheng, did you see that? This surnamed Yi is so arrogant. If it weren't for your face, I would have kicked him out long ago. Xiao Qingcheng first apologized, saying, I'm really sorry for causing you trouble, young Master Ji. Then she frowned and said coldly, Yi Tianz, how far do you want to go with this? No matter how rebellious you are, how arrogant you are, you should know how to distinguish the occasion. Yi Tianz squinted slightly and asked, Are you doubting what I said? Xiao Qingcheng sneered, Your current behavior makes it hard for me to believe. He went to find other women for affairs and free meals just after she mentioned divorce. To retaliate against her, he deliberately caused trouble at the bidding conference, resulting in her losing a 10 billion order. How can anyone trust such a person? Yi Tian smiled bitterly. Shaking her head, Xiao Qingcheng felt heartbroken. She wanted to explain, but hesitated. In the end, she solemnly said, Since you are clueless, why not apologize to young master Ji Er? Yi Tianza remained calm and replied, 
I haven't done anything wrong, so why apologize? Xiao Qingcheng pressed, her tone becoming more intense, you claim to be innocent, but do you have any evidence? Is there anyone who can testify for you? The guests around them all avoided eye contact, no one dared to speak up. Yi Tianzi didn't care because they were all on the Ji family's territory and didn't want to offend them. Faced with Yi Tianzi's silence, Xiao Qingcheng felt disappointed and coldly said, No one is testifying for you, which proves that I did not wrongly accuse you. You should. Before she could finish her sentence, a voice suddenly interrupted her. I can testify for him. It was Rong Meiyin who spoke. Everyone was surprised and confused. Who was this stunning lady? Yi Tianzi was also taken aback, not expecting her to come to his aid. Xiao Qingcheng's gaze fell on Rong Meiyin, noticing not only her outstanding appearance but also her noble demeanor, which made her feel a bit pressured. She tried to remain composed and asked, Madam, what can you testify to? Rong Meiyin calmly stated, I can prove that you have wronged Mr. Yi. Just now, it was young Master Ji from the Ji family who provoked, and Mr. Yi simply defended himself. Though her words were calm, they carried an undeniable force. Ji Bo Duan and Ji Boxiao felt embarrassed, never expecting to be called out. Rong Meiyin continued, I have long heard of Miss Xiao's reputation in the business world, and today, seeing it firsthand, it is indeed well deserved, except, with a bit of a blind spot. This sentence was undoubtedly a public embarrassment to Xiao Qingsheng, causing her to show a rare expression of embarrassment. Zhang Huilin, displeased, questioned, Who do you think you are? Do you have the right to speak here? Rong Meiyin calmly retorted, Do I need to report who I am to you? Zhang Huilin proudly stated, Just because you have some looks, you think you can act high and mighty. I don't care about that. I just want to tell you that Xiao Qingsheng is not someone anyone can boss around. She is a distinguished guest at the Ji family banquet, and with Miss Rong's arrival today, there may be potential business partnerships. Can you handle the consequences if you offend her? Xiao Nan chimed in. That's right, offending my sister is like offending Miss Rong. Can you bear the consequences? Rong Meiyin narrowed her eyes slightly, about to speak, when Yi Tianzi stood up. He looked at everyone, furrowed his brows, and said, If you want to target me, come directly to me. There's no need to involve innocent people. I'm sorry for getting you involved. This is my personal grudge, and I will handle it. Thank you for your help just now. Rong Meiyin smiled faintly, nodded, and then fell silent. Xiao Qingsheng watched this scene and suddenly remembered meeting this lady two nights ago, but at that time, he didn't pay much attention because of the busy schedule. However, today she was sitting with Yi Tianz again. It was Han Ruoyin two days ago, and today it's this beautiful lady. For some reason, each person made her feel an inexplicable sense of crisis, making it hard for her to articulate. Xiao Qingsheng said coldly, Do you have to make it clear in public? Yi Tianzi replied bluntly, I have no fear of the truth coming to light. Xiao, are you willing to be honest? Xiao Qingsheng's eyes flickered with a hint of disappointment as she coldly said, You are only dissatisfied because I suggested a divorce, wanting to prove that I will regret it by getting involved with other women. You think I will be jealous, but let me tell you, no matter who you are with in the future, no matter what achievements you make, I will not regret it. Everything I have is earned through my own hard work, why you, no matter what, will always rely on other women, unable to change your fundamentally worthless nature. So, I advise you to have some self-respect, don't fantasize about using such schemes to prove anything, it will only make me more convinced that divorce is the right choice. This statement was sharp and firm. Zhang Huilin nodded in agreement, well said. There's no need to show any respect to this kind of scoundrel. Xiao Nan also chimed in. Sis, you should have said these words earlier. Let him understand how ridiculous he is. The Jibo brothers, Jibo Duan and Jibo Xiao, couldn't help but gloat. They found it more satisfying to watch Xiao Qingcheng suppress Yi Tianzi than to do it themselves. Faced with everyone's mockery, Yi Tianzi remained calm. He gazed at Xiao Qingcheng and said calmly, Xiao, I also want to say one thing. Confidence is a good thing, but being overconfident can turn into arrogance, which is off-putting. Perhaps you are the one who needs to have more self-respect. Xiao Qingsheng's face looked unpleasant. This was the first time Yi Tianzi had spoken so harshly to her since their marriage. Just for his own insignificant dignity, he started to attack others at will, didn't he? Zhang Huilin scolded, Bah! You dare to meddle in others' affairs with your despicable character? It's simply nauseating. Xiao Nan whispered to Jibo Duan, Young Master Jibo, can we kick this waste out? He's too arrogant. Jibo Duan furrowed his brows slightly. He also wanted to drive Yi Tianzi out, but he had tried before and failed in the end. 
Suddenly, he had an idea, a hint of cunning flashed in his eyes. He sneered and said, Mr. Yi, as a guest at the banquet, I do not have the authority to kick you out. But in such an important occasion, seating arrangements are crucial, and everyone must follow the rules. Although you can come in, it doesn't mean you can sit anywhere you like. Yi Tianza knew that Jibo Duan was playing tricks again. So he asked, what are the rules for seating arrangements? Jibo Duan raised his right hand, showing a superior attitude, and explained, the guests attending the banquet today are all social elites, all powerful and influential figures, so the seating arrangements naturally follow the size of wealth. Yi Tianza was interested in this rule and asked, oh? How are the seats arranged according to the size of wealth? Jibo Duan pointed to a table far away and said disdainfully, those worth millions sit at that table. Then, he pointed to the middle table and said, those worth tens of millions sit here. Finally, he pointed to the front and center, the largest main table, and said, those worth over a billion sit there. As for the most important main table today, apart from the G family, to sit at that table, one must have a net worth of one billion. These individuals are the wealthiest in Jiangnan city, and even when Miss Rong Mayin arrives, they will all be seated there. When this news spread, many guests looked towards the main table with some unease. Unfortunately, they simply did not qualify. Ji Bo glanced disdainfully at Yi Tianz and said, the seat you are currently occupying is reserved for those with a net worth of tens of millions. According to the rules, do you think your insignificant wealth entitles you to sit here? Ha ha! The people around immediately burst into laughter. Xiao Nan sneered. This waste of space only knows how to rely on others to survive, where does he have any wealth? He's not even worthy of the table for those with a million net worth. Ji Bo pointed towards the door with his finger and said mockingly, without a net worth of a million, one cannot sit at the table. I think he should go to the door and squat there, perhaps the waiter will bring him some leftovers. Everyone laughed, even Xiao Qingcheng couldn't help but shake her head and sigh. She couldn't understand why Yi Tianz, knowing he would be ridiculed, still chose to seek trouble. Looking at him like this, he should be close to breaking down and ready to leave. However, Yi Tianz remained calm. He slowly stood up and asked calmly, are you sure you want to determine where someone sits based on their wealth? Ji Bo puffed out his chest and said, it's only natural. Have you realized that your wealth is not enough for a million, and you're ready to go to the door? Before he could finish his sentence, he saw Yi Tianz striding away. But Yi Tianz did not walk towards the entrance of the banquet hall, but in the completely opposite direction. Ji Bo instinctively reminded, Mr. Yi, you're going the wrong way. The door is over there. But Yi Tianz ignored him. He walked straight to the nearest position to the main table, pulled out a chair, and sat down grandly. This move silenced the entire banquet hall for ten seconds, then there was an uproar. He wasn't sitting at the main table, but directly in front of the Ji family. Too audacious. Giving no face to the Ji family at all. At this moment, Ji Bo's face turned livid. He thought he could embarrass Yi Tianz, but he didn't expect the other party to be so disrespectful. He couldn't hold back anymore. Ji Bo strode over and scolded, Mr. Yi, who gave you permission to sit here? Stand up quickly. Yi Tianz crossed his legs and calmly said, didn't you say one must have a net worth of one billion to sit here? Then why are you trying to make me leave? Ji Bo's eye twitched, almost spitting out blood. How dare you ask why? I said one must have a net worth of one billion to sit here, do you have one billion? Yi Tianz shook his head and said, indeed, I do not have a net worth of one billion. The crowd immediately erupted in boos. You don't have a net worth of one billion, yet you want to sit at the main table, simply seeking excitement. A clown! Xiao Qingcheng frowned. She couldn't understand why Yi Tianz always liked to attract attention in such an undignified way. Doesn't he care about any dignity? Ji Bo clenched his fists and threatened, if you don't have a net worth of one billion, get away from this table, I am not someone to be trifled with. Yi Tianz smiled lightly. As the crowd heard Yi Tianqi claim his net worth to be in the trillions, they were initially skeptical, but soon burst into laughter. Ji Bo, clutching his stomach, chuckled, Oh, Mr. Yi, are you joking? Are you really a clown or just pretending to be one? Do you even understand the concept of being worth trillions? Ji Bo sarcastically remarked, Maybe you're talking about Zimbabwean dollars? Zhang Huilin smirked and said, Even if this guy has one billion, I would apologize directly on my knees. Xiao Nan rolled his eyes in disdain, saying, if this waste really has trillions, then I must be the richest person in the world. Xiao Qingsheng rubbed his temples, sighed, and said, ah, what on earth are you thinking? When will you become more realistic? 
Rong Meiyan's eyes flashed with a hint of skepticism. As one of the four major families in the provincial capital, the Rong family held a high position of power and had assets of around a hundred billion. If a family's assets exceeded trillions, they would not only be at the top in the province but also among the top super families nationwide. Yet Yi Tianqi claimed his net worth reached trillions. Such a statement would be incredulous to anyone who heard it. Facing everyone's doubts, Yi Tianqi calmly said, What I said is true. If you don't believe me, you can check the balance on this card. He took out a completely black bank card. Unlike a regular bank card, this card had no card number, no bank logo, not even a union pay logo. The only identifier was a silver dragon emblem in the center. Few people knew that this card was called the Supreme Emperor card. It was only issued when the deposit inside exceeded trillions, with only 10 in the world. It could be used for transactions at any bank worldwide, and the cardholder's identity would be strictly confidential. This card was given to him by the super billionaire Bill Musk, who was imprisoned in the fallen city. However, Ji Bo and the others present did not recognize this card. Various mocking voices could be heard around, Haha, this card doesn't even have a card number, what balance are you checking? I think this guy might have gone crazy from being asked for a divorce by President Xiao. It's really strange, President Xiao is so beautiful and capable, why would she marry such a waste? Xiao Qingcheng walked up to Yi Tianqi and said seriously, how far do you want to go? Isn't it embarrassing enough? Yi Tianqi coldly retorted, are you worried that I'll embarrass myself? Or are you actually worried that my embarrassment will affect your image, President Xiao? Xiao Qingcheng instinctively wanted to retort, her lips moved, but she ultimately didn't say anything. Because deep down, she did have some selfish thoughts. At this point, Ji Bo looked at the time, frowned, and said, the banquet is about to begin. Mr. Yi, I don't have time to waste with you. Stand up and go to the door, stop embarrassing yourself here. However, Yi Tianqi showed no intention of moving. He raised an eyebrow and asked, according to the seating rules, I should sit here. Why do you have the right to make me leave? Ji Bo impatiently said, stop the nonsense. Will you leave or not? If you don't leave, don't blame me for having someone kick you out. Ji Bo pointed at his nose and cursed, you fool. Don't think that our Ji family is a place where you can behave recklessly. Yi Tianqi narrowed his eyes slightly, before he could speak, there was a commotion coming from the direction of the banquet hall entrance. A middle-aged man's displeased voice suddenly rang out, catching the attention of everyone present. People turned to look and saw a group slowly entering the banquet hall. Leading the group was Ji Wooly, the head of the Ji family, wearing a red robe, slim figure, hooked nose, and a cold gleam in his eyes. Ji Wooly was known for his ruthlessness and held a high position and influence in the business world as the head of one of the three major families in Jiangnan City. Following him were Han Tianzheng, the head of the Han family, as well as the chairman of Ningyuan Group, Lai Jingye, and the chairman of Hongda Group, Xie Bin. These four were all powerful figures in Jiangnan City. Their arrival immediately received enthusiastic welcome and support from the guests present. Especially in the face of Ji Wooly, Everyone knelt down to greet him, wishing him a long and prosperous life like the southern mountains and blessings as vast as the eastern sea. Master Ji, when the wrong family's young lady arrives later, please introduce her. I would be very grateful. Ji Wooly smiled and thanked everyone, expressing that he would treat them with courtesy and asking for forgiveness if there were any oversights. Then, his expression gradually turned cold as he warned, if anyone deliberately causes trouble today, don't blame me for being impolite. His gaze fell directly on Yi Tianch at the main table, then he slowly walked towards where Yi Tianch was seated. Today was his birthday banquet, yet someone had taken the seat of honor without his permission, showing extreme disrespect towards him. Each step Ji Wooly took exuded immense pressure, making those around him feel his dominance. When he stopped near the main table, he asked Ji Bo Duan, Bo Duan, what's going on here? Ji Bo Duan sweated on his forehead knowing that he was responsible for organizing today's banquet and would have to bear the consequences of any problems. He hurriedly explained the situation, trying to shift all the blame onto Yi Tianch. Hearing this, Ji Wooly squinted slightly, already in a state of anger. Those familiar with him knew that squinting meant he was about to erupt, and the consequences would be dire. Even Han Tianzheng frowned, thinking to himself, this guy, in just two days, has offended the big shots in Jiangnan City, he's simply insane, isn't he? Luckily. I agreed to his request for a divorce back then, otherwise the Han family would have been implicated too. As for Yi Tianch, he smiled lightly in the face of Ji Wuli's questioning, today, I did not intentionally cause trouble. On the contrary, it was your sons who kept picking faults. The crowd was shocked and in an uproar, with everyone's expression changing. 
It was truly unbelievable. Someone dared to publicly accuse the G family of impending misfortune at Ji Jiaju's 60th birthday celebration, displaying incredible audacity. Even Xiao Qingcheng couldn't help but blink. Yi Tianxi's bold confrontation with Ji Wuli made people wonder what his intentions were. The most excited at the scene were Ji Boduan and Ji Baxiao, the brothers. Ji Boduan pointed at Yi Tianqi and loudly reprimanded, Mr. Yi, you must speak responsibly. How my dad educates us is none of your business. Ji Baxiao was even more furious and said, You waste, today I will make you understand who's in charge. Suddenly, Ji Wuli raised a hand to stop them, a gentle smile appearing on his face. He said to Yi Tianqi, Mr. Yi makes a valid point. I will discipline my two sons properly in the future. Please don't take offense. I apologize on their behalf. Hearing this, everyone present looked at Ji Wuli in disbelief. As the head of the Ji family, being openly disrespected, he not only didn't get angry but instead apologized first. What could be the reason behind this? Ji Bo Duan couldn't accept all this and hurriedly said, Dad, how can you plead for that waste? You know he. Shut up. Ji Wuli coldly interrupted Ji Bo Duan. Ji Bo Duan and Ji Boxiao exchanged a knowing glance. Last night, their father Ji Wuli had instructed them about something crucial, that today's birthday banquet was of utmost importance. It was not just a celebration but a critical moment for the Ji family to win over various forces in Jiangmen City. Due to the Ji family being shunned by the Tianlong group, their future looked bleak. Fortunately, the Rong family extended a helping hand in time, bringing new hope to the Ji family. Most of the guests attending the banquet today came to curry favor with the Rong family. Therefore, the Ji family must show a warm and friendly side, as being too domineering would only lead to resentment and criticism. In other words, Ji Wuli had to portray an approachable image today. Thus, Ji Wuli continued to say to Yi Tianqi, since you're willing to sit at the main table, please have a seat. The Ji family will not mistreat our guests, he he. Upon hearing this, the guests present all praised with thumbs up, Ji Jaju is truly magnanimous, maintaining composure even in the face of disrespect, truly impressive. Ji Wuli smiled contentedly. This was exactly the effect he wanted to achieve. He then walked over to Yi Tianqi, patted his shoulder, lowered his voice and threatened, Young man, I'm giving you face. Sit tight, finish your meal, then leave. Don't get yourself into trouble, or else, I won't mind crushing a little bug. After that, he immediately reverted to his amiable self, inviting all guests to take their seats. The speed at which the face changing is happening is truly astonishing. Sitting at the main table are the three masters of the Ji family, Han Tianzheng, Xie Bin, Lai Jingye, Xiao Qingcheng, Zhang Huilin, Xiao Nan, and Yi Tianza. There is an empty seat next to the main table, perfectly positioned in the center, obviously reserved for Rong Meiyin. However, the atmosphere at the main table is somewhat subtle. Zhang Huilin and Xiao Nan stare at Yi Tianza, their eyes revealing disdain and contempt. Originally, they were looking forward to sitting at the main table to showcase their status and show off. But they didn't expect Yi Tianza to shamelessly sit here, instantly lowering the whole ambiance. If it weren't for the head of the Ji family agreeing to let Yi Tianza sit here, they would have kicked him out a long time ago. Ji Bo Duan and Ji Boxiao brothers cast a look of disdain. This shameless guy is actually sitting here. As for Xie Bin and Lai Jingye, their expressions are also very unpleasant. A few days ago at the bidding business meeting hosted by Long Yi, if it weren't for Yi Tianza causing trouble, they wouldn't have suffered the consequences of being blacklisted and having their cooperation with Tian Long Group cancelled. This has caused huge losses to both of their companies, which is really infuriating. They almost wanted to go up and beat Yi Tianza to vent their anger. As for Han Tianzheng, his expression is slightly complicated. His impression of Yi Tianza is not too bad, but Yi Tianzi's actions have caused countless troubles, which naturally he doesn't want to be involved in. Therefore, he pretends not to know Yi Tianza and doesn't greet him. Only Xiao Qingcheng, sitting in the seat next to Yi Tianza, warns him in a low voice, the head of the Ji family has forgiven your past mistakes and even allowed you to sit at the main table. It is already a sign of tolerance and courtesy towards you. I'm not asking you to be grateful, I just hope you don't hold grudges and continue to cause trouble, can you do that? Yi Tianza squinted and asked back, am I the one holding grudges? The tolerance and courtesy of the Ji family? Xiao Qingcheng replied matter-of-factly, isn't it? Yi Tianza sneered and shook his head, it seems that they really have difficulty communicating. Xiao Qingcheng turned her head away unhappily, filled with grievances and dissatisfaction. She couldn't understand why Yi Tianza, who caused all this mess, was still so stubborn. 
At this moment, Ji Bo Duan looked at his watch and asked, Dad, it's time for the birthday banquet, Miss Rong Mei Yin hasn't arrived yet, what do you think? Ji Wu Li frowned. He was just a spectator at today's birthday banquet, and everyone was most concerned about Miss Rong Mei Yin. The event could proceed without her. Ji Boxia asked anxiously, Dad, is Miss Rong Mei Yin not coming? Ji Wu Li coldly snorted, Miss Rong from the Rong family is of noble status, how could she not come? And she will definitely obey the second master's orders. I think she may have been delayed on the way. Let's start the banquet then, maybe she will arrive soon. Ji Boxiao nodded and began to arrange the preparations for the banquet. The beautiful female dancers who were dancing on stage one by one came down, and then a male host in a white suit walked onto the stage, holding a microphone. Amidst the enthusiastic cheers of the crowd, Ji Wuli stepped onto the stage. With a smile on his face, he expressed his gratitude to everyone. Thank you once again for your presence. I firmly believe that today's birthday banquet will mark the beginning of a deep collaboration between us and the Ji family. Let us trust and support each other, and together create a brilliant future. The guests applauded and cheered. Ji family's head spoke rightly, we will always take pride in the Ji family. Indeed, as long as we unite and cooperate, there is nothing we cannot achieve. Ji Wuli nodded in satisfaction. At this moment, he felt a strong premonition surging within him. He believed that after the successful conclusion of today's banquet, the Ji family's influence in Jiangnan city would further rise, even rivaling that of Wang Longyi and the underground emperor Huya in Jiangnan. Ji Wuli continued, I believe you all know that today's banquet does not accept any gifts or red envelopes, because I value relationships more than profits. To thank all friends and family for coming, I have specially written a piece for everyone. The guests excitedly commented, we have long heard of Master Ji's exceptional calligraphy skills, which are on par with renowned calligraphers. Today, witnessing it firsthand is truly fortunate. Soon, the staff brought a table onto the stage and set up ink and paper. Amidst the expectant gazes of the crowd, Ji Wooly picked up the brush and gracefully wrote on the paper, the strokes flowing like dragons and phoenixes. In no time, a piece was completed. Two hostesses raised the paper to show everyone. It bore four large characters, Perseverance. The guests below marveled, Master Ji's calligraphy is vigorous and powerful, perfectly complementing the theme of perseverance. This piece is truly a treasure for the office. I wonder if Master Ji would be willing to give it to me? I am willing to pay a high price. Ji Wooly, looking hesitant, said, You are all my partners, but there is only one copy of this piece. It wouldn't be fair to give it to anyone. Lai Jingye stood up, smiling, and suggested, Master Ji, there was originally an auction segment planned for today's banquet. Why not auction this piece live to kick off the auction? As for the bidding, the highest bidder gets priority, ensuring fairness and preserving our friendship. Ji Wooly hesitated and said, I don't seek everyone's money, is it appropriate to do this? Lai Jingye quickly explained, where is the impropriety? Your calligraphy is invaluable, and everyone is willing to buy it. It's very appropriate. Led by Lai Jingye, the other guests expressed their support and urged Ji Wooly to proceed with the auction. Thus, Ji Wooly reluctantly sighed, well, since that's the case, I will go along with everyone's suggestion. The starting bid for this piece will be set at 10,000 yuan. Each guest's seat in the audience had a bidding paddle with a number on it. The guests quickly raised their paddles to bid, I bid 50,000. I bid 80,000. 80,000? I bid 100,000. The bidding price rapidly soared, quickly exceeding 300,000 and still increasing. Among the most famous calligraphy masters in Jiangnan City, the price for a single inscription is no less than 200,000 RMB. This brought great joy to Ji Wooly on stage. His self-esteem was greatly satisfied. At the main table below the stage, when the crowd began fiercely bidding for Ji Wooly's calligraphy, Zhang Huilin hurriedly reminded Xiao Qingcheng, saying, Miss, the reason we can attend the birthday banquet today, and even have the opportunity to become partners with the Rong family, is all thanks to the help of the Ji family. Therefore, you must try to bid for the main calligraphy of the Ji family to leave a good impression on others. Xiao Nan also chimed in, it is foreseeable that the Ji family's status in Jiangnan city will surpass that of Mr. Hu and Mr. Long. By then, the calligraphy of the Ji family's head will definitely appreciate in value. Xiao Qingcheng nodded in understanding and raised her sign to bid, saying loudly, I bid 600,000. Xiao Qingcheng's bid directly raised the bidding price by several hundred thousand causing many guests with tight budgets to choose to give up bidding. In the end, only a few guests continued to bid, I bid 610,000. I bid 630,000. Without hesitation, 
Xiao Qingcheng raised her sign again and announced, I bid 800,000. This time, most of the bidders backed out. In the end, only two people were left struggling, I bid 810,000. I bid 830,000. Xiao Qingcheng confidently raised her sign again, saying, I bid 1 million. The scene was in an uproar because one million was enough to buy a work from a well-known calligraphy master in the country, far exceeding the actual value of the G family head's calligraphy. Moreover, the cash amount of one million was not to be ignored. For the millionaires present, it was not easy to come up with this money. Even for billionaires, giving out one million was like cutting flesh. Considering that Xiao Qingcheng was not only a celebrity of the G family but also the object of G Boda's admiration, and even a potential business partner of the Rong family. Therefore, Instead of competing with her, it was better to go with the flow. So, this time no one continued to bid against Xiao Qingcheng. The calligraphy was finally won by Xiao Qingcheng for one million. Ji Wuli clapped satisfactorily and said with a smile, Miss Xiao is young and promising, with unique insights. I really appreciate it. After Miss Mayun from the Rong family arrives later, I will strongly recommend you. Xiao Qingcheng quickly stood up, unable to hide her excitement, thank you for your appreciation. I will work even harder and not disappoint your expectations. Sitting back down, Xiao Qingcheng still had a joyful expression. Zhang Huilin smugly said, I knew it was the right decision to let you participate in the bidding. Now that we have received personal approval from the Ji family head, it's great. Xiao Nan reminded with a smile, Sister, in the end, it's all thanks to young Master Ji for giving us the opportunity to attend the birthday banquet. You should thank him properly. Xiao Qingcheng nodded, smiling and said, Thank you, young master Ji. Ji Boda calmly said, it's just a small matter. For you, I can do much more. Deep down, he was excited and thrilled. At this rate, he would soon completely win over Xiao Qingcheng. Feeling triumphant, he looked at Yi Tianza, who had been silent all along, and taunted, Mr. Yi, have you seen the gap between you and our Ji family? My dad can easily sell a single character for one million. You, as a waste, probably won't earn that much in your lifetime, right? He thought Yi Tianzo would feel inferior and embarrassed. Ji Bo was surprised by the calm response from the other party, who inquired whether the value of the one million came from the beauty of the character's artistry or just mere flattery. He felt a surge of displeasure but still tried to remain composed. With a straight face, he coldly asked, Are you implying that my father's calligraphy lacks high artistic value? So, all the praise is just empty flattery from others? This guy! How dare he mock Master Ji's calligraphy as worthless! Zhang Huilin angrily retorted, Shut up. Do you even know what you're talking about? If you want to die, go jump off a building, but don't drag us down with you. Xiao Nan cursed, You useless bum, just drifting through life, what do you know about calligraphy? Stop embarrassing yourself and shut up. Even Xiao Qingcheng frowned and warned, Yi Tianza. Don't stay silent, no one thinks you're mute. She came to attend Ji Wuli's birthday banquet today, hoping to get close to the wrong family in the provincial capital. She absolutely cannot let Yi Tianzi's nonsense affect her plans. Yi Tianzi calmly replied, Miss Xiao, please don't hold double standards. It was Ji Bo who provoked first, not me, and I simply stated the truth. Xiao Qingcheng was so angry that she was speechless. Ji Boxiao, who had a fiery temper, couldn't sit still either, stood up and slammed the table, cursing, Bastard, you want to die, huh? This scene immediately attracted the attention of everyone in the banquet hall. What's happening? Ji Wuli also saw this and frowned, asking, Boxiao, calm down, what's going on? Ji Boxiao complained, Dad. This guy just said your calligraphy is worthless, all just flattery to raise the price to a million. The whole banquet hall was in an uproar. Yi Tianza, you've got guts, daring to speak such a big truth? Aren't you afraid of death? At this moment, Ji Wuli's face turned ugly, his triangular eyes flashing with a fierce light. Normally, he would have exploded already. But today, the situation was special, he had to control his emotions and show a magnanimous demeanor in front of everyone. He took a deep breath, gradually calming his face. He raised his eyebrows and asked with a smile, Oh? Mr. Yi, I wonder where you think Master Ji's calligraphy is lacking, please speak frankly? This sentence sounded cheerful, but actually carried some displeasure. It was a hint to Yi Tianza to think twice before answering. Unfortunately, he was dealing with Yi Tianza, who didn't care at all. Yi Tianza honestly replied, the key factors in brush calligraphy mainly include strokes, structure, style, and mindset. Master Ji, your strokes are okay, but the proportion of characters in the structure is not coordinated, and the layout is not very rational. 
As for style, although you have copied the fonts of many calligraphy masters, you have not grasped their essence, in other words, they are not authentic. Lastly, in terms of mindset, the four characters you wrote are, perseverance, clearly meant to express a tenacious spirit, but I sense a hint of indecision. In conclusion, I think your calligraphy level is average and indeed not worth a high price. What's wrong with that? At this moment, the entire banquet hall fell into silence, you could hear a pin drop. The guests in attendance were mostly wealthy and influential people who had a deep understanding of calligraphy and antiques. In fact, they all understood that the characters written by G. Woolley were at best the level of an amateur and did not hold much artistic value. If it weren't for the fact that they were forced to praise G. Woolley, this piece of calligraphy might not even sell for 100 bucks on the market. But they dare not speak the truth. They dare not imagine someone openly pointing it out. But Yi Tianqi is fearless. He fearlessly exposes every question, every detail mercilessly to everyone. This is even more embarrassing than the emperor's new clothes story. At this moment, Ji Wuli on the stage started twitching at the corner of his eyes, his face turning red, almost about to burst into anger. This guy actually made him lose face. Seeing this, Lai Jingye immediately stepped forward to defend Ji Wuli. Xie Bin also chimed in, saying, if you are so capable, why don't you write a piece of calligraphy yourself to show your level? The mutual support of these two made the guests present gradually recover from their shock. They knew who they could offend and who they couldn't. So they all turned their criticism towards Yi Tianqi. There's no shortage of talkative people here, if you are so capable, why don't you come up yourself, if you can't, then stop boasting, Mr. G can't be criticized by just anyone. These kinds of people are typical trolls, humble on the surface, but viciously attacking behind the scenes. Not worth paying attention to. The people present started speaking up for G. Woolley, which slightly eased his expression. After adjusting his emotions, he sneered, Mr. Yi, G also wants to see your calligraphy skills, please come up and show us. Only then can G thoroughly discuss and accept your criticism, do you agree? Before Yi Tianqi could respond, Zhang Huilin sneered, Mr. G, a useless freeloader, what does he know about calligraphy? It's already impressive if he can write his own name correctly. Xiao Nan disdainfully said, serves him right, he's asking for it, now he's embarrassed, isn't he? Xiao Qingcheng sighed with regret. She didn't understand why Yi Tianqi had to be so stubborn. Couldn't he just compromise and apologize? Seeing Yi Tianqi remain silent, Ji Bo Duan thought he had softened. He mocked, Mr. Yi, you were so sharp-tongued just now, why are you silent now? Ha ha! If you don't understand calligraphy, don't casually criticize others, so you won't get slapped in the face. Yi Tianqi raised an eyebrow and smiled, saying, Oh? Who told you I don't understand calligraphy? Ji Bo Duan muttered, It seems you insist on making a scene, now you pretend not to care, right? Well, right on stage now. If you can write better than my father, I won't blame you for your previous actions, and I will apologize to you in front of everyone. But, if you can't do it, or if you are too weak to come up on stage, you will have to apologize to my father, then roll out of the banquet hall in front of everyone, dare to bet? This speech caused laughter among the guests below the stage. In their eyes, Ji Wuli's calligraphy, although not top-notch, was the hobby of an amateur who had practiced for many years. In comparison, Yi Tianqi, being young and arrogant, how could he possibly have any accomplishment in calligraphy? Therefore, no matter what choice Yi Tianqi makes, it will be a shameful performance. But as the protagonist, Yi Tianqi calmly said, Let's bet, what's there to be afraid of? He stood up and walked straight to the stage. Standing on the stage. Standing not far away, Ji Wuli took the opportunity to lower his voice and sneered at Yi Tianza, little guy, since you've asked for trouble, I can't wait to see you embarrassed after apologizing. Yi Tianza responded confidently with a smile, let's wait and see. He then walked to the table, picked up a brush, took a deep breath, and gazed firmly. He started to paint on a brand new piece of paper without any hesitation. The brush danced like a dragon and the strokes were sharp, exuding an unstoppable dominance. After a few breaths, he stopped the brush tip. Yi Tianza calmly said, All right, let everyone take a look. The two etiquette ladies lifted the paper and displayed it to the audience below. Four characters leapt off the paper, rule the world. The strokes are strong and powerful, exuding a kingly aura that commands respect. This piece of calligraphy transcends the ordinary, it is a masterpiece of top-tier art, perfectly rounded and flawless. Everyone present is deeply moved by this work. Xiao Qingcheng bites her lip, her expression filled with surprise and doubt. It has been three years since we got married, why has he never shown me this talent before? It seems he never truly trusted me from the beginning, just treated me as an outsider. 
the whole banquet hall fell into silence. Suddenly, a guest knowledgeable in calligraphy couldn't help but exclaim, Wow! The brushwork is skillful and natural, the characters are vigorous and full of personality and artistic value. I have never seen such a work in my life. He was almost moved to tears by his excitement, overflowing with admiration as if praising a master. This scene was a huge blow to G. Woolley, his face full of shock, unwillingness, and even a hint of jealousy. He couldn't understand how he, who had been practicing calligraphy for decades, could lose to a young man. The gap between the two sides was like heaven and earth. Just then, Yi Tianza calmly spoke up, Master G, why don't we compare your work with mine and see who excels? G. Woolley stammered, his face showing embarrassment. Anyone could see the gap in calligraphy skills between the two. But if he admitted that Yi Tianza excelled, it would be losing face at his own birthday banquet. However, if he didn't acknowledge Yi Tianzi's superiority in calligraphy, it would be a lie and would inevitably affect his image in the guest's eyes. He was in a dilemma. At this moment, Ji Boda stood up and walked to the front, glaring at Yi Tianza with a sneer, saying, Yi family's boy, I admit your calligraphy is decent, but as the saying goes, everyone has their own aspirations, the quality of calligraphy varies from person to person, just like Hamlet. Besides, this is just a comparison between you and my father's calligraphy, we should find a fair way. Yi Tianza frowned slightly and asked, Oh? Are you trying to back out of the bet we just made? He had a hunch that Ji Boda might be up to something. He believed in keeping his word, just hoping for a fair bet. Ji Boda's eyes flashed with cunning as he continued, Previously, my father's work could fetch a high price of one million because it was recognized by everyone present. If you want to prove your superiority, you have to gain everyone's recognition today by selling for over one million. Only if someone is willing to pay that price can you win this competition, that's the fairest way. Yi Tianza sneered and said, Do you think this is a fair way to compare calligraphy? It's well known that Ji Wuli's work could sell for one million solely because the guests wanted to please him, not because of the artistic value of the work itself. Yi Tianxi's calligraphy, even if it is superbly written and has a practical calligraphic value exceeding a million, none of the guests present dare to bid. The reason is simple, they dare not provoke the Ji family. Ji Boda understands this well, so he made such a request. With a sense of pride, he smiled and said, Of course, it must be fair. If you are not satisfied, you can ask the guests present. As soon as this statement was made, Lai Jingye at the main table immediately praised loudly, bidding is more convincing. I support it. Xie Bin also echoed, that's right, actions speak louder than words. With the lead of these two big shots, the hesitant guests began to voice their support. This world is just like this, rules are set by the strong, and the weak can only comply. Ji Boda smiled proudly and said, Mr. Yi, see how everyone supports bidding? To determine the winner, we must follow this rule, otherwise, even if you admit defeat, you will lose this gamble. He turned around and announced loudly, everyone, who wants to bid for the characters written by Yi Tianqi. Please raise your paddles and let everyone see. Most of the guests below sighed inwardly. Although it sounds good, who dares to take the risk? If they raise their paddles now, after the banquet ends, the Ji family's retaliation will surely make them regret for a lifetime. So for a moment, there was silence in the audience, and no one raised their paddles. Ji Boxiao at the main table laughed directly. Ha ha! This guy with a dog's heart dares to go against my Ji family? Now you know how powerful we are. I'll see how you apologize to my dad later and then get out of here. Xie Bin and Lai Jingye were also excited and began to mock. Han Tianzheng shook his head slightly. Yi Tianxi's calligraphy level was indeed beyond his expectations. Such a level of skill could already be considered a master of calligraphy. Although he likes calligraphy and was considering bidding at a high price, it was not worth it compared to offending the Ji family. So he chose to remain silent. Zhang Huilin complained with a sneer, this guy clearly knows calligraphy but didn't tell us earlier. It seems like he deliberately concealed it, afraid that our Xiao family would not benefit. Now, he deserves to be embarrassed. Xiao Nan said somewhat sourly, knowing calligraphy counts for nothing? If no one acknowledges it, it's still just a piece of waste paper. As for Xiao Qingcheng, she was very conflicted. She knew that this gambling game was the Ji family using their power to oppress people, with no fairness involved. From the emotional consideration accumulated from three years of marriage, perhaps she should stand up and support Yi Tianqi. After all, they only proposed a divorce and have not formally divorced. But reason told her that offending the Ji family was not wise. Just letting Yi Tianqi apologize publicly and leave the banquet, at most, would be losing face, without harming personal safety. 
In the end, reason prevailed, and she chose to remain silent. Ji Wooly stood on the stage, looking at the expressions of the people below, feeling secretly pleased. He nodded to Ji Boda, approvingly saying, Well done. Ji Boda quickly replied, Thank you, Dad. Ji Boduan provocatively raised his hands and arrogantly said, Mr. Yi, I have always thought your calligraphy is nothing to write home about. After all, not even a single bid from the guests, let alone surpassing my father's one million. Not a single person is willing to bid, not even one Yuan. This bet is destined to be your failure, and the one apologizing and rolling out will be you. Therefore, I declare that your calligraphy will be discarded. Before he could finish, suddenly someone in the audience raised a sign. The crowd turned their heads towards the direction of the sound, only to see a stunning woman in a silver chung sam holding up a bidding paddle. The guests below were gossiping and speculating about the identity of this mysterious lady. Some secretly sighed, recognizing that her elegance and background were extraordinary, far from ordinary. In contrast, the faces of Ji Wooly and Ji Bo Duan, father and son of the Ji family, were as dark as the bottom of a pot, unable to contain their anger. Ji Bo Duan's mouth twitched, fists clenched, feeling furious that this woman intervened in the crucial moment to disrupt the situation. Ji Bo Duan had no doubt that this mysterious woman could indeed come up with 1.01 million for the bid. After all, her demeanor and the fact that she received a backup invitation to participate in the event were enough to indicate her exceptional status. However, Ji Bo Duan was still clueless about her background. Ji Wuli's face looked ugly as he gritted his teeth and asked, Who on earth is this lady? Why is she helping that guy? Ji Bo Duan, still full of anger, said, I don't know her, but I only know that she has an unclear relationship with Yi Tians, and seems to be a wealthy woman with a powerful background. Ji Wuli's eyes twitched, muttering to himself that he was actually being suppressed by a worthless person who only relied on women. Even Yi Tians himself did not expect this lady to intervene and help him out. Thinking back to when Sha Qingcheng had misunderstood him before, and now receiving help from an outsider, he felt a myriad of emotions. Therefore, Yi Tians clasped his hands in thanks to Rong Meiyin in the audience. Rong Meiyin smiled faintly, charming and beautiful. Yi Tians turned to Ji Bo Duan and said, According to your own rules, the bid for my calligraphy piece is over one million. Can you admit that my calligraphy is better than your father's? Ji Bo Duan's heart sank, thinking he had set a trap for Yi Tians, but unexpectedly, he was the one trapped. Reluctantly, he had to admit under the public gaze, especially after boasting about his unbeatable skills earlier, that he had no choice but to acknowledge, I, admit it. Yi Tian smiled and said, Since you admit it, why hesitate to fulfill the previous promise of the bet? Ji Bo Duan's eyes narrowed, having to publicly apologize to Yi Tian was more humiliating than eating shit. Through gritted teeth, he reminded, Yi brat, you've won the bet, why make it so difficult? Why not just stop here? Yi Tian calmly replied, Ji Dasha, the bet was set by you. Why talk of stopping now? Think about it, if I had lost the bet just now, would you have let me off easily? Ji Bo Duan snorted coldly in his mind, if Yi Tians had lost, he would have wanted to grab him, make him apologize to his father, and then kick him out of the banquet hall, losing all face. However, making a public apology to Yi Tians was simply impossible for him. For a moment, the two were at a stalemate. Sha Qingcheng at the main table could no longer bear it and stood up, saying coldly, Yi Tians, you've gone far enough. Must you continue to make things difficult for everyone? Will you make everyone uncomfortable? Yi Tians retorted, Mr. Sha, please see clearly, who is really making things difficult for whom? Sha Qingcheng furrowed his brows. She was acutely aware of who was exerting pressure on her. However, she understood even more that continuing to push back would only harm Yi Tianza himself. She continued, just apologizing, why is it so important? Why must it be dragged on endlessly? Rong Meiyin said lightly, when Ji Bo Duan asked Mr. Yi to apologize earlier, some people chose to remain silent. Now they are suddenly so adamant. Xiaozong, this double standard doesn't seem quite appropriate, does it? Sha Qingcheng bit her lip lightly and replied coldly, what I'm doing is actually to help him. Rong Meiyin smiled faintly and said, if you really want to help him, why wait until now? Ultimately, you appear impure, going against fairness and justice. These words were like a heavy blow, piercing Sha Qingcheng's heart deeply, leaving her embarrassed and speechless. At the same time, the guests at other tables couldn't hold back and began to whisper. Wow, this lady is really assertive, leaving Xiaozong speechless with just a few words. But what she said makes sense, the auction of this calligraphy was already unfair, and now Ji Dexiao refuses to admit defeat, it's simply bullying. 
To be honest, Ji Dishao's character is not that great, there might be risks in cooperating with the Ji family in the future. Seeing the guest's comments getting out of control, Ji Wooly couldn't bear it anymore. He reprimanded Ji Bo Duan. Why haven't you apologized to Mr. Yi yet? What are you hesitating for? Ji Bo Duan frowned. Father. He, Yi Tianza, is just a useless person. I. Before he could finish his sentence, Ji Wooly sternly interrupted. Shut up. Are you not even listening to what I'm saying? Faced with Ji Wooly's angry gaze, Ji Bo Duan trembled and could only nod reluctantly. He turned to Yi Tianza and whispered an apology, I. I'm sorry. Yi Tianza raised an eyebrow, Ji De Shao, is it because you haven't had lunch yet and your stomach is empty, so you can't speak properly? Louder. Ji Bo Duan's eyes twitched, almost burning with anger. Yi, just you wait, I will retaliate against you. Taking a deep breath, he raised his voice, I'm sorry. Yi Tianza smiled faintly, I'll forgive you since you're apologizing so sincerely. Ji Bo Duan felt a sharp pain in his heart. This guy must be doing it on purpose. But at this point, he knew that staying on the stage would only be humiliating. In the end, he could only glare at Yi Tianza and hastily leave the stage. At that moment, the host, for some reason, suddenly announced, Next, the guests who have won the auction for the two calligraphy pieces. Please come up on stage to receive your pieces and take a group photo. Ji Wuli's face changed slightly, instinctively wanting to stop it, but it was too late. Because all the guests heard it. Rong Meiyin had already stood up, walked to the stage, and received the Junlin Tianxia, calligraphy left by Yi Tianza from the etiquette lady. Sha Qingcheng hesitated slightly, then also walked up to the stage. She accepted the Qi Er Bi Yu Shi, calligraphy written by Ji Wuli. Both women were impeccably beautiful in appearance and figure, but the calligraphy in their hands formed a stark contrast. Ji Wuli's face darkened, and he said displeased Ly, time is running out. Let's skip the group photo. Then he turned and left the stage. Yi Tianza said to Rong Meiyin, Thank you for recognizing my calligraphy. Rong Meiyin smiled and praised Mr. Yi's calligraphy, calling it a masterpiece of the family's art. She spent 1.01 million to purchase this piece of calligraphy, feeling very lucky and thinking she had picked up a great bargain, so she gratefully thanked Mr. Yi. At the same time, on the stage, Xiao Qingcheng watched their interaction with mixed feelings. She felt an indescribable sense of grievance and discomfort, but she tried to take a deep breath and constantly remind herself to stay calm. She understood in her heart that everything Yi Tianza did was just to prove that her divorce was a wrong decision, but the final result would reveal the truth that he was deceiving himself. Soon, Xiao Qingcheng regained her composure and told herself to stay strong. Yi Tianz had just taken his seat when Ji Bo's anger flared up. He threatened, don't get too cocky, kid. The score between us will be settled sooner or later. Yi Tianz responded calmly, it takes two to tango. Ji Bo snorted coldly, turned his head away, unwilling to look at Yi Tianz again. Those seated at the main table, like Lai Jingye and Xie Bin, had grim expressions. After all, they had mocked Yi Tianze's calligraphy skills before, never expecting to be proven wrong so quickly. Only Zhang Huilin, in a hushed tone, reminded Xiao Qingcheng, Child, I need to remind you of something. That cunning guy just auctioned off that piece of calligraphy for a whopping 1.01 million. After the banquet, when you cash out the money for him, remember to claim your share. Xiao Qingcheng asked in confusion, Why? Zhang Huilin rolled her eyes and said, You are too naive. You two haven't officially divorced yet, so as his wife, you have the right to half of all his income. Besides, he has been freeloading at our place for three years and owes so much, so he should hand over all his earnings to you. Xiao Qingcheng sighed. Mom! Can you please not stir up trouble at this time? I'm already very frustrated. Zhang Huilin didn't say more but started brewing a secret plan in her heart. Just then, the host on stage spoke up. Next up is the long-awaited formal auction, where the items up for auction are treasures collected by Master G over the years. Master G specifically asked me to remind everyone to bid within their means, relax, and not rush to raise the price. Although that's what he said, everyone present understood that bidding within their means was just to stimulate everyone to spend more and leave a good impression on Master G. As the host announced the official start of the auction, a slender etiquette lady brought up a half-foot-tall blue and white porcelain vase. The vase had a slender neck, a well-proportioned and plump body, with intricate blue and white porcelain patterns exuding an artistic vibe. As soon as the host finished speaking, someone in the audience immediately raised their paddle and bid, I offer 350,000. Soon after, someone else raised the bid, I offer 380,000. In no time, the bidding for the blue and white porcelain vase ended, 
ultimately being won by a bald, chubby man for 700,000. Those knowledgeable in the crowd knew that the normal price of this vase on the market was around 400,000, so the extra 300,000 was essentially another form of birthday gift to Master G. Next, the second item up for auction was presented, and the audience once again began fiercely bidding. Each bid was equivalent to digging into one's own pocket to give gifts to the G family. This gradually brought a satisfied smile to G Wooly's face. Despite losing face earlier, today he was making every penny back. Jibo's mood also began to improve slightly. Yi Tianqi cast a glance at Jibo, feeling proud and triumphant. Despite earning 1.01 million at the auction for that painting, he didn't seem inclined to use the money to bid on other treasures. Was he intimidated by the fierce bidding scene at the auction? Yi Tianqi replied casually, What treasure? In my opinion, they are just some insignificant junk, not worth my bid. Jibo sneered and teased, Ha! Huh? It seems like you can't bear to part with that 1.01 million, huh? After all, a waste like you can never save up that much money in a lifetime. Jibo's words were sharp, seemingly provoking Yi Tianqi on purpose. Zhang Huilin bluntly questioned, You waste, if you really don't care about that money, why haven't you helped the Xiao family in the past three years? Yi Tianqi retorted, Without my help, could the Xiao family have achieved such rapid development in these three years? Xiao Nan solemnly stated, the achievements of the Xiao family are the result of our family's unity and hard work, nothing to do with someone as weak and incompetent as you. Honestly, without your interference, our Xiao family would be even more prosperous. Even Xiao Qingcheng looked at Yi Tianqi in disbelief, realizing that to protect his fragile ego, he had spoken such lies. Facing the questioning from everyone, Yi Tianqi did not explain much. He didn't feel the need to prove anything in front of these people. For him, the tiger-shaped jade pendant about to appear at the auction today was the most important thing. The auction proceeded rapidly, and in less than an hour, dozens of items had been successfully auctioned. Only one item remained. The host excitedly announced, Next, I will introduce the most precious item at today's auction. The etiquette lady carefully carried the tray onto the stage, slowly unveiling the red cloth covering an ancient, snow-white jade pendant shaped like a tiger, lifelike in appearance. At the same time, the big screen displayed detailed images of the jade pendant, visible from every corner of the banquet hall. The host continued, this jade pendant was unexpectedly acquired by the Ji family many years ago. According to renowned experts, it is Hachan Jade, the best of the best. Moreover, this jade pendant has a history of at least a thousand years, crafted by top craftsmen in ancient times, its value is extraordinary. The guests at the scene were amazed and started discussing. Why would the head of the Ji family auction off such a priceless treasure? Yi Tianqi sat at the main table, his eyes slightly flickering. He had thought it was just an ordinary jade pendant before, never imagining its precious origins. Introduced by the host, he learned that the jade pendant left by his grandfather had a history of over a thousand years. This news excited him beyond words, filling his heart with indescribable joy. Perhaps, this jade pendant was the treasure passed down through generations of the Yi family. He was determined to bring this jade pendant home today. With anxious emotions, he hurried towards the display, his eyes fixed on the jade pendant. The ancient glow emitted from the jade pendant seemed to narrate a long history. He reached out with trembling hands, as if touching the past, feeling the wisdom and strength of his ancestors. The auctioneer's voice echoed in his ears, each bid accelerating his heartbeat. In the intense atmosphere of bidding, he decisively raised the price, determined to make this jade pendant his own. Finally, after a fierce competition, he raised his paddle high and became the new owner of the jade pendant. As he tightly held the jade pendant, an inexplicable excitement surged in his heart. He deeply understood the value of this jade pendant and the family emotions it carried. It was not just an item, but a bond connecting the family bloodline, a symbol of inheritance and memory. Back home, he carefully placed the jade pendant in a box, as if afraid of breaking this precious history. He decided to preserve this family treasure well, allowing it to continue the legacy ensuring the family's glory and memories endure. This jade pendant was not just an ancient artifact, but the pride of his family in his heart, a duty and responsibility he must fulfill without hesitation. This is the most expensive item with the highest starting price at today's birthday banquet auction. Just the starting price alone has deterred most guests. However, there are still some wealthy big shots showing strong interest in this item. Therefore, as soon as the host announced the start of the bidding, Someone immediately raised their paddle and shouted out a price, I bid 5.1 million. I bid 5.3 million. I bid 5.4 million. The bidding price quickly soared, creating an exceptionally intense atmosphere. 
Even the guests at the main table, Lai Jingye and Xie Bin, could not sit idly by and personally joined the bidding frenzy. Soon, the bidding reached the milestone of 10 million. Once this number was reached, there were fewer than 10 guests with the ability to continue bidding. The other guests were discussing and sighing on the sidelines. Such a rapid breakthrough of over 10 million is rare even in regular auctions. Undoubtedly, after this auction, this item will cause a sensation in the business circle of Jiangnan City, adding more influence to the Ji family. Observing these bidders, it seems that both Lai and Xie have more power, so it is very likely that this tiger-shaped jade pendant will ultimately fall into their hands. However, it is not certain, as our richest man, Han Tianzheng from the Han family, has not shown up yet, and he has a great love for antiques. The bidding gradually heated up, and Lai Jingye unhesitatingly shouted 13 million. This made the guests at other tables finally give up, as their net worth was only around billions. Coming up with 13 million in cash was not that easy. At this moment, sitting at the main table, Xie Bin hesitated for a moment and said, I bid 13.5 million. Lai Jingye instinctively frowned. In the past, this amount of money was not a problem for him. However, since being blocked by the Tianlong group, he was in financial difficulty, and this amount of money almost touched his bottom line. However, he was too interested in this tiger-shaped jade pendant. Plus, he wanted to leave a good impression in front of the Ji family, so he had to grit his teeth and raise the bid, I bid 14.5 million. He pretended to calmly say to Xie Bin, Xie, it's your turn, brother can continue to accompany you. Xie Bin's forehead sweat, struggled for a few seconds, sighed, I give up bidding. Congratulations, Lai. Lai Jingye breathed a sigh of relief. In fact, he had reached the end of his rope, even if Xie Bin raised the bid again, he would have to give up. Fortunately, when he thought he had the victory in hand, Han Tianzheng, sitting across from him, raised his paddle and said with a smile, Lai, sorry, I'm also interested in this tiger-shaped jade pendant, I bid 15 million. Lai Jingye's face changed. He did not expect Han Tianzheng to intervene at this moment. But facing Han Tianzheng, who was wealthier and more powerful than himself, Lai Jingye dared not offend him, nor did he have the qualifications to do so. He could only reluctantly force a smile and say, Haha, so it turns out that Master Han is also interested in this treasure. In that case, I will not compete, I give up bidding. This statement not only gave Han Tianzheng a favor but also saved his own face. Han Tianzheng politely expressed his gratitude to Mr. Lai, feeling pleased. The auction price of this tiger-shaped jade pendant has soared to 15 million, far exceeding expectations. He couldn't help but smile and say to Han Tianzheng, Congratulations on winning this jade pendant, we brothers must celebrate properly later. Han Tianzheng nodded in agreement, absolutely. However, at that moment, Yi Tianqi sitting across suddenly spoke up, who said that this jade pendant must be won by Master Han from the Han family. The people at the table looked at each other, puzzled by the sudden meaning of his words. Ji Bo Duan angrily rebuked, Nonsense, Master Han bid 15 million in the auction, no one else bid higher than him, this jade pendant should rightfully belong to him, do you have other plans? Yi Tianqi nodded. That's right, today this jade pendant is destined to be mine. Ji Bo Duan couldn't help but sneer, do you understand what you're saying? Do you have the ability to bid over 15 million? Yi Tianqi raised his sign without hesitation and announced loudly, I bid 20 million. This move immediately caused a stir in the entire banquet hall, everyone discussing in amazement. Oh my god, this kid is causing trouble again? A 5 million increase, is it real? It must be fake, where did he get 20 million from? The people at the main table had different expressions, Han Tianzheng frowned in thought, Mr. Lai and Mr. Xie looked disdainful. Ji Wuli narrowed his eyes and coldly said, Young man, today is my 60th birthday, not the time for your tricks, I advise you to restrain yourself a bit. Yi Tianqi calmly responded, I'm just bidding according to the rules, where's the need for talk of tricks? Ji Wuli's eyes twitched, almost wanting to strangle Yi Tianqi. This guy is really good at pretending. Seeing Ji Wuli's anger, Xiao Qingcheng's heart tightened, unable to help but advise, Yi Tianqi, I remind you again, stop messing around, please put down the sign. Yi Tianqi asked back, don't always impose your views on me, I'm not causing trouble, why should I put down the sign? Xiao Qingcheng bit her lip and said, Okay, I understand, you're actually retaliating, right? You didn't have enough fun the other day, and now you want to continue causing trouble? Yi Tianqi glanced at her and said lightly, Miss Xiao, please don't trouble yourself, I'm not that bored. Xiao Qingcheng was choked by his words, feeling aggrieved. Zhang Huilin glared at Yi Tianqi and said to Xiao Qingcheng, Darling, don't bother with this trash, 
Anyway, you'll get the divorce certificate tomorrow. Whether he lives or dies is none of our concern. Xiao Qingsheng bit her lip and nodded gently. Ji Bashuan coldly said, Mr. Yi, participating in the bidding is no joke. Do you understand the consequences of not being able to produce 20 million after raising your sign? Yi Tianzi replied nonchalantly, Why should I care about the consequences? I have the ability to produce it. Ji Bashuan gritted his teeth and continued, All right. Since you say so, dare you make another bet? If you can't produce 20 million, not only will this tiger shaped jade pendant not belong to you today, but you will also owe our Ji family 20 million in debt, which must be repaid no matter what, even if it means selling blood or kidneys. Yi Tianza asked in return, What if I can produce it? Ji Bashuan rolled his eyes. In his opinion, how could Yi Tianza possibly come up with 20 million? So he waved his hand decisively. His gaze turned to Ji Wuli, slightly furrowing his brows, inquiring, If I win, can you tell me how you obtained this tiger shaped jade pendant? His initial intention in attending this birthday banquet was to retrieve his grandfather's heirloom and also to uncover the truth behind the fire from back then. Ji Wuli locked eyes with him, a hint of a sneer playing at the corner of his mouth, disdainfully saying, Of course I can. But I'm afraid you'll have a hard time winning. Yi Tianqi smiled and said, Then it's settled. All the guests present today will serve as witnesses. The guests at the other tables began to discuss animatedly. This young man from the Yi family is gambling with the Ji family for the second time, how interesting. How did this Yi family guy grow a brain? Daring to accept such a wager, if he loses, he'll owe the Ji family 20 million, probably impossible to pay off in a lifetime. Most guests were not optimistic about Yi Tianqi. After all, 20 million is a huge sum for an ordinary person, and there are very few in Zhang'an city who can easily come up with that much cash. And how could Yi Tianqi, a discarded waste from the family, possibly have that much money? However, Rong Meiyun, sitting at another table, showed a hint of anticipation and excitement. Sitting alone, she propped her chin on her hand, her eyes flashing with a certain light. She thought to herself, how many secrets does this man still have left to reveal? Just then, she received a text message from her maid, Aching, inquiring whether the Ji family and other candidates were worthy of being her business partners. Rong Meiyun thought for a moment and replied, there's something I need you to take care of. At the same time, the people at the main table had various expressions upon hearing Yi Tianqi agree to the wager. Ji Bo sneered. Yi surname, this is your own doing. When you lose, don't blame our Ji family for being ruthless. Ji Bo smirked triumphantly, you've finally fallen into our hands, and we'll settle the score then. Lai Jingye and Xie Bin couldn't help but mock. Xiao Qingsheng shook her head in disappointment, having nothing more to say to Yi Tianqi. They were on the brink of divorce, each responsible for themselves. She didn't want to say anything more. In their eyes, Yi Tianqi's actions were simply courting disaster. Zhang Huilin grumbled, I warn you, this gamble is of your own making. If you lose, you'll bear the consequences yourself, it has nothing to do with our Qingsheng. Yi Tianqi responded calmly, you're overthinking it, besides, I won't lose. Ji Bo taunted, still boasting at this point? I want to see how you'll come up with 20 million. Do you even have a card with a valid number? Yi Tianqi calmly replied, just as you said, it's with this card. Ji Bo burst into laughter, do you think everyone here is a fool? Can you really swipe 20 million with this shabby card? I even doubt if this card is fake. Laughter filled the entire banquet hall. Yi Tianqi remained composed, taking out the Supreme Emperor card from his pocket. Ji Bo Duan sneered at Yi TNC and said, Can you guarantee that there are 20 million in this card? Ji Bo Duan's words were full of provocation and disdain. However, Yi TNC smiled and replied, Of course I can. If you want to verify, then I'll play along with you and see how long you can keep up the facade. With a light tap, the hotel manager approached, holding a POS machine ready to swipe Yi Tianse's black card. This hotel was owned by the Ji family, so the manager was full of mockery and contempt towards Yi TNC. He joked, our POS machine is imported. If your card malfunctions, you'll have to be prepared for compensation. Then, the manager unceremoniously inputted the amount of 20 million on the POS machine. After a successful swipe, the entire room fell into silence. The hotel manager could hardly believe his eyes, trembling as he exclaimed, H how is this possible? 20 million. Ji Bo Duan was also incredulous, starting to doubt if the machine was faulty. But the manager firmly denied it, as the machine had always been reliable. Everyone present was shocked by this scene, speculating on where Yi Tianxi got this money from. Suddenly, 
A guest couldn't help but exclaim, recalling that ETNC had previously claimed to have a wealth of over a trillion, waving this very card. Gasps filled the hall as all eyes turned to ETNC. Trembling, Jibo Duan asked, Do you really have over a trillion in your card? ETNC calmly replied, More or less. I haven't confirmed the exact number. Initially, Elon Musk had told him that there was at least a trillion in the card. This news caused another uproar among those present. Lai Jingyi and Xie Bin felt their legs turn to jelly, realizing that their business empire might collapse in an instant. The faces of Ji Wu Li Yi and the other two turned a grim color, starting to suspect if Yi TNC was hiding his true identity. Meanwhile, Xiao Qing Cheng realized that perhaps, for the past three years, Yi TNC was the one truly supporting the Xiao family. She felt a tightness in her chest, filled with various questions and unease. Just as she was about to speak, something unexpected happened. Ji Wuli asked seriously, Han, why are you saying this? Han Tianzheng sighed deeply and said, To tell you the truth, I suddenly remembered something. A few days ago, my daughter Yunyan gave Yi Tianz 20 million, in other words, the 20 million he just swiped on his card was not his own funds. Everyone has been deceived. The reason he said this is because a few days ago, he asked Han Ruoyan to invite Yi Tianz to dinner, and also to find out more about him. At that time, he also gave Han Ruoyan 20 million to pass on to Yi Tianz, as a thank you for treating her. After Han Ruoyan returned home, she did not mention the 20 million. In Han Tianzheng's eyes, this implied that Yi Tianz had accepted the money. Han Tianzheng did not expect Yi Tianz to show off this money as if it were his own today. He couldn't help but sigh inwardly, this kid, he's really audacious and not honest at all. It's a good thing he didn't agree to the engagement with him and Yunyan, otherwise, he would be harming his daughter. Upon hearing Han Tianzheng's story, everyone suddenly realized. So, Yi Tianz was just bragging. They almost got fooled by him. Ji Wuli let out a sigh of relief and resumed his high and mighty attitude, coldly saying, HMPH. Putting on airs. Ridiculous. Ji Bo disdainfully said, using a woman's money to show off, only freeloaders like you would do such a thing. It's good that you have the nerve to boast about having trillions in the family, turns out it's all a lie. Xie Bin and Lai Jingye wiped the cold sweat from their foreheads. It was just a misunderstanding. They almost offended a wealthy person worth trillions. Zhang Huilin and Xiao Nan were both disdainful. Such freeloaders only know how to make fools of themselves, serves them right. As for Xiao Qingcheng, she felt disappointed by Yi Tianse's ostentation. But she couldn't help but be curious, what is the relationship between Han Ruoyan and Yi Tianse? That she would give him 20 million? Have they really become a couple? Thinking of this, Xiao Qingcheng felt an indescribable bitterness. As for Yi Tianse, he didn't expect to become the target so quickly. He explained to Han Tianzheng, Master Han, Miss Han did give me 20 million, but I refused it. If you don't believe me, you can call her to confirm. Han Tianzheng waved his hand earnestly and said, There's no need to confirm this. I have drawn my own conclusion. Ji Bo interjected, There's no need to confirm at all. Saying that you refused Miss Han's 20 million, even the dumbest person in the village wouldn't believe that. In today's society, who would refuse money? What do you all think? The guests present all nodded in agreement, that's right, it's 20 million we're talking about, only someone with a problem would refuse it. That guy named Yi can't even lie properly, what a weirdo. Stop trying to argue. Just admit that the 20 million was from Miss Han, Yi Tian sighed helplessly. He understood that further explanations were pointless, and he was not obligated to explain himself to this group of people. So he looked at Ji Wuli and his son, and calmly said, regardless of how you see it, this tiger-shaped jade pendant was obtained through auction. So, I have won this bet, now you should fulfill the bet, right? Upon hearing this, Ji Wuli and his son's faces changed slightly. Indeed, the bet did not specify the source of Yi Tianse's 20 million, as long as he could show the funds, he had won the bet. It would not be appropriate for the Ji family to publicly break their promise. However, despite Ji Wuli being a shrewd person, there was a hint of cunning in his eyes. In response to what Han Tianzheng said, Ji Wuli spoke up, Brother Han. I suspect that Ling Ai did not willingly hand over that 20 million to Yi Tianza, but rather was influenced or even deceived in some way. If you agree with my view, then I believe it is our responsibility to help Ling Ai retrieve the money. What do you think? With that, he gave Han Tianzheng a complex look. Han Tianzheng frowned slightly, feeling somewhat awkward. Initially, when Han Ruoyan gave 20 million to Yi Tianza, he did so willingly. 
It was not only to repay a life-saving favor but also to clear his relationship with Yi Tianzi. However, now Ji Wuli was asking him to take back the money. In the past, he might have refused. But the situation had changed. With the support of the Ji family behind Ji Wuli, the Han family could not afford to offend them. So, the only person they could offend was Yi Tianzi. After a moment of hesitation, Han Tianzhong reluctantly nodded and said, Master Ji is right. This 20 million was indeed obtained by Yi Tianzi through improper means for my daughter. As Ruoyan's father, I have a responsibility to retrieve this money. Ji Wuli nodded in satisfaction, then sneered at Yi Tianzi, young man, did you hear what Master Han said? This 20 million is ill-gotten gains. By using this money to bid on my treasure, you are not only breaking the rules but also have to return the money to me. This means you are not even qualified to participate in the bidding, you have already lost. Do you understand? After speaking, Ji Wuli provocatively looked at Yi Tianzi as if to say, you are no match for me. Ji Wuli thought Yi Tianzi would be flustered and even beg for mercy after hearing his words. However, Yi Tianzi sat there, still calm. He clapped fearlessly and said, good, good, good. Ji Boding frowned and reprimanded, why are you clapping? Have you gone mad? Yi Tianzi coldly replied, I'm clapping to say that your Ji family is truly shameless. You can even turn black into white. Ji Boding squinted his eyes and said, HMPH. You seem unsatisfied? It's okay, even if you're not satisfied, you have to endure it. Don't forget, you lost the bet, oh my Ji family 20 million, get ready to spend the rest of your life repaying the debt. Ji Boding threatened sarcastically, if you kneel down now and apologize, maybe I'll be in a better mood and forgive part of your debt. Do you want to give it a try? The whole room was filled with a festive atmosphere, but Sha Qingcheng's expression was not too happy. In theory, she should have stood up and spoken up for Yi Tianzi. But recent events had left her utterly disappointed in him. Even if she helped, he would not be grateful, but instead would become more ruthless. What was the point of doing so? Yi Tianzi narrowed his eyes slightly and provocatively asked Ji Wuli, I'm curious, why would the wrong family in the provincial capital ally with such scoundrels like you? Aren't they afraid of ending up in an irreparable situation? Upon hearing this, a flash of anger crossed Ji Wuli's eyes. Ji Wuli smiled contentedly, feeling satisfied with the news that the wrong family in the provincial capital was willing to cooperate with the Ji family. Turning to the other party, he said, This matter has nothing to do with you, so why are you so concerned? If you feel it's unfair, why not go to Miss Rong to resolve it? Perhaps in her eyes, you are not even worth a single ant. A hint of sarcasm flashed in his eyes as he continued, on the other hand, you were so ostentatious at my birthday banquet. While I am kind, I cannot tolerate any disrespect towards the wrong family from you. Kneel down and apologize immediately, and I may choose to forgive you. Otherwise, I will represent the wrong family and ruin your reputation. As he finished speaking, the atmosphere became tense. Ji Wuli's smug expression instantly fell as he turned his head towards the source of the voice, wanting to see who was so bold as to speak disrespectfully to him. Walking in from the entrance of the banquet hall was a tall, cold-faced young woman. As people saw her, they began whispering and discussing. Someone murmured, Who is this lady? She looks extraordinary. Though no one recognized her, whoever she was, daring to say what she just did was sure to cause trouble. At the main table, Ji Bo stood up and sternly reprimanded, Where did you come from? How dare you be disrespectful to my father? I command you to apologize immediately. Ji Xiaoyi followed up with a threat, just because you're a woman doesn't mean our Ji family will show mercy. You must apologize. The tall woman glanced at them indifferently and replied, I did not speak wrongly, so why should I apologize to you? The crowd erupted into another commotion. They thought to themselves, this lady is truly arrogant, showing no mercy to the Ji family. She's just like a female version of Yi Tianzi. At this moment, a hint of coldness flashed in Ji Wuli's eyes. He coldly said, Miss, the Ji family is about to cooperate with the wrong family. I represent the wrong family, so what makes you think I'm unworthy? The woman calmly responded, Who told you that the Ji family and the wrong family are about to cooperate? Ji Wuli was momentarily stunned, then smiled smugly, Miss, you act too confidently on our Ji family's territory without proper investigation. Isn't that overly self assured? The crowd echoed, praising the deep relationship between the Ji and Rong families, with Rong Mian, the Rong family's daughter, about to attend the birthday banquet. They believed this lady was ignorant and laughable. The Ji family head also expressed support, suggesting that this lady might have been manipulated to cause trouble at the banquet and must be dealt with seriously. 
Jibo approached the woman and arrogantly said, feeling scared after hearing everyone's voices? I'll give you a choice. Kneel and apologize, reveal who instigated you, and maybe I'll consider letting you go. He glanced coldly at Yi Tianza, as if confirming his identity. Ji Bo continued, If you don't confess honestly, when Rong Mian arrives, I will hand you over to her. By then, the whole Jiangnan city won't be able to protect you. The woman, however, calmly stated, Miss Rong Mian won't be coming. Ji Bo sneered, Ha ha! Who do you think you are? If Miss Rong doesn't come, then she won't? Ji Xiaoyi joined in, Rong Mian attending the banquet is a sure thing. Even if she's delayed by important matters, she should have informed our Ji family in advance. How could a little girl like you know better than us? The woman calmly said, you're right. Miss Rong indeed has urgent matters and can't make it to the banquet. Sorry, I forgot to introduce myself. My name is Aching, Miss Rong's personal assistant. She sent me to inform the Ji family head and everyone present about this news. Upon hearing this news, everyone present couldn't help but show expressions of astonishment. The fact that this lady was Rong Meiyan's personal assistant was truly unbelievable. The most shocked were the three members of the Ji family. Ji Bo Duan couldn't believe it and asked in disbelief, You. Are you talking nonsense? What evidence do you have to prove that you are Miss Rong's personal assistant? Ching raised a round token and asked, Can this prove my identity? The token was brass-colored, palm-sized, with exquisite peony patterns carved around it. In the middle, it had the Rong family's seal script. Ji Bo Duan, after seeing the emblem on the token, widened his eyes, while Ji Wuli also stood up in surprise, dumbfounded. It turned out to be the brass token of the Rong family. In the Rong family, there are three types of tokens, gold, silver, and brass. The gold token is the highest, symbolizing the authority and command of the Rong family, only held by the head of the Rong family. The silver token has lower authority, kept by two core elders. The brass token is the lowest in status, with only three in total, one of which was given to Rong Meiyan, who excelled the most among the young generation of the Rong family. It can be seen that Rong Meiyan's status in the Rong family is extraordinary. The lady in front holding the brass token, proving herself to be Rong Meiyan's personal assistant, was undoubtedly convincing. This action also represented Rong Meiyan's status and position. Ji Wuli immediately stepped forward, smiling, and said, So it's Miss Ching, it was a misunderstanding just now, please don't mind it. Then he turned to reprimand Ji Bo Duan and Ji Boxiao, You too, why haven't you apologized to Miss Ching yet? Ji Bo Duan and Ji Boxiao hurriedly nodded and apologized. Ching waved her hand indifferently, saying, Just call me Ching Assistant, please let me sit down. Ji Wuli's family nodded cautiously, afraid of offending Ching. The guests present, upon knowing Ching's true identity, became nervous, worried that their previous ridicule towards her might cause trouble. Lai Jingye and Xie Bin quickly stood up, straightened their clothes, and smiled humbly. Xiao Qingsheng also smiled and stood up. Qing was already used to everyone's flattery. She raised her hand and said, No need to sit down, I just came to inform everyone that Miss cannot attend the birthday banquet due to some reasons. Now that the notice is given, I will go back to report. Ji Wuli tentatively asked, Assistant Qing, can you reveal why Miss Han is absent? Qing squinted her eyes slightly and asked back, are you trying to pry into Mrs. Private Affairs? Ji Wooly quickly shook his head and humbly said, I dare not. I just wanted to know if Miss Rong asked you to pass on any messages? For example, is the Rong family recruiting business partners, are you aware of it? The others present all looked at Ching with anticipation. They came to attend the birthday banquet, but what they cared most about was this. Even the usually aloof Xiao Qingcheng couldn't help but feel nervous and excited at this moment. In the celebratory atmosphere, the joy in his heart surged like a tide, as if all the fatigue and worries were cast aside at this moment. Standing in the crowd, he felt warmth and care, as if the whole world had become beautiful and fulfilling because of this special moment. In this moment, he realized the preciousness of family and friends, and also understood that the most important thing in life is to share moments of joy and happiness with loved ones. After hearing Mrs. words, the guests were shocked and began to discuss in whispers, instantly creating a tense atmosphere. They questioned Master Ji, demanding an explanation for this sudden turn of events. Master Ji felt anxious and uncertain, his previous confidence completely shattered. He had been so sure because of second young master's words, but who would have thought that Rong Meiyan would send Ching to announce the chosen candidate? This unexpected turn left him at a loss for words. On the other hand, Xiao Qingcheng felt even more dejected. She had invested so much in this birthday banquet, hoping to showcase herself to Rong Meiyan, only to be disappointed. 
Seeing this, Yi Tianza made a sarcastic remark, causing Ji Bo to feel ashamed. Unwilling to accept it, Ji Wuli asked Ching why she had changed her mind and not announced the partner today. Ching explained that Miss had not cancelled the search for a partner, but had decided to postpone the introduction meeting for two days, welcoming self-recommendations or recommendations of suitable candidates. Before leaving, she winked at Rong Meiyin, who nodded slightly, showing a satisfied smile. Rong Meiyin had originally come to congratulate the birthday, but upon seeing Yi Tianza, she had a different plan in mind and decided to play along. The atmosphere in the entire banquet hall suddenly became heavy, everyone disappointed, the faces at the main table looking grim. What was supposed to be a lively birthday celebration turned out to be a dampener. The G family trio felt they had been played, which made their expressions turn serious. They knew that if they couldn't handle this matter well, the reputation of the G family would be damaged. They were in a dilemma, not knowing what to do. Suddenly, G Wooly seemed to have an idea, a hint of determination flashing in his eyes. He bowed to the guests present and said, please allow me to say a few words. The scene immediately quieted down, and all eyes were on Ji Wooly. Ji Wooly explained, everyone, I have never had the intention to deceive any of you. The outcome this time is not the fault of the Ji family, but of this person. He pointed to Yi Tianz sitting at the main table. Everyone was puzzled, not understanding the connection between Yi Tianz and this matter. Ji Wooly gritted his teeth and continued, in fact, Miss Rong had already decided to attend the birthday banquet and planned to announce a business partnership today. However, Yi Tianse's appearance disrupted my birthday banquet, stole Miss Rong's limelight, caused her dissatisfaction, and led to her changing her plans last minute, not showing up at the event, and cancelling the decision that originally belonged to the Ji family's business partner. After listening to Ji Wuli's explanation, everyone looked at each other, pondering. Lai Jingye couldn't help but nod and said, Master Ji's words make sense. I also feel that Miss Rong's decision was very sudden, as if it were a last-minute change. Xie Bin echoed, indeed. And a few days ago, Lord Long's bidding business meeting was also cancelled because of the trouble caused by this Yi surname person, and today, it's a replay. Under the guidance of these two big shots, other guests suddenly realized what was happening and began pointing fingers at Yi Tianz. I knew you were causing trouble at the birthday banquet, deliberately creating conflicts. Do you know how many opportunities you've wasted because of your recklessness? Master G, this guy is arrogant and unforgivable. We ask you to punish him. The entire banquet hall was filled with accusations against Yi Tianz, the momentum was overwhelming. Ji Wuli's icy gaze stared at Yi Tianz, kid, you deliberately came here to cause trouble, provoke the anger of the Ji family and everyone else. Are you prepared to endure their wrath? Yi Tianz met his gaze head on, sneering, no wonder your two sons often use deceitful means. It seems like this habit was taught by you. Ji Bo Duan furrowed his brow and scolded, shut up. You useless waste of space. I command you to kneel down and apologize immediately, maybe then you can save your life. However, Yi Tianz leisurely crossed his legs, hands folded on his lap, raising an eyebrow slightly, what if I don't agree? He he, what will you do? Ji Bo Duan sneered coldly and shouted, guards. Immediately, a group of burly men in black suits and sunglasses stormed into the banquet hall, each exuding a powerful and formidable aura. They quickly surrounded the main table, making it impossible to escape. Ji Bo Duan looked down at Yi Tianz, his eyes flashing with a cold light. It seems that no one is taking Yi Tianqi seriously. However, Yi Tianqi's silence made many people mistakenly think that he was intimidated by the thugs. Especially for Zhang Huilin and her son. Zhang Huilin sarcastically said, White-eyed wolf, where is your arrogance now? Come on, show it. You deserve to be taught a lesson. Xiao Nan cursed, you useless thing. The trouble today is all your fault. It has nothing to do with our Xiao family, don't expect us to speak for you. Yi Tianqi glanced at Xiao Nan and sneered, Huh? Why do you think you are qualified to talk about justice or no justice? How many people here really take you seriously? These words made Xiao Nan silent, his face turning red, unable to say a word. Because the truth is the most hurtful. Xiao Nan himself is also aware that although he is arrogant and even sitting at the main table today, Intelligent people know that all of this is borrowed from Xiao Qingsheng's influence. In fact, no one will look at him with admiration because of this. However, Xiao Qingsheng coldly said, Yi Tianqi, do you really think anyone here will take you seriously? Yi Tianqi replied indifferently, I live my life, why should I care about others' opinions? Xiao Qingsheng frowned and said, If you don't care about others' opinions, why are you using this method to deal with me? Do you know how important today's birthday banquet is to me? Yi Tianqi shook his head and said, 
Mr. Xiao, I have said many times, I have never thought of retaliating against you, please don't be delusional. Xiao Qingsheng self-mockingly smiled, huh? The reality is right in front of us, do you still not admit it? Yi Tianqi, I used to think your only flaws were cowardice, inferiority, and incompetence. Today I realize that hypocrisy is your biggest flaw, your actions only disgust me. I declare again, no matter how despicable means you use, I, Xiao Qingsheng, will never regret my decision to divorce. You and I, there will never be any possibility in the future. Yi Tianqi's eyes trembled slightly as he stood up slowly, looking at Xiao Qingsheng with a cold and unfamiliar gaze. In that case, I also want to tell Mr. Xiao, please don't use that condescending attitude to speculate about me. Although I may have some reluctance at first, after experiencing what has happened these days, I have completely let go of that idea. I also agree with what you said, you and I, there will never be any possibility in the future. Xiao Qingsheng's pupils suddenly trembled. She felt as if her chest had been cut open. Ji Bo comforted her softly, Qingsheng, I've told you before that this waste is an ungrateful person. Rest assured, I will definitely uphold justice for you today. Xiao Qingsheng was about to say something, but was pulled aside by Zhang Huilin. Miss, listen to young master Ji, let him take charge and teach that white-eyed wolf a lesson. Otherwise, the Xiao family may be fooled by him in the future. Xiao Nan also reminded, that's right, sister. Let young master Ji help, we just need to watch from the sidelines. Today, we must make that waste learn a lesson. Xiao Qingsheng sighed and did not continue. Ji Bo pointed at Yi Tianqi. A heavy voice rang out, as Ji Bo Duan sternly questioned Yi Tianqi, you caused a big disturbance at my father's birthday banquet today, intentionally provoking Miss Rong Mayan and causing harm to everyone. Your actions are grave. Now, aren't you going to kneel down in public and apologize? Hurry up and accept your punishment. Yi Tianqi glanced at Ji Bo Duan and impatiently replied, I have no time for your nonsense. Quickly hand over the tiger-shaped jade pendant I won in the auction. Hearing this, Ji Bo Duan coldly remarked to the crowd, Look, how arrogant this kid is. He caused harm to us and yet pretends to be innocent. How should we deal with him? The crowd indignantly shouted, Not only should he apologize and kneel down, but he should also pay the price. It's best to injure him, break his limbs, and throw him into the river. If he won't yield to kindness, we'll use force. Ji Bo Duan said coldly, Yi Tianz, this is the consensus. You can't escape. You brought this upon yourself. Get him. Immediately, the thugs around prepared to act. Just as they were about to strike, a cold voice stopped them. It was Ji Wooly. The thugs halted and took two steps back. Perplexed, Ji Bo Duan asked his father, Father, why? Ji Wooly raised his hand to silence him, then approached Yi Tians, squinting as he asked, Young man, I have a question for you. Why are you so fixated on that tiger-shaped jade pendant? What special meaning does it hold for you? Ji Wooly asked this question because he noticed Yi Tianse's keen interest in bidding for the jade pendant, even willing to bid 20 million given by Han Ruyan. Despite the critical situation, Yi Tianse still cared about the jade pendant, indicating its special significance to him. Yi Tianse replied calmly, Why should I tell you? You just need to know that I paid for it, and you lost the bet, so you should hand it over to me. Ji Bo Duan became agitated, Nonsense, what's the harm in giving you the 20 million? You lost, don't be a sore loser. Ji Wooly, with a stern face, said, Shut up. Can't you hear me asking a question? Ji Bo Duan shrank back, afraid to speak. He wondered why his father suddenly acted so strange. Ji Wooly continued to question Yi Tianz, Young man, see the situation clearly. Confess and perhaps I can spare your life. Yi Tianz remained unwavering, I have nothing to say. Ji Wooly furrowed his brow, seething with anger. At that moment, a surprised voice exclaimed, I know. Everyone turned to see that it was Zhang Huilin. Ji Wuli squinted and asked, What do you know? Zhang Huilin nodded. I had seen this jade pendant on Yi Shuangying twice before, and my grandfather also mentioned that Yi Shuangying always wore this tiger shaped jade pendant, which has been in the Yi family for generations. Ji Wuli heard this, his eyes slightly narrowed, as if touching a sensitive nerve. He seemed to recall some unpleasant memories. At this moment, other guests below were curious and speculated about Yi Shuangying's identity. Someone exclaimed, wasn't Yi Shuangying the head of the Yi family in Zhongmen back then? But 15 years ago, the Yi family was wiped out in a big fire. Another interjected, no, I heard that Yi Shuangying had a grandson who survived, named Yi Tianci. Could it be that the person in front of us is the only descendant of the Yi family? 
All eyes turned to Yi Tian Ce, instantly making him the center of attention. Xiao Qingcheng also suddenly realized at this moment. She had misunderstood Yi Tian Ce's intention in bidding for the jade pendant before, and now she understood his original intention. Feeling a hint of guilt in her heart, she furrowed her brows and asked Zhang Huilin, Mom, since you knew the relationship between Yi Tian Ce and this jade pendant earlier, why didn't you tell us sooner? Zhang Huilin shrugged, a bitter smile playing at the corner of her mouth, I just remembered it now. Besides, who could have thought that there would be surviving relics after the Yi family's tragic fire? Xiao Qingcheng felt a bit puzzled after hearing this. She couldn't help but wonder why this jade pendant ended up in the hands of the Ji family and if there was an unknown story behind it. Yi Tianxi's face darkened slightly. He hadn't expected Zhang Huilin to reveal this past in public, but he didn't mind, as he had nothing to hide. He asked seriously, Master Ji, since you know the truth, I also want to know why my grandfather's jade pendant ended up in your hands. The people present were also full of curiosity about this matter, showing expressions of wanting to see the excitement. Ji Wooly smiled faintly and replied casually, Young man, you don't suspect that the Yi family's fire is related to my Ji family, do you? Let me remind you, such suspicions should not be easily believed. Our Ji family has always been upright and would never do anything disgraceful. As for that jade pendant, in fact, when the Yi family encountered financial difficulties, the head of the Yi family took the initiative to come to me and sold the jade pendant. What's wrong with that? Yi Tnce narrowed his eyes slightly, sneering in his heart. Although the Yi family was not extremely wealthy back then, they had never faced financial crisis, let alone sell the treasured tiger-shaped jade pendant. How could his grandfather easily sell it? He knew in his heart that Ji Wooly was lying. Yi Tnce continued to inquire. If the jade pendant was sold to you by my grandfather, do you have any witnesses or receipts? Ji Wooly shook his head, those are all things of the past. How could I remember such details? A cold light flickered in Yi Tianxi's eyes, knowing full well that Ji Wooly was lying. The old gentleman is indeed a cunning old fox, always being evasive in his answers, but such playful behavior only strengthens Yi Tianxi's belief. When Ji Wooly obtained this tiger-shaped jade pendant in the past, he must have hidden some kind of secret. Regardless of the truth, Yi Tianqi is determined to retrieve this jade pendant. He fearlessly takes a step forward and says to Ji, Master Ji, since you seem to have forgotten what happened 15 years ago, you should understand the principle of returning things to their rightful owner, shouldn't you? Shouldn't you return it to me? At this moment, Ji Bo steps forward and sternly rebukes, didn't you hear what my father said? This jade pendant was sold to our family by your grandfather, why should we return it to you? Ji Boxiao also joins in, exactly. Don't think you deserve it just because you won the bid. That 20 million was deceitfully obtained by you and must be returned to the Han family. As for this jade pendant, you can forget about it forever. According to the bet, you still owe our G family 20 million, don't forget. Faced with the G family's strong stance, Yi Tianxi's expression gradually becomes cold. He sneers, as the saying goes, you reap what you sow. Since your G family insists on being unreasonable, then I, Yi Tianqi, have no choice but to take it by force. He strides towards the stage, exuding a powerful aura that makes everyone present shudder. Ji Bo nervously swallows and steps back, as he had witnessed Yi Tianqi's strength at the bidding conference the day before. He commands his men, what are you waiting for? Stop this guy. If he takes the jade pendant, you will all lose your bonuses. Upon hearing the order, the thugs immediately rush towards Yi Tianqi. Facing the encirclement, Yi Tianqi remains calm and composed. He punches the thug in the front, knocking him down instantly, crashing heavily onto a table, shattering it. The guests panic and flee in all directions. The chaotic battle continues, despite the thug's large numbers and fierce momentum, they seem like helpless children in front of Yi Tianqi, crying for their parents and unable to get up from the ground. In less than half a minute, over 30 thugs are all knocked down and unable to stand up. The banquet hall is in a mess, with tables overturned, but the scene is unusually quiet. The onlookers gaze at Yi Tianqi with awe, as if they are looking at a war god. After a moment, someone sighs, is this guy still human? I feel like I'm seeing the long-lost southern war god Lin Feng. He was also so powerful back then. Amazing. No wonder he's always so confident. Ji's birthday banquet is in chaos, their family embarrassed like never before. However, Yi Tianqi pays no attention to the surrounding gossip and continues towards the stage. Just then, a figure suddenly rushes onto the stage, grabs the tiger-shaped jade pendant from the tray. It's Ji Boxiao. Yi Tianqi raises an eyebrow and asks, what do you plan to do? 
Ji Boshao's face shows a mix of fear and anger. Yi Tianxi's eyes were cold and sharp, like a piercing frost, as he fearlessly faced the provocation from Ji Zhao. Ji Boxiao arrogantly waved the jade pendant in his hand, claiming it as his grandfather's heirloom. He threatened Yi Tianqi that if any damage occurred, he would regret it. Ji Boshao's words were aggressive and full of anger and provocation, as he demanded Yi Tianqi to kneel and apologize, or he would not hesitate to shatter the jade pendant. Yi Tianqi, facing Ji Boshao's threats, remained firm and resolute, determined to protect his dignity and bottom line. He calmly approached Ji Boxiao, trying to defuse the situation, but Ji Boxiao became more agitated and ultimately, despite all warnings, threw the jade pendant to the ground, breaking it in half. At that moment, the banquet hall fell silent, everyone feeling the stormy and oppressive atmosphere. Yi Tianqi bent down carefully picked up the broken pieces of the jade pendant, tears glistening in his eyes as he expressed deep apologies to his grandfather's heirloom. Although Ji Boxiao was still shaken, he tried to save face by continuously blaming Yi Tianqi for his own actions. Yi Tianqi stood up, holding the broken pieces of the jade pendant close to his chest, his eyes showing determination and indifference. Fearlessly, he walked towards Ji Boxiao, exuding a chilling aura that sent shivers down everyone's spine. Despite Ji Wuli's threats, Yi Tianqi remained unafraid, calmly facing Ji Boxiao with a resolute and decisive attitude. Ji Boxiao was slapped hard across the face, as if lightning struck out of the blue. Smack! A loud sound echoed. He was thrown back like a kite with a broken string, landing harshly on the ground. Splutter! Blood gushed from his mouth, and two teeth flew out. But that was just the beginning. Yi Tian swiftly moved to his side, coldly pointing out, you broke the jade pendant just now, didn't you? With that, he stomped fiercely on Ji Boshao's right arm. Crack! Ji Boshao's right arm immediately fractured and broke. Ah! My arm! Ji Boxiao screamed in agony, veins bulging on his forehead. Yi Tian mercilessly grabbed Ji Boshao's hair, lifting him up forcefully. Ji Boxiao struggled desperately, fear and regret filling his eyes. He trembled and said, I, I was wrong, please don't hit me again. Sob. Dot sob. Yi Tianz coldly shook his head, you are incorrigible, only. Death awaits. Then, he punched Ji Boxiao hard in the abdomen, causing him to double over like a shrimp, then fly backward, crashing heavily into the big screen. Crack. The screen cracked, and Ji Boxiao weakly slid down from it, rolling on the ground, emitting a piercing scream. Everyone present felt a chill in their hearts, their faces pale. Yi Tianse's cruelty and ruthlessness were chilling. Xie Bin and Lai Jingye were stunned, filled with lingering fear. Han Tianzheng sweated on his forehead, breathing heavily. Xiao Qingcheng was even more frightened, never having seen such a brutal side of Yi Tianse in three years. What kind of nature was he hiding? What kind of person was he really? Yi Tianse showed no sign of stopping, continuing his approach towards Ji Boxiao seemingly determined to end his life. Just then, Xiao Qingcheng suddenly called out, Yi Tianz. Stop. Don't hurt him anymore. Yi Tianz trembled slightly, halted his steps, and turned to ask, Why are you stopping me? Xiao Qingcheng hurried over, looking at Yi Tianz's murderous aura, feeling nervous herself. She explained, If you continue, it will be considered murder, and there will be legal consequences. You will pay the price for it. Yi Tianz coldly replied, It's just crushing an ant he's not worth the price I would pay. It was not an empty threat, it was a fact. However, Xiao Qingcheng misunderstood his intentions, thinking he had lost his sanity. Anxiously, she said, Ji second young master was at fault first, but you've already hit him. What else do you want? Can you stop being reckless? Yi Tianz raised an eyebrow and smiled. Whenever he needed to understand this woman, she always left him puzzled. Meanwhile, Ji Wuli and Ji Boduan had also arrived on the stage. When they saw the condition of Ji Boxiao, veins bulged on Ji Wuli's forehead instantly, his anger overflowing. This betrayal made him feel angry and disappointed, his inner rage erupting like a volcano. Ji Wuli's anger was raging uncontrollably in his heart. The minor incidents caused by Yi Tianza at the birthday banquet had only made him angry and wanting to teach Yi Tianza a lesson. However, at this moment, Ji Wuli's heart was filled with a murderous intent. Therefore, when Ji Wuli uttered these words, the guests present realized that he was serious. Yi Tianzi stood firm, unwavering, and declared, I will stand right here and see what your Ji family is capable of doing. The crowd was instantly in an uproar. He's gone mad. This kid must be crazy. Just wait. We are about to witness the true anger of the Ji family. Alas. 
This is the price of youthful impulsiveness. Even if he's powerful, so what? The strength of one person cannot ultimately contend with a big family like the G family. What a pity! G. Wooly's face flashed with a gloomy expression, sneered, You brought this upon yourself. Then, he picked up his phone and made a call. In a deep voice, he ordered, Convey my orders, gather all the forces of the G family, dispatch all the experts, bring weapons, and arrive at Peng Lai Zhe within ten minutes. I want one person's life today. With the command conveyed, the city of Jiangnan instantly boiled. The forces under the G family's command mobilized one after another, heading straight to Peng Lai Zhe Hotel. At this moment, panic spread within Peng Lai Zhe. No one had expected that attending a birthday banquet would turn into such a situation. Xiao Qingcheng also realized that the situation was worse than imagined. She quickly whispered to Yi Tianza, Why are you still standing here? Hurry and run! Yi Tianza replied calmly, Run? What's the point of running? He actually meant to express that the Ji family was insignificant in his eyes, and there was no need to flee. But Xiao Qingcheng misunderstood his meaning, thinking that Yi Tianza felt powerless against the Ji family's numbers in Zhongnan. Xiao Qingcheng anxiously said, Knowing you can't escape, why not admit your mistake and apologize? Is your dignity more important than your life? Yi Tianza narrowed his eyes and said coldly, My dignity may not be important, but the only heirloom left by my grandfather is very important. Ji Baxiao broke it and must be punished. Xiao Qingcheng bit her lip, understanding Yi Tianzi's feelings and knowing it was unfair to him. But in the face of reality, absolute power was there, and no one cared about fairness. Xiao Qingcheng said seriously, even so, you can't use this as a reason to resort to violence. When will you mature a bit and not be so impulsive? Yi Tianza frowned, not expecting Xiao Qingcheng to say such things just to please the Ji family. It was unreasonable, Xiao Qingcheng said with frustration, I'm speechless about you like this. She didn't understand why he couldn't be grateful when she was trying to help him. Why couldn't he understand weakness? Ji Bo stepped forward, grabbed Xiao Qingcheng, and said, Qingcheng, this has nothing to do with you. It's no longer a matter that can be resolved by his apology now. When our Ji family's people arrive, Yi Tianza will surely pay a heavy price. Xiao Qingcheng trembled slightly, hesitated for a moment. She turned to Ji Wuli and pleaded, Master Ji, please spare Yi Tianza. Everyone present was stunned. Xiao Qingcheng unexpectedly stood up to plead for Yi Tianz, which surprised Yi Tianz. Ji Boduan's face changed slightly, warning, Qingcheng, why are you pleading for that Yi Tianz? Quickly take back what you just said. Zhang Huilin and Xiao Nan were also shocked, and they hurried up to the stage. Zhang Huilin angrily rebuked, Do you understand what you're saying? That waste caused a great disaster, whatever punishment he receives, he brought it upon himself. Why are you pleading for him? Xiao Nan also advised, Sister, please shut up. Can't you see that Master Ji is already angry? Don't cause trouble at this time. Faced with everyone's opposition, Xiao Qingcheng's eyes flashed with determination, insisting, Master Ji, as long as you spare Yi Tianz, you can make any demands, and I will do my best to fulfill them. Zhang Huilin widened her eyes, finding it hard to believe. She angrily said, You foolish girl, are you out of your mind? This waste has caused you harm multiple times, and you still want to help him? Xiao Qingcheng frowned and said, Mom, I have made a decision, no need to persuade me anymore. Zhang Huilin stomped her foot in frustration. Ji Wuli's face darkened, coldly saying, Xiao, do you understand the consequences of your words and actions? Before Xiao Qingcheng could respond, Ji Bo Duan quickly said to Ji Wuli, Dad, don't be angry, Qingcheng Shi. Ji Wuli sternly interrupted, Shut up. You still don't have any sense of awakening at this time? You are devoted to him, but at a critical moment, he only thinks about his own safety, and you still speak up for him? Ji Bo Duan paused a hint of indifference flashing in his eyes, asking, Qingcheng, is it worth it for that waste? From the bidding chamber to today's birthday banquet, he has disrupted your good things several times, have you forgotten? Or do you still have feelings for him? Can't let go of him? Everyone watched Xiao Qingcheng, waiting for her answer, including Yi Tianz, whose gaze was also on her. Xiao Qingcheng lowered her eyes, did she like Yi Tianz? In fact, she was not sure herself. Taking a deep breath, Xiao Qingcheng said, as for the question of liking, I cannot give an answer. I am doing this because Yi Tianz and I are not officially married, so as a wife, I have a responsibility not to abandon him, that's all. Hearing this, Yi Tianze's eyes flashed with complex emotions. He remembered that Xiao Qingcheng had said similar things at the bidding chamber the night before. The guests present all side. Some praised, 
President Xiao is truly the most outstanding female CEO in Jiangnan City, her moral character is truly rare. Husband and wife should be birds of the same forest, facing disaster, they should fly together, but President Xiao bravely stood up to speak for her useless husband, truly admirable. Some blamed Yu Tianz, such a good wife, yet he still doesn't know how to cherish her, it's truly despicable. Ji Bo Duan breathed a sigh of relief, grateful that Xiao Qingcheng did not like Yi Tianz, but was fulfilling her legal obligations as a wife. Even Ji Wuli. Mr. Xiao's courage and sense of responsibility command respect. However, no matter what, Yi Tianzi's actions in harming his son are unforgivable. Even if you insist on apologizing on his behalf, it may not be acceptable. A hint of admiration flickered in his eyes as Mr. Xiao's resolute attitude left a deep impression. Ji Wuli's answer was grim. The first condition is quite simple. You, standing in for Yi Tianza, must kneel and apologize to the Ji family and all the guests present today. Xiao Qingcheng's eyelid twitched. Kneel and apologize to everyone? Is this condition really that simple? It would be a huge loss of face for her. Seeing Xiao Qingcheng hesitating, Ji Wuli coldly snorted, If you can't do it, then step aside. This matter has nothing to do with you. The person Ji wants to hold accountable is Yi Tianza. Zhang Huilin took the opportunity to persuade, you should divorce that Yi person tomorrow and not bear any responsibility with him. Step aside quickly. Xiao Nan also advised, sister. You've already done enough for that waste, don't let him drag you down again, okay? Ji Bo Duan also said, Qingcheng, listen to my dad, don't be stubborn. To everyone's surprise, Xiao Qingcheng actually spoke up, I agree to the first condition of the Ji family head. This statement caused a stir in the room. Xiao Qingcheng, Willing to go to such lengths for her soon-to-be ex-husband? They were clearly getting a divorce. Even Rong Mei Yuan, with her charming eyes, showed a hint of surprise. This woman named Xiao Qingcheng seemed to be not as simple as she appeared on the surface. Speaking of Xiao Qingcheng, at this moment, she bit her lip, bent her legs, and was about to kneel in front of the Ji family. Just as her knees were about to touch the ground, she suddenly felt her right arm being pulled. Turning her head, she saw the familiar face of Yi Tianza. Xiao Qingcheng furrowed her brows and asked, Why are you stopping me? Yi Tianza countered, The question should be, Why are you kneeling to him? Disappointed, Xiao Qingcheng replied, What else can I do besides apologizing for you? Besides me, who else can help you? Or should I just watch you die here today? If that's the case, I would not be fulfilling my duty as a wife, and I would be letting down Grandpa Yi in the underworld. Yi Tianza felt a mix of emotions. He pulled Xiao Qingcheng up completely and said, I understand what you mean, but you don't have to go this far for me, I can handle this matter myself. As for my life. He paused, his tone resolute and confident, in this world, there has yet to be anyone who can take my life, Yi Tianza. This bold statement left Xiao Qingcheng stunned subconsciously. It seemed like the first time in their three years of marriage that she had seen Yi Tianza display such brave confidence. However, as soon as Yi Tianza finished speaking, a multitude of footsteps sounded outside the banquet hall. Clatter, clatter, clatter. The next moment, a large crowd of people, dressed in black, poured in from outside. They were all burly, fierce-looking, armed individuals, numbering three to four hundred in total. Especially at the forefront were a dozen or so muscular men in black and white combat suits, their exposed arms showing strong muscles, clearly not to be trifled with. Their appearance caused a commotion. Oh my! Ji's men from Jonglin City have all been summoned and it's the first time I've seen such a large force. Did you see those ten in martial attire? They are all experts from the martial arts schools under the Ji family, able to take on ten opponents each. That Yi person is in big trouble now. Who told him to provoke someone he shouldn't have? Seeing these people appear. Ji Wooly took a step forward, coldly facing Yi Tianqi, saying, Young man, do you think there is no one in this world who can take your life? Do you still have that confidence now? Yi Tianqi turned his head, smiled, and glanced casually at the three or four hundred people gathered below, saying, They are just a group of insignificant people, why should they be able to take my life? It's not nearly enough. With that, Yi Tianqi extended a finger and shook it from side to side, a gesture that was a public humiliation for the Ji family. Ji Wuli's face darkened, he had made up his mind to go on a killing spree today. Xiao Qingcheng's face changed slightly. Although she knew Yi Tianqi's extraordinary strength, facing the siege of hundreds of people, even Yi Tianqi would have a hard time resisting. She could only persuade Yi Tianqi, can you listen to my advice once? Just apologize, and I can intercede for you. Why can't you accept it? As long as you apologize, I will do my best to protect you. 
Yi Tianqi shook his head and said, If you are worried that I will cause trouble for you, then I can publicly declare that you are you, and I am me, we have no relationship between us. So, you don't need to apologize for me, you don't need to vouch for me, and you don't need to worry about me affecting your career development in Zhangnan City. Upon hearing this, Xiao Qingcheng's heart trembled. She asked incredulously, In your eyes, am I just a shallow person who only cares about money and status? Yi Tianqi nodded, isn't it? If not, why would she think I'm a vampire clinging to her? Why would she ask for a divorce? Why would she get close to Ji Boduan? Suddenly, without warning, Xiao Qingcheng slapped Yi Tianqi. Yi Tianqi was surprised. This was the first time Xiao Qingcheng had ever struck him. The onlookers were all stunned. What's going on? At this moment, Xiao Qingcheng's body trembled slightly, her eyes filled with grievance and disappointment. She couldn't understand why, even though Yi Tianqi had disrupted her birthday banquet, she had helped him resolve the trouble without complaint, yet received such an evaluation. Her heart was broken at that moment. Xiao Qingcheng forced a smile and said, Yi Tianqi, you're right, I am indeed that shallow person. In my eyes, wealth and status are more important than anything, especially more important than you. Whatever happens next, I will no longer pay attention to you, okay? With that, tears streamed down Xiao Qingcheng's face uncontrollably. Hurt, helpless, resentful, unwilling. Xiao Qingcheng usually appeared aloof and composed, like an emotionless robot. But at this moment, her defenses crumbled. It was similar to the scene a few days ago at the bidding merchant's meeting. Yi Tianqi's eyes trembled slightly, his firm voice choked with emotion as he said, All right, let it be like this. Upon hearing this, Xiao Qingcheng wiped away her tears, raised her chin slightly, and tried to remain calm as she said, Remember what you said. With that, she turned and left, no longer standing between Yi Tianqi and Ji Wuli. Zhang Huilin grabbed Xiao Qingcheng's hand and complained, I told you not to pay attention to that wolf in sheep's clothing, right? No good deed goes unpunished. Xiao Qingcheng nodded. At that moment, she had made up her mind to face whatever outcome with equanimity. At worst, it's just burying Yi Tianza for him. However, she has tried her best. Ji Wuli said lightly, since Mr. Xiao has come to his senses at a critical moment, Ji will no longer pursue it. There was a hint of cruelty in his eyes as he stared at Yi Tianza. Yi Tianza, the crimes you have committed today are too numerous to list. I sentence you to death. Any objections? Before Yi Tianza could respond, a voice suddenly came from outside, interrupting their conversation. Ji Wuli's eye twitched, his anger burning inside. Every time he was impatient, someone would suddenly appear to disrupt his plans. Who was causing trouble this time? He swore to make that person pay along with Yi Tianza. Otherwise, the reputation of the Ji family would be severely damaged. He turned to look at the source of the voice, and the other guests followed his gaze. They all wanted to know who was daring enough to provoke Ji Wuli in his anger. Over a dozen people walked in at the entrance, and although their numbers were small, the aura they exuded put immense pressure on everyone present. They were dressed in neat navy blue uniforms, obviously from the enforcement team of Jiangnan City. These people held the power of life and death, and their status was respected. The guests at the scene whispered to each other in surprise, discussing how the enforcement team ended up here. Did someone break the law? With the official presence, the situation was bound to become more complicated. Ji Wuli's face changed slightly, not expecting the enforcement team to show up. Although he was the head of the Ji family, he could only maintain politeness in front of the enforcement team. He quickly walked down from the stage and was shocked to see the leader of the enforcement team, Vice Director Wang of the Enforcement Bureau of Jiangnan City. Usually, the leader of the enforcement team is a squad leader or a platoon leader, but this time, the Vice Director personally led the team, indicating that the matter was far from trivial. Ji Wuli politely greeted, Vice Director Wang, what brings you here? Vice Director Wang glanced at the armed thugs in the banquet hall and said sternly, Master Ji, you mentioned sentencing someone to death just now. Are you planning to execute the punishment privately, openly challenging the law? Ji Wuli hurriedly explained, Oh, no, Vice Director Wang, you're kidding. It's a rule of law society now, how could I dare to offend the law? Just a joke. He winked at the thugs, and they immediately understood, putting down their weapons and retreating into the crowd, no longer displaying their former imposing manner. Vice Director Wang snorted coldly and said indifferently, Master Ji, I didn't come here today for routine law enforcement. I'm here to find someone. May I ask if he's here? Ji Wuli asked in confusion, Oh? Has someone broken the law? What's his name? Vice Director Wang replied, His name is Yi Tianza. 
The people present all changed their expressions. Vice Director Wong personally leading the team to find Yi Tianza. This shocked everyone. What serious mistake had Yi Tianza made? Xiao Qingsheng was stunned, thinking that Yi Tianza had already done something outrageous, but she didn't expect him to have violated the law and attracted the enforcement team. As for Yi Tianza himself, he remained calm. Although he didn't know why the enforcement bureau was looking for him, he had a clear conscience and no fear. Even if there was trouble, he would not back down. Meanwhile, Ji Wooly was extremely excited, as if receiving an unexpected gift. He had deep-rooted hatred towards Yi Tianza and wanted to bring him to justice. Now, the law enforcement bureau has set their sights on Yi Tianza. He no longer needs the help of the Ji family to take action, as the authorities will show Yi Tianza the power of the Iron Fist. He smirked. Deputy Director Wang, you finally arrived. Yi Tianza is indeed here. This guy is arrogant and caused a scene at Ji's banquet, blatantly disregarding the law. You. Deputy Director Wang's face lit up, interrupting. Is Yi Tianza really here? He looked at Deputy Director Wang's anxious and expectant expression. Ji Wuli became even more convinced that Yi Tianza had committed a grave crime. He quickly pointed at Yi Tianza on the stage. Yes, that jerk is Yi Tianza. However, he is rude and rebellious. Trying to forcefully apprehend him might lead to resistance. But it's okay. As long as you give the order, hundreds of my subordinates will fully cooperate in apprehending him. Unexpectedly, Deputy Director Wang frowned and solemnly said, Who told you that I am here to arrest him with a team? I specifically brought people here to ask him to leave. Gasp. G. Wooly was bewildered. The guests at the main table were bewildered. The hundreds of guests and G. family's henchmen present were bewildered. Wasn't it agreed that Yi Tianza, who had violated the law, was to be apprehended? How did it suddenly change to asking him to leave? Ji Wuli instinctively asked, Deputy Director Wang, what's going on here? Wasn't he being sought after for breaking the law? How could? Deputy Director Wang said sternly, Master Ji, breaking the law is a serious matter that requires solid evidence. When did we ever say that Yi Tianza had broken the law? This time, we simply have a matter to discuss with him for him to leave. Um. Ji Wooly looked embarrassed, his brain somewhat malfunctioning. Ji Bo couldn't help but step forward and said, Deputy Director Wang, the grudges between our family and that surnamed Yi are unresolved. You are directly asking him to leave. Isn't that? Though he didn't finish his sentence, the meaning was clear. While the law enforcement bureau had the authority to take Yi Tianza away, they should at least provide a clear explanation or it would be embarrassing for the Ji family. Deputy Director Wang replied calmly, I may not have made it clear. The person who wants Yi Tianza to leave is not from our law enforcement bureau, it's an order from the city lord. If you have any questions, feel free to discuss it with the city lord. What's going on? Ji Bo's eyes were about to pop out. Ji Wuli's eyelids twitched, sensing a very bad premonition. The guests present were shocked beyond belief. Oh my god! The city lord ordered the law enforcement bureau to bring Yi Tianza. Does this guy actually know the city lord? No wonder this Yi surname has the audacity to cause a scene at the banquet today. He must have the city lord backing him up. What kind of luck is he having to have the city lord looking out for him? For a moment, the banquet hall was abuzz with discussions. Even the big shots at the main table, like Han Tianzheng and Lai Jingye, looked at Yi Tianzhe with incredulous eyes. Zhang Huilin and Xiao Nan, the mother and son, were dumbfounded. It was as if they had seen a ghost. Even the usually calm Xiao Qingsheng was shocked. She looked at Yi Tianza with eyes full of disbelief. No wonder he was so confident before. It turns out he had a powerful backer all along. But when did he get to know the city lord? Thinking about this, she unconsciously bit her lip. Yi Tianza. Yi Tianza. Three years into marriage. Deputy Director Wang walked to the front and politely said to Yi Tianza, The chief of the city is requesting your presence, Mr. Yi, please cooperate. Yi Tianza couldn't help but feel puzzled. Why would the chief of the city want to see him? Could it be that there was a change in Lin's condition? He speculated silently. However, since he had already received the tiger-shaped jade pendant and did not see Rong Mei in asking to cancel the engagement, he felt that there was no need for him to stay here any longer. So he nodded and said, All right, I'll go with you. As Yi Tianza walked down to the stage, Ji Bu Duan's face showed displeasure as he stood in front of Yi Tianza. At this moment, he was filled with dissatisfaction and anger. Today was supposed to be a joyous day for the Ji family, but it was ruined by Yi Tianza, even his own younger brother was seriously injured. How could he allow Yi Tianza to leave easily? 
Deputy Director Wang's face darkened and said, What? Does young Master Ji want to obstruct our actions, or disobey the chief of the city's orders? Hearing this, Ji Wuli quickly grabbed Ji Buduan and forced a smile, saying, I dare not. Please go ahead, Deputy Director Wang. Ji Buduan clenched his fists and threatened Yi Tianza. Yi, don't think you're lucky to get away with it today. I will remember everything you've done, and we will settle the score in the future. Yi Tianza calmly responded, If you hadn't reminded me, I almost forgot. In the previous bidding for the Jade Pendant, your Ji family lost, and you should return the 20 million to me. You have three days to repay the principal and in interest, otherwise, I will be the one to settle the score. After saying this, Yi Tianza and the law enforcement team left the banquet hall with their heads held high. Just as they walked out, Ji Wuli's face turned livid, he grabbed a bottle of wine from the table and slammed it on the ground. He angrily said, Yi, don't think that just because you have the chief of the city's favor, I will let you off the hook. However, he also knew that saying this was just a momentary vent of anger. Now that Yi Tianzhu was involved with the chief of the city, dealing with him would not be easy for the Ji family. At that moment, a Taoist priest with a goatee walked to the entrance of the banquet hall and said, Master Ji, don't worry, that Yi fellow won't receive the chief of the city's favor, instead, he might be in danger himself. Ji Wuli quickly looked over and saw priest Gong Sun entering. Priest Gong Sun walked up to Master Ji and respectfully bowed, saying, the Taoist is here to wish Master Ji a long life. I was delayed on the way, and arrived a bit late. Master Ji waved his hand and said, No need to be polite, Taoist, you just mentioned that the chief of the city won't favor Yi Tianza, and he might be in danger himself. What do you mean? Priest Gong Sun stroked his beard and explained, Master Ji, the Yi fellow actually impersonated a doctor yesterday and treated the chief of the city's father, that is, Lin Yuanixin Sr.'s illness. After the treatment, he left a prescription. However, this morning, there was news that Lin Sr.'s condition deteriorated rapidly after taking the medicine according to the prescription and is now in critical condition. Therefore, the chief of the city sent people to search the entire city for Yi Tianza, intending to make him pay the price. Ji Wuli's eyes lit up and he happily said, Is this information reliable? Priest Gong Sun mysteriously said, A monk does not lie. Master Ji, rest assured. Ji Wuli couldn't help but repeatedly affirm after hearing this. Ji Boda looked at Yi Tianza trapped in a dilemma and secretly rejoiced. He sneered, Ha ha! This kid has caused a big disaster. The lord of the city will definitely be furious and will surely take his life. He deserves it. Ji Boda's face showed a smug smile as he said, The Yi family, always putting on airs, will finally taste the bitter fruit this time. Zhang Huilin added with malicious joy, That useless Yi Tianza has no ability at all. He actually pretended to be a doctor to treat Master Lin. No wonder he has ended up like this today. He's reaping what he sowed. Xiao Nan sneered and said, It serves him right. If you don't court death, you won't die. Just wait and see, the news of the lord of the city dealing with Yi Tianzhu will come soon. Even Lai Jingye and Xie Bin raised their glasses to celebrate, their eyes shining with excitement. Xiao Qingcheng's expression changed slightly. She was surprised to find that Yi Tianzhu was actually related to the lord of the city, feeling that things were not simple which made her feel incredulous. She felt worried and anxious about Yi Tianza. Everyone present was discussing animatedly, but Rong Meiyin frowned, and after a moment of contemplation, quietly left the banquet hall. After the laughter and chatter in the banquet hall, Ji Boda couldn't help but ask, Master Gong Sun, since Yi Tianza has committed such a serious mistake, why didn't the lord of the city directly send the enforcement team to arrest him but chose to take him away by invitation? Others also felt puzzled after hearing this and looked at Master Gong Sun, waiting for an explanation. Master Gong Sun smiled and explained, Young Master Ji, have you forgotten the identity of the lord of the city? If he directly sent the enforcement team to arrest Yi Tianza, it might cause even greater turmoil. The lord of the city has always been cautious and thoughtful in his actions. Everyone suddenly realized and sighed at the lord of the city's wise decision. Ji Wuli quickly sought help from Master Gong Sun, Master Gong Sun, my brother Boxia was injured. Your medical skills are superb. Please help treat him. Master Gong Sun nodded and walked to Ji Bo Xiao's side, carefully diagnosing his injuries. After a moment, he said with a solemn expression, Second young Master Ji's injuries are severe. Not only is his arm broken, but his internal organs are also severely damaged. The situation may be very grim. Ji Wuli anxiously asked, Can't you save him? Master Gong Sun said in a deep voice, Although I am not skilled enough, fortunately, my second senior brother is about to return to Zhangnan City. 
His medical skills will surely heal second young master Ji. Ji Wuli was overjoyed and asked eagerly, Your second senior brother, is he the legendary master Yun Long? Master Gongsun confirmed with a nod, Exactly. Master Yun Long's medical skills are miraculous. With his return to Jiangnan City this time, second young master Ji's injuries will definitely be cured. Everyone was shocked to hear this. Master Yunlong's reputation had long spread throughout Jiangnan City, and his return was undoubtedly good news for Ji Boxiao. Ji Wuli excitedly said to Master Gongsun, Please make sure to invite Master Yunlong to treat Boxiao. The Ji family will surely reward generously. Master Gongsun smiled and said, I have a relationship with the Ji family. Even if the Ji family head does not mention it, I will still ask my second senior brother to help. But before that, Please take second young master Ji to the hospital to stabilize his injuries. I hurried to the airport to welcome the return of my second martial brother. I was filled with joy and anticipation, brimming with confidence all the way. After bidding farewell to master Gongsun, Ji Wuli immediately arranged for his men to send the injured Ji Boxiao to the hospital for treatment. After completing these tasks, his phone suddenly rang, the ringtone sharp and urgent. Seeing the caller ID, his expression instantly became respectful and humble. He carefully answered the phone, asking in a respectful tone, May I ask, what are your orders, second master? The guests around all quietly stared, as they knew well that anyone addressed as second master by Ji Wooly must be the esteemed head of the Rong family, with high status and great power. The patriarch of the Rong family, Mr. Rong, is elderly and in poor health, so most family affairs are handled by his two sons. Rong Tianong and Rong Tianli, the brothers, are locked in a power struggle for the position of family head. Rong Tianli, cunning and crafty, has won the support of the clan, while Rong Tianong, despite the assistance of his daughter Rong Meiyan, is at a disadvantage. It seems likely that Rong Tianli will become the next family head. Therefore, Ji Wuli shows great respect towards him. Ji Wuli attentively listens to Rong Tianli's phone call and assures him that he will take care of it. After the call, Ji Wuli excitedly announces that Rong Meiyan will choose the Ji family as the business partner of the Rong family at the upcoming business meeting in two days. This news is met with cheers from the guests. Lai Jingye and Xie Bin congratulate the Ji family on their success and pledge their full support. Ji Wuli applauds proudly, acknowledging that the Ji family's achievements are not possible without everyone's support. He also reveals that the partnership position in the Rong family is not exclusive and can be recommended to others. This news excites the attendees, who express their willingness to work together. Ji Bo praises Xiao Qingcheng and encourages her to win the favor of the Rong family with her abilities. Xiao Qingcheng's confidence soars after hearing this. Despite the disruption caused by Yi Tianxi's incident at today's birthday banquet, everything is eventually resolved satisfactorily. Xiao Qingcheng, however, is still worried about Yi Tianxi being taken away, showing a hint of concern. Ji Bo notices her unease and asks with concern if there is something bothering her. Xiao Qingcheng shakes her head, saying everything is fine, and excuses herself to visit her grandfather in the hospital. Ji Bo furrowed his brows slightly as his original plan for the birthday banquet was disrupted by the Yi family, so he suggested sending Xiao Qingcheng away. Xiao Qingcheng politely declined, indicating that she would leave with her family. Ji Bo was somewhat disappointed, but quietly accepted her decision. As Xiao Nan and Zhang Huilin went to get the car, Xiao Qingcheng called President Wu Xingye, asking for help from a divine doctor to treat the father of the city's chief. Wu Xingye agreed, stating that the divine doctor would come to the hospital after finishing the current task. Xiao Qingcheng breathed a sigh of relief, gazing into the distance, silently praying for Yi Tianzi's good luck. Meanwhile, in the Yu Long Manor in Jiangnan City, in Lin Yuanshun's ward, Lin Wanda paced anxiously back and forth, while his daughter, Lin Zhaoyang, stood tearfully by the side. Wu Xingye comforted Lin Wanda, reminding him that divine doctor Yi was about to arrive. Lin Wanda expressed concern about his father's deteriorating condition, hoping that Divine Dr. Yi would arrive in time. Just then, Deputy Director Wang entered the ward with Yi Tianzi. Lin Wanda greeted them excitedly, grasping Yi Tianzi's hand and expressing his gratitude and worries. After learning about the situation, Yi Tianzi furrowed his brow, inquiring about the reasons for the worsening condition. Lin Wanda awkwardly explained the situation. Lin Zhaoyang realized her mistake, apologized to Yi Tianzi and expressed her willingness to accept punishment. Yi Tianzi sighed deeply, deciding to forgive her but also reminding her to remember this lesson. Through this incident, Yi Tianzi saw some hints of Lin Zhaoyang's character. Although she was a bit willful and capricious, she also had a kind side. For such individuals, guidance through lessons is necessary. 
After the apology, Yi Tianzi began to examine Lin Yuanxun's condition. Lin Yuanxun lay on the sickbed, his face pale, his lips showing a bluish purple color, looking lifeless as if his life was gradually slipping away. Yi Tianqi furrowed his brow, expressing deep concern, saying, Mr. Lin originally had a small amount of GU poison remaining in his body, but unfortunately, he did not follow my prescription for medication. In addition, the two substituted herbs caused a severe reaction in him, causing the GU poison to spread rapidly throughout his body, putting his life in danger. Lin Wanda's face turned pale, and he hurriedly asked, Dr. Yi, do you have a way to save my father's life? Please actively provide assistance. Lin Wanda was extremely anxious, but Dr. Yi remained calm and composed. He openly admitted that he would do his best whenever needed. Yi Tianzi smiled and explained, Mayor Lin, you have misunderstood. When I treat patients, I have no other demands, especially when it comes to heroes like Mr. Lin who have contributed to the country and the people. My only condition is to know if your mansion has precious herbs to replenish vitality. I am about to start the detoxification treatment for Mr. Lin, which will be a great test for his body. Considering his old age and poor health, he needs herbs to maintain his strength. Mayor Lin urgently asked, what kind of herbs can replenish vitality? I will have them prepared right away. Yi Tianzi patiently replied, the more precious the herb, the better, such as Lingzi, Snow Lotus, and Ginseng, preferably of ancient origin. However, these precious herbs are not easy to come by, sometimes even with money. Lin Wanda's face lit up and said, it's a coincidence that I happen to have a precious herb in my study. I will have it brought here to see if it is suitable. He ordered a servant to bring a sandalwood box from the study. Upon opening the box, a faint medicinal fragrance filled the air. Inside the box was a ginseng plant, over a foot long, resembling a sleeping old man, vivid and lifelike. Lin Wanda introduced, this was a gift from the medicine king of Jiangnan on my father's birthday last year, said to be wild ginseng from Chanbai Mountain. Dr. Yi, what do you think? Wu Xingye exclaimed, wild ginseng. Judging by its appearance, it is at least over 300 years old, truly rare. Yi Tianzi carefully examined the ginseng plant. Generally, identifying ginseng requires observing its five shapes and six bodies. The five shapes refer to the shape, color, posture, texture, and root hairs of the ginseng, while the six bodies refer to flexibility, solidity, age, tenderness, clear texture, and straight root hairs. The ginseng plant before him had perfectly matched five shapes and six bodies, truly top quality. Yi Tianzi nodded and said, this is enough. We can start the treatment now. He carefully removed the root hairs of the wild ginseng and placed them in the seven orifices of Lin Yuanixin. Then, he used silver needles to pierce the Renzong acupoint on Lin Wanda's chest, causing the silver needles to slightly tremble, as if stirring up a flow of energy. Subsequently, the silver needles pierced into the next acupoint. After a series of operations, all nine silver needles were inserted. Soon, Lin Wanda and others saw the black bruises on Lin Yuanxun's body visibly receding at a rapid pace. At the same time, the ginseng root hairs in Lin Yuanshun's seven orifices changed from pale yellow to black. Dean Wu couldn't help but ask, Dr. Yi, what's going on? Yi Tianzi explained, these root hairs not only replenish Mr. Lin's vitality but also absorb the GU poison in his body. GU poison is usually residue left by GU worms, and precious herbs naturally attract GU poison. Dean Wu suddenly realized and couldn't help but wonder, how did the young Yi Tianzi master such mysterious medical skills? Yi Tianzi continued to discard the root hairs that absorbed the GU poison, took out new ones, and continued the treatment. After repeated operations, half an hour later, the treatment is finally over. At this moment, Lin Yuanxun's complexion has returned to a healthy red, radiating vitality. Yi Tianqi carefully removed the silver needles from his body, and Lin Yuanxun slowly woke up from unconsciousness. Rubbing his slightly dizzy head, he curiously asked, What happened to me? Lin Wanda walked up joyfully and inquired with concern, recounting the whole process in detail. After listening, Lin Yuanixin sighed and said, Ah! Yi Shenyi, you saved this old man of mine twice in just two days. This kindness is so heavy, how can I repay it? Yi Tianqi smiled and replied, Lin Lao, you're too polite. I'm just fulfilling my duty as a doctor. Despite his humble refusal of all thanks, Lin Wanda, along with Lin Zhaoyang, bowed deeply together to express their gratitude. He solemnly promised that Yi Tianqi would be honored guest of the Lin family in the future, and that the Lin family would do everything to meet any needs he may have. Yi Tianqi just smiled faintly, not taking it to heart. 
It's not that he doesn't trust the Lin family's promises, but with his own status and abilities, he doesn't need help from others, as he can handle everything on his own. Yi Tianqi reminded, Follow the prescription I left yesterday, in seven days, Mr. Lin will fully recover. Be careful this time, as another mishap may be irreparable. Lin Wanda quickly nodded, Lin Mu remembers. Just then, hurried footsteps were heard outside the door. Han Ruiyan rushed in anxiously, asking, How's Grandpa Lin? Where is Yi Tianqi? She complained, but then saw the scene in the ward. Initially taken aback, she then patted her chest in relief, murmuring, Thank goodness, Grandpa Lin is fine. She walked up to Yi Tianqi, vigorously patting his shoulder, excitedly saying, You're amazing. You saved Grandpa Lin's life again. How did you do it? Tell me quickly. Yi Tianqi, somewhat impatiently, glanced at her, a hint of a smile playing at the corner of his mouth, sarcastically saying, What's the use of telling you? You don't understand medical skills. Han Ruiyan, chest heaving with anger, glared at Yi Tianqi, not understanding why he always had to make things difficult for her whenever they met. Feeling frustrated, she ignored him and turned to inquire about Lin Yuanshun's condition. At this moment, Wu Xingye walked over and consulted with Yi Tianqi, Yi Shenyi, Wu has a request. Please help if you can. Yi Tianqi had a good impression of the hospital director and smiled, saying, Wu director, please go ahead. Wu Xingye explained, we have a patient in the hospital, suffering from acute heart disease and in critical condition. I am unable to handle it alone and would like to invite you to join in the treatment. The patient has some background in Jiangnan City, and as long as you are willing to help, the reward will definitely be generous. Upon hearing this, Yi Tianqi couldn't refuse, and agreed, since Director Wu has invited me, I will go take a look. Let's go. Wu Xingye nodded repeatedly, and Lin Wanda handed over the remaining wild ginseng, saying, Yi Shenyi, my father has recovered. These wild ginseng roots are no longer needed here, so I'll leave them with you. Hopefully, they can help more patients. While treating Lin Yuanixin, Yi Tianqi had used up all the hairy roots of the wild ginseng. Now, only the bare main roots were left, but even so, it was still a precious herb. Yi Tianqi hesitated for a moment, but ultimately nodded in agreement, though he felt a bit uneasy. He personally escorted Yi Tianqi and Wu Xingye to the entrance of the Yulong Manor, and to his surprise, Han Ruoyan followed along. This unexpected turn of events brought a sense of joy to him, despite his initial surprise. Han Ruoyan asked, I'm going to treat the illness, what are you going to do? Yi Tian shrugged and said, I didn't see the process of you treating Grandpa Lin, so I want to go to the hospital with you to see, otherwise, wouldn't I have come for nothing? Han Ruoyan persistently replied, I'm going, do you have the right to interfere? Yi Tian helplessly rolled his eyes. Lin Wanda could only smile bitterly, Han Ruoyan was always so stubborn. Wu Xingye tried to lighten the mood by saying, since Miss Han wants to go, let her come along, but Miss Han, you can't delay Dr. Yi's treatment. Han Ruoyan nodded and said, of course not. The hospital director has already spoken, what else can Yi Tian say? So Yi Tian reluctantly agreed. Later, Yi Tian got into Wu Xingye's car, while Han Ruoyan drove her red Maserati away from the Yulong Manor. Lin Wanda was about to turn back when he saw a silver Rolls Royce Phantom parked not far away. A beautiful woman in a silver Changsam got out of the car gracefully. She politely greeted Lin Wanda, Uncle Lin, do you remember me? Lin Wanda hesitated and asked, are you Yan Yan? The woman smiled and said, Uncle Lin, it's me, Rong Mai Zan. Lin Wanda happily exclaimed, it's really you. It's been a few years, and you've grown so much. How are your father and grandfather? It's not widely known that Lin Wanda and Rong Mai Zan's father, Rong Tianang, are good friends and Lin Wanda has always taken care of Rong Mai Zan. However, in recent years, Lin Wanda has been busy with municipal affairs and hasn't seen Rong Mai Zan for a long time. Rong Mai Zan nodded and said, My grandfather is still the same, his health has always been poor, my father is doing well. By the way, I heard that Grandpa Lin's condition worsened, so I hurried over. How is he now? Since Lin Yuanixin fell seriously ill six months ago, the Rong family has actually helped a lot by inviting doctors and sending medicinal herbs, but unfortunately, there hasn't been much effect. Lin Wanda smiled and said, Thankfully, Grandpa's illness has been cured by a divine doctor and he is recuperating. He will be fully recovered in seven days. Rong Maizan visibly relaxed. That's great. Then, she hesitantly said, Uncle Lin, I have an awkward request. Lin Wanda readily agreed, With your fathers and my friendship, do you still need to be so polite? Go ahead. Rong Maizan nodded and said, 
Just now at the Ji family banquet, Deputy Director Wang took away a person named Yi Tians. It is said that he pretended to be a doctor and worsened Grandpa Lin's condition. Although he was wrong, considering that Grandpa Lin has already been cured by a divine doctor, I want to ask you to go easy on Yi Tians and not punish him severely. Rong Mai Zan didn't hold much hope for pleading for Yi Tians, after all, he almost caused Grandpa Lin's death by pretending to be a doctor. Lin Wanda smiled meaningfully and said, Niece, are you trying to make me happy? Rong Mei Yan asked in confusion, Uncle Lin, I didn't mean that, what do you mean? Lin Wanda chuckled and said, You mentioned Yi Tianza, who is the lifesaver of our family's father. Without him, the consequences would be unimaginable. Now, Dr. Yi has become an honored guest in our Lin family, and I am so grateful to him. Rong Mei Yan looked surprised and asked, You mean Yi Tianza is actually a divine doctor? Lin Wanda nodded and continued, Yes, your understanding of him only scratches the surface of his superb medical skills, top-notch calligraphy, and calm demeanor. In fact, his medical skills have reached a miraculous level. Rong Mei Yin shook her head. Although she had limited interactions with Yi Tianza, she already admired his various talents. She didn't expect him to be a divine doctor, which was truly amazing. Lin Wanda teased, Mei Yin, are you so concerned about Dr. Yi? Do you have something in your heart? Rong Mei Yin quickly denied, How is that possible? I'm just curious about him, and you also know my situation. Lin Wanda's expression turned serious. He knew that the Rong family had arranged an unchangeable marriage contract with Rong Mei Yin early on, which restricted her emotional development. At present, the most important thing for Rong Mei Yin was the struggle for family power, which posed a huge challenge. Lin Wanda seemed to have figured something out and said, I heard that you were planning to choose a business partner in Jiangnan City. This is a major decision, so be cautious. I can recommend someone to you. Rong Mei Yin asked, Who? Lin Wanda replied, The actual helm of the Tianlong group, the mysterious figure behind Zhao Hailong. Although I don't know him, various signs indicate that his background is extraordinary. If you can make him your business partner, the fate of the family will surely change. Even if the cooperation fails, making friends like him will be greatly beneficial. Rong Mei Yin sighed and said, To be honest, I went to the Tianlong Group's bidding conference a few days ago, but the conference was cancelled, and I didn't get to see that important figure. Lin Wanda smiled and said, You have to try things out personally to know the outcome. I will help you contact Zhao Hailong and see if you can get in touch with that important figure through him. Perhaps there will be a breakthrough. Rong Mei Yin thanked him excitedly and then asked, Is Yi Tianza still here? I want to talk to him. I plan to take him back to the provincial capital when I have time, so that my grandfather can meet him. Lin Wanda replied, he was just called to the hospital by Dean Wu for treatment. If you go now, you might be able to see him. Rong Mei Yin nodded and said, I'll go to the hospital first, and then come to visit Uncle Lin later, and check on Grandpa Lin's health. So, Yi Tianza and others had already arrived at the First People's Hospital. Yi Tianza was charging his phone in the car, and as soon as he turned it on after getting out of the car, he received a call from Zhao Hailong. Upon receiving the notification from Zhao Hailong, Yi Tianza felt a stir in his heart and inquired about the matter. Zhao Hailong replied devoutly, Just now, Miss Rong Meiyang of the Rong family contacted me through the Linxi head office, expressing her wish to invite you, in your capacity as the leader of the Tianlong group, to attend the business meeting the day after tomorrow. Are you willing to go? Yi Tianza was slightly taken aback. He didn't expect Rong Meiyang to know the Linxi head office. However, he didn't delve deeper and nodded in agreement, saying, Of course, I can. Yi Tianza secretly looked forward to it because he had always wanted to talk to Rong Meiyang about cancelling the engagement. Originally, he had hoped to meet her at today's birthday banquet, but she suddenly announced that she would not attend. Since he had just received an invitation to the business meeting from her, he could take this opportunity to settle the matter. Just after ending the call, Han Ruoyan walked over and asked curiously like a child, Who were you talking to just now? Yi Tianza casually replied, I was talking to Zhao Hailong, what's up? Han Ruoyan sneered and sarcastically said, Is the Dragon Lord calling you? Do you think you are the important figure behind him? Yi Tianqi listened to Xiao Qingcheng's words, feeling a surge of grievance and helplessness in his heart. He couldn't understand why the Xiao family would misunderstand him and see him as a criminal. Deep down, he knew he hadn't harmed Master Lin and wasn't trying to avoid responsibility. He simply wanted to do his best to treat the patient, but unexpectedly attracted such a big misunderstanding and accusations. Under the urging of Xiao Qingcheng and the Xiao family, Yi Tianqi was forced to leave the ward reluctantly. He felt like his heart was being cut by a knife, troubled by being misunderstood and wrongly accused. 
He wasn't avoiding responsibility, but was misunderstood as fleeing in fear of guilt. This injustice made him feel unable to speak out, yet powerless to clarify. Walking back to the hospital corridor, Yi Tianqi silently moved forward, filled with grievance and helplessness. He was not a smooth talker, but was misunderstood as a troublemaker. Deep down, he hoped to clarify the truth and prove his innocence. However, reality was so cruel, making it difficult for him to know where to start. Yi Tianqi stopped in his tracks, looked out at the sunlight through the window, and felt a sense of determination rising in his heart. He decided not to be troubled by misunderstandings and wrongful accusations, and to prove his innocence and reveal the truth. Even if the road ahead was tough, he would walk it with firm resolve until the truth was revealed. I didn't expect the other person to shake his head and sneer, President Xiao, when will you ever get rid of your arrogant habit? Xiao Qingsheng frowned and said displeased Ly, are you saying I wrongly accused you? Fine. If you have the evidence to prove your innocence, and if you can produce it, can I apologize to you? Unfortunately, no one can testify for you. Just then, a voice came from behind Yi Tianza, I can testify, Yi Tianza is innocent. The speaker was Han Ruiyan. When Xiao Qingsheng saw Han Ruiyan, a hint of surprise flashed in her eyes. How could she appear here? On the other hand, Zhang Huilin and Xiao Nanyang had never seen Han Ruiyan before, nor did they know her. They were all amazed by Han Ruiyan's beauty and temperament. Especially Xiao Nan, she couldn't take her eyes off her. Such a beautiful girl, wouldn't it be great to marry her? Han Ruiyan stared at Xiao Qingsheng, but there was a hint of hostility in her heart. She provocatively said, I can prove that Yi Tianza is innocent. President Xiao, you should apologize to him, shouldn't you? Xiao Qingsheng looked a bit embarrassed. At this moment, Zhang Huilin said unhappily, Who are you? What qualifications do you have to testify? Han Ruiyan calmly introduced herself, I am Han Ruiyan, the eldest daughter of the Han family in Zhangan. Do I have the qualifications to testify? Ga! Zhang Huilin was stunned. Xiao Nanyang and the Xiao family and friends behind her were also stunned. This beautiful woman turned out to be Han Ruiyan, the eldest daughter of the Han family in Zhangan? It is well known that the financial and social status of the Han family in Zhangan far surpasses that of the Xiao family. As the eldest daughter of the Han family, Han Ruiyan's status was obviously more noble than theirs. If she didn't have the qualifications, then who did? Xiao Nan felt very unwilling in her heart. How could Han Ruiyan speak up for Yi Tianza? Could it be that Yi Tianza really succeeded in proposing and became Han Ruiyan's fiancé? But he hadn't heard anyone mention this in the past few days. Xiao Qingsheng frowned and said, Miss Han, you keep saying you can prove that Yi Tianza is innocent, but do you have any evidence? Han Ruiyan calmly replied, Because I just came out of the Lord Xi's house in the city, confirmed that Grandpa Lin is out of danger, and the person who treated him was Yi Tianza. Don't you know yet? Xiao Qingsheng and her family's faces changed. The rest of the Xiao family and friends also looked incredulous. Yi Tianza actually saved Grandpa Lin. How is that possible? Zhang Huilin was the first to deny, you're talking nonsense, he Yi Tianza is just a wastrel who eats and drinks, how could he treat illnesses? Xiao Nan also didn't believe it at all, you're obviously lying, we know nothing about Yi Tianzi's character. How dare you deceive us with such lies, do you think we are fools? The rest of the Xiao family and friends also shook their heads one after another. Yi Tianza had been eating and drinking in their family for three years, how could they not know his character? It seemed that Han Ruiyan and Yi Tianza were deliberately acting. You! Han Ruiyan was so angry, she clearly spoke the truth, why didn't anyone believe her? At this moment, she couldn't help but feel a sense of sympathy towards Yi Tianza. Being a son-in-law in the Xiao family for three years, he must have endured a lot of grievances and distrust. Yi Tianza said to Han Ruiyan, you don't need to explain for me, and I don't need their trust either. He then said to the Xiao family, since I happen to come here today, may I visit Grandpa Lin as well? Zhang Huilin's face darkened, and she directly blocked the way. Grumbling and cursing, you useless waste of space, how dare you even say such a thing? If it weren't for your recent outrageous behavior, the old master would not have been driven to the brink of death, on the verge of passing away at any moment, right? Upon hearing these words, Yi Tianzi's expression instantly darkened. A sense of powerlessness surged in his heart, feeling guilty for the worsening of the old master's condition due to his actions. Suddenly, a sense of urgency rose in his heart, and he made up his mind to find a way to save the old master's life. Yi Tianzi's face changed, revealing a look of anxiety. Upon hearing Xiao Qingsheng's words, he felt a sense of panic. Just a few days ago, 
He heard from Elder Shao that he was out of danger and would improve after a period of rest. How could the situation have become so serious in just a few days? He was determined to step forward and help the old master through this difficult time. As Xiao Qingcheng reached out her arm to stop him, Yi Tianza felt a struggle within. His eyes shimmered with determination, knowing full well that he had the ability to help the old master. However, Xiao Qingcheng, with a tone of dissatisfaction, hindered him. Her words were filled with suspicion and distrust, leaving Yi Tianza feeling unjustly treated. Just then, Wu Xingye briskly walked over, breaking the awkward atmosphere. Xiao Qingcheng stared at President Wu in astonishment. What did you say? He is the renowned doctor you recommended? Wu Xingye replied earnestly, Yes, he is the one I mentioned, Dr. Yi. It was him who cured old master Lin. How can you treat him disrespectfully and even try to drive him away? This statement was like a deafening thunder, shocking Xiao Qingcheng, Zhang Huilin, and Xiao Nan and his mother. Even the relatives and friends of the Xiao family were dumbfounded. Zhang Huilin shook her head and said, This is impossible. President Wu, you must be mistaken. Yi Tianqi has been living with us for three years, he's just a useless son-in-law who has now been kicked out of our house. How could he be a divine doctor? Wu Xingye was stunned, realizing the unexpected connection between Yi Tianqi and the Xiao family. He thought he might have unintentionally caused trouble with good intentions. Awkwardly, he said to Yi Tianqi, Dr. Yi, I didn't consider this thoroughly, I'm sorry, I didn't know about your relationship with them. Yi Tianqi waved his hand, it's okay, President Wu, no need to apologize. He also didn't expect the patient introduced by Wu Xingye to be Xiao Hongming. What a coincidence! At this moment, Xiao Nan sarcastically said, Mr. Yi, can you tone down your arrogance? No matter how you deceived President Wu, we don't believe in your medical skills. Other members of the Xiao family echoed the sentiment. Wu Xingye solemnly said, Are you misunderstanding Dr. Yi? His medical skills are the most brilliant I have ever seen. Only he can cure the master of the Xiao family. Xiao Qingcheng shook her head, President Wu, I trusted you when I asked for help to find a divine doctor, but the outcome now disappoints me. I've been married to Yi Tianqi for three years, and I know his abilities very well. You must have been deceived by him. After saying that, she impatiently glared at Yi Tianqi. She couldn't understand how Yi Tianqi could deceive President Wu. Wu Xingye sighed in exasperation, you guys in this family. Han Ruoyan gave Yi Tianqi a disdainful look and couldn't help but comment, in these three years, you've been through a lot, encountering such a peculiar family. Yi Tianqi could only smile bitterly. He had long been used to such situations. Xiao Nan continued arrogantly, President Wu, I understand your desire to save lives, but we cannot allow that useless person to come in and treat the illness. Besides, my sister has already contacted young master Ji to bring back Taoist Yunlong, who has returned from his travels, to treat my grandfather. With him around, there will be no problem. Taoist Yunlong? Wu Xingye was surprised. He knew that this Taoist Yunlong was well known in Zhongnan city for his superb medical skills. However, he had also heard some negative rumors about him. Xiao Nan glanced at Yi Tianqi again, threateningly, young master Ji's second son, whom you injured is also hospitalized here, and the Ji family is taking care of him. You better pray they don't see you, otherwise, both new and old grudges will be hard for you to bear. Yi Tianqi remained indifferent, let them come. Xiao Nan sneered, such a poser. Xiao Qingcheng said to President Wu, you better take them away. Regardless, I appreciate your efforts during this time. As for my grandfather's illness, let's entrust it to Taoist Yunlong. President Wu shook his head helplessly. Yi Tianqi looked around at the chaos and calmly said, Everyone, please calm down. I have a way to save Grandpa. Zhang Huilin impatiently rebuked, Enough talk, are you daydreaming? This is not a time for jokes. Xiao Nan also joined in the criticism, What ability do you have? Don't struggle in vain. Other relatives and friends of the Xiao family expressed their opposition one after another, not allowing Yi Tianqi to intervene in the treatment. However, just as everyone hesitated, a firm light flashed in Xiao Qingcheng's eyes, as if she had a different plan in mind. Xiao Qingcheng interrupted. Although she agreed to let Yi Tianz give it a try, it didn't mean she truly believed in him. It was just that there was no other way at the moment. Facing Xiao Nan's silence, Xiao Qingcheng and Yi Tianz locked eyes, their expressions solemn, indicating that while you claim to be proficient in medical skills, I am giving you a chance now, hoping you won't let my trust down. Yi Tianz responded coldly with a sneer. The word trust coming from your mouth only makes me feel ironic. It's better not to mention it again in the future. Xiao Qingcheng was speechless. 
Yi Tian stepped forward to carefully examine Xiao Hongming's body. Zhang Huilin sarcastically said, After the examination, you will know that you are powerless, right? Other relatives and friends of the Xiao family also joined in the mockery, obviously not taking Yi Tian seriously. In contrast, Yi Tian calmly stated, Just because the gods in the heavens cannot cure someone, doesn't mean I am powerless too. Xiao Nan cynically remarked, If you can really cure grandpa, I, Xiao Nan, am willing to kneel down and apologize. Yi Tian coldly said, Remember what you said, don't back down when the time comes. He borrowed silver needles from Wu Xingye and quickly inserted them into Xiao Hongming's acupoints. Shanzong acupoint, Tianxi acupoint, Zhangwen acupoint, all done in one go, a total of 18 silver needles were inserted. Xiao Nan frowned, questioning Yi Tianse's medical skills, thinking that inserting needles like this would harm grandpa. Zhang Huilin reprimanded Yi Tianse for being so ruthless towards the seriously ill grandfather, questioning if he had a conscience. Other relatives and friends of the Xiao family also complained one after another. Xiao Qingsheng frowned, sternly stopping everyone's complaints. The room suddenly quieted down, Xiao Qingsheng's gaze stayed on Yi Tianse and Xiao Hongming, contemplating whether to take another gamble. Yi Tianse seemed indifferent to the surrounding noise, instructing Wu Xingye to open grandpa's mouth. Wu Xingye hurriedly did so, while quietly observing Yi Tianse's actions. Yi Tianse took out wild ginseng from the box, lifted it with his left hand and placed it about three inches above Xiao Hongming's mouth. He gripped the main root of the wild ginseng with his right hand and activated his inner energy. As the inner energy entered the wild ginseng, the essence of ginseng was stimulated, slowly oozing out from the root. The essence was in the form of golden droplets, exuding vitality. Seeing this scene, Wu Xingye exclaimed, This, this is the essence of ginseng. He was extremely excited. Han Ruoyan asked puzzledly, President Wu, what exactly is the essence of ginseng? President Wu patiently explained, the essence of ginseng is the liquid extracted from the most precious part of ginseng, but the process is extremely difficult and challenging. Therefore, most people choose to consume ginseng directly or grind it for consumption, but in reality, this will lead to the loss of most nutrients, and the effect is far less than using ginseng essence directly. As an elder who has been in the medical field for many years, I have only seen ginseng essence once, never expected to witness it again today. What surprised me even more is the unique way that Dr. Yi extracted the essence. Xiao Qingsheng bit her lip, staring at Yi Tianqi intently, with questions burning in her mind. Could it be that he really possesses medical skills? On the other hand, Xiao Nan sneered and said, Humph! Is ginseng essence really that miraculous? President Wu solemnly replied, Of course. Generally speaking, it takes a wild ginseng plant a hundred years to accumulate a drop of essence, each drop containing the effects of strengthening the body and healing the sick. If the head of the Xiao family can consume a drop of ginseng essence, at least half of the illness can be cured. Xiao Nan curled her lips, still skeptical. After a while, a complete drop of ginseng essence finally dripped from the base of the wild ginseng main root. Subsequently, it fell into Xiao Hongming's mouth due to gravity. At that moment, the wild ginseng seemed to lose all vitality, rapidly withering, becoming extremely dry, no different from a dead branch. Yi Tianqi threw it into the trash can. Wu Xingye asked in confusion, why did you throw it away? Yi Tianqi explained, the essence has been extracted completely, there's no use keeping it, should I use it as firewood? Wu Xingye shook his head, that's not what I meant, I was wondering, this wild ginseng is 300 years old, theoretically, it should have produced three drops of essence, why is there only one drop? Yi Tianqi explained, indeed, there should have been three drops of essence, it's just that all the root hairs were used up before when treating Master Lin in Lin City. Although the root hairs are tiny, they absorb nutrients more easily and contain most of the essence. So being able to extract this one drop is already considered lucky, but it's enough. Wu Xingye suddenly realized, stood up to show respect to Yi Tianqi, thanking Dr. Yi for his generous teaching. Then, Yi Tianqi gently flicked the tail of the silver needle, as if playing a beautiful tune, elegantly. The 18 silver needles trembled slightly, facilitating the rapid and thorough absorption of the ginseng essence in the body. This step is actually the most crucial in the treatment process. The people present looked at each other. Xiao Qingsheng asked, Is it over now? Yi Tianqi nodded. Xiao Nan walked up directly, pushed Yi Tianqi, and scolded, Kid from the Yi family, do you think we are all fools? Is this considered cured? Where is the improvement? Zhang Huilin also joined in the complaints, you fiddled around for so long, the old master still hasn't woken up, is this considered finished? 
Other relatives and friends of the Xiao family also began to discuss and criticize, believing that Yi Tianqi was playing tricks on them. Even Xiao Qingsheng's expression was changing unpredictably. To be honest, he still harbored doubts about Yi Tianqi's medical skills. Although Director Wu had been so steadfast in supporting Yi Tianza, painting a rosy picture of the prospects of ginseng essence, it still sparked a glimmer of hope in her heart. Could it be that Yi Tianza would really succeed? However, the final outcome left her utterly shocked. Yes, has Yi Tianza always been this disappointing? Xiao Qingsheng took a deep breath, her face cold as she said, Grandfather has always been so good to you, yet you dare to use such absurd methods to treat him? In my eyes, this is simply an insult and blasphemy to Grandfather. Before I lose my temper, disappear from my sight immediately, I don't want to see you anymore. But just as she finished speaking, Xiao Hongming, the almost lifeless figure on the sickbed, suddenly started coughing. At the same time, the data indicators on the various medical devices beside the bed were visibly returning to normal at a rapid pace. In just half a minute, there was a glimmer of hope. Yi Tianqi actually cured Xiao Hongming. It's like a dream come true. All eyes were on Yi Tianqi, filled with disbelief. Yi Tianqi, who was once mocked, looked down upon, and distrusted by them, had become a skilled doctor. This kind of reversal was truly mind-blowing. Just as everyone was shocked, Xiao Hongming weakly asked who saved him. The Xiao family members looked at each other, hesitated, and seemed a bit embarrassed. But Han Ruiyan, who was present, fearlessly stated that she had always believed in Yi Tianqi's medical skills, so why didn't others believe it? Wu Xingye couldn't help but sigh. He had advised everyone before, but they never believed him. Now that the facts proved Yi Tianqi's medical skills, was there still room for doubt? The Xiao family members were embarrassed, their faces turning red, wishing they could disappear. They couldn't understand how someone once considered useless had suddenly become a skilled doctor. Especially Xiao Qingcheng, feeling hot on her face and guilty in her heart. Recalling her questioning and denial of Yi Tianqi at the door just now, she felt even more remorseful. She couldn't even muster the courage to look Yi Tianqi in the eye. And at this moment, what made her even more emotionally conflicted was that since she proposed a divorce, Yi Tianqi had shown a side she had never seen in three years. What was he still hiding in terms of martial arts, calligraphy, or medical skills? These thoughts made her restless. Just then, on the sickbed, Xiao Hongming heard Han Ruiyan and Wu Xingye venting their frustrations, and upon learning that Yi Tianqi was the one who saved him, he was both shocked and delighted. Sitting up, he praised Yi Tianqi excitedly. But in his excitement, he couldn't help but cough, his eyes filled with relief. Yi Tianqi walked up and gently patted Xiao Hongming's back advising him not to get too excited to avoid harming himself. Xiao Hongming nodded, seeming to have made a decision. He told Xiao Qingcheng that Yi Tianqi saving him this time showed his concern for the Xiao family. He always felt that there must be misunderstandings between Xiao Qingcheng and Yi Tianqi, and they should sit down and communicate properly, so she should postpone the decision to divorce. The Xiao family members' faces changed slightly. The patriarch supporting Yi Tianqi was the last thing they wanted to see. But this was about Xiao Qingcheng's thoughts, and her attitude was crucial. Xiao Qingcheng glanced at Yi Tianqi, then at Han Ruoyan, feeling an indescribable anger rising in her heart. She clenched her fists, firmly stating that she would not compromise. Yi Tianqi calmly supported Xiao Qingcheng's decision, believing that ending the marriage would benefit both parties. Although this was his true inner thoughts, to the Xiao family and friends, it seemed like he was defending his pride. Upon hearing Yi Tianqi's words, Xiao Nan was filled with dissatisfaction and suspicion. He sneered contemptuously, HMPH. How could you possibly be sincere about wanting a divorce? Yi Tianqi gave him a cold glance and retorted, Just now, you doubted whether I could save Grandpa, even demanded an apology from me. Have you forgotten? Xiao Nan's face flushed with embarrassment and he closed his mouth awkwardly. Xiao Hongming, upon hearing the conversation, asked Yi Tianqi somewhat unexpectedly. Are you serious about wanting a divorce? Yi Tianqi nodded firmly, affirming his decision. Xiao Qingcheng, who was listening on the side, showed a hint of emotion in her eyes but remained silent. Meanwhile, Zhang Huilin took the opportunity to persuade Xiao Hongming, Dad, since this waste of space is saying so, don't force it. You should support their divorce. And letting this kind of waste stay by Qingcheng's side will only hinder her future. Xiao Hongming Upon hearing Zhang Huilin's words, glared at her and sternly said, Take a good look. Tianqi possesses profound medical skills, even capable of saving my life. How can you call him a waste? How could he hinder Qingcheng? If he's considered waste, then what does that make you? Zhang Huilin, rebuked in such a manner, blushed with shame and couldn't utter a word. 
The Xiao family and friends remained silent, as Xiao Hongling's words did make sense. Yi Tianxi's current status was prominent, and maintaining the marriage with Qingcheng would be beneficial and harmless to her. However, at that moment, a voice suddenly came from outside the door, Master Xiao, that Yi fellow has no medical skills at all. It's just a coincidence. Everyone turned to see three figures slowly entering the room. One of them had a familiar face, that was Ji Bode. The other two were dressed in Taoist robes, seemingly ethereal like immortals descending to earth. One wore a lotus crown, presumably Taoist Gongsun. The other, slightly stooped with white hair, exuded a profound and inscrutable aura, standing there with an air of superiority. It was Ji Bode who had spoken just now. Facing him, Han Ruiyan disdainfully said, Ji Bode, what do you mean by that? Just now, Yi Tianqi was clearly saving a life, how could it be a coincidence? Ji Bode sneered and explained, It's not me who said it, it's Taoist Yunlong over there. He pointed to the hunched figure of Taoist Yunlong beside him. The Xiao family members were all surprised, and Zhang Huilin quickly stepped forward, smilingly welcoming Taoist Yunlong. So it's Taoist Yunlong. Forgive me for not welcoming you from afar. Please have a seat. But Taoist Yunlong waved his hand in refusal and said calmly, No need. Then, his gaze fell on Yi Tianqi, and he smiled as he said, Young man, healing the sick and saving lives, doing good deeds and accumulating virtue. Your mouth is full of lies, aren't you afraid of offending the heavens? Yi Tianqi, upon hearing this, looked wary. Why was this old Taoist so harsh towards him? He glanced at the self-satisfied Taoist Gongsun and suddenly realized that this was a situation of intrigue between senior brothers. So he asked back, Old Taoist, you say I don't understand medical skills and that I speak with a forked tongue, based on what? The others present also looked curiously at Taoist Yunlong, as they had witnessed Yi Tianqi saving Grandpa Xiao with their own eyes. Why would such words be spoken? Taoist Yunlong stroked his beard, smiled mysteriously, and remained silent. The Xiao's relatives and friends were puzzled and began to question Yi Tianza. They said, you were clearly not in the ward just now. How could you have cured the head of the Xiao family? They expressed their distrust, believing that words should not be twisted casually. Even Xiao Nan and Zhang Huilin looked helpless, silently looking at Ji Bo, hoping he could clarify. Ji Bo confidently explained that what Yunlong Taoist said was not fabricated. Indeed, he cured the head of the Xiao family. When Qin Sheng called me, Yunlong Taoist had just landed from the plane. I was worried he might not make it in time, but he was confident that there was plenty of time. He has a unique method. Curious, the Xiao's relatives and friends asked, what method? Sun Sung Taoist took the lead and said with a smile, perhaps you don't understand. My senior brother's medical skills have reached the peak. He can perform Taoist techniques in the car, achieving remote healing, hence curing the head of the Xiao family. It has nothing to do with Yi Tianza, just a coincidence. These words left the Xiao's group present in disbelief, exchanging looks, finding it hard to believe. Using Taoist techniques for remote healing? It sounds incredibly mysterious. Even Sha Hongling himself shook his head in doubt, not believing any of it. Sun Sung Taoist continued, perhaps you think I am exaggerating. If so, let my senior brother give you a small demonstration to show you his medical skills. With that, Sun Sung Taoist saluted Yunlong Taoist respectfully and said, senior brother, please show them your ability. Sun Sung Taoist smiled mysteriously and said, having traveled for many years, I never expected that in this Jonglin city, someone would forget my medical skills. Well, let me do my thing. He walked to the bedside and said to Sha Hongming, extend your right palm, open it. Despite doubts, Sha Hongming complied. Yunlong Taoist bit his right index finger and swiftly drew a series of symbol-like patterns on Sha Hongming's palm, chanting incantations. Gradually, Sha Hongming felt a warm flow in his palm, quickly spreading throughout his body. As this warmth spread, all pain and fatigue vanished, and his body was filled with boundless vitality. At the same time, others in the ward noticed Sha Hongming's changes. Xiao Nan couldn't help but exclaim, Look, Grandpa's complexion seems to have improved, it's so miraculous. Other relatives and friends of the Xiaos also marveled, Yes, he seemed weak just now, but now he looks even more spirited than before. Is this the medical skill of Yunlong Taoist? It's amazing! Today, our horizons have been broadened. Could it be that the head of the Xiao family's illness was really cured by Yunlong Taoist? Was Yi Tianza just lucky to take credit? After a while, Yunlong Taoist released Sha Hongming's hand and stopped his incantations. He asked, Head of the Xiao family, move your body a bit, how do you feel? 
Sha Hongming moved his body briefly and felt unprecedented relaxation and comfort. He honestly replied, I feel very comfortable all over, even the chest tightness and shortness of breath have disappeared. He hesitantly asked, Yunlong Taoist, did you really cure Xiao's illness? Yunlong Taoist nodded proudly. The crowd gathered around. Xiao Nan couldn't help but exclaim, Master Yunlong, your medical skills are truly amazing. I am deeply impressed. Then he turned to Yi Tianza and sarcastically said, Yi Tianza, you hypocrite, I almost fell for your deception. I've always said you're a good for nothing. How could you possibly understand medical skills? It was just a lucky coincidence. Zhang Huilin also didn't hold back, accusing, if it weren't for young Master Ji and the others exposing the truth, you would have really fooled everyone. Full of nonsense, just disappear quickly. The relatives and friends of the Xiao family also joined in, mocking Yi Tianza. Only Wu Xingye and Han Ruoyan still believed in Yi Tianza. Yi Tianza looked at Master Yunlong, a hint of surprise in his eyes. He discovered that Master Yunlong also knew how to use dark energy, although not very proficient, he had already mastered some essentials. Just now, when Master Yunlong was treating Xiao Hongming, he appeared to be using Taoist techniques, but in reality, he was stimulating Xiao Hongming's body with dark energy, using the residual essence of ginseng in his body to further promote recovery. It seemed like Master Yunlong had cured the weakened Xiao Hongming, but in reality, he had used the ginseng essence extracted by Yi Tianza. This was something that Yi Tianza should have done, but Master Yunlong took the credit. Ji Bao thought that Yi Tianza had admitted defeat, so he continued to mock, Why are you silent? Clearly you don't understand medical skills, yet you stole Master Yunlong's credit. Shouldn't you publicly apologize to Master Yunlong for such despicable behavior? Yi Tianza calmly replied, Please get the facts straight before speaking. To be precise, it is this Master Yunlong who stole my credit, he should be the one to apologize. This statement immediately caused dissatisfaction among the Xiao family. What nonsense are you talking about? you good for nothing. Master Yunlong is noble, how could he steal your credit? We witnessed Master Yunlong's miraculous techniques with our own eyes, clearly you took advantage. Do you have evidence that Master Yunlong stole your credit? If not, stop talking nonsense. Yi Tianza sneered and said, evidence. All right, I'll let Master Yunlong speak for himself. With that, he looked at Master Yunlong, slowly raised his right hand, mobilized the dark energy in his body and condensed it in the palm of his hand invisible force spreading out. Master Yunlong, who was feeling proud, suddenly felt this force, his whole body trembled, his eyes widened as if he had seen a ghost. It turned out that he had only barely mastered the essence of dark energy after ten years of practice, while the young man in front of him was only in his twenties, yet he was more skilled. Surely, he must have an incredible background. Oops, I've offended a powerful person today. Master Yunlong secretly lamented. He was about to confess, but was stopped by Xiao Qingcheng. Xiao Qingcheng said sternly, Yi Tianza, Master Yunlong has profound cultivation and doesn't care about worldly matters. You clearly stole his credit, yet you are being so aggressive, why bother? Yi Tianza frowned, do you really believe him? Xiao Qingcheng stared straight at Yi Tianza. Oh, she has never fully trusted him, no matter how many good things he did. In her eyes, he would eventually reveal his true villainous nature. Seeing the expression on Yi Tianzi's face, Xiao Qingcheng frowned and said disapprovingly, Yi Tianzi, please don't show that expression in front of me in the future, as if I have a big misunderstanding about you. We both know what kind of person you are, and our marriage will not come to this point today. With that, Xiao Qingcheng's face showed no emotion, extremely cold. She had just thought she had misunderstood Yi Tianzi, but it turned out that he really understood medicine and was not worthless. However, the fact was that he lied again in public and it was a lie about his grandfather's condition. This was something she absolutely could not accept. Seeing Xiao Qingcheng's obvious attitude, Zhang Huilin immediately jumped out and rebuked, you have been freeloading in my house for three years, not grateful, and repeatedly deceiving us. Has your conscience been eaten by dogs? Xiao Nan said sarcastically, ha! Huh? I knew you didn't understand medicine early on, but you had to pretend and even make me kneel down to apologize. Why aren't you so arrogant now? Other relatives and friends of the Xiao family also criticized harshly. In the ward, Han Ruoyan couldn't stand it anymore and said discontentedly, Did you even listen to Yi Tianza say to let Master Yun Long explain? Can you be a bit more rational before venting your anger without understanding the situation? Han Ruoyan didn't trust Master Yun Long in her heart, after all, she knew that Master Gongsun was unreliable, and his senior brother wouldn't be any better. All eyes were on Master Yun Long, and Xiao Nan flattered and said, Master, please explain what happened clearly? 
Let that waste of a son-in-law learn a lesson. Master Yunlong glanced at Yi Tianza, just about to tell the truth, but was stopped by Xiao Qingcheng. From the sarcasm of the Xiao family, he sensed a key piece of information, that Yi Tianza was a despised son-in-law by everyone. In that case, he didn't need to fear the other party. With this in mind, Master Yunlong regained his composure, adjusted his beard, and said, I have already said, I cured the illness of the head of the Xiao family, it has nothing to do with others, please don't wrong the innocent. Xiao Nan said to Yi Tianza, do you understand now? Is there anything else to justify? Yi Tianza narrowed his eyes and said, this master is lying. Wait half a minute, he will tell the truth. It seems that Master Yunlong needs a lesson, then he will be honest. Xiao Qingcheng said solemnly, what do you want to do? Are you planning to fight in the hospital? Yi Tianza coldly said, step aside. With that, a sense of oppression spread, scaring Zhang Huilin, Xiao Nan, and Ji Bo Duan to step back. They had seen Yi Tianzi's skills. Even Master Yunlong couldn't help but shiver, as if he had an intuition that as long as Yi Tianza made a move, he would instantly be defeated. However, Xiao Qingcheng still stood firmly in front of Yi Tianza. She shook her head and sneered, Humph! Yi Digao, I know you are good at fighting. Every time you are in the wrong, you resort to violence. Now you want to start a fight again, don't you? As long as I'm here, I won't allow you to lay a hand on the person who saved Grandpa. If you're still upset, then hit me. Remember at the birthday banquet when I slapped you? You must have been wanting revenge, right? It's okay. Sha Qingcheng guarantees that she won't complain. Sha Qingcheng tilted her chin slightly, showing a proud and unyielding attitude. Disappointment shone in her eyes towards Yi Tianz. Thinking back to their childhood together, childhood sweethearts, they used to be so carefree. But she couldn't understand why the once sunny and cheerful young man had become so hypocritical and irritable. And Yi Tianz, with his eyes lowered, felt equally puzzled. The girl who used to be smiling and understanding every day, where has she gone now? In their three years of marriage, he had searched for traces of her former self countless times, but to no avail. Perhaps, it was all just wishful thinking on his part. Yi Tianz resumed his indifferent expression and said to Sha Qingcheng, Humph! Compared to you, you are the real master. I'm no match for you. How dare I slap you? Since I'm not welcome here, I'll leave. I'll go to the Civil Affairs Bureau at 10 o'clock tomorrow morning to get the divorce certificate, and then we'll have no more ties. With these words, he no longer harbored any illusions about this marriage. The same goes for Sha Qingcheng. Yi Tianz loosened his fist, stepped aside, brushed past Sha Qingcheng, and left the ward without looking back. Zhang Huilin spat disdainfully, HMPH. Lies exposed, running away with their tails between their legs. No wonder they've never been popular all these years. Other relatives and friends of the Sha family also joined in the mockery. Sha Hongling on the sickbed side, not understanding how everything that was once beautiful had turned into this situation. Sha Qingcheng still stood in place. Although Yi Tianz had left the ward as she wished and promised to go to the Civil Affairs Bureau tomorrow to handle the divorce procedures, she couldn't let go. She always felt that she had overlooked some important details. At this moment, Han Ruoyan walked over. Sha Qingcheng shook her head and said, I have confidence in my judgment and won't make mistakes, let alone regret. Han Ruoyan sneered, then let things continue to unfold. She turned to leave the ward but was stopped by Ji Bo. Han Ruoyan frowned and asked, What do you want? Ji Bo smiled and said, I wouldn't dare to do anything to Miss Han. I just wanted to remind you that the guy surnamed Yi swindled 20 million from you. Not only did he not cherish it, but he also spent recklessly at my family's birthday banquet. Defending someone like that is truly not worth it. Han Ruoyan was slightly stunned, then asked back, When did he cheat me out of 20 million? Ji Bo coldly said, Miss Han. Are you still pretending to be ignorant? Your father clearly said at the banquet that you had given Yi Tianz 20 million, you haven't forgotten, have you? Han Ruoyan sneered and proudly said, I did give him 20 million, but he simply refused to accept it. Everyone present was stunned after hearing this. How could this be? Yi Tianz actually refused Han Ruoyan's 20 million? Then where did the 20 million he paid with his credit card during the auction come from? At this moment, a frightening thought emerged in everyone's mind. Could it be? He frowned and shook his head in disbelief, this is impossible. Where did he get so much money if you didn't give him 20 million? Han Ruoyan opened her backpack and took out two bank cards. Impatiently, she said, look carefully, the 20 million is still with me. As for where his money came from, how would I know? In fact, Han Ruoyan couldn't help but be curious. 
Yi Tians was kicked out by the Xiao family, and he didn't look like a wealthy person. Where did the 20 million come from? Ji Buduan sneered. HMPH, that guy only knows how to rely on women. Maybe he cheated it from some rich woman. But Miss Han, as a member of the three major families in Jiangmen City, I just want to remind you to stay away from that Yi Tians, to avoid unnecessary trouble. Even Uncle Han won't be able to protect you then. Han Ruoyan narrowed her cold eyes and asked, Are you threatening me? Ji Bu Duan denied, I didn't mean that. Then he smiled and added, You said you hope not to regret today's decision in the future, but let me tell you, that's impossible. Because the Rong family in the provincial capital will hold a business meeting the day after tomorrow, and Miss Rong Meiyu will announce that our Ji family is a business partner. After that, our Ji family will recommend the Xiao family to be one of the partners as well. Han Ruoyan raised her eyebrows and asked, So what? Ji Bu Duan triumphantly said, By then, the gap between Xingcheng and the Yi family will only grow bigger, proving that Xingcheng's vision is correct and there will be no regrets. Oh, by the way, there was news just now that Miss Rong Meiyu has decided to invite the big shot behind the Dragon Lord to attend the meeting the day after tomorrow. At that time, I will ask Miss Rong to help persuade that big shot to order the Dragon Lord to lift the restrictions on our Ji family, and the 10 billion order originally belonging to Qingcheng will be restarted. In short, Miss Han, you should know who is suitable for Qingcheng, not that despised waste. Zhang Huilin's face lit up with joy after hearing this, she said to Ji Buduan, Young Master Ji, you are really amazing. Xiao Nan excitedly said, Once our Xiao family becomes a partner of the Rong family and gets the 10 billion order from the Tianlong group, who in Zhangnan city would dare to underestimate us? Other relatives and friends of the Xiao family also expressed their support. Even Xiao Qingcheng's eyes were filled with excitement and anticipation. She quickly said to Ji Buduan, Thank you. I, Xiao Qingcheng, will definitely repay your kindness to the Ji family. Ji Buduan waved his hand and smiled, It's just a small matter, not worth mentioning. As long as you, Qingcheng, are satisfied, that's all that matters. Then, he coldly smiled at Han Ruoyan and said, After the meeting ends the day after tomorrow, I believe the Rong family and that big shot will both favor our Ji family and the Xiao family. By then, no matter how arrogant Yi Tianz is, he will be unable to move an inch in Zhangnan city, and no one will be able to save him. Han Ruoyan deeply considered the relationship between herself and Yi Tianz, her younger brother was in the hospital room upstairs. If she could take care of him and show her excellence, perhaps she could become an invaluable assistant to Ji Boduan, which would undoubtedly be a good thing. However, Han Ruoyan retorted through gritted teeth, good thing? Nonsense. What does that useless man, your brother, have to do with me? She left the hospital room in anger, leaving director Wu Xingye alone. Wu Xingye sighed with emotion, never expecting that the treatment he initiated would end up like this. Disappointed, he sighed and walked out of the room. Zhang Huilin stepped forward, flattering Ji Boduan, saying, Young Master Ji, if you hadn't brought the two Taoist masters here, my father would probably be in a lot of trouble. She continued, If it's convenient, could I invite the two Taoist masters to visit our Xiao family as a celebration? After the successful business meeting the day after tomorrow, we can celebrate together, what do you think? Ji Boduan smiled and replied, Of course, but I need to take the two Taoist masters upstairs to treat my brother first. After the successful business meeting the day after tomorrow, we can celebrate together then. Zhang Huilin quickly agreed, that would be great. The relatives and friends of the Xiao family nodded one after another, as if a festive atmosphere was about to descend. Xiao Qingcheng took a deep breath, regaining her confidence and determination. She believed that when she met the big shot behind Mr. Long, she would explain to him and retrieve the 10 billion order that rightfully belonged to her. She was eager to see if the warning from Han Ruoyan about trusting the wrong person and regretting it would come true. Outside the first hospital, Wu Xingye apologized to Yi Tianz, Dr. Yi, I'm really sorry. Inviting you to come and treat the illness led to this outcome. Yi Tianz shook his head and replied, Director Wu, you're overthinking it. It wasn't intentional. Let's just let bygones be bygones. He came today ultimately to cure Xiao Hongming. As for the other Xiao family members, after they receive their divorce certificates, they will have no further connection with them. Wu Xingye nodded and said, Dr. Yi, please forgive me. I have many things to deal with, so I'll leave you here. I'll consult you on medical skills in the future. After Wu Xingye left, Han Ruoyan frowned and said discontentedly, You're usually so tough on me, why are you sighing in front of Xiao Qingcheng? Do you have a crush on her? Yi Tian smiled bitterly and replied, How could I have a crush on her? As long as we don't become enemies, that's all that matters. Han Ruoyan breathed a sigh of relief and continued, 
Just now, I heard from Ji Boduan that the Rong family's young lady will hold a business meeting the day after tomorrow, joining forces with the big shot behind Mr. Long to deal with you and cut off your escape route. Have you made any plans? Maybe you should consider hiding out of town. After all, their influence is not something you can handle alone. Yi Tians calmly responded, I won't hide. Let them come. I want to see who will ultimately be cut off from all routes. Han Ruiyan rolled her eyes, back to bragging again. She knew Yi Tians was good at fighting and had superb medical skills, but these were only superficial abilities. When facing real power, these were not enough. Now, her father would definitely not help, as he had always looked down on Yi Tians. The only solution was to find the Lin family. Han Ruiyan's heart was faintly hopeful. After all, Uncle Lin promised to let Yi Tianxi become a guest of honor. She slightly furrowed her brows and said to Yi Tianxi, Hey! Where do you live? Do you need me to drive you back? Yi Tianxi was about to answer when suddenly, a shiny silver Rolls Royce stopped in front of them. A lady in a gorgeous Chang Sam stepped out of the car, her looks and temperament could be described as peerless, with a charming smile on her face. The woman who has emotional entanglements with the southern war god Lin Feng, why did she seek him out? Despite that, he helped her twice today at the birthday banquet, so he greeted Rong Mi in friendly and said, Oh, it's you. Thank you for your help at the banquet. Rong Mei smiled slightly and replied, You're welcome, I just did what a normal person should do. Mr. Yi, your performance has given me a lot of surprises. Han Ruoyan, standing next to Yi Tianza, looked at Rong Mei with a wary look involuntarily because this woman was no less attractive in appearance and figure. Especially her charming temperament, which had a special attraction even to women. Intuition told her that this woman's identity was definitely not simple. However, how did she know Yi Tianza? What kind of relationship did they have? Suddenly, Han Ruoyan remembered that night at the bidding chamber, it seemed like she saw this woman sitting next to Yi Tianza. Yes, it was her. At that moment, Han Ruoyan suddenly realized. She felt a surge of inexplicable displeasure. In contrast, Yi Tianza was completely unaware of Han Ruoyan's thoughts. He politely asked, Do you have something to tell me? Rong Mei softly smiled and said, Nothing, I just want to give you two things. Give me things? Yi Tianza looked puzzled. He didn't understand why the other party wanted to give him things. Rong Mei took out two cards, one was a bank card, and the other was an invitation card. She explained, There's 1.01 million in this bank card. I wanted to give it to you at the banquet, but you were called away suddenly, so I specially came to find you. As for the other invitation card, I hope you can attend according to the requirements on it. She handed the two cards to Yi Tianza, then glanced thoughtfully at Han Ruiyan and said, I won't disturb you anymore. Goodbye. After that, she got into the silver Rolls Royce and drove away. Yi Tianza watched her leave and couldn't help scratching the back of his head. He always felt that this woman's sudden visit seemed to hide something. While he was pondering, Han Ruiyan made a strange sound. Oh, the beauty has already driven far away, yet someone can't take their eyes off her. Thinking about it, she has long legs, big chest, perky butt, and a pretty face. How could one not look a little more? Yi Tianza answered speechlessly, What's the point of what you're saying? Let me tell you, I don't even know her name or profession. However, this remark made Han Ruiyan's expression even more twisted. Through gritted teeth, she said, Ha ha. If you don't even know her name, how dare you take her money? Yi Tianza. No wonder people say you like to take advantage of women. Today, I finally see it. Yi Tianza helplessly said, take advantage of women? This 1.01 million is actually. Han Ruiyan directly interrupted, I don't want to hear your explanation. In fact, what she was most angry about was not that Yi Tianza was taking women's money recklessly, but why did he refuse the 20 million she offered if he liked taking advantage of women? The fact that she accepted money from a stranger but not from me? Isn't that asterisk asterisk naked double standard? Does that mean she thinks she's not as good looking as the other person? Han Ruiyan thought more and more angrily. Yi Tianza didn't understand Han Ruiyan's inner thoughts. He smiled and said, forget about explaining it. By the way, you mentioned earlier that you would drive me back. When are we leaving? Unexpectedly, Han Ruiyan didn't give him a good face. She directly said, drive you? Forget it. You can walk back yourself. After saying this, Han Ruiyan walked away in a huff, her chest heaving. Originally, in the past few days of contact, she gradually discovered that Yi Tianza still had some good qualities, not as useless as rumored. That's why she spoke up for him in the hospital room just now. She didn't expect that he was just trying to freeload off rich women. 
This guy is really despicable. I won't bother with you in the future. HMPH. The Lord Long's backer is much better. As for this bastard Yi Tianza, he can find a cool place to stay by himself. Han Ruiyan got into her Maserati, stepped on the gas pedal, and quickly disappeared into the distance. Yi Tianza, who was left behind, felt somewhat puzzled. He shook his head, thinking, this woman's emotions are so unpredictable, could it be that she's on her period? Forget it, it's better to stay away from her in the future. He put the bank card in his pocket, then carefully looked at the invitation card again, his pupils shrinking. He found that this invitation card was actually for the business meeting hosted by Rong Mei Yuan the day after tomorrow. How did this woman get this invitation card? Could it be that her identity is? Yi Tianza made a bold guess. But then he quickly shook his head. The woman was clearly contradictory at the banquet. It seems she actually has another identity. Although he was a little curious, Yi Tianza didn't continue thinking about it because he had too many things to do. Yi Tianza muttered to himself softly, since Han Ruiyan left, I'll find a way back by myself. Meanwhile, on the sixth floor of Zhongnan City's first hospital, in a high-end ward. On the hospital bed lay the severely injured and unconscious Ji Boxiao. Standing beside the bed were Ji Wuli, Ji Bo Duan, and Ji's family and friends, all anxiously waiting. Daoist Yunlong was examining Ji Bo Xiao's body. After a moment, Daoist Yunlong stood up and slowly said, the examination is complete. Ji Wuli hurriedly asked, Daoist Yunlong, how is my brother's condition? Can you treat him? Daoist Yunlong smiled confidently and said, although second young master Ji is seriously injured, I am fully confident in treating him. With my methods, it will only take three days to completely heal second young master Ji, just like an ordinary person. Upon hearing this, the Ji family members were all overjoyed. Such a serious injury, yet it only takes three days to fully recover. This kind of medical skill is simply miraculous. However, Taoist Yunlong continued, using my treatment methods will leave some sequelae for second young master Ji. Is that acceptable? Ji Wuli's eyes widened, worriedly asking, Taoist, what kind of sequelae? Ji Wuli looked at Yun Long Taoist in surprise, his heart filled with anxiety. He said, Taoist, this is not a trivial matter. If something happens to my brother Boxiao, what will we do in the future? Marriage and carrying on the family name will become a problem. Ji Bo Duan also anxiously added, Taoist, my younger brother hasn't even gotten married yet. The rest of the family can't accept this fact. Everyone knows that Boxiao is concerned about his reputation and usually enjoys playing with flowers and plants. If he can't even maintain the basic responsibilities of a man, it's more heart-wrenching than killing him. Yun Long Taoist looked at them calmly and said, Master Ji, you still have another son. Why worry about carrying on the family name? Although the reasoning is indeed true, Ji Wuli still found it difficult to accept this reality. At this time, Gong Sun Taoist spoke up to comfort, Master Ji, I understand your feelings, there's no need to be overly pessimistic. My senior brother said that Ji or Xiao may encounter difficulties, but it's not an absolute outcome. Moreover, my senior brother is highly skilled in medicine, even if there are serious consequences, he will find a way to cure it. Ji Wuli hurriedly nodded in agreement, yes, yes. Please treat him as soon as possible, our Ji family will definitely not be stingy with the reward. Yun Long Taoist nodded, all right, I will go and treat him, you wait outside. After Master Ji and the others left, Yun Long Taoist closed the door of the ward. Ji Wuli's eyes flashed with a hint of coldness as he said to Ji Bo Duan, arrange for someone to keep a close eye on Yi Tianza, don't let him escape from Zhangnan City. After Miss Rong's business meeting tomorrow, I will join forces to ensure he has no chance to breathe, to avenge your brother. Ji Bo Duan nodded heavily in agreement. Ji Wuli continued, also, that Xiao Qingcheng, although she is outstanding in appearance and talent, she has a strong personality and is not easy to control. Are you sure you can handle her? Ji Bo Duan confidently replied, Dad, don't worry. Tomorrow after Yi Tianza and she go to the Civil Affairs Bureau to handle the divorce procedures, I will confess to Xiao Qingcheng. As long as she agrees, I will be able to control her, and the entire Xiao family will be under my control. Everything will follow my command. Ji Wuli nodded in satisfaction, that's great. In the evening, at the Purple Gold Heavenly Palace in Zhongnan City, Yi Tianza rode a newly purchased yellow electric scooter to the number one villa. He bought the scooter temporarily for convenience, although he had learned to drive from an F1 racer in the fallen city and his driving skills were comparable to a professional driver, he had not obtained a driver's license in the three years since returning to China. Before obtaining a driver's license, he could only temporarily use the electric scooter for transportation. 
Soon, Yi Tianza arrived at the number one villa, parked the scooter, and took out a pack of fried rice noodles from the basket. At this moment, he saw a familiar figure walking in the courtyard, and couldn't help but be surprised. It's her? They had just said goodbye at the hospital entrance, how did they meet again here? At the same time, Rong Mei and also noticed Yi Tianza and couldn't help but be surprised. Mr. Yi, what are you doing here? Yi Tianza didn't know how to respond, everything happened too suddenly. If he said he lived in the number one villa, the other party would surely inquire about Lin Feng's whereabouts, which would be even more troublesome. In a villa area in the decadent city, Rong Mian happened to see Yi Tianqi holding a package of fried rice noodles, with a yellow electric scooter parked beside him. She couldn't help but speculate, as if she understood something. So she subconsciously asked, Mr. Yi, are you here to deliver takeout? Yi Tianqi's eyes lit up, nodding quickly with a smile. Exactly. I'm delivering takeout. What a coincidence to meet you here. Listening to Yi Tianqi's dry laughter, Rong Mian felt puzzled. She couldn't help but wonder, how could Yi Tianqi, who managed to gather 20 million for bidding and borrowed 1.01 million from her, end up delivering takeout? Perhaps after three years of humiliation in the Xiao family, he had some psychological issues, which led him to this job. However, Rong Mian did not delve into this issue, instead pointing at Villa Number 1, changing the topic, Mr. Yi, have you seen the residents there while delivering takeout? Are they handsome? Yi Tianqi instantly recalled Lin Fang's face that scared children, completely not fitting the definition of handsome. Therefore, he did not reveal the truth, but replied, This is my first time here, haven't seen them yet. Disappointed, Rong Mian said, Well, then I won't disturb you delivering takeout, goodbye. After Rong Mian left, Yi Tianqi breathed a sigh of relief. He didn't expect her to move into the community for Lin Feng. It seems he needs to be careful here in the future. Muttering to himself, he walked straight into villa number one. On the other hand, Rong Mian returned to her villa. The maid, Aching, eagerly asked, Did you see the southern war god this time? Rong Mian shook her head and said, Still no. But I found a new situation. The southern war god actually orders takeout. And it was delivered by Yi Tianqi. Aching was surprised at first, then sneered, It's not surprising for a son in law kicked out by the Xiao family to deliver takeout. I really don't understand. Miss, what do you see in him? Rong Mian shook her head and replied, Delivering takeout doesn't mean he's not outstanding. Maybe that's just his personal preference. Aching absentmindedly nodded, sighed. I didn't expect the distinguished southern war god to order takeout. Seems like he's lacking a woman to take care of him. There was a glimmer of fantasy in her eyes as she said, Miss, you should strive for it. Maybe you're that woman. Blushing slightly, Rong Mian pretended to be angry. Nonsense. Keep talking nonsense. I'll beat you. Aching quickly dodged. Rong Mian leaned back on the sofa, rare relaxation. She picked up her phone and opened a web novel. As the saying goes, every man harbors hero dreams in his youth, and every girl dreams of marrying a hero. Rong Mian is no exception. Little known to others, the business tycoon Rong Mian's greatest pleasure is not controlling the business empire, but reading novels. Because only when she reads novels, she can feel that rare sense of freedom and relaxation. In novels, there are always those powerful and responsible male protagonists. They are the ideal partners in Rong Mian's mind, and she firmly believes that only such outstanding men are worthy of her. However, reality often leaves people feeling regretful, as such men are indeed rare. Several years ago, when she heard the legendary story of the southern war god Lin Feng, she developed a sense of admiration for this hero whom she had never met. Every time she reads a novel, she unconsciously imagines the male lead as the southern war god. But for some reason, today, when she opened the novel, the image of Yi Tianza at the banquet kept flashing in her mind. Even the male lead in the novel has become Yi Tianza. This turmoil in her heart unsettled her. Rong Mian quickly put down her phone, a hint of panic in her eyes, and a sense of confusion in her heart. Why do I keep thinking of him? No, Rong Mian, you need to calm down. You are not someone who is indecisive. Taking a deep breath, she tried hard to restore calmness in her heart. However, when she saw the four characters, Jun Lin Tian Sha, on the coffee table, her heart was once again in turmoil. Yi Tianqi left the purple gold celestial palace on his electric scooter, carrying various identification documents. Today, he was destined to face an important matter, going to the Civil Affairs Bureau with Xiao Qingcheng to handle their divorce procedures, bidding farewell to their entanglement. Yesterday, when Yi Tianqi bid farewell to Xiao Qingcheng at the hospital, he specifically reminded her to go to the Civil Affairs Bureau before 10 in the morning. At this moment, with plenty of time to spare, 
Yi Tianqi decided to deal with another urgent matter before heading to the Civil Affairs Bureau, repairing the only heirloom left by his grandfather, the tiger-shaped jade pendant that was broken in half by Ji Boxia. He understood that this matter needed to be resolved as soon as possible, and he couldn't stand idly by. Twenty minutes later, Yi Tianqi arrived at the Treasure Pavilion in Jiangnan City. This shop specialized in antique and jade carving and was located on the bustling Antique Street, with a prestigious reputation. Many distinguished figures would patronize this place, willing to spend a fortune on exquisite jade artworks. The reason why the Treasure Pavilion was so renowned was that the owner, Sha Ping, was a master jade carver. It was rumored that any jade that entered his hands would be carved to perfection, with works of extremely high artistic value. Yi Tianqi came to the Treasure Pavilion in the hope of finding Master Sha Ping and seeing if he could repair the tiger-shaped jade pendant. Stepping into the Treasure Pavilion, he was greeted by the luxurious interior of the shop, with display cases filled with a variety of jade pieces and antiques. In the center of the shop, there was a green mountain and clear water carving made of jade, with fresh green jade and pure white jade complementing each other, full of vitality. Next to the landscape was a sign introducing it as the masterpiece created by Master Sha Ping five years ago, considered a masterpiece. Yi Tianqi casually asked a shop assistant if Master Sha Ping was present. However, the apprentice disdainfully looked Yi Tianqi up and down, seeing his simple attire, and impatiently replied, Master Sha Ping is busy, who are you? It's not certain that you can see him. Yi Tianqi furrowed his brows slightly, thinking that the apprentice at the treasure pavilion was indeed a bit arrogant. Just then, a commotion was heard from afar. Yi Tianqi turned to see a young customer in a dispute with several apprentices. Suddenly, the young man was struck by one of the apprentices, causing him to step back continuously. Rubbing his cheek that was hit, the young man, with a foreign accent, angrily accused, you guys are simply fraudulent. Deceiving me into buying jade, and even daring to use violence, where is the integrity? His words were filled with resentment and dissatisfaction. Following closely behind was a middle-aged man wearing gold-rimmed glasses, slightly chubby, with a smiling face but a cunning demeanor. Squinting his eyes, he sneered and reprimanded, Kid, you can eat messily, but you can't speak recklessly. Slandering our treasure pavilion as a shady shop, believe it or not, I'll sue you for defamation and have you thrown in jail. The young man, frustrated, pointed at the middle-aged man but couldn't say a word. He then turned to the customers inside the store and complained loudly, Listen to me, everyone. I'm from out of town and heard that the jade carving skills at the Jiangnan City Treasure Pavilion are unparalleled. Therefore, the other day I brought a piece of top quality blue and white jade, hoping that Master Sha Ping could carve a jade bracelet for me. However, Master Sha Ping was too busy, so I had to be attended by a master named Sun Kai, who asked me to come back tomorrow to pick up the item. This morning, Yi Tianza came to the treasure pavilion to pick up his order, only to be surprised to find that the intricately carved bracelet did not match the top grade blue and white jade he had provided. It was a case of switching the goods. He angrily raised a blue and white mixed bracelet and loudly questioned, is this the bracelet Sun Kai gave me? Look at this photo, it's the top grade blue and white jade I brought the day before yesterday. Everyone, compare them carefully. Did the treasure pavilion switch my bracelet? The crowd gathered around, examining and comparing, discussing heatedly. This bracelet has mixed stripes, the texture and luster are very ordinary, obviously cheap, not even worth 200 yuan. In contrast, the blue and white jade in the photo is delicate in texture, with a warm luster, definitely a top quality material, impossible to carve into such a bracelet. Could it be true that the jade had been switched? Sun Kai, the top disciple of Master Sha Ping, how could he possibly do such a thing? However, the truth was harsh. Sun Kai, in debt due to gambling losses, secretly switched the jade of customers to make a profit, causing losses to many customers. But limited by the reputation and influence of the treasure pavilion, they could only silently bear the losses. This news led to a lot of discussion among the people present, and Sun Kai's face changed slightly. He quickly defended himself, please do not believe the rumors. The treasure pavilion has always operated on the principles of fairness and integrity. I absolutely did not engage in such despicable behavior. Everything is a setup by someone with ulterior motives. As he finished speaking, a middle-aged man in a suit walked out of the store catching Yi Tianzi's attention. It turned out to be the chairman of the Ningyuan group, Lai Jingye. He smiled, holding a wooden box, walked to Sun Kai and praised, Master Sun Kai's craftsmanship is truly superior, almost comparable to Master Sha Ping. With that, he opened the wooden box, revealing a blue and white jade bracelet inside, delicate in texture, soft in luster, blue and white mixed, exquisitely beautiful. 
Seeing this bracelet, the wrongly accused young man widened his eyes, pointing at the blue and white jade bracelet in Lai Jingyi's hand and shouting, This is the switched bracelet, give it back to me. The customers present had already made up their minds. As jade enthusiasts, they could tell at a glance that the blue and white jade bracelet in Lai Jingyi's hand had the same quality as the blue and white jade in the young man's phone photo, obviously the same item. However, in front of Master Sun Kai and Chairman Lai Jingye of the Ningyuan Group, these customers dared not offend and chose to remain silent. No one stood up to demand justice for the victimized young man. Moreover, they were strangers to the young man and could not possibly stand up for him. At this moment, a cold, stern look flashed in Sun Kai's eyes. The shopkeeper's face was cold and indifferent as he looked at the mischievous teenager, feeling the anger burning inside him. This little guy had been constantly insulting his antique shop without any remorse. Now, the shopkeeper decided to teach him a lesson that he would never forget. He loudly ordered the security guards beside him to come over, quickly, break his legs and then kick him out. He would never be allowed to set foot in the antique street again. The security guards obeyed without hesitation, their tall figures and rubber batons showing no mercy as they carried out the shopkeeper's orders. A figure suddenly appeared in front of him, raising his hands and tightly gripping the other end of the rubber stick. This person was none other than Yi Tian Shi. The two security guards immediately froze, instinctively trying to forcefully pull the rubber stick back. However, they found that the rubber stick seemed to be firmly held in place by an invisible giant hand, unable to move an inch. Instead, when Yi Tian Shi slightly exerted force to pull back, the rubber stick was directly snatched away. The two security guards were shaken and stumbled, falling flat on the ground. Yi Tian Shi casually threw the rubber stick on the ground and coldly said, You guys, representing the treasure pavilion, talk about doing business with integrity, yet resorting to such means towards customers seems a bit inappropriate, doesn't it? Yi Tang's eyes' sudden appearance sparked a flicker of anger in Sun Kai's eyes. In a low voice, he asked, Who are you? What gives you the right to meddle in my treasure pavilion? Before Yi Tian Shi could answer, Lai Jingye saw him. His face changed, pointing at Yi Tian Shi and said, You. You're actually him? Sun Kai asked in confusion, Do you know him? Lai Jingye gritted his teeth and said, Not only do I know him. Just a few days ago, this guy caused trouble at the Dragon Lord's bidding meeting resulting in our group being blocked by the Tianlong group. What's even more infuriating is that yesterday at Master Ji's birthday banquet, he made a scene, ruining the entire banquet and even injuring the second young master of the Ji family. He's simply a madman. Hearing this, the customers in Sun Kai couldn't help but widen their eyes. This Yi Tian Shi is actually that person? It's worth noting that those who can shop here are either wealthy or influential, well informed about the business world of Jiangnan City. The recent incidents at the bidding meeting and the G family banquet naturally didn't escape their ears. For a moment, it caused quite a stir. Oh my, he's the legendary Yi Tian Shi? Managed to anger the Dragon Lord, the Tiger Lord, and the G family's madman in just a few days. And not only that, I heard he impersonated a doctor to treat Mayor Lin's father, causing a big misunderstanding, and was even arrested by Deputy Director Wang yesterday, but I don't know how he managed to escape. No wonder he dares to cause trouble at the Treasure Pavilion. Turns out he's an expert troublemaker, we better stay away. Yi Tian Shi paid no attention to the surrounding gossip. He turned to the young man behind him and asked, Are you alright? The young man nervously swallowed and shook his head, saying, I'm fine. Thank you for helping me out, sir. He paused, hesitated and said, But I heard that the treasure pavilion's influence in Jiangnan City is very strong. You don't have to provoke them for me, I can handle it myself. Please leave quickly, don't let them come after you. Yi Tang's eyes eyes flashed with admiration. Although this young man was not very old, he seemed very courageous. Yi Tianqi smiled and said, Don't worry, I have never feared retaliation. I know well that those with malicious intentions who bully the weak should be punished. He turned to look at Sun Kai, and in a cold tone, he reminded, I advise you to return the swapped Qingbai Jade bracelet to this young man and apologize to him. Do not tarnish the reputation of Treasure Pavilion, nor disgrace the entire Jiangnan city. Sun Kai snorted and replied, Yi Tianqi, I have indeed heard of your name. But let me remind you, do not be arrogant just because you have not been punished for your audacity. Today, I warn you, Treasure Pavilion is not a place for you to cause trouble, or you will face severe consequences. With that, Sun Kai displayed an extreme confidence. Although Treasure Pavilion was just a jade carving antique shop, due to the identity of the shop owner Master Sha Ping, the influence of Treasure Pavilion in some aspects even exceeded that of the three major families. After all, Master Sha Ping had connections all over, not only with the upper echelons of Jiangnan City but also with many dignitaries in the provincial capital. 
However, in the face of Sun Kai's threat, Yi Tianqi remained unmoved, shaking his head and saying, Jade symbolizes nobility and purity in Chinese culture, but I never expected a so-called treasure shop to be so scheming and bullying. I believe such a shop should close its doors for good. His words immediately caused a stir. Sun Kai was even more enraged, his face turning purple as he roared, Kid, for showing such disrespect to my treasure pavilion, I will make you pay. Cursing, Sun Kai swung his fist towards Yi Tianqi. Being keen on combat on normal days, he believed he could handle three or four adults effortlessly. Punishing a young man today should be as easy as pie for him. However, before his fist could reach Yi Tianqi's face, it was grabbed by the latter, who then fiercely kicked Sun Kai in the abdomen. Bang! Although the kick was not heavy, it was enough to make Sun Kai take three or four steps back, almost falling to his knees. Sun Kai clutched his stomach, sweating coldly from the pain. Astonished, he thought to himself, how can this kid be so strong in combat? What has he been fed on? Yi Tianqi turned to Lai Jingye and said, hand over the Qingbai Jade bracelet and return it to its rightful owner. Lai Jingye narrowed his eyes and sneered, Yi Tianqi, do you know who this Qingbai Jade bracelet is meant for? How dare you ask for it back for me? Yi Tianqi raised an eyebrow and asked, Oh? I'm quite curious, who is it for? Lai Jingye straightened up, adopting a haughty posture, and said, It's for Miss Rong Mei. Yi Tianqi showed no fear and remained calm, confidently stating, Even if it's a gift for the head of the Rong family, I, Yi Tianqi, will not back down. Lai Jingye was furious, glaring with wide eyes and grinding his teeth, You. However, he knew he couldn't afford to offend Yi Tianqi. He had heard of the other party's methods and knew that the consequences would be dire if he angered him. Just as Lai Jingye felt in imminent danger, an unexpected turn of events occurred. Master Sha! Master Sha! Everyone present respectfully greeted him. Sun Kai ran over, clutching his stomach, pointing at Yi Tianza, and complained, Master, it's this person named Yi Tianza who caused trouble in our treasure pavilion. Not only did he hit me and the security guard, but he also threatened to shut down our treasure pavilion. You must not let him get away with it. Sha Ping nodded and looked at Yi Tianza, saying in a commanding tone, I have heard of your reputation, Yi Tianza, making quite a name for yourself recently in Zhongnan City. I want to remind you that regardless of your background and motives, causing trouble in the treasure pavilion is not a wise move. I order you to apologize to my disciples and the security guards, make reparations, and this matter will not be pursued any further. In Sha Ping's view, this is already a generous outcome for Yi Tianza. However, to his surprise, Yi Tianza sneered and said, They say you, Sha Ping, are a master of jade carving. In my understanding, a true master not only excels in skills but also in character. Yet, you rush to judgment without investigating the truth. It shows that you, Sha Ping, are not worthy of the title of a master. The shop was in an uproar. Yi Tianza dared to say that Sha Ping was not worthy of the title of a master. In the entire Zhongnan city, who would dare to speak such words to him? Sha Ping frowned slightly, turned to Sun Kai, and asked, Tell me, what really happened? Sun Kai looked guilty, but he brazenly shifted all the blame onto Yi Tianza. Sun Kai added, Master, what I said is true. You can ask the junior brothers. Sha Ping asked the apprentices in the shop, You are all witnesses, tell me what happened. The apprentices looked at each other. Although they did not want to deceive Sha Ping, they were even more reluctant to offend Sun Kai. After all, their master was usually not in the shop, and they had more dealings with Sun Kai. If they offended him, they would definitely face consequences in the future. So, the apprentices all said, Master, what senior brother Sun said is true. It was that young man and Yi Tianza who deliberately caused trouble. Even Lai Jingye spoke up, Master Sha Ping, I can also testify that what senior Sun Kai said is true. With so many people testifying for Sun Kai, Sha Ping naturally had no more doubts. He sternly said to Yi Tianza, I have understood the whole situation and concluded that you and that young man behind you were playing tricks, causing chaos in the treasure pavilion. Is there anything else you want to argue? The young man was so angry that he was trembling, Master Sha Ping, they are lying and slandering. It was Sun Kai who switched my Qingbai Jade and then turned the blame on me. You must see through this. Sha Ping, with his hands behind his back, adopted a superior posture and said, I have already made a judgment. Do you think you can teach me how to do things? Upon hearing this, Yi Tianza just sneered. Sha Ping seems to have been deceived by those flattering people around him, to the point where he can't even distinguish right from wrong. Sun Kai angrily reprimanded, Hey, Yi, why are you laughing? Hurry up and apologize to us. 
especially kneel down and apologize to my master with a sincere attitude. Yi Tianzi disdainfully said, What is your master? Is he worthy of making me kneel down and apologize? Sun Kai proudly said, My master is the number one jade carver in Jiangnan city, and also a well-deserved leader in the carving industry in the entire Tiananmen province. Those who appreciate his work are all distinguished and prominent figures. Once you provoke him, those people will immediately ruin your reputation. Yi Tianzi looked at the dazzling jade carvings on the shelf, shook his head and said, With your master's level, is it really worth so many people's admiration? It seems like their taste is not that great. This remark was like throwing a stone into a lake, causing a thousand ripples. He actually mocked Master Sha Ping's work as only third rate, isn't that too arrogant? If this remark spreads to his followers, they will definitely retaliate fiercely. The apprentices of the treasure pavilion all stared angrily. In their eyes, their master's jade carving skills are the best, that's why they chose to learn from him. But now, this guy called their master a third-rate product? Sha Ping's face also became a bit ugly. He had been learning from the master since he was a child, practicing hard for many years, now already a century old, and the jade stones he ruined could fill five rows of trains. He confidently said that no one had the right to say that his skills were only third-rate. He couldn't understand where this guy got the confidence from. Sun Kai hurriedly echoed, Did you hear what my master said? You, a kid who may not even have touched jade before, have no right to belittle my master's skills. Yi Tianza, with his hands behind his back, shook his head disappointedly and said, With five rows of train wrecked jade, you can only achieve this level? Maybe I was wrong before, your master is not third rate, but off the charts. This remark was powerful and resounding, making Sha Ping's face even uglier. He said in a deep voice, Young man, if you belittle my skills, why don't you show your own level? If you can surpass me, I will accept everything. Otherwise, you won't be able to bear my anger. Yi Tianza chuckled and said, Surpass your skills? What's so difficult about that? Everyone present laughed. Ha ha! This young man is really eloquent. Carving jade requires patience and accumulated experience. Which renowned master didn't start to shine until they were 50 years old? At his young age, how much can this young man really understand about the art of carving? When I first apprenticed to learn the craft, it took me a whole five years just to learn the technique of holding the knife. Of course, this was also thanks to my extraordinary talent. A kid like him dares to claim to surpass my master, it's simply ignorant and laughable. Sun Kai's eyes twinkled with a hint of cunning as he said, Kid, let's not just talk, let's practice. If your skills can't match up to my master's, what are you prepared to do? Yi Tianqi replied calmly, It's up to you, I won't mind. All right. Sun Kai quickly nodded in agreement. Yi Tianqi then asked, And what if my skills surpass your master's? What will you do then? Sun Kai rolled his eyes. His master is a well-known jade carving master in history. How could he possibly lose to a young person? Sha Ping calmly inquired, What are your thoughts? Yi Tianqi's face carried a calm expression as he said, I hope you return the Qingbai jade bracelet that Sun Kai swapped out to its original owner. Yi Tianqi actually dared to take away Sha Ping's master title? This is simply outrageous. Although Sha Ping remains indifferent, if your carving skills are truly superior to his, there is no need for many words, he will also resolutely give up his master title. In any case, he has agreed to the two conditions you proposed, so let's see your carving skills now. Yi Tianqi stretched out his right hand, indicating he wanted a carving knife. A disciple disdainfully handed the carving knife to Yi Tianqi. At this moment, a young man behind Yi Tianqi whispered, Sir, you have already stood up for me. I am grateful. There is no need to take risks for me again. I am worried. In his view, Master Sha Ping's carving skills are unmatched in the entire Tianan province. How could this young man in front of him be better than Sha Ping? Therefore, this gamble is doomed to fail. Considering the vile nature of Sun Kai and others, he did not want to see Yi Tianqi in trouble. Yi Tianqi confidently smiled and said, Don't worry, let's begin. With that, he walked straight to a piece of jade rough stone over a foot high on the shelf. Let's use this one. Please help me cut it open. Yi Tianqi picked up the jade rough stone and placed it on the table. A craftsman in the shop used a small cutting machine to cut open the outer shell of the jade rough stone. Buzzing sound filled the air. After a few minutes, the shell was completely clean, revealing the raw jade stone. Everyone looked closely and couldn't help but exclaim. Oh my! This is actually a piece of high-quality pale green jade. Its value as a raw jade alone is at least 5 million. Perhaps even more than 8 million. I think it is almost on par with the treasure of the Zhenbao Pavilion, the Green Mountain and Clear Water. 
This guy is really lucky, casually picked one, and it turned out to be a top quality jade stone. Unfortunately, it will be ruined in his hands. Sun Kai widened his eyes, never expecting Yi Tianqi's chosen jade rough stone to be a top quality pale green jade. This is almost like winning the lottery. He frowned and said, Mr. Yi, please remember, this pale green jade stone is the property of our Zhenbao Pavilion. If any losses occur due to your failed carving, you will be held responsible in the end. Of course, if you are timid, it is not too late to admit defeat now, after all, you cannot possibly win. Yi Tianqi ignored him, activated his inner power, grasped the carving knife, and began to carve on the pale green jade stone. The blade was sharp, the technique was skilled, both elegant and composed. In a short period of time, he attracted the attention of everyone present. This guy, does he really know how to carve? Even Sha Ping's expression became serious. Because the basic skill of jade carving is the knife technique, exquisite knife technique requires long-term training and accumulation. Generally speaking, the knife technique of carving is divided into three realms. The first realm is, man is knife, I am the knife, the knife is me, and most carvers can only reach this level in their lifetime. At the treasure pavilion, the young apprentices were all impressed by Yi Tianqi's carving skills. As jade carving craftsmen, they knew it was almost impossible for them to reach Yi Tianqi's level. Sun Kai nervously pushed up his glasses, sweat beating on his forehead, the achievement far exceeded their expectations. Lai Jingye swallowed nervously, finding it unbelievable. He couldn't understand why every time he encountered Yi Tianqi, this guy could always create miracles beyond imagination. However, among all of them, Sha Ping's emotions were the most excited. Trembling, he walked to the side of Yi Tianqi's carving work, took out a magnifying glass to carefully observe every detail. His expression was a mix of astonishment, excitement, and bewilderment, his emotions incredibly complex. After carefully examining all the details, he took a deep breath, wanting to say something, but not knowing how to express it. The crowd was shocked. The sudden turn of events left them incredulous. Lai Jingye couldn't help but ask, Mr. Sha Ping, what are you doing? Why are you kneeling to Master Yi? Sha Ping shook his head and earnestly replied, Don't call me a master, I'm just a nobody in the field of jade carving. Master Yi here is the real master, I humbly admit defeat. My previous rudeness, I now deeply regret and apologize. Yi Tianxi did not expect such a dramatic change in Sha Ping's attitude. He silently marveled at Sha Ping, feeling that he was not a stubborn person. So, with a faint smile, he said, since Mr. Sha Ping has acknowledged his mistake, let's just leave it at that. Sha Ping quickly shook his head and said, I lost in this bet, how dare I still call myself a master? My skills are simply an insult to this title. Master Yi, you are the true master of carving. There is just one thing that puzzles me, how many years did it take for you to reach such a high level of proficiency? This question was the most perplexing for Sha Ping. He couldn't understand how he had dedicated decades to studying, only to be defeated by a young man. Did the other party start practicing carving from a young age? Upon hearing Sha Ping's question, Yi Tianxi answered without hesitation, probably about half a year. This statement was like a heavy bombshell, leaving everyone present dumbfounded. In just half a year, he had surpassed the efforts of others over decades. Could this be a joke? Sha Ping trembled and couldn't help but ask, Master Yi, are you serious? Yi Tianxi nodded seriously. In fact, he had never intentionally studied jade carving. Everything stemmed from a test when his master imparted knife skills to him. To enhance Yi Tianxi's control of the knife, his master had him use various tools to carve different stones, a test of his state of mind. In that half a year, his master's demands were extremely strict, beyond the imagination of ordinary people. Yi Tianxi's talent was extraordinary, progressing rapidly. In the end, his knife skills reached the pinnacle. Regardless of the type of knife in his hand or the material in front of him, be it stone, jade, or metal, he could carve them into perfect works. Therefore, even though today was his first attempt at carving jade, the final piece he presented far surpassed Sha Ping's. At that moment, Sha Ping suddenly bowed to Yi Tianxi and said, Master Yi, in this life, I am willing to devote myself to jade carving. Your talent and abilities are the model I will strive for in my lifetime. If you don't mind my dullness, could you accept me as your disciple? I am willing to offer all the treasures in the treasure pavilion and my lifelong savings, follow you in the future, and serve you forever. Wow! This scene left everyone present stunned. They knew Sha Ping had a passion for jade carving, but they never expected him to make such a crazy move. The prominent Sha Ping was willing to apprentice himself to Yi Tianxi, and even promised to dedicate the treasure pavilion and his lifelong savings. 
This sincerity was truly rare. It's worth noting that gaining all this would elevate his status in Jiangnan city and even the entire Tianan province. Anyone would be tempted. However, what caught everyone off guard was. Yi Tianqi shook his head without hesitation, rejecting Sha Ping's request to be his master, citing inadequate talent on Sha Ping's part. This sudden response left everyone present in shock. Yi Tianqi actually refused so bluntly. Wasn't he afraid of hurting others' self-esteem? However, Sha Ping did not get angry. Instead, he humbly nodded and admitted his rudeness, apologizing to Yi Tianqi. Sha Ping stood up, despite being rejected, his attitude still humble and polite. It was a stark contrast to his previous arrogant and domineering demeanor. This behavior finally prompted Sun Kai to question why Sha Ping treated a young man in such a manner. Sun Kai believed that such an ignorant person did not deserve Sha Ping's politeness. However, Sha Ping did not mince words and slapped Sun Kai. He sternly accused him, Yi Tianqi is not someone you can be so rude to, either. As my first disciple, you have concealed the truth, engaged in such despicable behavior, betrayed my teachings, and betrayed the sect. I have decided that from now on, you are no longer my disciple, and you are forbidden to set foot in the treasure pavilion ever again. Sun Kai turned pale with fear, immediately kneeling and pleading, Master, why are you saying this? Do you actually believe Yi Tianqi's lies? This is all his fabrication, I did not switch any items. Sha Ping coldly snorted, Yi Tianqi's identity is noble, how could he frame someone as foolish as you? Still trying to argue now, truly unreasonable. Guards, take this criminal away, punish him severely, and the farther, the better. Yes. Two security guards stepped forward, held Sun Kai down, and dragged him out. Sun Kai's screams could be heard from outside. Sha Ping once again looked at his apprentices coldly and asked, What punishment should you receive for helping Sun Kai deceive me? The apprentices were frightened, kneeling and begging for forgiveness, acknowledging their mistake. Although coerced by Sun Kai, they should not have deceived their master. They were willing to accept punishment and requested not to be expelled. Sighing, Sha Ping, considering that the apprentices were not the main culprits, decided not to dismiss them but to deduct their monthly salary and make them transcribe the store rules 1,000 times. In the future, anyone who violates the rules will end up like Sun Kai. The apprentices nodded in agreement. Sha Ping turned to Lai Jingye and asked if the blue and white jade bracelet should be returned to its rightful owner. Lai Jingye hesitantly explained that the bracelet was originally intended as a gift for Rong Meiyan, hoping to leave a good impression, and was reluctant to give it up easily. Sha Ping raised an eyebrow and questioned, Oh? Does Mr. Lai want to act shamelessly in front of me? Lai Jingye trembled in fear. Although he held a high position, he dared not offend Sha Ping and could only hand over the bracelet to him. The onlookers have dispersed, leaving Sha Ping to personally hand the Qingbai Jade bracelet to the young man behind Yi Tianzi. He humbly said, Sir, please accept our apology on behalf of the treasure's pavilion. To make up for your experience, the processing fee for this Qingbai Jade bracelet will be covered by our treasure's pavilion, free of charge. Furthermore, in the future, you will enjoy a 50% discount on your purchases at the treasure's pavilion. Please forgive our negligence. The young man took the Qingbai Jade bracelet, still feeling shocked and a bit dazed. He instinctively nodded, turned to Yi Tianzi, and expressed his gratitude, Mr. Yi, I will always remember your kindness. If you ever need help in the future, please feel free to contact me. With that, he handed Yi Tianzi a business card, hastily said goodbye, I'm sorry, I have urgent matters to attend to. Until next time, I will definitely come back to thank you again. Yi Tianzi bid farewell with a smile, goodbye. After the young man left, Yi Tianzi looked at the name and phone number on the business card, murmuring, Su Haoshuan, that's his name, right? Putting the business card into his pocket, Yi Tianzi couldn't help but feel emotional. At this moment, Sha Ping approached Yi Tianzi with a courteous fist and said, Master Yi, I have an awkward request. Yi Tianzi inquired, What is it? Sha Ping pointed at the jade carving of green mountains and clear waters done by Yi Tianzi, saying with a somewhat embarrassed expression, I would like to ask you to transfer this piece of work to me. I am willing to offer all the treasures of the treasures pavilion as an exchange, all for you. Yi Tianzi smiled as he pondered. The antiques and jade treasures in the treasures pavilion were worth billions, while the green mountains and clear waters he carved, although valuable for collection, had a smaller volume and an estimated market value of around 1 billion yuan. Sha Ping seemed to be willing to make a loss in the exchange, showing his passion for jade carving to an obsessive degree. Considering Sha Ping's reflection and change after losing the bet, Yi Tianzi felt that he was not a cunning person, so he spoke up, this piece of work does not hold special value for me, 
and I am not interested in the treasures in your store. If you want this piece, I have only one condition. If you can meet it, I will give it to you. Joy flashed in Sha Ping's eyes as he eagerly asked, Please tell me the condition, I will do my best. Yi Tianza glanced around, and Sha Ping immediately understood the situation, inviting Yi Tianza to his office for a detailed discussion. Soon, the two arrived at Sha Ping's office. Yi Tianza took out the jade pendant shaped like a tiger that had been broken in half and handed it to Sha Ping, saying, Take a look at this. Sha Ping carefully took the jade pendant and examined it closely. After a moment, he spoke, This jade pendant is made of top grade Hichan white jade, with exquisite craftsmanship, dating back at least a thousand years, if not longer. Although it has been broken into two halves, it is still a priceless treasure. Yi Tianza nodded, deeply impressed by Sha Ping's professional knowledge and discerning eye. Yi Tianqi was extremely anxious and eager to know if there was a way to repair the tiger-shaped jade pendant. Sha Ping smiled and asked, Master Yi, how would you like the jade pendant to be repaired? Yi Tianqi replied without hesitation, restore it to its original appearance. Although he had some knowledge of jade restoration methods, Yi Tianqi only knew a little about the restoration process. He knew that there were many methods for jade restoration, such as adhesive method, gold inlay method, and potting method. However, adhesive method was the only one that could restore the jade to its original state, indistinguishable from the original. The adhesive process required a jade craftsman to use special techniques and traditional adhesives passed down through generations for restoration. Therefore, Yi Tianqi only had a superficial understanding of jade restoration and was not proficient in it. Sha Ping said seriously, in that case, I can only use the adhesive method for restoration. However, this tiger-shaped jade pendant has gone through the years and requires a rare adhesive, so it will take some time for complete restoration. Yi Tianqi inquired, how long will it take? Sha Ping replied, to completely restore it, it will take about four hours. Yi Tianqi pondered for a moment and then said, I have urgent matters to attend to, so I won't wait here. I will come back to retrieve the jade pendant after I'm done. As for the landscape carving I made, I will give it to you as a gift. Sha Ping was so excited that he almost cried, repeatedly thanking Yi Tianqi. After Yi Tianqi left, Sha Ping walked to the center of the shop and instructed the apprentices to prepare the materials needed to repair the jade pendant and arranged for a separate sculptor to clean up. He instructed, During my busy period, no one is allowed to disturb me. The apprentices nodded in agreement. Sha Ping's gaze fell on the central display stand, where he saw the landscape carving he made, and he felt a sense of disgust. He immediately ordered, Destroy this item and replace it with Master Yi's work. From now on, it will be our shop's treasure. The apprentices tried to persuade him, Master, this represents your highest craftsmanship. It's a pity to destroy it, isn't it? Sha Ping responded sternly, There is no such thing as the highest craftsmanship. It's not even worth mentioning compared to Master Yi's work. Follow my orders, and anyone who dares to obstruct will be kicked out immediately. The apprentices were frightened and dared not speak further, obediently following his instructions. On the other hand, at 10 minutes to 10 in the morning, Yi Tianqi arrived 10 minutes early at the entrance of the Civil Affairs Bureau on his electric scooter. Just as he parked the scooter, a red Porsche stopped nearby, and Xiao Qingcheng gracefully stepped out of the car. Today, she was dressed in a low uniform, with stockings outlining her long and straight legs, complimenting her unique aloof demeanor and attracting the attention of many passers-by. Xiao Qingcheng held documents and walked up to Yi Tianqi, maintaining her aloof posture as she said, I thought you wouldn't come. Yi Tianqi firmly replied, Regardless, I will be here on time. Xiao Qingcheng furrowed her brow slightly, wondering, Is he really so determined to divorce? After all, he has had an affair and relied on other women to get by. It seems he is eager to get a divorce. She composed herself and prepared to face the challenges ahead. Xiao Qingcheng's brows furrowed slightly, her cold expression clearly visible on her face. Without hesitation, she fearlessly declared, In that case, let's just go in. With that, she took firm steps towards the entrance of the Civil Affairs Bureau. In that moment, she showed a determined and resolute side, as if she could bravely face any difficulties that lay ahead. Last time, he and Xiao Qingcheng got married. However, three years have passed, and this marriage is about to come to an end with an imperfect period. Yi Tianza felt deeply emotional, but now he no longer clings to this marriage. They handed over their ID cards and marriage certificate to the staff, preparing to go through the divorce procedures. The staff who took the documents suddenly frowned and informed them that according to the latest civil code, both parties in a marriage need to go through a cooling off period when seeking a divorce. When they heard about this new regulation, both Yi Tianza and Xiao Qingcheng felt puzzled. 
The staff patiently explained that the so-called divorce cooling-off period means that both parties need to wait for a period of time after applying for a divorce to ensure that they make the decision without regrets. Xiao Qingcheng furrowed her brows, she was busy with work and had never thought there would be such a regulation. Yi Tianzhou was even more clueless about this. Xiao Qingcheng asked, how long does this cooling-off period last? The staff replied, it takes 30 days, during which either party can choose to withdraw the divorce application. Only if both parties insist on the divorce after 30 days, the marriage will be dissolved. Yi Tianza and Xiao Qingcheng looked at each other, feeling surprised that divorce could be so complicated, requiring a cooling-off period. The staff returned all the documents to them, reminding them, your divorce application has been registered, take 30 days to consider it calmly and make a decision, next please. They could only leave the Civil Affairs Bureau helplessly. At the entrance of the Civil Affairs Bureau, Xiao Qingcheng hesitated for a moment and said, according to the regulations, let's wait for another 30 days. During this time, if you have any requests for property division, just let me know, and I will try my best to accommodate. Yi Tianzi shook his head and refused, I'm not interested in material wealth. Xiao Qingcheng sneered and shook her head, thinking to herself, why does Yi Tianzi have unclear relationship with Han Ruiyan if he doesn't care about property? Is it all for money? Just then, a Lamborghini parked on the street in front of the door. A young man in a white suit, handsome and confident, got out of the car with a bouquet of roses, he was Ji Boating. Ji Boating walked briskly towards Xiao Qingcheng with a confident smile on his face and whispered, Congratulations on finally divorcing that waste of space. Xiao Qingcheng was stunned, not understanding why Ji Boating appeared here and what he wanted to do. She tentatively asked, Ji Dasha, what's going on? Ji Boating handed the red rose to Xiao Qingcheng and said, Qingcheng, I have always wanted to tell you something, but I have been patient because of your marriage. Now that you have successfully divorced, I can't hide it anymore. Qingcheng, I like you, will you be my girlfriend? This sudden confession surprised Xiao Qingcheng greatly, and for a moment, she was at a loss, standing still. This scene also attracted many onlookers discussing. Wow! Confessing your love at the entrance of the Civil Affairs Bureau is incredibly romantic. Is that gentleman the legendary Jida Xiao? And the one being confessed to is the beautiful CEO Xia Qingcheng from Jiangnan City. They are truly a match made in heaven, so perfectly suited for each other. And the man over there, could he be Xia Qingcheng's rumored gold-digging husband? He looks good, but turns out he's just a useless person. People are discussing it one after another, boosting Jibo's confidence, his face beaming with a proud smile. In fact, after learning yesterday that Yi Tianz and Xia Qingcheng would come to handle their divorce procedures today, Jibo was ready for his confession. He firmly believed that Xia Qingcheng would be moved by his sincerity. However, things didn't go as planned. Xia Qingcheng's expression was initially a bit bewildered, but quickly returned to her usual composure. She didn't accept the rose handed to her by Jibo, but coldly refused, I'm sorry, Jida Xiao, I can't grant your request. Ha! Huh? Jibo looked stunned and instinctively asked, why? Xia Qingcheng replied, I don't have those feelings at the moment, I'm truly sorry. After speaking, she subconsciously glanced towards Yi Tianz. Seeing Yi Tianze's expressionless face, she quickly shifted her gaze back. Feeling quite displeased, this guy, seeing other men confess to me without flinching? Does it mean nothing to him? At the same time, Jibo's face darkened. Rejected in front of everyone, how could this young master of the Ji family save face? A nameless anger surged in Jibo's heart, and he questioned sternly, Ching Cheng. Why did you reject me? Have I not been good enough to you? Do you know how much I've done for you and your Sha family? If it weren't for my Ji family's repeated help, your Sha family would have fallen apart long ago. And you heartlessly reject me like this. Sha Qingcheng was a bit flustered, not expecting Jibo to be so angry. In her mind, love required mutual understanding. She didn't have those feelings towards Jibo. As for his help, she had always been grateful and had been looking for opportunities to repay it. Just as Sha Qingcheng was contemplating how to explain, not far away, Yi Tianz calmly spoke up, Jibo, are you really daring to claim that you've helped the Sha family multiple times? Aren't you afraid of being struck by lightning for lying? Jibo's gaze suddenly fell on Yi Tianz. Suddenly enlightened, he said, so it's you, this Yi guy, who's been causing trouble behind the scenes, leading to Qingcheng rejecting me, right? In anger, he grabbed Yi Tianze's collar without mercy and interrogated, you, yesterday causing a scene at my father's birthday banquet, even injuring my brother, and today you're here to sabotage my confession, what exactly are you trying to do? Yi Tianz narrowed his cold eyes and said, let go of me. Jibo raised his chin, threatening, what if I don't? 
You think I'm afraid of your fighting skills just because you're good at it? If you push me too far, I'll have your entire Yi family's graves dug up one day. Yi Tianse's voice became heavy, dare you? His family was his bottom line, absolutely untouchable. However, Jibo, unaware of the severity, continued to provoke. What's there that I wouldn't dare? In broad daylight, I don't believe you dare to lay a finger on me at the entrance of the Civil Affairs Bureau. Come on, give it a try? Yi Tianse coldly said, this is the first time I've heard such a bizarre request. Since you're so eager to try, I'll indulge you. The next moment, he directly kicked Jibo in the abdomen. With a loud bang, Jibo was kicked hard and sent flying, rolling on the steps in front of the Civil Affairs Bureau, making a series of impact sounds. He fell to the ground like a helpless little bird, ending up covered in dust and looking disheveled. Onlookers gasped in surprise at the scene. Sha Qingcheng, pale-faced, hurried over and helped Jibo up. She anxiously asked, Are you okay, Jibo? Jibo rubbed his arms and thighs, grimacing in pain from the fall, groaning continuously. His face showed panic and disbelief. He never expected Yi Tianqi to be so bold and audacious, taking real action at the entrance of the Civil Affairs Bureau. In a mixture of shame and anger, he pointed at Yi Tianqi and cursed, You, Yi, how dare you lay a hand on me? Do you think I? Before he could finish his sentence, Yi Tianqi swiftly moved to his side. Smack! A sharp slap landed on Jibo's face, sending him flying sideways. Xiao Qingcheng quickly stood in front of him. She anxiously questioned Yi Tianza, what's wrong with you? What's the point of hitting someone? Yi Tianza admitted, he asked me to hit him, I was just following orders, what's wrong with that? Xiao Qingcheng was so angry that her face turned iron blue, and she was seething inside. This guy is just too rude. She turned around and helped Ji Bu Duan up again. At this moment, Ji Bu Duan's face was swollen badly, blood dripping from the corner of his mouth, looking very embarrassed. Xiao Qingsheng kept apologizing, Young Master Ji, I'm really sorry, please don't be angry, don't lower yourself to his level, I will make him apologize to you. Ji Bu Duan glared at Yi Tianza. Despite fearing that Yi Tianza might strike again, he could only nod helplessly. Xiao Qingsheng sternly commanded, Yi Tianza, apologize to Young Master Ji immediately, this is my order. Yi Tianza simply shook his head. He just beat up a troublemaker, who even provoked first, why should he apologize? Yi Tianzi's attitude made Xiao Qingsheng burn with anger. Yi Tianza, you know young Master Ji has been kind to me and to the Xiao family, yet you keep interfering. How can I face the Ji family? How can I repay young Master Ji's kindness? Xiao Qingsheng felt that Yi Tianza was deliberately retaliating against her, deliberately putting her in a difficult situation. Facing Xiao Qingsheng's emotional outburst, Yi Tianza sneered, Miss Xiao, please don't misunderstand me. If you feel you can't repay young Master Ji's kindness, then just accept his confession, right? Although Yi Tianza said so, he was more dissatisfied with Xiao Qingsheng's constant defense of Ji Buduan. On the other hand, he also wanted to test the extent of Xiao Qingsheng's relationship with Ji Buduan. Hearing Yi Tianzi's words, Xiao Qingsheng couldn't help but tremble. Her eyes were full of disappointment. She couldn't believe that before the divorce was finalized, Yi Tianza was eager to push her into someone else's arms? This way, Yi Tianza could openly date other women, right? Fine. Today, let your wish come true. Xiao Qingsheng said coldly, Yi Tianza, you are right. I already had this plan. If it weren't for the cooling off period, I would have agreed to young Master Ji. Are you satisfied now? A hint of sadness flashed in Yi Tianzi's eyes. Indeed, she had planned to be with Ji Buduan long ago. On the contrary, Ji Buduan seemed visibly happy after hearing this. He asked in confusion, Qingcheng, are you saying you were going to accept my confession? Xiao Qingcheng did not look at Ji Buduan, but stared at Yi Tianza without backing down. She bravely spoke her mind, yes, it's just that there is a 30-day cooling off period before the divorce, I can't officially divorce until then. Ji Buduan suddenly realized, his face full of joy. He thought Xiao Qingcheng was not interested in him, but it turns out she just hadn't officially divorced yet. It makes sense, as the CEO of a big company, accepting someone's confession before the divorce is finalized would not be good for her image. Her previous rejections must have been for this reason. Thinking about it, Ji Bo Duan quickly bent down and smiled, saying, Qingcheng, I apologize for my offense just now. It's just a 30-day cooling off period, right? I will patiently wait. Xiao Qingcheng just gave a faint hum in response. She planned to explain her true thoughts to Ji Bo Duan when she had time later. 
As for the debts owed to the Ji family and Ji Duan, she would try to make amends as much as possible. At this moment, Yi Tian said indifferently, since this is Miss Xiao's true intention, I congratulate you in advance. But as a husband, I still want to remind you to choose wisely, not everyone is worthy of lifelong trust, to avoid regrets in the future. He said this with good intentions. He understood Ji Duan and knew that this person's enthusiasm for Xiao Qingcheng was not just simple affection, there must be other undisclosed motives. Xiao Qingcheng self-mockingly sneered, Yi Tians, keep these words for yourself. Don't assume everyone has bad intentions. Even if I regret it later, it has nothing to do with you. Yi Tians gently lowered his eyes. Since she had made a decision, he would not say more. Ji Boduan's eyes flashed with a trace of cunning. He smiled triumphantly and said, Yi, your presence will only cast a shadow on her, while I can lead her towards the light. Let me tell you. I will take Xingcheng to pick a gift now, and tomorrow I will present it to Miss Rong Meiyin at the Chamber of Commerce to win her favor. By then, Xingcheng will definitely become a business partner of the Rong family, while you, a useless person, will forever disappear from our sight. After speaking, Ji Bo Duan said to Xiao Qingcheng, I will take you to a place to help Miss Rong choose a gift. Xiao Qingcheng asked, Where is it? Ji Bo Duan mysteriously smiled and said, You'll know when we get there. The gift we choose will surely satisfy Miss Rong. Okay. Xiao Qingcheng hesitated for a moment, then nodded. After that, they each drove away and never looked at Yi Tians again. This scene naturally sparked various discussions among onlookers. Sure enough, Beauties love heroes, Xiao Qingcheng only has eyes for Ji De Xiao. Should she continue to live with that useless husband? Isn't that harming her? Look, Yi still pretends to be calm there. Does he have some background? Is he not bothered? In the midst of various discussions, a Rolls Royce stopped at the entrance of the Civil Affairs Bureau. Seeing the license plate, onlookers were all shocked because the owner of this car is the chairman of the Tianlong Group, known as the King of the South. They all made way, but Yi Tian still stood there unmoved. This made the onlookers couldn't help but feel nervous for him. Is this young man out of his mind? How dare he be so arrogant in front of Master Long? He simply doesn't know any better. It's only right for the Xiao family to kick him out. He's in for Master Long's wrath, and he will definitely suffer. However, what happened next was beyond everyone's expectations. Zhao Hailong walked up to Yi Tianqi, knelt down without hesitation, and expressed his respect towards him. Onlookers were stunned by the scene before them. Prince Zhao Hailong from Zhongnan was unexpectedly showing such great respect to Yi Tianqi. What on earth was going on? Could it be that Yi Tianqi has an unexpected background? Did Xiao Qingcheng misunderstand him? Various speculations spread among the crowd. Yi Tianqi, unperturbed by the shocked looks of the onlookers, calmly asked, What's the matter that you're looking for me? Zhao Hailong respectfully handed over a red card, saying, I am entrusted by the Rong family's Rong Meiyin to specially deliver this invitation card, inviting you to attend the meeting of the Chamber of Commerce tomorrow night. Yi Tianqi recalled what Zhao Hailong mentioned on the phone yesterday. The reason he agreed to go was to take the opportunity to cancel the engagement with Rong Meiyin. So, Yi Tianqi took the invitation card and put it directly into his pocket. Zhao Hailong glanced at the Civil Affairs Bureau and cautiously asked, Mr. Yi, have you completed the divorce procedures with Miss Xiao? Yi Tianqi shook his head and said bitterly, the staff said we have to go through a cooling off period for divorce, and we have to wait for 30 days to proceed. I didn't expect divorce to be so cumbersome. Zhao Hailong eagerly offered, Mr. Yi, if you have the need, I can help speed up the process for you to complete the divorce as soon as possible. After a moment of hesitation, Yi Tianqi shook his head and said, forget it. In Xiao Qingcheng's eyes, no matter what I do, it's wrong. Maybe it's better to let things take their course. Zhao Hailong earnestly said, From my observation, in these three years, you have been completely benevolent to Miss Xiao, yet she has let down your efforts. If there is any fault, it's only that she has disappointed you. Yi Tianqi self-deprecatingly smiled and said, Haven't you heard a saying? The only mistake a married woman will admit in her life is choosing the wrong man, never admitting her own faults. Zhao Hailong quickly nodded in agreement and continued, Mr. Yi, regarding the 10 billion order from the Tianlong group that was cancelled at the last bidding meeting. When you plan to restart and select the winning bidder, delaying it is not a solution. Yi Tianqi replied, Let's wait a little longer. I will inform you when there is news. Zhao Hailong respectfully responded, Understood. Meanwhile, Ji Bo brought Xiao Qingcheng to the treasure pavilion in Zhangnan City. Ji Bo proudly introduced, Qingcheng, you may not know, Miss Rong Meiyin's favorite is jade carving. 
This treasure pavilion is the most high-end store in our Jiangnan city. Choose a jade carving by Master Sha Ping to give to Miss Rong, it will definitely delight her. Xiao Qingcheng nodded with joy. Ji Da Xiao, you are so thoughtful, it really touches me. Thank you. Involuntarily, she compared Ji Bo with Yi Tianqi in her heart. One was considerate and helped solve problems everywhere, while the other caused trouble and created difficulties for her. The gap between the two was obvious. After feeling emotional in her heart, Xiao Qingcheng began to carefully select in the store. Each jade carving on the shelves had been meticulously crafted and was a rare top quality treasure. Xiao Qingcheng strolled in the store for more than 10 minutes, feeling happy. In the process of searching for the perfect gift, Xiao Qingcheng has not been able to find one that meets her requirements. She knows very well that as Miss Rong Meiyin, she must choose an outstanding and stunning gift. Suddenly, her eyes were drawn to an item on the central display of the shop. The green and white jade sculpture, about a foot high, made her beautiful pupils light up. The jade mountains and the flowing white jade water surface complement each other, presenting an extremely realistic scene that is enchanting and irresistible. Although Sha Qingcheng is not very familiar with jade carvings, she can deeply feel the excellence of this piece, which is definitely a rare treasure. If she could give it to Miss Rong Meiyin, it would surely make her very satisfied. Ji Bo Duan also walked over, staring at the jade carving without blinking. He couldn't help but nod in admiration, praising the high quality of this treasure in the jade pavilion, which is truly rare. Within the entire country, it is also a rare top quality item. At the same time, he was quite puzzled. Although Master Sha Ping's carving skills are indeed extraordinary, they seem to have not reached such a high level. He couldn't help but suspect. Could it be that Master Sha Ping has made a breakthrough recently? Ji Bo Duan smiled and said to Sha Qingcheng, Qingcheng, since you are fond of this piece, let's buy it. He signaled a round-faced apprentice to come over and instructed, pack up this jade carving, I want to purchase it. The apprentice politely explained, Sir, I'm sorry, this jade carving is the flagship treasure of our shop and is not for sale to the public. Ji Bo Duan's face darkened as he questioned, So what if it's the flagship treasure? Isn't it displayed for sale? Do you think I can't afford this jade carving? Let me tell you, I am Ji Bo Duan, the eldest son of the Ji family in Jiangnan. Is there anything in Jiangnan city that I can't afford? The apprentice quickly shook his head and apologized, Young Master Ji, you have misunderstood. I did not mean that, it's just that the flagship treasure is of great importance, and as a junior apprentice, I cannot make decisions. Ji Bo Duan sneered, Humph. Since you can't decide, then please ask Master Sun Kai Sun from your shop to come out. He turned to Sha Qingcheng and boasted, This Master Sun Kai Sun is a favored disciple of Master Sha Ping, and also the future heir of the Jade Pavilion. I have a deep friendship with him. Buying this jade carving is just a matter of minutes, and we can even enjoy a discount. Sha Qingcheng nodded in approval, praising, Young Master Ji, your connections are extensive. Just then, the round-faced apprentice suddenly spoke up, Young Master Ji, I'm sorry to inform you that Sun Kai was expelled from the Jade Pavilion by Master Sha Ping a few hours ago and has left the Jade Pavilion forever. Ji Bo Duan suddenly felt embarrassed, incredulously asking, Is this true? Sun Kai has been following Master Sha Ping for many years and has a prominent status. How could he be expelled? The apprentice nodded firmly, It's absolutely true. Ji Bo Duan felt doubtful, coldly snorting, Humph! You, a mere apprentice, dare to fabricate such absurd words? I will immediately call Master Sun and see how he deals with you. He took out his phone to dial Sun Kai's number, only to find that the phone was turned off. Trying to send a WeChat message, he discovered that he had been blocked. Ji Bo Duan suddenly had a foreboding feeling in his heart. Sun Kai was actually fired? That's not the most important thing. The most crucial point is that he borrowed 3 million from Ji Bo to gamble last month. When Ji Bo thought of this, his face turned a bit ugly. Goodness, this guy, is he trying to run away? Burning with anger inside, he secretly vowed to find Sun Kai. Despite the raging anger in his heart, Ji Bo couldn't erupt in front of Xiao Qingcheng. He could only clear his throat gently and say, Since Sun Kai is not here, please ask Master Sha Ping to come out. I believe he will sell this jade carving to me for the sake of my Ji family's reputation. However, just as he finished speaking, a slightly familiar voice suddenly came from behind. Ji Bao Duan suddenly felt someone behind him, and when he turned around, he saw a woman in a red Changsam standing there, with a graceful posture. He was surprised to find that it was Rong Mian. Xiao Qingcheng also showed a surprised expression, not expecting to meet this lady here again today. Rong Mian smiled slightly and said, What a coincidence to meet you here. 
Ji Bao Duan frowned and asked vigilantly, What are you doing here? Although he, as a man, admired the beauty of the woman in front of him, she had stood on Yi Tianse's side multiple times at the Ji family banquet yesterday, seemingly challenging the authority of the Ji family. This made Ji Bao Duan couldn't help but feel wary and hostile. Rong Mian raised the corner of her mouth slightly, contemptuously saying, I'm here to do business, do I need to report to you? Do you think that is the young master of the Ji family, you can have it all your own way? Ji Baoduan's eye twitched, instinctively wanting to get angry. But realizing that he was now in the treasure pavilion, he could only suppress his anger. He snorted and ignored Rong Mian. He turned to the round-faced apprentice and reprimanded, didn't you hear me? Go and call Master Sha Ping out immediately. The round-faced apprentice hesitated and said, Young Master Ji, Master is in seclusion carving, and he must not be disturbed. Ji Bao Duan frowned and asked, How long will Master Sha Ping be in seclusion? The round-faced apprentice replied, It should be almost over. Ji Bao Duan nodded, then warned Rong Mian, Whoever you are, whatever background you have, I remind you not to compete with us for this jade carving. Out of respect for your female identity, please give up the competition and leave here. Rong Mian, however, asked with great interest, Oh? Why do you say that? Ji Bao Duan proudly said, To be frank, we bought this jade carving with the intention of giving it to Miss Rong Mian. If you compete with us, it means opposing Miss Rong. I think you understand the position of the Rong family in the provincial capital, as well as the consequences of going against the Rong family, right? Rong Mian suddenly realized and said, I see. Ji Bao Duan smugly said, Now that you understand, why don't you give up the competition and leave? However, Rong Mian showed a touch of charm and said, Listening to you, it makes me more interested in this jade carving. The idea of snatching Miss Rong's treasure is really interesting. Ji Bao Duan was stunned. He thought mentioning Rong Mian would make her retreat, but he didn't expect the other party to be fearless, even provoking back. Is this woman crazy? Dare to challenge Rong Mian? Xiao Qingcheng stepped forward, coldly saying, Miss, this jade carving is very important to me. If you insist on competing, I, Xiao Qingcheng, will not back down. Their eyes met, and it seemed like sparks were flying in the air. After a moment, Rong Mian raised her eyebrows slightly and said, Mr. Xiao, do you really think that by giving this jade carving to Miss Rong, you can win her favor and become a business partner of the Rong family? Xiao Qingcheng was slightly surprised, not expecting the other party to be so sharp and see through his intentions at a glance. Rong Mian walked to the side of the jade carving, carefully examining it, and sighed, the craftsmanship of this jade carving is exquisite, and it is priceless. Although it can win Miss Rong's favor, it cannot satisfy her deepest desires. She turned to Xiao Qingcheng and continued, Mr. Xiao, you are a shrewd businessman and have experienced many business battles. Why did the Rong family choose business partners in Zhongmen City without careful consideration? Miss Rong, between a precious jade carving and her true desire, which is more important? This questioning left Xiao Qingcheng somewhat stunned. Her intuition told her that the identity of the lady in front of her was definitely more complex than she had initially thought. She instinctively wanted to inquire about the lady's identity, but was interrupted by Ji Boduan. Ji Boduan sneered, Are you analyzing from Miss Rong's perspective, thinking you are Miss Rong? The fact is, Miss Rong has already designated our Ji family as business partners, and we have the qualification to recommend other partners. As long as Qingcheng buys this jade carving to give to Miss Rong, and with our Ji family's mediation, Miss Rong will definitely choose her as a business partner. Do you think you can question all this with just a few words? Rong Mayin narrowed her eyes slightly and asked, Who told you that the Ji family has already been designated as partners by the Rong family? Ji Boduan proudly said, Of course it was the second master of the Rong family, Mr. Rong Tianli personally informed us. His words represent the official position of the Rong family. What else do you have to say? Rong Mayin smiled meaningfully and said, Let's wait and see. Ji Boduan coldly sneered, not taking Rong Mayin's words to heart at all. It was Xiao Qingcheng who, at this moment, felt an inexplicable unease. After hesitating for a moment, she advised Ji Boduan, Let's forget about buying the jade carving. I think Miss Rong may not care about it. What she needs more is an outstanding and powerful partner. I want to impress her with my own strength, rather than. Ji Boduan interrupted her, Qingcheng, you have many merits, but you are too soft hearted easily swayed by a few words. Rest assured, since I have already spoken about buying this jade carving, it's a done deal, and no one can change it, even if Master Sha Ping comes out, he will give me this face. Before he could finish speaking, a slightly dissatisfied old voice sounded, Humph! How could the treasure of my treasure pavilion be reduced to being sold for money? 
Sha Ping, dressed in yellow tang costume, walked out from the inside, his face showing a hint of anger. He asked his round-faced apprentice, didn't I tell you that this jade carving is the treasure of the store and is not for sale? Why is someone causing a scene here to buy it? The round-faced apprentice quickly recounted the whole story without any concealment. Sha Ping faced Ji Bo Duan and said calmly, this green mountain and clear water is the treasure of our store and is not for sale. Please choose another jade carving. Ji Bo Duan was somewhat embarrassed. He had thought that Sha Ping would give him some face, but he did not expect the other party to refuse so decisively. However, considering Sha Ping's status, he dared not offend him and could only negotiate, Master Sha Ping, I know the value of your treasure is immeasurable, but even the most precious things have a price. Xiao and I are willing to offer a high price to buy it. Sha Ping narrowed his cold eyes and said, Young Master Ji, out of respect for your father, I am willing to remind you a few words. First, in the future, do not address me as master, as I am not worthy of that title. Second, although my family's wealth may not match your Ji family's, it has not reached the point of desperation where money is used to intimidate me. Ji Bo was puzzled. He remembered Sha Ping always being confident and eager to accept praise from others, so why was he now so humble? He even refused to accept the title of master? Ji Bo, still feeling doubtful, continued to persuade, Sha, I understand that you may not want to sell the jade carving. But this piece is prepared for Miss Rong's reception tomorrow evening. You also know that tomorrow's event will attract many social elites. If you showcase this jade carving, you will surely stand out among the crowd and enhance your reputation. I believe that Sha Ping may not value money, but does he not care about his reputation at all? However, Sha Ping's response once again shocked him. Sha Ping smiled bitterly and said, Perhaps in the past, your words would have moved me. But now, fame and fortune are no longer important to me. Besides, this jade carving is not my creation, but Master Yi's masterpiece. He is willing to let it become the centerpiece of the store, and I am grateful. How could I sell it privately for profit? Ji Bo suddenly realized. So, this jade carving was not carved by Sha Ping himself. Rolling his eyes, he said, Well, if that's the case, just give me Master Yi's contact information and I will contact him immediately. I believe with the reputation of my Jiangnan Ji family, he will surely give face and agree to sell this jade carving. Just as he finished speaking, Yi Tianqi appeared on the scene, and Ji Boduan's expression darkened. He furrowed his brows and asked, What's your intention for following me here? This is not a place where someone of your status can enter casually. Suddenly, he realized he misspoke. Pausing for a moment, he then inquired, Wait, what did you say? You won't sell me this jade carving? Then, what's your relationship with it? Yi Tianqi calmly replied, Because this jade carving is crafted by my hands, don't I have any connection with it? Upon hearing this, Ji Bo Duan couldn't help but burst into laughter, Mr. Yi, do you think you'll die if you don't boast? The craftsmanship of this jade carving is simply extraordinary. You, a useless person, could create it? Don't joke around. Xiao Qingcheng shook her head and said, Yi Tianqi, when will you stop these unrealistic fantasies? Please stop seeking attention from everyone, okay? She recalled that in the three years of marriage with Yi Tianqi, she had never seen him delve into jade carving, let alone carve it himself. Now he claims this green mountain and clear water is his work? From yesterday's self-proclaimed medical expert to today's claim of being proficient in carving. Xiao Qingcheng felt that Yi Tianqi was immersed in his own fantasies and couldn't extricate himself. Even Rong Mian showed a puzzled expression. She was well versed in the jade carving industry, knowing that it would take decades of hard work and extraordinary talent to complete the green mountain and clear water. Yi Tianqi was not yet 30, how could he possibly achieve this? Perhaps he just wanted to show off in front of his ex-wife. However, what happened next left them all astonished. Sha Ping stepped forward with firm steps, respectfully bowing to Yi Tianqi, Master Yi, you finally returned. I greet you on behalf of everyone. Ji Bo Duan and the others widened their eyes, as Sha Ping held a high position in the jade carving industry of Jiangnan City. Even the three major families of Jiangnan City treated him with great respect. Yet, at this moment, he was showing such reverence to Yi Tianqi. What was going on? Ji Bo Duan was the first to express his inner doubts, asking, How do you address this Mr. Yi? Master Yi? How could a useless person like him become a master? Sha Ping replied solemnly, One must not be disrespectful to Master Yi. His carving skills have reached the pinnacle, far surpassing mine. To create a masterpiece like the Green Mountain and Clear Water, how can he not be called a master? HMPH. Even if not a master, at least he should be called a grandmaster. 
This statement was like a deafening thunder, shaking Ji Boduan to his core. The fact that the Green Mountain and Clear Water was Yi Tianxi's masterpiece was simply unbelievable. He unwillingly said, Mr. Shah, are you joking? Does Yi Tianqi really have the ability to create such a top-notch jade carving? Sha Ping earnestly replied, Why would it be fake? This green mountain and clear water was carved by Master Yi this morning in front of everyone at the treasure pavilion. How could it be false? Even the apprentices in the shop were greatly moved by it. Master Yi's carving skills have reached an extraordinary level, leaving others in awe and admiration. To be able to carve such exquisite treasures in just 15 minutes is truly jaw-dropping. As a jade carver, witnessing Master Yi's carving skills in this lifetime is truly fulfilling. The overwhelming consensus and evidence are clear. When Jibo and Sha Qingcheng heard these words, they were both stunned, speechless on the spot. Sha Qingcheng's shock even surpassed Jibo's, her face full of horror and disbelief. She couldn't understand why Yi Tianqi, who had achieved nothing before, turned into a master of jade carving after she proposed a divorce. What on earth is going on here? Rong Mian couldn't help but sigh deeply. She increasingly finds that this man named Yi Tianqi always brings extraordinary surprises every time they meet, making him unpredictable. Yi Tianqi didn't care about what Jibo and others thought. He only said to Sha Pingdao, This jade carving is a gift to you as the treasure of the store. You have the right to dispose of it. If you want to sell it, you can sell it to anyone, except the Ji family. These words directly hit Jibo's weak spot, and he couldn't help but ask, Yi Tianqi, what do you mean? Do you look down on our Ji family? Yi Tianqi sneered and replied, I see your Ji family as nothing but greedy opportunists, never truly caring, right? Jibo's face turned red with anger. If it weren't for Yi Tianqi being his opponent, he would have rushed up long ago. He could only grit his teeth and say, you're just good at jade carving, nothing special. If no one appreciates it, it's worthless. If I don't want it, don't get too cocky. With that, he turned towards the door, only to find that Sha Qingcheng hadn't followed. Sha Qingcheng was staring at Yi Tianqi, a hint of reproach in her tone as she asked, If you know how to carve jade, why have you never mentioned it to me before? Yi Tianqi calmly replied, You never asked, so how could I say? Sha Qingcheng was taken aback, then sneered self-deprecatingly, Oh, so it's because I never trusted you, and you simply didn't want to say. Yi Tianqi shrugged, If that's what you think, I can't do much about it. This response made Sha Qingcheng even more displeased. She bit her lip and coldly said, Yi Tianqi, I can't stand your attitude. It's obvious that you don't trust me, yet you turn it around. Is that fair? Yi Tianqi calmly responded, Miss Sha, just a reminder, all along, it's been you not trusting me and turning it around. Sha Qingcheng subconsciously wanted to retort, but Yi Tianqi didn't wait for her to speak. Rong Meiyang softly interjected, I remember at the banquet yesterday, Miss Sha expressed doubts about Mr. Yi's calligraphy. Have you forgotten? As she spoke, she unfolded a scroll of rice paper. Yi Tianqi stood in front of the painting of Emperor of the World, filled with pride and ambition. The calligraphy on this painting was like a wandering dragon, exuding an unparalleled power between the brushstrokes, as if showcasing his ruler's demeanor to the world. Standing here, he seemed to overlook all living beings, displaying an extraordinary and transcendent temperament. The painting emitted an irresistible charm, making people involuntarily want to bow down to him. This was where Yi Tianqi's charisma lay, the unique imperial aura he exuded that captivated people. Her face was burning with pain. Xiao Qingsheng looked deeply at the calligraphy and painting in Rong Meiyan's hand, then glanced at the jade carving of green mountains and clear waters. Both of them could be considered top works in the industry. Surprisingly, all of these were created by Yi Tianqi. What was even more intriguing was that Xiao Qingsheng had never realized that Yi Tianqi was also skilled in calligraphy. It was more than appropriate to use the word, distrust, to describe it. Yi Tianqi didn't notice the change in Xiao Qingsheng's expression. He asked Rong Meiyan in confusion. Why did you bring this piece of calligraphy here? Rong Meiyin showed a charming smile and said, I think your calligraphy is extraordinary, invaluable, and it's a waste to leave it idle here. So I want to have it mounted by a master and hang it at home or in the office, adding a unique flavor. Yi Tianqi smiled bitterly and said, This is just a casual piece of writing, no need to take it so seriously, right? Rong Meiyin said seriously, Of course, we should take it seriously. Mr. Shah, what do you think? She shook the calligraphy in her hand. In fact, Sha Ping's gaze had long been captivated by this piece of calligraphy. As a master of jade carving, he was naturally familiar with brush calligraphy. He was stunned for a while and sincerely exclaimed, The brushwork is skillful and powerful.
The characters are majestic and exude an imperial aura. It's a great piece, a great piece indeed. He looked at Yi Tianqi, excitedly saying, Master Yi, I completely admire you. I never expected your calligraphy skills to be no less than your jade carving. I am really curious, what are you not good at? Yi Tianqi waved his hand and smiled, I am not good at many things, otherwise, I wouldn't have been driven out of my home and mocked as useless by others. Xiao Qingcheng heard this and felt a sharp pain in her chest. The embarrassment on her face deepened. This guy must be doing it on purpose. Xia Ping cleared his throat and said to Rong Meiyan, Madam, we have a master at Treasure Pavilion who specializes in mounting calligraphy and paintings. If you trust us, I will arrange for the best master to mount it, and it can be completed within three days. As this is a work by Master Yi, we will mount it for you free of charge. Rong Meiyan's face lit up with joy, handing the calligraphy to Xia Ping. Thank you, Mr. Sha. Then she patted Yi Tianqi's shoulder and said charmingly, Thanks to your reputation, I saved some money. How can I repay you? Yi Tianqi shook his head and said, No need. In fact, if anyone should be thanked, it should be me. After all, she helped me twice at the birthday banquet. This favor has not been repaid yet. Rong Meiyan's eyes lit up, excitedly saying, Oh? In that case, why don't you take advantage of the situation and sell me this jade carving of green mountains and clear waters? I really like it. Don't worry about the price, I can afford it. Xia Ping heard this and suddenly became alert, fearing that the jade carving would be taken away. He hurriedly said, Master Yi, you promised that this jade carving was given to me, it cannot be sold. Yi Tianqi smiled and said, Mr. Xia, rest assured, the right to dispose of this jade carving belongs to you. As for you, if you truly like this jade carving, I will carve a new one for you in the future, and the quality will definitely not be inferior to the green mountains and clear waters. Rong Meiyan's eyes sparkled with anticipation as she asked, Can I trust your words? Yi Tianqi nodded and said, Of course, you can trust me. However, he felt quite helpless in his heart. He originally didn't want to have much to do with this lady, but reality always surprises us. The tacit cooperation between Yi Tianza and Rong Meiyan made Xiao Qingcheng beside them feel a mix of complex emotions, anger, self-blame, bitterness, jealousy, and more. She took a deep breath, trying to calm herself down. Staring at Yi Tianza, she coldly said, I admit that you have shown some amazing highlights in some aspects after proposing a divorce. But don't think that these highlights can make me, Xiao Qingcheng, soften my heart or regret, because these are just tricks, irrelevant to the big picture. The gap between us is not only in appearance, but also in the knowledge that you will never understand. Tomorrow's meeting will make you realize this. After saying these words, Xiao Qingcheng turned around and quickly left, even leaving Ji Boduan behind. Ji Boduan's face darkened, pointing at Yi Tianza fiercely, Yi surname. It's because of you that my plan has failed. Just wait, after Miss Rong's meeting tomorrow, I will settle the score with you. This little episode came to an end. Rong Meiyan smiled and sighed. Mr. Yi, your fiancé's character is truly unique, which is not easy for your three-year marriage. Yi Tianza could only smile bitterly. He actually didn't want to delve into this topic or say much. Rong Meiyan, with high emotional intelligence, immediately sensed this and said straightforwardly, I have some things to take care of, so I won't delay you. Mr. Sha, I will come to pick up those framed characters in three days, please take care of them. Mr. Yi, goodbye. After Rong Meiyan left, Yi Tianza could finally relax a bit. For some reason, every time this lady appeared by his side, he would feel a bit uncomfortable. Although this feeling was not negative, it always made Yi Tianza restless. It seems that it's better to avoid contact with her in the future. After a myriad of thoughts, Yi Tianza followed Xia Ping to his carving studio. He came to Treasure Pavilion again, just to check the repair effect of the tiger-shaped jade pendant. Xia Ping uncovered the red cloth on the table, revealing a crystal clear, smooth and warm tiger-shaped jade pendant. Xia Ping smiled and said, Master Yi, please have a look. Yi Tianza picked up the jade pendant and carefully examined it. Yi Tianzi's eyes were far superior to ordinary people, able to observe the smallest details. However, he could not see any traces of repair on this tiger-shaped jade pendant. It was exactly the same as the original. This made Yi Tianza deeply moved. Xia Ping's adhesive craftsmanship was truly superb, astounding. Afterwards, Yi Tianza expressed his gratitude to Xia Ping. After some small talk, Yi Tianza bid farewell and left the treasure pavilion. In the evening, Rong Meiyan drove her silver Rolls Royce Phantom back to the Zijin Tian Gong Villa community. Zijin Tian Gong Villa is located in the outskirts of Zijin Mountain, 
and the road to get here passes through a sparsely populated mountain road. Just as Rong Mayin entered this mountain road, suddenly, a van sped past Rong Mayin's vehicle and abruptly slammed on the brakes, blocking the road in front of her. The screeching sound of friction filled the air. Rong Mayin's face turned pale in an instant as she urgently hit the brakes. Fortunately, she managed to avoid a collision with the vehicle in front. However, the next moment, another van appeared behind her vehicle, blocking her way. Caught in a pincer movement, Rong Mayin's car was trapped with no way out. Soon after, more than ten burly men emerged from the two vans. Each of them brandishing weapons, they surrounded her aggressively. Leading the pack was a thug with a crew cut and a scarred face. Despite feeling helpless and scared, Rong Mayin remained calm, ready to face the impending challenge. He suddenly felt as if his helmet was a cannonball, with a loud bang. He flew out directly, falling over ten meters away on the ground. With a splutter, blood sprayed from his mouth, and he passed out on the spot. The other person hadn't even reacted when he saw Yi Taingzai's figure suddenly disappear. With a swish, he reappeared in front of him, delivering a slap to his face. Smack! Seemingly light, the slap actually sent him flying into the air. He flew horizontally for five meters, crashing into a tree by the roadside. With a thud, he weakly fell from the tree to the ground, also passing out. Although the whole process sounds slow, it actually took less than three seconds. Scarface and the others were wide-eyed in disbelief. How could a delivery guy be so powerful these days? He's too strong. Scarface's lips trembled as he asked, Who? Who are you? Yi and she stood there, just smiling faintly, not answering his question. The feeling of being ignored made Scarface very angry. You think you can scare me with some martial arts skills? I don't believe it. Even if you fight, you can't beat us. His henchmen, excited by his words, rushed towards Yi and she. Yi Ti and she sneered, overestimating your abilities. Facing the approaching dozen henchmen, he fearlessly rushed to them with invisible speed. Slap, slap, slap. Each one received a clean slap, knocking them all down in agony, rolling on the ground and groaning. Only Scarface was left, his face pale with fear, unable to even hold onto the machete in his hand, which dropped to the ground with a clatter. From his order to his men to the complete defeat, it took less than half a minute. This huge gap almost made him collapse. Rong Mayin watched all this, her eyes shining with excitement and admiration. Although this was not the first time she had seen Yi Tianxi take action, each time still left her excited. The powerful male protagonist described in the novel is indeed worthy of his reputation. Yi Tianxi didn't notice Rong Mayin's gaze, he walked slowly towards Scarface and said calmly, Do you want to kill me? Here's your chance, go ahead. Scarface promptly knelt on the ground, begging for mercy, I was wrong. Please spare my life. Please don't kill me. It's all the fault of us little people, please don't take it to heart, sir. Yi Tianxi rolled his eyes, thinking that this guy looked fierce but had such a small heart. He asked, if you want to live, be honest. Why did you dare to rob and kidnap in broad daylight? What were you planning? Scarface's expression was conflicted, unable to speak. Yi Tianxi coldly narrowed his eyes, oh? You don't want to talk? Scarface struggled, hesitated for a moment, and finally firmly said, The reason I kidnapped wrong. But he didn't finish his sentence. Yi Tianqi suddenly sensed a strong sense of danger approaching. He instinctively wanted to take action, but in the blink of an eye, it was already too late. The scar faced man kneeling in front of him suddenly had his entire head burst open, a scene that was truly shocking. Yi Tianqi felt a deep sense of sorrow and powerlessness in his heart never expecting things to escalate to such a brutal extent. This scene made him realize the fragility and preciousness of life, as well as deeply understand the cruelty and ruthlessness of the world. Suddenly, a wall of air rose up, separating the blood and brain matter outside. This scene made the young men who hadn't fainted yet scream in terror. They were all exclaiming, the boss's head is split open. The boss is done for. Yi Tianqi quickly turned his head to look towards the left side of the forest, his gaze sharp and intense. In that brief moment, he accurately judged that Scarface was shot in the head and killed by a sniper. The killer was hiding deep in the forest, about 300 meters away. Yi Tianqi narrowed his eyes, speculating in his mind that the silenced sniper rifle was used to cover up the truth of the crime. However, he didn't think the killer could escape justice. Despite the sniper's attempt to conceal his presence, Yi Tianqi locked onto his position in an instant. Just as Yi Tianqi was about to dart into the forest to catch the killer, a sudden scream was heard. Ah! Yi Tianqi quickly turned around, 
only to see Rong Mei-in covering her head with both hands, her expression filled with unbearable pain. He walked up to her and asked with concern, What's wrong? Why are you in so much pain? Rong Mei-in suddenly threw herself into his arms, her face full of fear, saying, He's dead. It's so scary. I'm so afraid. Yi Tianqi was a bit at a loss, trying to push her away, but she held on tightly. At the same time, Scarface's men lifted their unconscious companion and hurriedly carried Scarface's body onto the van, preparing to flee the scene. Yi Tianqi instinctively wanted to chase after them but was stopped by Rong Mei Yin's embrace. She pleaded, Mr. Yi, please don't let go, I'm so scared. Yi Tianqi felt the softness against his chest and his heart trembled. Helplessly watching the van drive away, he sighed. Despite his experiences in the fallen city and his broad knowledge, being embraced by such a beautiful woman was a first for him. Especially the unique fragrance emanating from her made Yi Tianqi's mind wander, causing his mouth to dry. However, he quickly composed himself and asked, They've gone far. How long? Do you plan to keep hugging me? Rong Mei-in let go of Yi Tianqi, still with a hint of fear in her eyes, a faint blush on her cheeks, showing a charming demeanor. Yi Tianqi asked with pity, Who are these people? Why did they kidnap you? Rong Mei-in shook her head blankly, indicating she had no idea. Yi Tianqi smiled and said, As long as you're safe. Do you want me to call the police for you? Rong Mei-in directly refused without giving a reason. Just as Yi Tianqi was about to ask why, the sound of engines roaring in the distance could be heard, and five black Audi cars quickly approached, stopping in front of the two. Immediately, more than twenty burly men in black clothes and sunglasses got out of the cars, exuding a domineering aura. It was clear that he was an experienced bodyguard. He quickly stepped forward, respectfully knelt down in front of Rong Mei-in, and said, Miss, Huang Jen is late and deserves severe punishment. Please punish me. Rong Mei-in smiled and replied, The villains have already been driven away. You may rise. Huang Jen stood up and glanced at Yi Tianza, asking cautiously, Miss, who is this? Rong Mei-in gratefully answered, If it weren't for Mr. Yi's timely help, I might have been in danger. Huang Jen nodded in thanks to Yi Tianza, but his gaze still revealed a sense of wariness. It seemed hard to believe that he, alone, had defeated the group of villains. Yi Tianza glanced at the surrounding bodyguards, especially the strong man named Huang Jen. He could sense that these people were all professionally trained, far from ordinary bodyguards. To have such a large team of bodyguards, the identity of this lady was obviously extraordinary. Rong Mei thanked Yi Tianza again, saying, Mr. Yi, no matter what, I must thank you for saving my life. I am truly grateful. Yi Tianza waved his hand and said with a smile, It was just a small matter, no need to talk about repaying. Rong Mei-in playfully replied, How can the debt of saving a life not be repaid? If you are willing, I can consider offering myself, after all, you are about to divorce, right? Yi Tianza was taken aback and quickly said, Oh, just kidding. I have urgent matters to attend to, so I must take my leave. Goodbye. Without giving Rong Mei-in a chance to continue joking, Yi Tianza got on his electric scooter and left. With so many bodyguards guarding her, she didn't have to worry about any accidents happening again. Rong Mei-in watched Yi Tianzi's back with a smile on her lips, thinking, so he can be shy, quite cute. At this moment, Huang Zhen respectfully asked, Miss, should I send someone to immediately track down those who kidnapped you? To find out their identities. Rong Mei-in shook her head and said, forget it. Maybe it was just a random kidnapping that happened to involve me. I'm fine now, you can take your people back. Huang Jen, somewhat worried, said, but your safety. Rong Mei-in interrupted him, firmly stating, just do as I say. Huang Jen had no choice but to obey the order and left with his bodyguards. After they disappeared, Xiao Qingsheng walked to the Silver Rolls Royce Phantom parked nearby. She gently wiped away the bloodstains left on the scarred face from being shot in the head, murmuring to herself. I haven't been in Jonglin City for long, but couldn't resist taking action. Seems like I couldn't wait. At this moment, she was no longer panicky, her face calm and composed, seemingly unaffected by the attempted kidnapping or the person being shot in the head. She turned to look at the left side of the woods and said, Everyone's gone, come out. With a rustling sound, a tall young woman emerged from the woods, carrying a sniper rifle on her shoulder and wearing a butterfly mask that covered her eyes. If Yi Tianza were present, perhaps he could recognize her from other facial features. Ah Ching said lightly, with only a short distance of 400 meters in front of her, it was easy to solve with just one shot, not difficult at all. I just saw the gesture you made, miss. Yes, the person who fired the gun in the woods before was not Scarface's accomplice, 
but Ah Ching herself. To the outside world, Ah Ching is just Rong Meiyan's personal assistant or maid, with nothing special besides being beautiful. However, few people know that the seemingly fragile Ah Ching is actually Rong Meiyan's most trusted bodyguard. She is proficient in various combat skills, assassination techniques, and firearms use, even more formidable and terrifying than many self-proclaimed warlords. Today, before Scarface and his gang kidnapped Rong Meiyan, she had already quietly lurked in the woods. When Rong Meiyan was intercepted by Scarface and others, Ah Ching was already prepared to shoot at any time, waiting only for Rong Meiyan's signal. However, when she saw Rong Meiyan lower her raised hand through the scope, she did not immediately pull the trigger. Later, Yi Tianza appeared riding an electric bike and knocked down Scarface's henchman. When Yi Tianza was about to interrogate Scarface, Rong Meiyan suddenly signaled Ah Ching to shoot. Although Ah Ching didn't understand the reason, she absolutely obeyed Mrs. Command and immediately shot and killed Scarface from a distance. Looking at the bloodstains on the ground, Ah Ching couldn't help but ask, Miss, how did you anticipate the ambush today? Rong Meiyan calmly replied, When we were in the provincial capital, I felt someone was secretly following me, but they didn't take any action within the provincial capital. After coming to Jonglin City, this situation became more and more frequent, so I suspected they would take action before we met, trying to stop my plan. This location was their best choice to strike, so I had you prepared here in advance, and the result turned out just as I expected. Ah Ching asked puzzled, if that's the case, why didn't you wait for Yi Tianza to finish interrogating Scarface and had me shoot instead? Rong Meiyin frowned slightly and said, do you think the people who kidnapped Rong Meiyin would send these low-level operatives? I think this operation is more like a probe or a warning, so Scarface wouldn't know too many inside stories. Plus, with Mr. Yi present, I didn't want to involve him in this. Ah Ching said somewhat discontentedly, so, you're just going to let your enemies go like this. Rong Meiyin's eyes flashed with a hint of coldness as she said, those who offend Rong Meiyin will never be let off lightly. Although Scarface is dead, his personal information can still provide crucial clues, and we can find more information through this lead. During the investigation, we must find the most reliable person, especially not let Huang Zhen and his men know about this matter. Ah Ching nodded. Furrowing her brows, Miss, do you think someone among Huang Zhen's men may be acting on the orders of Second Master? That's why. Rong Meiyin didn't directly answer the question but changed the topic. You saw Mr. Yi's performance just now, what do you think? Ah Ching pursed her lips and said, It's passable, but compared to the Jiangnan war god, he still has a long way to go. Although these words were somewhat harsh, in reality. In the woods, when Yi Tianza caught her scent, she felt as if she was being stalked by a fierce beast, unable to escape. Those brief two seconds left her heart pounding, etched deeply in her mind. At the same time, hidden in a tree far from their view, Yi Tianza crouched on a branch, eyes narrowed, a blade of grass dangling from his mouth. Despite the distance, he could still clearly see their every move. He discovered that the sniper was actually the woman's subordinate, and to conceal the truth, she didn't want Scarface to spill the beans. The panic and fear she displayed in front of him were nothing but a facade. The conspiracy behind this kidnapping was far more complicated than meets the eye, with layers of deception. The city's tricks were unfathomable, and he felt it was best to keep his distance from this woman, as her intentions were inscrutable, and it was better not to get involved in matters that didn't concern him. Yi Tianza sighed, flipped off the tree onto his electric bike, and rode away. In the Wulong Manor in Jiangnan City, Han Tianzheng sat on the sofa, rubbing his temples, a worried expression on his face. He had just received a message from the Ji family, learning that Ji Wuli planned to establish a commercial alliance in Jiangnan City, attracting partners from the Rong family to join and share resources and profits. This should have been a good thing, but Ji Wuli proposed an outrageous condition. All members joining the commercial alliance had to pay 10 million in cash as a membership fee, essentially a protection fee to the Ji family. Although the wealthy and powerful were filled with resentment, they could only grit their teeth, as the Ji family had the Rong family's tacit approval in the provincial capital, and not joining the alliance meant being marginalized. Han Tianzheng sighed, reminiscing about the glorious days when the Han family stood side by side with the Ji family as one of the three major families in Jiangnan City, now reduced to being a lackey, feeling utterly aggrieved. Although 10 million wasn't a huge sum for the richest man Han Tianzheng, the psychological blow made it hard for him to accept. He knew Ji Wuli's cunning and deceitful nature, understanding that long-term cooperation with him was akin to dealing with a tiger, always at risk of betrayal. However, if the Han family didn't join the commercial alliance, they would be isolated and even targeted by the Ji family. Faced with this dilemma, Han Tianzheng fell into contemplation. At that moment, wearing a pink nightgown and holding a glass of milk, Han Ruiyan descended the stairs. 
Her presence brought a touch of warmth to the gloomy atmosphere. Dad looked at Han Ruyan, his heart filled with doubt and unease. In the dead of night, he was still awake, his mind racing. Suddenly, he remembered something, and with a slightly displeased expression on his face, he said, I gave you 20 million back then to cut ties with Yi Tianza. I never expected that kid to bid against me at yesterday's birthday banquet. Quite audacious. Han Ruyan shrugged helplessly and replied, Dad, why do you always bring up this 20 million? I gave that money to Yi Tianza back then, but he never accepted it. The 20 million at yesterday's banquet was his own. Hearing this, Han Tianzheng widened his eyes in shock and incredulously said, Did he admit at the banquet yesterday that the 20 million belonged to our Han family? So it was Yi Tianzi's own money. This revelation left Han Tianzheng feeling embarrassed, unable to believe that Yi Tianzi actually had 20 million. Han Ruoyan sneered and said, HMPH, that guy must have swindled it from some rich woman. She mentioned yesterday at the hospital entrance, Yi Tianza and a charming woman were in a flirtatious scene, which made him feel restless and annoyed. Han Tianzheng calmed down slightly and said, Regardless, you should not have any more contact with him in the future. This scoundrel not only offended the Ji family but also deceived the Lin family's patriarch, causing him to fall critically ill and eventually being taken away by Deputy Director Wang. He might not escape death. Han Ruoyan pursed his lips and said, Dad, aren't you overthinking it? Who said Yi Tianzi won't escape death? Yesterday he saved Grandpa Lin and was invited as an honored guest by the Lin family. Han Tianzheng was so shocked that he stood up from the sofa and asked incredulously, Are you kidding me? Han Ruiyan earnestly replied, Why would I joke with you? Here's what happened. She then told Han Tianzheng about Yi Tianzi's two rescues of Lin Yuanixin. Han Tianzheng's heart surged with emotions and he sighed, This Yi Tianzi actually has such ability and even became an honored guest of the Lin family. If he's a waste, then perhaps no one in the entire Jiangnan city is worth anything. He continued, No wonder dad said before his death that the fiancé he chose for you is a talent of heaven, who can bring immense blessings to the Han family. It seems dad didn't deceive me. Our Han family really hit the jackpot. With that in mind, he seemed to have made a certain decision. Han Ruiyan was slowly savoring her milk when she nearly choked upon hearing her father's words. Dad, what did you just say? How could I possibly marry that Yi Tianzi, that scoundrel who relies on women for a living? Although Yi Tianzi doesn't seem as incompetent as rumored now, he clearly received 1.01 million from that woman in front of her yesterday, obviously being kept. Moreover, he was also used and abandoned by Xiao Qingcheng for three years. As the young lady of the Han family, a pampered young girl, how could she accept something used by someone else? Han Tianzheng earnestly said, What's wrong with an excellent man occasionally eating soft rice? In the end, it's just for a more comfortable life, nothing serious. Besides, the fact that a rich woman is interested in him proves that Yi Tianzi does have unique qualities. The truth is, look at Yi Tianzi, he is a divine doctor and has become a VIP in Lin City. If you can marry him, our Han family won't need to flatter the Ji family anymore. However, despite the reasonableness of these words, Han Ruoyan still felt uneasy. Moreover, the one she admired is a prominent figure behind the Dragon Lord. It is said that Miss Rong will invite him to the meeting tomorrow, and then she will have a chance to meet him. Compared to the worthless Yi Tianzi, isn't the one she admires even more outstanding? Han Tianzheng tentatively said, Daughter, have you considered it? Han Ruiyan pursed her lips, saying, I won't consider it. If you want me to marry, then go marry Yi Tianzi yourself. After all, I, Han Ruiyan, would rather starve to death than marry Yi Tianzi. With that, Han Ruiyan stomped upstairs in a huff. Ah, this child. Han Tianzheng sighed helplessly, sitting back on the sofa. He said, after the meeting tomorrow, the Ji family will surely join forces with others to cut off Yi Tianzi's path. Father, if you are in the afterlife, can you tell me how to make a choice? The next afternoon, at the Red Maple Villa. This is the most magnificent and luxurious resort in Jiangnan City. It has various top leisure and entertainment facilities, including accommodation, leisure, meetings, dining, and so on. It is said that there is a mysterious and powerful background behind the Red Maple Villa, so there are no flaws in the security facilities. Therefore, Rong Meiyan's business meeting chose to be held here. And the entire Red Maple Villa has been booked, uninvited guests cannot enter. Yi Tianzi arrived here more than an hour early. After being checked by the security personnel, he entered the Red Maple Villa. Strolling on the shady path, looking up at the azure sky, his mood couldn't help but relax. With the termination letter from Rong Meiyan in his pocket, 
he hoped to meet her today and discuss the cancellation of the engagement. After a while, Yi Tianza arrived in front of a horse farm. The entire horse farm covers more than 10 acres, with neatly trimmed lawns for guests to enjoy horseback riding. Since the meeting has not started yet, some handsome and elegant guests are riding horses in the horse farm, with continuous laughter and joy. Yi Tianza originally planned to take a quick glance and leave. Suddenly, a sarcastic voice rang out, Oh my! Why do I find that no matter where this young master goes, you, this bumpkin, always follow behind? This is the Red Maple Villa. What qualifications do you have to come in? Ji Bo walked over with a hostile look. Xiao Qingcheng and Assistant Sun were beside him. Today, Xiao Qingcheng was wearing a pure white evening gown, the dress hugged her body, outlining her graceful figure, and the perfect cut showcased her flawless figure. As soon as she appeared, she immediately attracted many gazes around the racecourse. Yi Tianse's gaze briefly moved away from Xiao Qingcheng and calmly responded to Ji Bo Duan, How do you know I'm not qualified to come in? This remark made Ji Bo Duan ecstatic. He sneered, Surname Yi, today only those with the invitation card for the meeting are qualified to enter. Although your status is ordinary, you haven't even received an invitation card, so how can you be qualified to enter? Remembering the humiliation Yi Tianz gave him yesterday, Ji Bo Duan was burning with anger, so when he met Yi Tianz again at this moment, he naturally wanted to provoke him fiercely. Assistant Sun echoed, Exactly, do you know the social celebrities present today? They are either billionaires in the business world or powerful figures in the political arena. How can someone like you match up to enter? Xiao Qingcheng sighed helplessly. Yet today, he was still the same as before, unchanged in the slightest. Faced with doubts, Yi Tianz calmly said, It's just an invitation card, I have it. Ji Bo Duan shook his head with a sneer, You really have a big mouth. All right. Since you claim to have the invitation card, quickly show it to everyone. If you can't produce it, let the staff escort you out. He continued, Don't you know what the invitation card looks like? Let me give you a demonstration. With that, Ji Bo Duan took out a red invitation card from his pocket, raised it high, and deliberately waved it. The front of the invitation card printed with the information of the Rong family's meeting invitation, below was Rong Mei Yun's handwritten signature and a numerical code. That number was six. The handsome and beautiful people around the racecourse saw this invitation card and couldn't help but exclaim. Wow, this is the number six invitation card. The G family is really something, our family's number is only 41. Ours is 53. Wait, what does this number mean? Don't you know? This number represents the importance ranking of the invited guests, the higher the ranking, the more important the identity. Rumor has it that the top five are definitely the most prominent figures in Lin City, Lord Long, Lord Tiger, and other top figures in Jiangnan City. So, the fact that the Ji family could get the sixth invitation card is enough to prove the importance Rong family places on them. Listening to everyone's praise, Ji Bo Duan became even more smug. He taunted, Surname Yi, quickly show your invitation card? If your number is 250, that would be hilarious. The others present also laughed along. Xiao Qingcheng looked helpless. She didn't understand why Yi Tianz always seemed to invite trouble upon himself. However, Yi Tianz unexpectedly remained calm. He took out an invitation card from his pocket and showed it to everyone. Is this the legendary invitation letter? Ji Bo Duan, who was originally feeling proud and confident, was suddenly dumbfounded. The invitation letter in Yi Tianse's hand was identical to his, even Rong Mei Yin's handwritten signature was surprisingly similar. Obviously, this was not a forgery. As he continued reading, when Ji Bo Duan saw the number at the bottom of the invitation letter, his eyes widened in disbelief. It was actually the number two in Arabic numerals. Oh my god! What was going on? Not only him, but the other young men and women were also shocked. What? It's actually the second ranked invitation letter? What's going on? What kind of identity does this guy have? To actually receive the number two invitation letter sent by Miss Rong. Before everyone could recover from their shock, Yi Tianz pulled out another invitation letter from his pocket and casually said, I forgot to tell you all, actually I have two invitation letters. When everyone saw this second invitation letter, they were collectively stunned, their scalp tingling. Yi Tianqi stood in front of everyone, holding invitation cards number one and number two in his hand, as if he had the control of the whole situation. Ji Bo Duan looked at him, with a hint of envy and jealousy in his eyes, feeling an inexplicable sense of defeat in his heart. He had thought he was the designated partner of the Ji family, and having invitation card number six was already impressive enough. However, he never expected Yi Tianqi to actually produce invitation cards number one and number two, making him feel utterly embarrassed. 
The people around were buzzing with discussions, speculating about the significance of the two invitation cards in Yi Tianxi's hand. Some were shocked and exclaimed, is his status higher than the leaders of Lin City, Long Yi, and Hu Yi? Others whispered, how did he break the rule of one person, one invitation card? Ji Bo Duan felt a wave of embarrassment, discreetly hiding the number six invitation card in his pocket, hoping to alleviate some of the awkwardness. Meanwhile, Xiao Qingcheng's eyes trembled as she bit her lip. Her invitation card was only number 11, not even making it to the top 10. She couldn't understand why she, clearly superior to Yi Tianqi, lost to him. Her heart was filled with struggle and unwillingness. Facing Ji Bo Duan's provocation, Yi Tianqi remained calm and composed. He put the two invitation cards back into his pocket and said calmly, as long as the invitation cards are verified, that's all that matters. Please don't waste my time. He didn't understand the importance of the invitation card numbers, nor did he know why Rong Meiyin entrusted him with the two crucial invitation cards. Ji Bo Duan, still unwilling to accept the situation, sneered, even if you have the invitation cards, so what? Who knows if you stole them? He warned Yi Tianqi that anyone with invitation cards number one and number two must be a top figure in Jiangmen City, someone he couldn't afford to provoke. The people present nodded in agreement, seeming to all endorse this statement. Xiao Qingcheng and assistant son also believed this without a doubt, suspecting that Yi Tianqi had obtained the invitation cards through improper means. Xiao Qingcheng, in particular, felt jealous, thinking that she, clearly superior to Yi Tianqi, lost to him. Yi Tianqi paid no attention to the discussions and suspicions of the people around him, just calmly looking at Ji Bo Duan, but harboring a sense of unwillingness deep in his heart. A few days ago at Ji Wuli's birthday banquet, he had made a bet with the Ji family, demanding the return of his 20 million. The Ji family, however, refused to acknowledge the debt, leaving Yi Tianqi dissatisfied. He warned the Ji family that if the money was not returned within three days, they would have to bear the consequences. This incident had been weighing on his mind, and the anger in his heart had not subsided. The crowd around was abuzz with discussion. Can you believe that the Ji family actually owes this young man 20 million? Do you know what happened? I remember, this is the same Yi Tianza who caused a scene at the Ji family banquet. My dad told me that the Ji family lost a bet of 20 million to him but refused to admit it. What? Doesn't the Ji family always emphasize honesty and integrity? I never expected their true colors to be like this. Ji Boding's eyes flashed with a hint of panic. Today is supposed to be a day of celebration for the Ji family securing a new business partner. Negative comments cannot be allowed. He quickly explained, everyone. The Ji family always keeps its word, it's just 20 million after all. We will pay back Yi Tianza tomorrow. However, inside, he sneered. Waiting for tonight's meeting, once the Ji family secures the partnership, it will be the end for you, Yi Tianza. As for that 20 million? You can go ask the king of hell for it. But no matter what, he had already been slapped in the face by Yi Tianza twice today, he must salvage the situation. He knew he was no match for Yi Tianza. So he provocatively said, Yi Tianza, you are always fearless, right? This is a perfect place for a challenge, dare to compete with me in horse riding? Yi Tianza calmly replied, why should I agree to you? Ji Boding sneered, seems like you're backing down. What do you all think? The people around naturally sided with Ji Boding, saying, look at his shabby clothes, it's obvious he has never ridden a horse, how could he compete? Horse riding is a noble activity, how could an ordinary person do it? Even Sun, the assistant, mocked, Yi Tianza is fundamentally a brawler, good at nothing but fighting, let alone horse riding, a noble activity. Faced with the ridicule, Yi Tianza remained expressionless, showing no interest in this childish play. He planned to leave. Ji Boding shouted, you, Yi. As long as you agree to compete and beat me, not only will I give you back the 20 million tomorrow, I will also add an additional 20 million, how about that? Yi Tianza shook his head. Not enough? Ji Boding said triumphantly, I'll increase it tenfold, two billion, dare to compete with me? If not, publicly admit your defeat. The people present gasped in shock. Two billion. Although the Ji family is one of the three major families in Jiangmen City, their total assets are only about five billion. Most of it is in fixed assets such as real estate and shopping malls. The actual cash on hand is only a little over 2 billion. This young master of the G family actually took out all the family's cash for this competition? It's really too risky. Is this really necessary? Yi Tianza smiled helplessly. Since you insist on the competition, fine, I agree. As long as there is money to be made, I won't lose. Ji Boding's eyes gleamed with satisfaction. Ji Bo Duan 
who has been practicing horse riding since childhood and has a deep understanding of equestrianism, once participated in amateur horse racing competitions in Tian Nan province and won numerous gold medals. For him, defeating Yi Tianxi, who has never even ridden a horse, was a piece of cake. Ji Bo Duan smirked and asked, Yi Tianxi, what will you do if you lose? Yi Tianxi replied nonchalantly, up to you. Ji Bo Duan clapped his hands in delight, great. If you lose, you will crawl a lap on the racetrack and let everyone present take a ride on you. Do you dare to accept? Yi Tianxi nodded without hesitation. Ji Bo Duan was overjoyed and turned to the people around him, boasting, everyone, I am bringing you a wonderful performance this time. Come and experience it. The crowd applauded and praised Ji Bo Duan's prowess, except for Xiao Qingcheng, who remained silent with a complex expression and uncertain gaze. Yi Tianqi smiled slightly and replied, Oh, General Xiao, I must remind you once again that since you have never trusted me, any decision I make has nothing to do with you. Xiao Qingcheng was so angry and frustrated. Clearly, he was doing it for Yi Tianqi's own good, why couldn't he see it? It was truly irreparable. Son, the assistant beside him, comforted him, General Xiao, this guy doesn't know how to be grateful, you don't need to pay attention to him. If he wants to compete, let him. If he fails and gets ridiculed by others, it's his own fault. Xiao Qingcheng took a deep breath and gradually calmed down. Yi Tianqi, if you insist on bringing disgrace upon yourself, then I won't interfere anymore. With that, he took two steps back, disappointment evident in his eyes towards Yi Tianqi. At this moment, Ji Bo walked over. He had his eye on a chestnut horse in the stable and said to Yi Tianqi, let's compete by riding this horse, let's see who can stay on its back longer, that will determine the winner. Yi Tianqi raised an eyebrow and asked, is it that simple? Ji Bo nodded, yes, it's that simple. Because requirements like equestrian skills are too harsh for someone like you, to avoid rumors of me bullying others. Ji Bo understood clearly that the chestnut horses in front of them were hot-tempered and not easy to control. Just being able to ride them was already a challenge, let alone performing fancy equestrian moves. The reason he chose this challenge was that he was certain Yi Tianqi wouldn't even be able to mount the horse. Therefore, the winner of this competition would definitely be him, Ji Bo. The stable staff reminded Ji Bo, young master Ji, this horse is newly acquired, it has a volatile temperament, it's dangerous to ride, do you want to change it? Ji Bo scolded, mind your own business. I chose it, so it stays. The staff immediately lowered their head and remained silent. Ji Bo turned to Yi Tianqi and asked, Mr. Yi, any problem with riding this horse? Yi Tianqi smiled and replied, no problem. Good. Let me demonstrate for you first. Ji Bo looked smug, inwardly cursing Yi Tianqi for being ignorant and all talk. He put on his protective gear, proudly addressing everyone, ladies and gentlemen, let me show that Mr. Yi what true noble equestrianism is. He walked to the chestnut horse, effortlessly mounted it, and smoothly showcased his posture. Ji Bo held the reins in his right hand, raised his left hand high, displaying to the surrounding crowd. Striking a pose that he thought was very handsome. The crowd praised, young master Ji's mounting posture is truly handsome. Young master Ji, make this horse run, let everyone see its strength. Even Xiao Qingcheng's eyes showed admiration. It had to be admitted, Ji Bo's posture on the horse was extraordinary. Then, looking at Yi Tianqi who seemed indifferent not far away, the contrast was stark. Ji Bo taunted Yi Tianqi, watch closely, I'll show you what true noble equestrianism is. With that, he gave the reins a tug, preparing to demonstrate his riding skills. However, he failed to notice that Yi Tianqi's lazy eyes suddenly changed. He released an invisible pressure centered around him, directly enveloping the chestnut horse. Nay! The chestnut horse suddenly neighed in fear. Two front hooves raised high, resembling a dancer dancing in place. Jibo Duan was so scared that he tightly grabbed the reins, angrily scolding the spirited horse, hoping it would behave. However, the horse became even more excited. In Jibo Duan's anxious anger, he kicked the horse's belly hard with both feet. This angered the horse, and it suddenly shook its body, throwing Jibo Duan off the horse in midair. Unfortunately, as Jibo Duan fell, he was kicked in the stomach by the horse from behind. With a bang, Jibo Duan was kicked four or five meters away, finally falling awkwardly on the ground, hitting his head on the lawn. This sudden scene left everyone stunned. Jibo Duan originally wanted to show off his horse riding skills, but instead of staying on the horse, he ended up falling off, performing a somersault in midair, truly eye-opening. Although there were some criticisms in their minds, considering Jibo Duan's prominent status, the onlookers came forward to inquire about his condition. 
the staff quickly controlled the unruly brown horse and helped Jibo do on up. If not for wearing protective gear, he would probably have been taken to the hospital long ago. Xiao Qingsheng blamed Yi Tians, saying that this was all his fault. If it weren't for agreeing to the competition, how could Jibo Duan have fallen off the horse? She not only worried about Jibo Duan's safety but also about how the Ji family would deal with Yi Tians because of this incident. Yi Tians responded indifferently that it was Jibo Duan's own fault and had nothing to do with him. If he had fallen off, would Xiao Qingcheng also blame Jibo Duan? Faced with this rebuttal, Xiao Qingcheng was speechless. Yi Tians mocked, saying that he had just talked about performing noble sports, but ended up performing this kind of kneeling sport, truly broadening his horizons. Jibo Duan was so angry that his face turned red, and he could only vent his anger on the staff, slapping one directly. He blamed the staff for not warning him about the brown horse's strange temper, which nearly cost him his life. The staff, holding their cheeks in grievance, explained that although the brown horse had a strange temper, such a situation had never occurred before. Jibo Duan angrily shouted at Yi Tians, Now it's your turn to ride the horse, you definitely can't beat me. Despite just losing face, Jibo Duan believed that since he couldn't even control this horse, Yi Tians was even less likely to do so. Yi Tians confidently said, What's so difficult about riding a horse? He didn't even put on protective gear, walking straight towards the brown horse. Some people in the audience began to mock. Hey there! Not even wearing protective gear, looks like someone doesn't know a thing. What a show off, being so bold as to not wear any protective gear. He might regret it later. There was a hint of resentment in Jibo's eyes, secretly hoping that Yetiche would fall flat on his face later, preferably breaking a leg. Meanwhile, Yetiche seemed unfazed by the mockery around him, gently patting the horse's neck, calming down the once restless stallion. It even nuzzled Yetiche affectionately with its head, leaving everyone around in awe. Why was this stallion so obedient to him? Then, to everyone's amazement, the chestnut stallion actually bent down, kneeling on all fours, as if respectfully welcoming Yetiche to ride on its back. They even had a strange feeling. After Yi Tianqi settled in, the chestnut steed stood up slowly. The whole process was cautious, fearing that Yi Tianqi might feel uncomfortable in the slightest. Suddenly, Yi Tianqi softly commanded, and the chestnut steed neighed, galloping off like a gust of wind across the grassy field. Yi Tianqi, with a tall figure and a firm gaze, stared ahead unwaveringly. Guiding the chestnut steed to leap over various obstacles with perfect coordination, their movements were as graceful as flowing clouds in water. The onlookers couldn't help but exclaim in amazement. Wow! So handsome! How did he do that? Such equestrian skills are truly eye-opening. Yi Tianqi's strength was so powerful that no one could match it, not even Ji Dishao. Some even joked with excitement, Hey, where's your horse, Ji Dishao? Oh, wait, it's been taken by Yi Tianqi. Ji Bo Duan stood there dumbfounded, trembling all over. He couldn't accept that his most confident specialty was so easily surpassed by Yi Tianqi. What was going on? Not only him, but even those watching Yi Tianqi ride by felt their frozen hearts tremble. Is he really the Yi Tianqi I know? What secrets does he still hold that I am unaware of? Five minutes later, Yi Tianqi rode back to the crowd. The chestnut steed obediently knelt on all fours, waiting for Yi Tianqi to dismount. Yi Tianqi gently patted its head and said with satisfaction, Well done. I'll come back to ride you again next time. The steed neighed excitedly. This scene made the staff present kneel in worship. They had been breeding horses for over 20 years but had never seen such an astounding sight. Even the top horse trainers couldn't achieve this. How did this young man do it? Little did they know that during Yi Tianqi's time in the fallen city, his master often had him fight with fierce beasts like elephants, lions, tigers, and leopards to train his abilities. After a long period of accumulation, Yi Tianqi had subdued all these fierce beasts. What's more, a horse. Yi Tianqi walked up to Ji Bo Duan lightly patted his shoulder, and calmly said, don't forget our bet. Tomorrow, your G family owes me a total of 220 million in cash. Failure to deliver will have consequences. After saying this, Yi Tianqi didn't look at anyone else and left directly, leaving behind a group of astonished onlookers and a stunned Ji Boduang. As Yi Tianqi left the horse arena and arrived at the entrance of the event hall, he suddenly heard someone call his name from behind, Yi Tianqi, wait. It turned out to be Xiao Qingcheng and assistant son catching up. Yi Tianqi frowned and asked, Xiao, what's the matter? His tone was somewhat cold, even resistant. Xiao Qingcheng's eyes trembled slightly. She took a deep breath and said, Yi Tianqi, 
I misunderstood you at the horse arena. I want to apologize to you. Yi Tianxi's eyes flickered slightly. Xiao Qingcheng, a person with a strong sense of self-esteem, actually said, I'm sorry. It's really refreshing to see, it seems he's not as cold-hearted as one might think. Yi Tianza nodded slightly and asked, is there anything else? Xiao Qingcheng said seriously, if possible, I hope you can avoid entering the main hall of the venue. You see, Miss Rong's reception is different from Lord Long's bidding business meeting or the Ji family's birthday banquet. Everyone present today are the top figures in Jiangnan City, you have made too many enemies in the past, if they unite to come after you, the consequences would be unimaginable, even I can't fully protect you. Yi Tianza confidently said, what threat do those insignificant people pose when they unite? I have never paid them any attention, and I don't need Miss Xiao to protect me. Xiao Qingcheng couldn't help but furrow her brows upon hearing this. She mustered up courage to remind Yi Tianza, only to be rejected. She thought, being rejected so decisively, does Yi Tianza not understand the meaning of compromise? Assistant Sun couldn't hold back and said firmly, you have done so much harm to Miss Xiao, yet she still thinks of your well-being, and you not only do not appreciate it, but hold a grudge. Where is your conscience? These words made Yi Tianza somewhat displeased, and he coldly said, please understand a fact, the one who should overlook past grievances should be me, not Miss Xiao and she should be the one to be appreciated. If not for our three-year marriage, you wouldn't even have the qualification to attend this reception today. Although these words sounded arrogant, they were the truth. With his strength, if he truly wanted to retaliate against Xiao Qingcheng, the Xiao family would have been destroyed long ago, everything else is unnecessary. However, to Xiao Qingcheng and Assistant Sun, these words sounded full of arrogance and conceit. Assistant Sun angrily said, Miss Xiao, did you hear what he just said? This freeloader should not be worth your trouble, it's not worth your concern. Xiao Qingcheng's eyes flashed with a hint of disappointment. She had changed her opinion of Yi Tianza because of his performance at the racetrack, and came over specifically to remind him, hoping he wouldn't get into danger. Unexpectedly, Yi Tianza remained so arrogant and heartless, even distorting the truth. Xiao Qingcheng sneered and said, All right, Yi Tianza, I was overly concerned today. If you have the ability, go ahead and enter the main hall whatever happens next has nothing to do with me. Yi Tianza responded calmly, I don't need you to speak for me, nor will I let myself be embarrassed. Assistant Sun disdainfully said, I really can't stand your pretentiousness. She continued, I don't believe that, apart from Miss Xiao, there is no big shot willing to help you at today's reception, or even have a conversation with you. I can write their names backwards. Just then, a slightly older voice suddenly sounded excited, Dr. Yi. You've also come to the reception? Everyone turned to look, it was the director of Jiangnan City's first hospital, Wu Xingye. Wu Xingye walked over quickly, showing respect to Yi Tianza, Dr. Yi, long time no see, you look more spirited than ever. This scene caused assistant Sun's face to change slightly, she had just said that no big shot would talk to Yi Tianza, but now Wu Xingye broke that barrier, making the situation a bit awkward. And the story continues. Another old voice sounded, Sha Ping wearing a yellow tang suit, quickly walked towards Yi Tianza. He looked humble, his eyes flickering with enthusiasm, as if he was excited to see an idol. Assistant Sun couldn't help but twitch at the corner of his eye. What on earth is going on? Wasn't Yi Tianza considered a waste? Why are these two respected big shots in Jiangnan City so actively engaging with him? However, the story is not over yet. Han Tianzheng walked over with a smile on his face, accompanied by the somewhat reluctant Han Ruoyan. Assistant Sun felt a tingling sensation in her heart. The prestige of these three individuals far exceeded that of Xiao Qingcheng, making her feel uneasy. She couldn't understand why Yi Tianz, this waste, would attract the attention and respect of these three esteemed individuals. Assistant Sun's face flushed with embarrassment and a burning sensation. Xiao Qingcheng was equally shocked. While she could understand Wu Xingye and Xia Ping's respectful attitude towards Yi Tianz, Han Tianzheng's friendly demeanor towards Yi Tianz caught her off guard. Just the day before at the Ji family banquet, Han Tianzheng had stood opposed to Yi Tianz. Yi Tianz himself was also surprised by Han Tianzheng's attitude. Han Tianzheng smiled kindly and said, Nephew Yi, let me apologize on behalf of the misunderstanding at the banquet the other day. Please don't take it to heart. Last night, Han Tianzheng learned about Yi Tianzhe's various deeds from Han Ruoyan and felt that Yi Tianz was far more complex than he appeared on the surface. He had originally planned to have a private chat with Yi Tianz, but he didn't expect Yi Tianz to also attend the gathering. So, he took the initiative to greet Yi Tianz. Han Tianzheng nodded in satisfaction, Nephew Yi, you don't know, 
My daughter Ruiyan has been talking about you at home these past two days. You young people should talk more later, hee <laughs> hee. Han Ruiyan's face changed, complaining, Dad. What are you talking nonsense about? When did I talk about him? Although she said so, she felt a bit guilty. These past two days at home, she did mention Yi Tian several times, and even when alone, she would think of him. She couldn't understand why she couldn't control her thoughts about Yi Tian, which made her feel very irritable, even diminishing her anticipation for today's gathering. However, when she saw Yi Tian with her own eyes, the irritable feeling disappeared without a trace, making her feel extremely strange. Yi Tian looked at her and asked, Why is your face a bit red? Are you feeling unwell? Han Ruiyan panicked, covering her cheeks to hide her inner turmoil, stubbornly saying, Yi Tian, don't listen to my dad's nonsense. I haven't been thinking about you at all. Yi Tianz nodded. All right, that's good then. Han Ruiyan stared at Yi Tianz with wide eyes, feeling resentful. She thought Yi Tianz should feel honored that she would think of him, rather than appearing reluctant. Yi Tianz didn't care about Han Ruiyan's thoughts. He checked the time on his phone, realizing the gathering was starting in just half an hour, thinking it was time to meet Rong Meiyan and propose canceling the engagement as soon as possible. Wu Xingye hurried towards the conference hall but was suddenly stopped by Wu Xingye himself. Dr. Yi, please wait a moment. I have a medical question to consult you about. Sha Ping also caught up and said, Master Yi, I am confused about the carving knife technique. I hope you can help me. Han Tianzheng saw this scene and couldn't help but be moved. Both Wu Xingye and Sha Ping are top figures in their respective fields in Jiangnan City. Even Han Tianzheng, or other more prominent figures, couldn't make them so humble. But at this moment, one called Yi Tianza a divine doctor, and the other called him a master, showing respect and politeness, giving Han Tianzheng a strong premonition. The future of the Han family may depend on Yi Tianza. He must seize this opportunity. Han Tianzheng urged Han Ruiyan, Yunyan, why are you still standing there? Hurry up and go in with dad, have a good chat with nephew Yi, I already see him as your fiancé. With that, Han Tianzheng pulled Han Ruiyan, ignoring her objections, and walked straight in. Throughout the whole time, these prominent figures in Jiangnan City saw Xiao Qingcheng, but no one took the initiative to strike up a conversation, all surrounding Yi Tianza. It seemed that compared to Xiao Qingcheng, there was a huge gap between them, like a firefly and the bright moon. Assistant Sun complained discontentedly, President Xiao, Yi Tianza must have played some tricks and deceived these three big shots. Don't mind their ignorance. Once you obtain the partner qualification of the wrong family, they will have no chance to revolve around you again. Xiao Qingcheng looked somewhat downcast. The indifference of Han Tianzheng and others made her uncomfortable, but what she cared more about was Han Tianzheng's words just now. He actually said he would regard Yi Tianza as a son-in-law? This made Xiao Qingcheng feel a kind of inexplicable crisis. Yi Tianza, are you going to become the son-in-law of the Han family before the end of the divorce cooling off period? Have I misunderstood you, or is everything happening now? Dot dot dot. On the other side of the story, in a private room of a rest club in the Hongfeng Villa, Ji Wuli led a group of wealthy and powerful people, about 20 to 30 people, chatting and laughing, with a lively atmosphere. They have just formally established a commercial alliance and elected Ji Wuli as the leader. Lai Jingye flattered, congratulations to Master Ji for becoming the leader, we will surely have a bright future following you. Xie Bin echoed, yes, we are fortunate to have Master Ji as our leader, please urge us more. Other wealthy businessmen praised and echoed one after another. Ji Wuli, standing in the center of the crowd, with a smile on his face, said, With such trust in the Ji family, I will definitely thank you all. After Miss Rong appoints the Ji family as business partners later, we will definitely share resources to make the alliance thrive and prosper together. These wealthy business members formed a commercial alliance, each of them needing to pay a joining fee of 10 million to the Ji family. With just this fee, Ji Wuli made over 2 billion in one go. In the midst of the joyful atmosphere, a discordant question suddenly arose. All eyes turned towards Ji Wuli as if he were a criminal. Ji Wuli knew deep down that everyone was hiding the same worry. What if the choice of business partner went wrong? Wouldn't the huge joining fee they had invested go down the drain? Ji Wuli's confidence shone through as he assured everyone not to worry, as the position of business partner had long been reserved for the Ji family, and they would have the support of the second master no matter what. Even in the worst case scenario, the Ji family would double the 10 million joining fee paid by each partner. This statement earned applause and praise from those present, especially for Ji Wuli. With the guarantee of the Ji family head, everyone expressed their willingness to follow him, no matter how rough the road ahead. 
Ji Wooly stood tall with his hands behind his back, full of confidence, already envisioning a scene where the business alliance led by him would outshine in Jiangan City. However, just as he was basking in his success, the door of the private room was pushed open. A disheveled Ji Bo rushed in, kneeling down in a panic. I'm naturally angry. Ji Wooly sternly rebuked. What's the matter with you barging in here and crying? Didn't you see that I was discussing important matters? It's so embarrassing and inappropriate. Ji Bo stood there, scared, and quickly apologized, Dad. I, I didn't mean to, I'm sorry, please don't be angry. Lai Jingye chimed in, Master Ji, young Master Ji seems to be in a hurry, maybe there is indeed an urgent matter. Why don't you let him finish speaking before getting upset and harming your health? Ji Wooly coldly snorted. Go ahead, tell me, what problem do you need help solving? Ji Bo lowered his head and described with great grievance what had just happened at the racetrack. Of course, he deliberately concealed the part where he provoked the situation himself, placing all the blame on Yi Tianza. He claimed that Yi Tianza had insulted the Ji family, forcing him to retaliate. In the end, due to Yi Tianzi's cunning tactics, he lost carelessly and now owed Yi Tianza 200 million in cash. Ji Wooly was so angry that he almost spat out blood. Damn it! Yi Tianza, you've gone too far. He had just earned 200 million in franchise fees from the commercial alliance he painstakingly built. Before he could even be happy about it, he was plotted against by Yi Tianza? In anger, Ji Wooly directly slapped Ji Bo across the face. Slacker! Look at what you've done! Losing 2 billion to that waste, you're worse than trash! Dad, I'm sorry! I won't dare to do it again, please don't be angry! Ji Bo covered his cheek, feeling very wrong. He knew he had caused big trouble this time and confessed to his father proactively because the situation had been exposed. He didn't expect to be hit. It's all Yi Tianzi's fault. Xie Bin interceded, Master Ji, that guy Yi Tianza is very cunning and vicious. Young Master Ji must have been calculated by him to lose 2 billion. Please don't be too angry. Others also chimed in, yes. Today is a joyous day, it's not good to get angry. I think Yi Tianza is the real culprit and should be taught a lesson. Master Ji, as long as you give the order, we will definitely follow you to deal with him. Listening to everyone's remarks, Ji Wooly took a deep breath. A hint of coldness flashed in his eyes. Yi Tianza, I originally planned to eliminate you after the meeting, but since you've come to me today, don't blame me for being ruthless. With your life, pave the way for the Ji family's expansion. In the hall of the Red Maple Villa, less than 20 minutes before the meeting officially started, Yi Tianza casually found a seat in the stands. As soon as he sat down, Wu Xingye and Xia Ping sat on his left and right sides respectively. Wu Xingye excitedly asked, Dr. Yi, I've researched a lot of information about the GU insects you mentioned earlier, but I still have many doubts. Could I please seek your advice? Xia Ping humbly consulted Master Yi, Master Yi, although my talent is average and may not meet your standards for accepting disciples, I still want to ask for guidance on how to achieve the realm of carving back to simplicity. Wu Xingye frowned and somewhat displeased Ly said, Old Sha, didn't you see that I asked Dr. Yi for advice first? Is it your turn to speak now? Sha Ping coldly snorted, responding, encountering an opportunity with Master Yi is rare. I humbly seek advice, what does it have to do with you? Wu Xingye angrily retorted, Can't you, an old craftsman who only carves stones, speak some reason? Sha Ping sneered, Can't you, an old quack doctor who only busies himself with herbs, keep quiet for a bit? The two elderly men, who were actually very good friends, unexpectedly bickered like children over competing for Yi Tian's attention. Yi Tian rubbed his temples in frustration and felt like his head was about to explode. With a sudden inspiration, he coughed and said, Ahem, gentlemen, I'll go to the restroom first, you can continue talking. After that, he hastily got up and walked towards the restroom. Wu Xingye and Sha Ping also stood up to follow Yi Tian to the restroom. At that moment, Han Tianzheng appeared in front of them blocking their way, and said with a smile, Hey hey. Don't be in a hurry, there are some things I'd like to discuss with you guys. After Yi Tian finished in the restroom, he went to the beverage area to pour himself a drink. Just as he took a sip, Han Ruoyan quickly walked over. Curiously, she asked, Yi Tian, what are you doing at this gathering? Are you trying to become a business partner with the wrong family? Yi Tian straightforwardly shook his head and replied, Not interested. Han Ruiyan disdainfully rolled her eyes and taunted, you really know how to talk. Even my dad dreams of becoming a partner with the wrong family, but you say you're not interested? She warned, 
Stop playing mysterious big shot in front of me. I'm not a fool and won't believe you. Yi Tian shrugged indifferently and said, believe it or not, it's up to you. Han Ruiyan stood with her hands on her hips and continued, hey. Stop playing these tricks, okay? Reverse psychology won't work on me. If you want to change my opinion, you have to show some real skills. Yi Tian rolled his eyes directly, thinking to himself that this woman was fine in other aspects, but this self-centered flaw really needed to be fixed. The two of them here do have an interesting and leisurely atmosphere. Suddenly, a somewhat displeased voice interrupted Yi Tian's thoughts. Xiao Qingsheng walked over with her assistant. Xiao Qingsheng came in to confirm whether she had misunderstood the relationship between Yi Tian and Han Ruyin. Perhaps it was just a coincidence, and there was no real relationship between them. However, when she entered the living room, she immediately saw Yi Tian and Han Ruyin chatting and laughing. Obviously, their relationship had exceeded her imagination. No wonder Han Tianzheng wanted to appoint Yi Tian as his son-in-law. The clues were there. When Han Ruiyan saw Xiao Qingsheng, she inexplicably felt a hint of hostility towards her. She deliberately approached Yi Tian a bit more and smiled, saying, Oh, it's General Xiao. We're not just having a leisurely time here. He's just saying things to please me. Yi Tianqi, when did I ever try to please you? Please don't talk nonsense, okay? Yi Tianqi tried to explain but was interrupted by Xiao Qingsheng. Xiao Qingsheng raised her hand, indicating that there was no need for an explanation, saying, It's okay, I already know. Although she said so, her heart was in turmoil. She thought to herself, We've been married for three years, and Yi Tianqi has never tried to please me. Now, not long after our divorce, he's already trying to please Miss Han without caring about his dignity. What am I lacking compared to her? In the end, it seems that Yi Tianqi has never truly had feelings for me. Just then, a group of people entered the living room aggressively, led by the gloomy Ji Wooly, with Ji Boduan by his side, his cheeks swollen. Ji Wooly stopped in his tracks, furrowed his brow, and loudly demanded, Yi Tians. You have harmed my son, tarnished the reputation of our Ji family, and there is no forgiveness for your crime. Why don't you come out and kneel down to apologize? His voice immediately attracted the attention of everyone in the living room, and they were all curious to know what had happened to make the head of the Ji family so angry. Ji Bo Duan quickly scanned the room and pointed at Yi Tianz near the drinks area, saying to Ji Wuli, Dad, look, it's that Yi guy. Ji Wuli's gaze sharpened, and he ordered, Follow me. A group of wealthy merchants followed him straight towards Yi Tianz. Seeing this, Han Ruoyan's face changed slightly, and she quietly reminded Yi Tianz, Those people are unfriendly, you should leave quickly, don't stay here. Yi Tianz shook his head and said, I was invited to the meeting, and I haven't even had the chance to meet Miss Rong. Why should I leave? Han Ruoyan said discontentedly, It's already this late, and you still care about meeting Miss Rong? If you don't leave now, your life is in danger. Yi Tianz calmly replied, They want my life? They are far from it. Han Ruoyan was so anxious that she stomped her foot, unable to understand why Yi Tianz was so stubborn. Meanwhile, Xiao Qingcheng frowned. She wanted to advise Yi Tianz to leave quickly, but remembered that she had said she wouldn't speak up for him today. After hesitating for a moment, she ultimately decided not to say anything. Perhaps Yi Tianz needed to learn a lesson to change, otherwise, no amount of reminders would be effective. The only thing she could do was to try to protect his life when he was in the most danger, that's all. Ji Wooly led the group to Yi Tianz, his eyes flashing with coldness. Commanding imperiously, Yi Tianz, didn't you hear me? Why haven't you knelt down and apologized? Yi Tianz glanced at Ji Bo Duan first and immediately understood that this guy must have complained to Ji Wuli, stirring up trouble. But he didn't intend to waste his breath explaining, instead gently shaking the drink in his hand and calmly saying, I only kneel to my parents, elders, and master. You, Ji Wuli, are just an insignificant head of the Ji family, not worthy of my kneeling. This statement immediately caused a commotion. The Ji family, as one of the three major families in Jiangnan City with assets exceeding 5 billion, was actually belittled by Yi Tianz as an insignificant existence? Too much, too arrogant. Ji Wooly slightly furrowed his brows, understanding that Yi Tianz would not easily admit his mistake. Therefore, he decided to cut off Yi Tianz's way out today, leaving no room for future trouble. It was a good opportunity to establish the authority of the Ji family. Ji Wooly sneered, Kid, you are too arrogant, do you know? Our Ji family has already agreed to cooperate with the wrong family. From now on, the wrong family is our backing. When you said the G family is not worth mentioning, were you also implying that the wrong family is not worth mentioning? 
Clever people can tell that Ji Wuli was trying to discredit the wrong family. Smart individuals would immediately deny it, absolutely not implicating the wrong family. Unexpectedly, Yi Tianqi didn't hesitate to say that if the wrong family really chose the Ji family as their partner, it would mean they were blind and ignorant, confusing right and wrong. Such a family is truly not worth using. His words shocked everyone present. Wow! Did you hear that? This Yi Tianqi is so bold, actually saying that the wrong family is not up to standard. Doesn't he realize he's attending Miss Rong's gathering? How dare he insult the wrong family like this? This guy is unbelievable! Xiao Qingcheng's expression turned serious. A few days ago, Yi Tianqi caused a big stir at Dragon Lord's bidding conference and the Ji family's birthday banquet. Is he planning to cause chaos at Miss Rong's gathering today as well? If he angers the Rong family, even if she tries to plead for him, it may be difficult to salvage the situation. Han Ruoyan's heart also skipped a beat. He reminded Yi Tianqi, Hey! You better shut up, you can't just say whatever you want. If Miss Rong hears it, it'll be troublesome. Yi Tianqi, indifferent, said, Every word I say is the truth, even if Miss Rong herself is here, I will not back down. All right, you've got guts. Ji Wuli couldn't help but applaud. Facing everyone, he firmly stated, You all heard it, this Yi Tianqi is outspoken and disrespectful. Insulting my Ji family is one thing, but disrespecting the wrong family, I, Ji Wuli, will never allow it. Even if I have to do everything in my power, I will defend the dignity of the wrong family. The wealthy businessman behind him echoed, shouting loudly, We vow to defend the honor of the wrong family. We vow to defend the honor of the wrong family. We vow to defend the honor of the wrong family. Their voices echoed through the entire reception hall, firm and resolute. Yi Tianqi just sneered and shook his head. These people say they vow to defend the honor of the wrong family, but in reality, it's all driven by personal grudges. So hypocritical. Ji Boding gritted his teeth and said, What are you laughing at? Hurry up and apologize. Yi Tianqi raised an eyebrow slightly and asked, Oh? I'm curious, how should I apologize to satisfy you? Ji Boding heard this and secretly rejoiced. Ha ha. Looks like this Yi Tianqi definitely can't withstand our pressure, he's ready to admit defeat. He had a hint of cunning in his eyes. He swaggered up to Yi Tianqi, snatched the drink from his hand, and spat into it. Pa! Yi family's kid, if you drink this, I'll tell you how to apologize. Yi Tianqi narrowed his eyes slightly and asked, Oh? Is it that simple? Do you think this is enough? All right, let me add some more flavor for you. Ji Boding smirked. He turned to the crowd and said, Anyone else wants to add some flavor, feel free to come over, this opportunity is rare. Lai Jingye raised his hand and said, I'm in. Xie Bin also said, Count me in. Soon, more than ten people stepped forward, each spitting into the cup. Ji Boding shook the drink in front of Yi Tianqi, taunting, Drinking everyone's spit might just bless you with a long life, haha. <laughs> the onlookers laughed and anticipated how Yi Tianqi would react after drinking the beverage. Xiao Qingcheng shook her head in disappointment. Although Ji Boding and the others' actions were excessive, it was all a result of Yi Tianqi's arrogance and hubris, reaping what he sowed. Han Ruoyan frowned, instinctively wanting to stop Yi Tian's from drinking that beverage. But unexpectedly, something happened. Yi Tian suddenly reached out his arm, covering Ji Boding's mouth, and without hesitation, poured the drink into his mouth. The action was swift and seamless. Gulp! Ji Boding didn't even have time to react. Han Ruoyan looked at the scene in front of her, feeling a warm surge of gratitude and admiration towards Yi Tian's. Xiao Qingcheng and assistant Sun stared wide-eyed. Yi Tianzo was truly audacious, daring to humiliate Ji Boduan like that. Han Ruoyan breathed a sigh of relief, secretly giving Yi Tianza a thumbs up. Although Yi Tianza often made her feel frustrated and unhappy, at this moment, seeing him embarrass someone else brought her indescribable satisfaction. On the contrary, Ji Bo Duan felt like his stomach was churning, sitting on the ground vomiting non-stop. The people around him, including Lai Jingye, seemed bewildered, as if they had tasted bitterness. The whole drink was made smelly and disgusting, making him feel extremely nauseous. Ji Bo Duan, who initially wanted to humiliate Yi Tianza, ended up embarrassing himself and losing all face. Yi Tianza looked down at Ji Boduan with a harmless smile on his face. Young Master Ji, how does the drink you personally mix taste? Feel free to give it a 5-star rating. The onlookers couldn't help but burst into laughter, even Lai Jingye, Xie Bin, and others couldn't suppress their amusement. If it weren't for the alliance with the Ji family, they would have burst out laughing long ago. This scene was truly unexpected. 
After vomiting for a moment, Ji Bo Duan struggled to stand up, wiping the corners of his mouth. As the young master of the Ji family, when had he ever experienced such humiliation? At this moment, overwhelmed by anger, he trembled all over, his eyes bloodshot. Damn it! Yi Tianza! Today I will definitely settle the score with you! Ji Bo Duan clenched his fists tightly and struck at Yi Tianza. However, in Yi Tianzi's eyes, his movements were as slow as a snail. Yi Tianza easily grabbed Ji Bo Duan's fist, pulled it, and at the same time tripped him with his foot. Ji Bo Duan instantly fell to the ground with a thud. Surprisingly, his body landed right where he had just vomited. Damn it! Ji Bo Duan was shocked and tried to struggle to his feet. However, Yi Tianza unceremoniously stepped heavily on his back with his left foot. This foot almost left Ji Bo Duan breathless. Yi Tianza paid no attention, casually picking his ears and whistling, looking quite at ease. This scene shocked everyone. Yi Tianza publicly humiliated the young master of the Ji family and even stepped on him. Arrogant to the extreme, utterly shameless. Lai Jingye, Xie Bin, and other wealthy merchants couldn't contain their anger and reprimanded Yi Tianza one after another. Release young master Ji immediately, how dare you shame him in public like this? Acting like this in front of the Ji family's master, you are really asking for trouble. Not only them, even Xiao Qingcheng's expression changed slightly. Yi Tianza, release young master Ji quickly. Today is Miss Rong's debut, you should know the proper etiquette and not act recklessly. Yi Tianza glanced at her mockingly, Xiao, you can donate your eyes if you don't need them. Clearly, it was Ji Bo Duan who spat first and made the first move, I just had to retaliate. How does that become acting recklessly? Xiao Qingcheng said displeased Ly, knowing that young master Ji is no match for you and poses no threat, why can't you be more magnanimous? You have nothing to lose anyway. Yi Tianza sneered, Hey! Just because he poses no threat to me, I should tolerate his provocation? Should honest people be bullied? Should they be held at gunpoint? Xiao Qingcheng's body trembled slightly, her lips slightly parted. Half a day had passed, Ji Bo Duan couldn't find any words to refute. He realized that not even Xiao Qingcheng could persuade Yi Tianz. He could only plead with Ji Wuli for help, Dad. Please come and save me. He's about to crush me, it hurts. However, Ji Wooly scolded angrily, Shut up. You are such an embarrassment. With a grim face, he walked slowly towards Yi Tianz and commanded, Release Bo Duan immediately. Maybe I can consider giving you a way out. Yi Tianz smiled faintly and said, Please understand, it is now me who is considering whether to spare your son, don't confuse the priorities. Saying that, Yi Tianz slightly pressed down with force. Ji Bo Duan immediately let out a hysterical scream cold sweat beating on his forehead, as if with a little more force, he could take Ji Bo Duan's life. Ji Wuli clenched his fists, gritted his teeth, filled with resentment. Normally, their Ji family would threaten others, but now they were caught in a vulnerable position, burning with anger. He asked coldly, what do you want me to do to spare Bo Duan? Yi Tian sneered and said, since your Ji family master likes to kneel and apologize so much, why don't you perform a kneeling apology now? If I am satisfied, I will release Ji Bo Duan, how about that? With these words, the scene erupted in an uproar. No one could believe that Yi Tianz actually demanded the Ji family master to kneel and apologize, it was simply outrageous. Xiao Qingcheng frowned, looking puzzled. The Ji family master had already given you a way out, but you, Yi Tianz, not only did not appreciate it, but also went further. Han Ruiyan nervously swallowed a mouthful of saliva, she knew that Yi Tianz could be crazy sometimes, but she didn't expect him to be so bold. Ji Wuli's face turned ashen, he would never kneel and apologize in front of everyone. He said coldly, Yi Tianz, I have given you a chance, but instead of being grateful, you are pushing it too far. Even if it means sacrificing my son's life today, I will not let you off easily. Hearing this, Ji Bo Duan was scared and trembling, Dad. What are you saying? I am your son, I don't want to die. He, who was usually arrogant and domineering, suddenly burst into tears, covered in all sorts of shameful things, looking disheveled. Yi Tian said indifferently, since you don't want his life, I will help you fulfill your wish. Just as he was about to act, a cold shout suddenly came, stop. Immediately, more than 30 people poured in from all directions. They were dressed in black martial arts uniforms, robust in stature, with a red maple leaf pattern on their chests. Each of them exuded a powerful aura, far beyond ordinary bodyguards. The moment they appeared, the faces of everyone present changed, and a tense atmosphere spread. The crowd whispered among themselves, shocked that the masters of Hong Feng Hall had personally appeared on the scene. 
It was rumored that the experts of Hong Feng Hall were all extraordinary, with even the weakest among them able to match ten opponents. Today, their figures appeared for the first time, truly inspiring awe in the hearts of onlookers. With the appearance of the masters from Hong Feng Hall, Yi Tianqi could no longer act arrogantly. Observing the changes in the expressions of the crowd, they seemed to sense an invisible pressure looming over Yi Tianqi, making people feel uneasy. He returned to Jiangmen City from the Fallen City and has been living a secluded life in the Xiao family for the past three years, with little knowledge of the external forces in Jiangmen City. Of course, he also disdains knowing too much. Han Ruoyan explained, the force behind the Red Maple Villa is the Red Maple Hall, and the security of the villa is taken care of by the Red Maple Hall. No matter how powerful or influential the forces are in Jiangmen City, they dare not provoke trouble at the Red Maple Villa. The reason for this is that the founder of the Red Maple Hall is very influential. He was once the mysterious king of Jiangmen City, overlooking everything from the highest point in Jiangmen City. Not to mention the three major families of Jiangmen City, even the four major families in the provincial capital treat him with respect. After all, he once represented the peak combat power of the entire Jiangmen City. Yi Tianqi became interested and asked, Oh? He sounds impressive. Who is he? Han Ruoyan, with a hint of admiration in his eyes, said, He is the Jiangmen war god, Lin Feng. You didn't know that? Jeez. Yi Tianqi rolled his eyes. After all the boasting, it turns out to be the guy he slapped down with one hand. Now he's locked up in the fallen city cleaning toilets. Han Ruoyan continued, Back then, he was invincible throughout Jiangmen City and one of the top experts in Tianan province. Unfortunately, three and a half years ago, he suddenly disappeared without a trace. But the Red Maple Hall he founded is still in Jiangmen City, waiting for the return of the Jiangmen War God. Although the group is leaderless and not as powerful as before, a starving camel is still bigger than a horse. It is said that half a year ago, Zhang Xiaohu personally led the Black Tiger Society to compete with the Red Maple Hall for the territory of the Red Maple Villa. The Black Tiger Society, with 3,000 brothers, was defeated by just over a hundred people, and since then, they have not dared to touch the Red Maple Villa again. The Red Maple Hall operates in a low-key manner. When it comes to the forces in Jiangmen City, everyone tends to overlook them. In fact, they are very terrifying. Whatever happens, you should not provoke them. Yi Tianqi nodded, not paying too much attention. In Han Ruoyan's eyes, the Red Maple Hall is a terrifying force not to be trifled with. But in Yi Tianqi's eyes, even the founder Lin Feng is just a guy he can slap down, let alone the Red Maple Hall. As long as the Red Maple Hall doesn't provoke him, Yi Tianqi won't go looking for trouble with them. While the two were quietly talking, a middle-aged man in a Red Maple Hall martial arts uniform slowly walked to the front. He was of medium build, with a crew cut and very sharp eyes. Unlike other Red Maple Hall experts, there were two Red Maple Leaf symbols on his chest. Could he be one of the eight stewards of the Red Maple Hall? It is said that besides the Jiangmen War God Lin Feng, the Red Maple Hall also has four elders and eight stewards, all of them terrifying experts with unparalleled combat power, rarely seen in public. Today is Miss Rong's meeting, and the Red Maple Hall is responsible for security. It is only natural that one of the stewards personally takes action. The middle-aged steward walked to the center of the crowd and clasped his fists, saying, Everyone, I am Feng Yao, a steward of the Red Maple Hall. Today, Miss Rong's business meeting is being held at the Red Maple Villa, and the Red Maple Hall is responsible for all security measures. After everyone listened to Ji Wuli's statement, they nodded in agreement. Ji Wuli stepped forward smiling, and bowed to Steward Feng, pleading, Steward Feng, please help me out. His gaze turned to Yi Tianza. Then, he narrated the events in a distorted manner, as soon as this young man entered the reception room, his words were fierce, like a mad dog biting, full of insults towards the Rong family and Miss Rong. When my son Ji Bo tried to dissuade him, he was subjected to unacceptable behavior, even being drenched with liquid, pushed to the ground, and trampled upon, and then forced to kneel and apologize as a threat, it was simply outrageous. This behavior not only disrespects Miss Rong but also challenges the dignity of the Hongfeng Hall. Steward Feng, please uphold justice, represent righteousness, and make a decision for us. As soon as these words were spoken, the onlookers all turned their gaze to Ji Wuli, tacitly expressing their support. They secretly praised Ji Wuli's cunning, as in just a few words, he successfully portrayed Yi Tianza as an enemy of the Hongfeng Hall, skillfully using someone else to achieve his goal. Truly cunning. Feng Yao nodded solemnly and said, Master Ji, please rest assured, Feng is here for this matter. He glanced at Yi Tianza, although he lacked the aura of a master, daring to act recklessly on the territory of the Hongfeng Hall, he was truly audacious. 
He raised his right hand, pointed at Yi Tianza, and commanded, You, immediately retract your feet, apologize to Ji Bo, and leave here obediently, the matter will be settled. Ji Wuli frowned upon hearing this. He had hoped that Steward Feng would severely punish Yi Tianza, at least leaving him disabled, but he did not expect that he would only be asked to apologize and leave the venue. Although dissatisfied, Ji Wuli dared not show it. Anyway, after the meeting, there would be a chance to retaliate against Yi Tianza. However, Feng Yao did not expect that Yi Tianza would not obey his command. Instead, he calmly asked, Why should I listen to your command? This questioning immediately sparked anger in the crowd. Everyone exclaimed in shock, Oh my god! This Yi Tianza dares to disregard Steward Feng's command? Is he crazy? Steward Feng clearly showed mercy, but this kid is so disrespectful. He must be crazy. Wait for retribution. Yi Tianza even dares to offend the steward of the Hongfeng Hall. What else is he not afraid to do? Even a hint of surprise flashed in Steward Feng's eyes. He said sternly, This is the territory of the Hongfeng Hall. I represent the Hongfeng Hall in giving orders, that's the rule. If you don't follow the rules, you will pay the price. With your meager status, I'm afraid you can't bear it. Feng Yao's angry demeanor made Ji Wuli and others secretly delighted, thinking that Yi Tianza was truly seeking his own death by provoking Steward Feng's anger, destined to be severely punished. Disappointed, Yi Tianza shook his head and said with a smile, I thought the organization founded by Lin Feng would at least have a certain standard. Feng Yao, as the steward of Hongfeng Hall, has always been meticulous and fair, adhering to the principle of black and white. However, when he heard Yi Tianxi's evaluation of Hongfeng Hall, he couldn't help but feel a hint of displeasure in his heart. He felt that Yi Tianxi's evaluation of Hongfeng Hall was too harsh, as if there was no basic respect at all. These words felt like a heavy blow, making Feng Yao feel angry and wronged. He never expected to be so openly ridiculed in front of everyone, especially by someone like Yi Tianqi. This disrespect made him feel like he had swallowed a cup of poison, filled with anger and indignation. Feng Yao's face gradually darkened, with a cold gleam in his eyes. This was the first time in so many years that he had encountered such blatant humiliation, and for him, this behavior was absolutely intolerable. A strong sense of killing intent emanated from Feng Yao, making everyone present feel his deep-seated anger and outrage. The crowd had various emotions. Ji Wuli and others were filled with anger and a desire for revenge, hoping Feng Yao would punish Yi Tianza to avenge them. Xiao Qingcheng, on the other hand, felt nervous and anxious. She realized that Yi Tianza had gone too far and there was no turning back, even if she stepped forward to plead, she couldn't change the situation. However, she was unwilling to stand idly by. Just as she was about to speak, Assistant Sun hurriedly whispered to stop her, Miss Xiao, please don't intervene for that useless person. He brought this upon himself, it has nothing to do with you. Besides, even if you help him, he won't appreciate it, why bother? Xiao Qingcheng hesitated slightly, then nodded. Indeed, she had helped Yi Tianza out of trouble many times, only to be repaid with ingratitude. Thinking of this, her disappointment in Yi Tianza deepened. In contrast, Han Ruoyan was so angry that she stamped her foot and scolded. Didn't I warn you not to confront the Red Maple Hall long ago? Why didn't you listen? Yi Tianza dismissively replied, It's not a big deal, why worry? Han Ruoyan was frustrated, almost going crazy. Although she despised Yi Tianza for being a kept man, she didn't want him to get into trouble. What should she do now? Meanwhile, Ji Bo Duan panted heavily, arrogantly saying, Ha ha. Yi, if you don't release me, you're in trouble now, serves you right. If you let me go now, maybe I will kindly plead for you and leave you with a complete corpse. Yi Tianza shook his head disdainfully, not letting go. You're asking for it. Feng Yao loudly scolded, release him. But Yi Tianza adamantly refused. When Feng Yao was about to rush forward, a hoarse voice suddenly sounded, Hold on. Don't harm Dr. Yi. Everyone was stunned as an old man walked out from the crowd, blocking Feng Yao. It turned out to be Wu Xingye. Everyone was surprised. Why would the director of Jiangnan First Hospital stand up for Yi Tianza? What's even more astonishing was Wu Xingye calling Yi Tianza a doctor. When did this guy learn medicine? Wu Xingye said seriously, Feng, please don't act rashly. Let me speak some fair words. Feng Yao frowned not fearing Wu Xingye but still giving him some face. He asked, Director Wu, what fair words do you have to say? Wu Xingye replied earnestly, Dr. Yi has always been upright. I can testify that today at the venue, he did not provoke trouble, it was Ji's family who instigated it, distorting the truth. I hope Feng can see the truth. 
Feng Yao frowned, then turned to Ji Wuli. Ji Patriarch, how do you explain Director Wu's words? Ji Wuli's eyes flashed with a hint of gloom, inwardly cursing, how could Wu Xingye speak up for Yi Tianzi? This is unexpected. Ji Wuli still firmly denies, his voice filled with confusion and grievance. Feng, the steward of the Ji family, did not understand what Director Wu was saying. The truth is that Yi Tianzi caused chaos at the meeting and hurt my son. This is not just my opinion. Everyone behind me can testify. Rich merchants like Lai Jingye and Xie Bin tacitly expressed their support, confirming that what the Ji family said is true and everything was initiated by Yi Tianzi. Director Wu, I don't know what relationship you have with that Yi person. Why are you so blatantly protecting him? Are you trying to deceive the Hongfeng Hall on purpose? Director Wu, please think twice before you act. Some things are better left untouched to avoid reaping what you sow. People expressed their opinions one after another, some even pointed fingers at each other. Wu Xingye felt his blood boiling. These people talk about righteousness and morality, but they would do anything to achieve their goals, even disregarding basic dignity. Feng Yao said solemnly, Director Wu, as the saying goes, with everyone as a witness, you are the only one testifying for Yi Tianzi. This testimony may not be convincing enough. Before he could finish speaking, a dissatisfied voice rang out, whose voice was it? Sha Ping, dressed in yellow tang suit, walked out. He looked furious and said coldly, I, Sha Ping, am willing to testify for Master Yi. If anyone dares to treat him unfairly today, they will have to step over my dead body first. The people present were shocked once again. Unbelievable. Even this proud elder stood up to speak for Yi Tianzi? Wu Xingye and Sha Ping, these two respected figures who do not align with any power, especially in Jiangnan City. Today, they both stepped forward to defend Yi Tianzi, which is simply unbelievable. However, the situation did not end there. Han Tianzheng also walked out of the crowd. He showed no anger and calmly said, I am also willing to testify for my nephew Yi, he was not the instigator of this incident. This scene completely stunned the onlookers. While Wu Xingye and Sha Ping have high prestige, they are relatively weak in terms of financial power. But Han Tianzheng is different. He is the head of one of the three major families in Jiangnan City, and also the richest man in Jiangnan City, with a wealth of nearly billions. His status and influence far exceed the previous two. For a moment, the onlookers looked at each other in amazement. Hey! Can someone tell me what's going on? The head of the Han family is also standing on Yi Tianzi's side? Isn't he the useless son-in-law expelled by the Xiao family? Why would he receive the support of these three big shots? This is getting more and more interesting. Xiao Qingcheng, seeing this scene, looked slightly puzzled. Although she had greeted these three big shots and Yi Tianzi at the door before, she did not expect them to stand on Yi Tianzi's side even if it meant offending the Ji family. She didn't understand. What qualities does Yi Tianzi have that deserve such support from these three? Han Ruoyan breathed a sigh of relief, but also felt a bit worried. If father is willing to support Yi Tianzi like this, he must be planning to make him his son-in-law, what should I do? I don't want to marry a man left over by someone else. Yi Tianzi looked at Wu Xingye and the other three, feeling slightly surprised that they would come forward for him. Although with his strength, he didn't need this kind of help at all, but he was grateful and vowed to repay them in the future. He glanced at Feng Yaodao, feeling a hint of displeasure rising in his heart. He turned to Ji Wuli and said, Master Ji, perhaps it's time to give Mr. Feng an explanation. At that moment, a hint of dissatisfaction and anticipation flashed in Feng Yao's eyes, as if waiting for Master Ji's explanation. The whole room was filled with a tense atmosphere, as if a heated conversation could erupt at any moment. Ji Wuli's face was full of anxiety at the moment, his carefully planned scheme to use another's hand to kill someone was unexpectedly disrupted by Wu Xingye and others. Although Wu Xingye and Sha Ping stood on Yi Tianxi's side, Ji Wuli could understand. But he never expected that Han Tianzheng would also get involved. When the business alliance was formed earlier, Ji Wuli thought Han Tianzheng had important matters to attend to, only to realize that he had long been colluding with Yi Tianqi. This sense of betrayal made Ji Wuli feel deeply angry, a surge of anger rising in his heart, unable to help but glare at Han Tianzheng. Feng Yao spoke up again, reminding Ji Wuli, but Ji Wuli could only force a smile. Upon careful recollection, he found that Yi Tianqi seemed to not have actively caused trouble. The conflict with his son might just be a misunderstanding. Feng Yao, however, frowned, his voice turning cold and pointed out that Ji Wuli's response was too hasty. Feeling embarrassed, Ji Wuli hurriedly added that Yi Tianqi had just mocked the Jiangnan war god, insulting the reputation of Hongfeng Hall was intolerable. If not punished, 
it would have a detrimental impact on the reputation of Hong Feng Hall. Feng Yao's gaze turned cold, unmoved by Ji Wuli's words. Ji Wuli could only hint to Lai Jingye and others, and they immediately responded. Everyone expressed their support, believing that if Yi Tianqi went unpunished, it would tarnish the reputation of Hong Feng Hall, and losing the support of the Jiangnan War God would leave Hong Feng Hall in darkness. These comments made Feng Yao's already grim expression even darker. Ever since Master Lin Feng suddenly disappeared three and a half years ago, the influence of Hong Feng Hall had plummeted sharply, a pain that Feng Yao and others had carried in their hearts. Now hearing these comments, he could not accept it. Hong Feng Hall was the crystallization of Master Lin Feng's efforts, and they were determined to defend its dignity to the death. A firm resolve shone in Feng Yao's eyes. Six Hong Feng Hall experts immediately appeared, flanking Wu Xingye and the other three, dragging them away from the crowd. Despite their struggles, Wu Xingye and the others were powerless, only able to protest loudly. Feng Yao apologized to them, explaining that this was an internal matter of Hong Feng Hall and had nothing to do with them, asking them not to interfere. Wu Xingye and the others' faces changed drastically, realizing the situation was dire. Ji Wuli and the others, however, secretly rejoiced, it seemed that Feng Yao was finally going to take action, and Yi Tianqi would not escape this time. Feng Yao walked slowly towards Yi Tianqi. The cold threat echoed in the arena, Yi Tianqi smiled wryly and responded, Red Maple Hall is not as powerful as the top 18 forces, that's a fact, where's the humiliation in that? His voice carried a hint of resilience and determination. Feng Yao, burning with anger, declared his determination to kill Yi Tianqi, but Yi Tianqi remained fearless, even appearing relaxed and confident. He raised a single index finger, with a firm gaze and words filled with an incredible determination. With just this finger, I can defeat you. Yi Tianqi's voice was confident and resolute, causing a stir in the audience. People started whispering and reacting differently, some sneered disdainfully, while others showed surprise. Feng Yao provocatively asked, Are you trying to show me a move? His eyes flickered with provocation and disdain. Yi Tianqi shook his head, smiling as he replied, You misunderstood, I meant to defeat you with this single finger. The audience was once again shocked, staring at Yi Tianqi in disbelief. The experts from Red Maple Hall sneered even more disdainfully, believing Yi Tianqi's words to be empty boasts, utterly impossible. Xiao Qingcheng couldn't help but blame Yi Tianqi, but he remained calm and resolute. Han Ruoyan was anxious and angry, full of worry for Yi Tianqi. Wu Xingye and his two companions also showed concern, not believing Yi Tianqi's words, thinking it was unrealistic bragging. Feng Yao's eyes flashed with a hint of fierceness, mocking, defeat me with a single finger? Arrogant. Then, he displayed astonishing speed and strength, launching a fierce attack towards Yi Tianqi. A palm filled with incredible force headed straight for Yi Tianqi, Feng Yao was full of confidence, believing Yi Tianqi would surely be unable to resist. However, at the critical moment, an unexpected turn of events occurred. Yi Tianqi suddenly made a move. With an agility that Feng Yao failed to notice, he extended his right index finger and lightly touched Feng Yao's chest. Suddenly, a strong signal of danger exploded in Feng Yao's mind. His scalp went numb in an instant, and his intuition told him he must dodge in time. However, it was too late. With a gentle touch of Yi Tianqi's index finger, a loud bang exploded in front of his chest. Feng Yao flew backwards like a kite with a broken string, sliding more than 10 meters before heavily falling to the ground. With a splutter, a mouthful of blood gushed from his mouth, and he was no longer able to stand up. The outcome was obvious, Feng Yao was defeated, 